Hello, good morning everybody. Welcome to the uh, first game of GQC Div 1 2022. I'm Ed. I'm Doug. And we'll be your commentators today. Um, so for the first game we have uh, Rough Phoenix. The first game will be delayed a bit. Okay. We've just been told the first game will be delayed a bit, so we will, we will try and entertain you in the meantime. But uh, we'll, mm. we'll, 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 we'll have a little chat and, and we'll get up to speed. We're, we're, we're working, it's early in the morning, we're, yeah. we're working up to speed as well, so uh, bear with us. We'll, we'll find our groove and, and hopefully it's a good stream for you guys. So It's going to be a stream. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an 8.30 stream. So we have um, Barcelona Eagles versus Rua Phoenix here. Um, Rua Phoenix fresh, very fresh off of their, their German Cup last week. Would you call it fresh? Uh, it look kind of tired. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I've seen teams... Still sore. Yeah, I remember um, sort of British teams have played a Div 2. I think the first ever Div 2 a week after BQC and the he were knackered by Day 2. Yeah, so I'm hopefully we see the best of Rua. I'm not going to recommend here, it the week after, though. That <laughs> I think they were still tired. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's um, it's a tough ask, but I mean, these German teams look fit. They look. I mean, you are right though. I imagine they are relatively fresh, given how unexhausting Baylor is. <laughs> and if you spend two days standing still, yeah, you know, you're ready for another two days the week after. Yeah, you're only playing fifty percent of the game. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, no, they. <laughs> They, they so we'll, we'll see how they we'll see how they do. I certainly think they'll be at their freshest this morning. So you guys are oh, in yeah. for a treat there. Um, and then Barcelona Eagles. I think their last tournament was uh, the Catalan Cup at the very least. Yeah, well yeah. They, they they won the Catalan Cup, which is what what brought them here as their EQC yeah. qualifying. Uh, I think Ruhr qualified in 2019, so way way back. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the German teams fare. I mean, obviously they've allowed the German Cup and a couple of them came a bit lower than they would have expected. Uh, I'm trying to remember the last time Catalan, uh, um, Barcelona didn't win Catalan's only EQC spot. Um, yeah, they've won it seven times. Yeah, so yeah. I can't imagine <laughs> there's been many more. So, um, and still, like, I imagine they're hoping to finish a little higher than they have previously. If, yeah. n if for no other reason other than the getting that extra spot. Maybe get a team into D2. Yeah, no, well, it's a 24th place finish for them at uh, 2019, which is, uh, I don't think anybody wants to finish 24th, let's be honest, but um, it gives you a nice little nice little benchmark for the day, mm. for the weekend, to even get past that point. And Absolutely. I mean, they've got, they've got, they've strengthened. We, we yeah. know that uh, they've got um, Kemmer back. He's been yeah. playing in the UK. He was playing in the UK last EQC, so he's, a, he's one of their strongest players and They'll um they'll really improve the team and and it looks, sounds like they strengthened elsewhere yeah. as well. So Glasgow last EQC. It was Glasgow. That was a yeah. long time ago. It was that that really oh. is showing how long it's been. The uh, Grim Reapers have been met by the Grim. Yes. Yeah. 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 Playing for a team that well, doesn't <laughs> exist, which is which is a shame, and it, it's it's obviously affecting a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of countries at the moment. No, um, no, no. Don't don't tell IQA that. <laughs> Don't tell you that they exist. They need that World Cup spot. Who would have thought that a pandemic would ruin things? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But um, that which must not be named. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, we as I say we're delayed at the moment. If you just joined, um, so we are sort of waffling for your entertainment right yeah. now. Um, Thoroughly entertaining waffle. Yeah. Uh, I think Barcelona have played. I think the last tournament they played they won and that was in March 2022 so a little bit shy so you kind of got a team that hasn't played for, for three months in a proper tournament we've got a team who's played last week in a proper tournament and you, you hear it in other sports all the time like is it better to come into it you know game ready or is it better to come into it fresh mm. um, and, and we'll see we'll see and obviously you know we're, we're all um, all amateurs, amateur athletes, so mm. travel can be an affecting issue. You know, if, if someone got in late last night, or and that 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 really that really can affect these early games. I think more yeah. than more than the later ones. Mm. Yeah. No movement as of yet on no. the pitch. The rest Barcelona have decided they are thoroughly warmed up. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were they were definitely out there with the ball a lot earlier than uh, than Real were. Real were doing a, a full full warm up on the uh the back of the pitch um and then they've gone into a lot a lot a lot of uh ball movement drills you haven't really seen the beaters do do a huge amount no just um, keep everything tight yeah snapping uh snapping releases 
Yeah, they're sort of in a huddle on the sideline. Uh, as Barcelona break out of their, their massive huddle. Mm. Uh, I think alternatively, the refs having time to have, that, have a thorough ref meeting um, <laughs> yes, never we're hurts. We're, we're expecting greatness from them. You know? <laughs> I mean, they have been thoroughly briefed <laughs> and effectively briefed. Yeah, I've heard. I heard. I heard about last night's ref meeting. So expect big things from from ARs, HRs, SRs. Everyone knows their job now. Yep. No excuses. And then, you know, hopefully that leads to a nice happy tournament. Happy tournament. Who would have thought? Have you played against either of these teams before? Yes, I, I think I played against Barcelona at both uh, EKCs. I played um, one in the group stage, one in the sort of seeding stage after we get knocked out um so yeah so it was 2018 they they must have finished a bit higher because they're in the upper bracket um but obviously since 2018 the the way seeding happens we have a div two now so so the, the, yeah. the quality of the tournament has got higher with each year um and that might have corresponded with them dropping down um but uh, yeah, so then we had them in the group in 2019. Uh, I think we have ruined the group in 2019. This might be a... You've had both or none? I'm, I, I'm, it's, it's been a while, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure both were in... Uh, yeah, so I play for Werewolves, for those who don't know, uh, Werewolves of London. And uh, yeah, I think in 2018. So this is like a... No, sorry, in 2019, it was, it was us, it was Barcelona Eagles, it was Ruhr, and it was NTNUI. Uh, so tough group. Um, they are also rematch. in this group with these two as well, I believe. Oh, really? Are they? I mean, Rua Phoenix are saying the team they're excited to play against is NTNUI. Well, they said last E2, so I must be on to something if they played them last last E C. So that that's fine. That's good. And uh, to be fair, Barcelona said that their their game they're looking forward to was this Rua game. So let's let's hope that it lives up to their expectations. Information brought to you by Ed Brett. No need to be fact checked. <laughs> I've got a sheet. He's got a sheet. <laughs> He's got a sheet. Mm. Um, yeah, so, and I'm um, quickly getting through the sheet as we wait longer and longer for this game to start. It, it, it's fine, there's always a lot to talk about with Baylor. Yeah, so I mean, um, Doug, Doug's, Doug's making jokes and it alludes to the fact that um, a, lot, a lot of what we saw at uh, Division 2 uh, yeah. and subsequent European tournaments is this, this, this Baylor defence, which is, uh, I mean, I'll let you explain, although, Doug. I mean, although we are seeing um, Rua Phoenix warm up, in a two-two, which very pressing effect and um, very effective to like deny those passes. Yeah, they're sort of they're they're a lot more fluid in the two. Mm -hmm. They're sort of three and two, dropping in and out. And mm. um, they're sort of happy to leave that little hoop open yeah. if the ball goes over the top from the looks of things. And we'll see if that translates to the game. Mm. But yeah, the 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 bailer that we'll, we'll 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 allude to probably throughout the game is just um, is a defense where you have a hoop covered by a player. Every hoop's yeah. covered by a player. You have someone on point namely the keeper so they can't get beat out and you just make it really hard for them to shoot yeah. and you want to funnel them into a drive um, so yeah we'll make some jokes we'll, uh, we'll we'll talk about it a lot during the game I mean hopefully we don't see it because it does make for a quite stodgy yeah. stodgy I mean, game we make jokes about it but it has proved to be effective yes it's just it's effective and very slow so yeah and as much as these teams will, will play it because their priority isn't to be pretty but is to be really, effective yeah. and get that win yeah spectating wise you want to see a little more of an open game yeah and the way the bracket works means i mean qpd doesn't really matter it's just win by any any means necessary um well uh, most means within reason yeah and i think i think something that that you know it, it really helps stop shooting opportunities and i think that's something we've seen from german teams historically is oh. is how good they are with their handball backgrounds and and whatnot like they, they're some of the best shooters in europe so last weekend that's all we saw some just incredible shots from yeah. great ranges from every team yeah exactly yeah and so if you weren't playing that that sort of deep hoop defense you were you were going to struggle mm. so you can see why it's used um and if, if barcelona have, have done their research and had a little look at the teams they're playing that they're, they'll probably try and set up to stop that shot make them oh. make them work the hoops um but yeah this is i mean this is a really good rear, rear side really high quality german cup last week and they came third losing to the eventual winners so there's no no real shame in that. So I'm interested to see how fast they can get set into that Baylor because from playing Barcelona at the start of this season yep. on a Merck team, they're very hard on transition. 
they that their beaters will just explode from the hoops on transition. Yeah. And if they beat you to the halfway line, you rate them to score. Yeah, and no, I mean, you kind of have to do that, don't you? Because if yeah. you're playing that Baylor, Baylor defense, yeah. whether you're the offense or the defense, it makes it a lot harder to, to you know, have those beater battles in, yeah. in, in good areas. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to catch them as they're moving. Beat it before it's set. Yeah. It looks like Eamon is just getting his headset sorted and, like, they're milling about as if we might get going soon. Yeah, have we done a, done a captain's meeting yet? I know that's that's a thing that people like to do. Um uh, I'm I'm kind of happy I'm not a captain anymore. <laughs> they <laughs> they get a bit tiring a bit quick, mm. but they're necessary. They're necessary. Have a little chat. I mean, Eamon, uh fresh off of uh, refing the uh, BQC final, yeah. uh, some other high-profile games at uh, BQC. I so mean, yeah, I imagine after how that game ended, this yeah. this will be a walk in the park. <laughs> yeah, like, mate, no big yeah. decisions for Eamon yeah. anymore. Yeah, ho he's hoping for not another hour-long game. Not another hour long game, not another need not, not, not another need for an executive committee meeting <laughs> um, to like make decisions that will will impact or be called upon <laughs> further down the line. Oh god, yeah, yeah. Just remember two more minutes. Two more minutes. <laughs> <It's> fine. <laughs> um I think we've got uh, you know, a couple of English refs in there and I am not too sure on the others, mm -hmm. but at least um you know, they've we've talked about them on the chat, there there should be some I'm sort of hopefully, hopefully. We can confirm all refs were here on time, as yep. were teams. Yep, no, exactly, yeah. Get that efficiency going. It looks like all pitches are delayed, actually. Yeah. Um, so it's not yeah. just, or maybe, maybe. so we've got two two pitches on this on this bit of field. Uh, we've got three pitches over in the other corner. And I think maybe they've started going. I can't quite uh, tell. We've no, not I think they're still warming up. Yeah, Who's so. Who's on the other pitch? Who's on the other pitch? So bear with us, there's not much movement at the moment. We're not sure why there's a delay. Um, we're, we're working with bare bones here. So. Oh, that's why we waited. I mean, like, fair enough. No, I was just wondering who was on the other pitch. On the other pitch, Frogs against Frogs versus Liege on the other pitch. Okay. So we are. Like, it, it so yeah, it's the medics. It's the medics that's yeah. the problem. Um, we obviously it, can't start it, without safety. It is players. nice to know that everyone who has gone to that meeting has taken it thoroughly serious. It's like we want to be yeah. finishing on time. We yeah. want to be here on time. So it's, it's yeah. players are contributing to that. I mean, that getting it. Yeah, done. and uh, Frog and Liege were two of the teams. There was um, some issues last night for some of the teams, especially flying to Dublin, where they couldn't uh, couldn't get a bus or. Uh, some flights were cancelled. I think Frog had a flight cancelled. Liège got stuck in Dublin, so it's really good to see them up here at eight thirty in the morning. Yeah, especially I, I think the last train from Dublin to Limerick was at like nine half nine. Yeah. So if your flight's delayed, if you've got an afternoon flight and that gets delayed, yeah, you're in. You're, in, you're, in, you're, in, you're in getting in at Saturday. Yeah, you're yeah. getting in Saturday morning. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. As far as I'm aware, the two teams we're watching today um, are. Fine, they all got in okay. Um, but yeah, so, um, it's it's nice to see some Vienna setting up to watch Paris and Liege, and Malika setting up to watch uh, fellow Iberians. Yes, yeah, yeah, Iberians is the I word. Yeah, uh, <laughs> not for us to talk about, but yeah, no, not getting they, into that. There, there should be good support all round. Mm. I mean, there are uh, what th good support, for good Quidditch. How many teams are for uh, thirty-two? Thirty-two, give or take. Twenty-four. I can't remember. There, there are a good amount of teams here. There are teams from. I think most teams have another team from their country here. So you know, as long as the scheduling gods were nice, uh, they should be able to support yeah. their fellow, you know, countrymen and and whatnot. Uh -huh. uh, and here to uh, assess what's happening, ref-wise, Steve Cockrum. <laughs> Laying down the law to those who lay down the law. Rating, yeah. I mean, as I said, like, I think, I think, yeah. It's just we're waiting on the paramedics. Sorry if you just tuned in, expecting to see goal after goal. Um, we are waiting on the paramedics for the game to start. So all pitches are, are delayed at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, which will be painful for some team at some point when they have two minutes to turn around and. Yeah, uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it and just hope it's not, not our team that's affected. 
Um, it's nice that for Rua Phoenix, the chases have now given way to allow the beaters to warm up. Yeah, yeah. This 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 extended time is is really helped them. They they were as we said. I think we said earlier they were late late on the pitch to get to get the ball moving, uh, and they've done. They've almost done a training session. They started with you know their basic drills and ramping it up, ramping it up, ramping it up. We've seen Barcelona. They they went really early, playing mm -hmm. some um, some hoop, uh, at the hoops with the balls, and then they've sort of taken the let's chill out, let's relax. Well, so I'm enjoying the drill Louise Roja has got going on. Um, just sort of working on that scrappiness and like getting down mm -hmm. to the ball, getting the catch going, getting used to like rolling around. Yeah, it makes it makes for some fun beta play. Mm. I mean, his knees are not going to thank him tomorrow morning, <laughs> but uh, you know, we're playing on a four G. But it <laughs> does uh, set the tone from what to expect from him. Though. Yes. It's yeah, yeah. Thoroughly exciting to see a player who's willing to be as scrappy as it's clear that they're prepping themselves to be. Yes, and it's something we s we see from certainly the the Spanish and Catalan um, beaters is they, they are a bit physical. They are mm. they do like to get in your face, get that ball out of you, whether you want to give it to them or not. Yeah. Um, and it's clear that they, they work on that, you know? Mm. Absolutely. Whereas I think the well, not beater wise, but certainly from um, from Rua, we see see them doing a lot of ball handling and work, a lot of you know long passing, a lot of fast passing. So we're expecting them to try and zip the ball about to to move this uh, defense. Mm. Really, sort of tire out those um those keepers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, running that around, Bailey, you pass the ball enough, it will get knackered, burn, yep. burn through each and every one. Yep, it will help out for the whoever's playing them second at least. Yes, and I mean, just the more you move it, right, the 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 more likely the defense is to to have a lapse of concentration, or the beaters get distracted, or you know whatever. Mm. I mean, back to your point earlier on, like you can still see Barcelona just not necessarily doing anything to sort of passing but just practicing the tackles which shows yeah. the, the expected contrast in style which is going to be really exciting um, yeah i i expect i expect to see quite a physical yeah. epc all around um finesse versus brute force <laughs> exactly yeah uh, i mean this 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 routine looked really well drilled really yeah. well drilled um <gasps> nice nice little hoop there mm. for the practice um and I think I think I think I'm probably right in saying Germans team probably train more than anybody in Europe. So mm. um, hopefully that that shows in the the I mean mo it mostly shows in accuracy, um, consistency, that 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 sort of area. I mean you can have talent, but if you don't practice, you you can't yeah. can't carry it forward. I think that's one of the things that's made it um, that the game has developed slightly more so. In when we first started, you could join, and inside the first sort of six months, you're a top player yeah. because your natural ability carries you through. But as the game has aged, yeah, so too has the um, the tactical decisions that players need to be making and be aware of. Yeah. yeah, and you need to you need to know you know exactly what you're doing in every situation. You need to yeah. I definitely I definitely joined at an age where we, you know natural athleticism carried you, uh, and it benefited me, but like yeah nowadays you know if you are one of those players you have to grow you have to expand your game if you're joining the sport you need to expose yourself to to as much quidditch as possible really to to really catch yourself up yeah absolutely do you think we could find the um the paramedics and accommodation on site for tomorrow would that be yeah. reasonable yeah i mean <laughs> I suppose they'd have to go and restock. Yeah, they maybe just get them at McDonald's. The maybe they just get them at McDonald's breakfast or something. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I would I wouldn't blame them. That sounds great right yeah. now. But um, yeah, yeah. I think I think maybe uh, in the ref meeting it was failed to mention that everybody else needs to turn up on time as well. <laughs> <laughs> Should have invited them along. Yeah, I mean we're here on time. We got up to to give you our sultry voices. <laughs> <laughs> the smooth, sultry sound of my voice. Yeah, I could really do a cut to a song right now or something, yeah. you know. <laughs> Take some of the flack away. But uh, we have torn through our list of uh, information given to us. We uh, 
have tried to give you some setup to the game. Uh, so yeah, no, um, we haven't really had any time or any um, estimated time for when we're going to start yet, uh, which makes you think it could be a lot longer yet. Yeah. So I presume they'd have to wait for the paramedics to get set up as well. Or maybe they'll just be like, they're here. <laughs> they are down the road. Go. So, oh, go. yeah. I mean, we saw a lot of, uh, we actually saw a lot of action from the paramedics in, in Italy for Div Division 2. A lot of um, heads hitting the floor, which was a huge problem. Um, but you'd hope that with the, um, with the 4G, you at least have a, a known level of softness. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Italy, I imagine it was quite firm ground. Yeah, the, the pitches at Italy were ridiculously hard, but um, it's always just a, a problem with the, the tackling style you see in Quidditch, yeah. where you're, you're bringing a player over your shoulder onto their head. Yeah, um, there's there's not much room for um, controlling that tackle when you've only got the one arm, or when you can only tackle what is relatively quite high. Yeah. Being able to tackle like around the knee area, you can yeah. really give them a chance to sort of cushion their fall. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, so we saw that sort of injury for people being tackled, but we, and then we saw I think like, like at least two dislocated shoulders. Um, you know, so speedy recovery to those. <laughs> so yeah, obviously it's, it's necessary to have the the first aid. And hopefully we see a lot less injuries. I mean, a lot of the injuries came really early at Div Two um, in the first few games. So um, yeah, hopefully we can get through this that incident, especially for our sakes. <laughs> Not sure we can cover another big break, yeah. but uh, yeah. At least we'll have some gameplay to talk about by yeah. that point. <laughs> yeah, with any luck. I believe that's Bill Orridge with... Yeah, no, that's a Bill Orridge throw. So that's Bill Orridge oh, set up to snitch. Snitch, yeah. He's um, took a break for BQC, uh, for those who know the the English game. Um, or the British game, I should say. And, um, yeah, he's back back for Raptors this this week. Much probably Antwerp's uh, sadness. Um, that's going to be a fun game. Yeah, there there are some there are some crackers this afternoon. Uh, for those who for those who are watching this in the future, <laughs> fast forward to that game. <laughs> <laughs> After this game, obviously, I mean, we're not commentating that game, so that's a problem. And yeah. and that's that's the that's a downside. But um, I mean, I get the feeling people will only have to watch this once, which is the nice thing. Yeah, when I you mean, watch this back, you will skip through. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, I was talking with some friends uh, before this, and we're like, "Ah, oh, commentators always sound terrible when you're watching it back." And it's true, but that's because we're talking about it live, and it, we try to create excitement. <laughs> In hindsight or future sight, this is what will or won't happen. Yeah, I mean, if I any, if anybody in the future is listening to us talk about the delay <laughs> for for the the paramedics, I oh, I mean, yeah. you guys are weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or just thorough, just <laughs> yeah, thorough. Yeah, yeah. Just, just there to immerse yourself in the in the atmosphere. Yeah, maybe you're playing Ruhr tomorrow and you really want to see how they warm up, but um, if that's the case, I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> in which case, watch a handball warm up, because like, these one-handed throws and catches are lovely to watch. I'm, I, I was very pleased to see the, um, the EQC gift each team has received, which is a, a, a lovely little thing. Yeah, annoyingly we can't actually see any. Oh, they, Barcelona have one out on the floor, uh, which is why I mention it. But, yeah, uh, yeah. So a lovely little thing. I'm not sure whose idea it was or who spearheaded it, but uh, every team has been gifted with their own happening flag. flag. Yeah, which is a uh, was a lovely surprise yesterday, and everybody was like repping them around the uh, player village we have here, which is also a nice a nice yeah. thing that we've got. Uh, I think you know, it, it really adds an atmosphere to the tournament. Last night was great with all the teams sort of pottering about, um, doing their thing. Everyone on, on everyone on site, every way, everything you need within walking distance. Do we have time to explain the rules of Kirby? <laughs> I, I I feel like we do. <laughs> I feel like we desperately do. Um, yeah, no, it's a uh, it's a fun. Our tech team are uh, smiling and desperately nodding their head so they can join us in a game of Kirby later. <laughs> it's one of those games that you grow up playing and then you don't really play anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, I, you know, I, I think it's very much a British thing with a football. <laughs> <laughs> um, on a curb side, you know, don't have much green space or something. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I think you know that li living in London. Yeah, oh dear. Yeah. The uh, bane of the <laughs> Kirby football in front of a car coming. 
So I mean, we won't go into it just to just to keep you on your toes, but I recommend looking it up. So it's, it's a good fun game. Mm. Yep. Still no movement, unfortunately. Barcelona have decided to flank Phoenix. I think we will approach with both sides. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Just not quite sure what they're doing, but hardly um, assess the pitch and the yeah, just one in one corner, one in the other. The refs having a throw about now, you know, got to keep those arms warm, um, keep the eyes sharp. I don't think there was that many cars in Limerick. Don't have to be a traffic jam. <laughs> Yeah, eight thirty. Just everybody in Limerick is on the one road. <laughs> eight thirty on a Saturday. Oh dear. They're probably just all really excited to get to the pub to watch the Platinum Jubilee. That's definitely something the Irish want to do. Yeah, they want no way to the pub to watch ours, Doug. Oh yeah, no, of course. That means they're not currently watching us, which is a relief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they get they get our better side. Um, I was just gonna look up who else is in this. This group, for some reason, I am on. Yeah, what are your predictions for this group once you find it? We'll, we'll get there. It's keep really scrolling. It's not very easy to find information. Credit Europe keeps scrolling. Let's, uh, let's have a look. Uh, so they have Genk Gargoyles Ooh. and Toulouse. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Like, um, Toulouse is a Phoenix one. classing, uh, like considering Ghent to be one of their rival teams. Okay, yeah, I, I here for the spice. Do you, yeah, uh, I, I mean, I don't know this, but obviously they the countries are quite close. So maybe they, maybe yeah. they do get to play each other, you know, during the normal season um, to benefit of, of being in Europe. Well, um, I, but they say rivals, they. I, I think they're more defining it as um, they played against them last EQC and had a really fun time. Oh, so I'd like yeah. to have yeah. more fun. I mean, it's it's rivals their in friends. Rivals in the Quidditch term. Rivals in the Quidditch rivals. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, normally, normally you kind of hate them, but we'll we'll go with love. <laughs> love is better. Um, yeah. So Toulouse as well. I don't. I, I, I don't think I've been to an EQC where Toulouse have been, so either it's their first one or, you know, they haven't been here for a while, so that, that'll be a, an interesting challenge. I mean, I, I think recent French footage is also, like, <laughs> any, hard French to any French footage is hard to come by. Yeah, yeah. so you, you kind of have that unknown. For whatever reason that may be, tactical yep. or lack of camera. Yeah, the, un the unknown is, uh, I mean, uh, if, uh, I think... If ever listened to Fraser's podcast, they they did a little uh, preamble to to EQC, and uh, there was a lot of well, we don't really know, we don't really know, and and that's true for for most teams, the Germans and uh, the the Brits. Oh, look at this! The ambulance hath arrived, and I think that means we are ready to go. And everyone, please be ready. Hey, yep, they're huddling up, they're doing their chance. Uh, that was quite a Fantastic. unassuming job for the German team. Um, we, <laughs> we quite often see I mean, German teams. They are saying they have a long and short form. Set same. fire or set fire to the sky. I think as far as chants go, both short are, and sweet. Yeah, both are quite short. I mean, uh, I, I like the optimism of saying that's mm. long. Um, I mean, with Rua Phoenix, Barcelona Eagles, I'm ready for the flock off. <laughs> You've been waiting to say that. I have been waiting to say that. All Battle morning. of the birds. Right. I mean, it, it, it's upsetting that we can't just have themed groups. Like, okay, <laughs> and, and anything wolf-based over here, bird-based over here. Yeah, they're, they're, frogs, you have your own group. <laughs> just, just amphibians. Just frogs, yeah. <laughs> what about what about for really? Oh, thank you. For what about for really imaginatively named teams like London Quidditch Club? Do they go City the teams? Yeah. They go into the, the group of really imaginative names. So in the event it's been a while, because it has been a while, we have a new startup procedure where we start from the side of the hoop, so we get less head-on-head -head collisions. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, we see the two two chasers line up at the bludger, going for that quaffle in the centre. The two beats. Both contested runners starting in their own half. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. You get a choice um, based on the coin flip, based on yeah. you know, pitch direction. And you've got the beaters starting on the sideline, going for that bludger where the chasers are starting. Mm. And the rest, well, we don't see many goals from Brunzo. Oh, certainly we haven't in the UK. Um, I don't know what it's like elsewhere. But maybe we'll see. Maybe we'll see. Um, but yeah, you got like the beaters are just racing for their their own bludgers. I mean, the first brooms up in the UK got a double yellow card, <laughs> which was exhilarating. Yeah, and then since it looks very tame for a <laughs> for a brooms up. But um, yeah, we I don't know. It looks like these two are quite uh, quite fast players, but we've seen a sort of shift in some some teams to just go their biggest player and try and box out the ball. Mm. And Paris Frogs are off the mark. Yep. And we're about to start here. So I'll leave you a moment to call the brooms up. And contested Barcelona get control. Oh, oh. just missed that. That would have been lovely. Through the legs. And there's that the shoot. Yeah, move. There's that shot we've been expecting from. Yeah, and it uh, it's, it's so frustrating when you when you have a shot on target, it just moves the hoops. But just it's also very frustrating when, as a defender, you manage to get that player off balance, yeah, out of position, yeah, but they can shoot from anywhere. <laughs> that was not far off. So we are seeing uh, more of a man defense maybe here. Uh, oh, it's only a wing wing defense from Absolutely. Ruh here. Easy drive to get out. No good beat there. Yeah. Beat before yeah. is the call. As the beaters set up yeah, I think for it's a new offense. The lucky to get the ball back there. It looked like he... It's a loose bailer. It does look like a bailer. Yeah, it's... But it... Yeah. It kind of... Like a man bailer. What are we thinking? Yeah, like three on hoops, but ready right. to run off. It looks like three different defenses all out of shape. Yeah. Um, like got a bit more of a proactive. 45s there trying to. Yes, we have beaters trade. Yep. There was Transition happening. Putting that 23 under a lot of pressure. 45s. Roker sort of doing really well to get pass, home. Uh, great shot. Not getting back in time. Yeah. But ha might have created no bludges if they're quick enough. Which Kemmer is. Which they oh, are. He's dunked through the top. Beautiful. Yeah, I really like that play from Ruhr, actually. Number yeah. 45, you really dragged mm. the whole defense behind hoops. Nil pop off. Easy finish for uh, the keeper. And then, but, you know. But Louise just sort of keeping, like, delaying the trade, keeping the beaters busy enough off pitch. Yeah. Doing, getting quite fortunate to avoid being beat but then immediately taking advantage of we concede the goal, but one for one. Yeah, exactly. And and, and sometimes it is fine to trade, especially if yeah. you come out with control. Uh, yeah. You can just set up a, the next defense and, uh, and hopefully win out there. Beat is pressuring high. Pass wide. Looks like we've Thanks had a reset. Oh, ball bounces off the beater there. Fortunate for... for Benefits Oslo. for a Phoenix, so we'll yeah. carry on. <laughs> uh, and Ruhr managed to, to gain... Gain control back there, um, although a wild beat there. Good tackle to strip the ball from number three. It's a much looser defense from Phoenix. Um, Barcelona. Barcelona, yeah. Uh, and here's here's what you're talking about with the transition game. Oh, pressure and control. Yeah. Still no bludgers. You'd expect them to be going. No, there's a bludger off at the halfway. Fully. Oh, he's missed though. Oh no, can't make. Oh. That that bat line's gonna confuse players I think yeah. at some point. But it's a nice easy drive there for, for Kemmer. Mm. Just big, sort of big. managing to shoot over someone who might not have done this, you laces quite tight enough. <laughs> Just sub off. Mm. So yeah, it's been it's actually been a very hectic start to this game. We're at two one to Barcelona. Mm. Uh I think a couple of early missed shots and then straight into the goals. Yeah, I think a, you know, Barcelona looking actually quite strong here. Yeah. Um, like a what a a man defense, a match defense. Looked like the beat has traded there to me. Yeah. But the um, get away of Great it. Great beat. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, better trade. 
but they've gotten away with control of it. Oh, yeah, Luis overstretching them. Luis is really pushing high when he when when they can. Um, but they've just subbed off first. So we see the ball. It looks like everything's going through 45 mm. for uh, um, Tom, Tom, Roller, um, preferring a diamond on offense. Great catch from uh, the the Barcelona beater there to yeah. to win, win the trade, come out, or oh, aggressive. Just for a Phoenix, quite happy there. just to stretch the ball about, no pull that here. man, uh, pull that match defense of, um, pull that match defense apart, and yes. just really stretch them. Yeah, yeah, and that was that was really well worked, mm. S but certainly by the beaters, they managed to basically isolate their two beaters over one side of the pitch and attack down the other wing. About as close to sort of a text box break of a match defense as you'll see, really. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and is the uh, number? It was Tom Roth again. As you say, everything seems to go through through him for Ruhr at the moment. Ah. Ah. Awesome. Wild shot over the top of the hoops there. Keeps it a two-all. The battle in the middle of the. Uh, oh. All beaters currently beat, but Quaffle way off pitch. Who is faster? It was right on the halfway line as well, so. Oh, fantastic. Oh, she, oh, just she missed it, the catch. But it's a no bludgers So hit. unfortunate. Can they take advantage before the Barcelona beat gets back in? Might yes, have cost them control, but earning a goal is yep. worth losing control. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, at the end of the day, the aim is to, to win, and you can only win by scoring hoops. So you just hope on your defence you can get a turnover. So score 3-2 Phoenix. Six minutes in. Yeah, been a been a frenetic start to the game. Um, nice to see it just flowing. Mm. Not many stoppages. Well, that is the style that Eamon goes for. Yeah, no harm, no foul. Yep. Carry on. Uh, let's see, so we got Kemmer, the keeper for Barcelona Heat. Uh, they they they're really Looking like the, the drive. driving force of the team. For that drive. Looking for that. Looking as a keeper to hit that that mm. that keeper's own and have a shot. It it sort of recognizing that. If Rua Phoenix want to sit deep, that's fine. My yeah. shooting lane is open. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, early on maybe you know it's just slightly off, but he'll hope. They'll they'll hope that they can, uh, you know, work that arm in, get a bit more accurate, and then hopefully some of those pull off. But so we're seeing sort of very um, typical defense from from Barcelona here with the uh, sort of. Almost man defense, but oh, and a press called first beat gone. A block from the incoming beat, uh, a block on the incoming beater. So, Where's continuation of no bludges. A reset, oh, second reset, yeah, so second reset. So, I said it earlier with the back line, but it's going to happen with the middle line as well. I'm, I'm almost certain number 77 thought that the harder line there from the football yeah. pitch was um was their halfway line but actually no they've crossed it and and that's a reset Shema so has the, that press showing have. that press oh not quite capitalizing on that press which is a shame despite getting the more advantageous yeah and outcome. Uh, he's they saw the pass they saw the pass mm. um uh, but went side to go alone which uh just sort of ate up all of the options available to them um, we should talk about the uh, the reset actually. It's um, if if you can force the, your opposing team to to bring that quaffle and their whole person across the the midway line. Great pass there from Tom. Shame. So we're seeing actually both both ball carriers, Tom and Kemmer, they're both really trying to attack that keeper zone to to, to drive to drive a player towards them to really bait bait over a beat or a great oh great right take what a hoop. I think a lot of that honestly was made quite early on by Catherine 47 yeah. doing an absolute number on the opposition beaters, the blocks that they've been pulling in, when really there's no right to make a block there. <laughs> and uh, they, they got control out of that as yeah. well. So, uh, got great. control and denied the fast break uh, and denied the setting of defence as the block was deflected back off right. the pitch. Yep. Off the back of the pitch. So yeah, that's 3-3, uh, that's three, three. that ties the game up mm. for us. Um, as we're on the attack here, there are Ball. no bludgers again. Press is called. Yep, they get the turnover. No Out bludgers. Chases. Will they hit the pass? Oh, and that bludge is just gone onto the far pitch, which 
Still He's no bludges here, despite uh, the spill from from Kemmer there. Number one, got the, big. They've got the Posh. size. The oh. players have the size advantage, but like sometimes a pass is just better. Yeah, we have a stoppage here. I wonder if it's um, a contact at all. Oh, it's annoying as well because both times we've seen it twice now on the last this offense and the last one. There was an option at the far post to hit mm. both, and I think it's annoying because I can, I can see them see it. Yeah, and then they decide no, I can go alone, and and sometimes that is the right choice. But I, if there's a free player there, just just make make the cut. It, it's fine backing yourself. Yeah, yeah, you've got to score it. You've, you've got to score it. <laughs> you've got to score it. Because you just passed up maybe a, a, the easiest opportunity you're going to get. Is that LQC with an EQC kit? Yes, it that is. That is a very new kit. Yeah, it looks like the old York kit. Yeah. Uh, sorry, so the stoppage. Pulled that out of nowhere. Yellow card wrap? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a wrap from behind from number 45, Tom Roloff okay. for Ru. Um So we'll see a, we'll a quaffle turn over here. Ru Phoenix started this game looking like they were going to be in control, but have just sort of been unsettled. Yeah, they've, they've, they've been nudged off. They've been by far the more frenetic team. Yeah. Um, I think like Barcelona have just got on the upper hand on some 50 50 yeah. like moments where it's like, is that a deflection? Is it a beat? Does it get there in time? Does the bludger go off pitch quite far? Yeah. Jordi, um, Jordi Angolada showing it how, how to finish there. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to be smaller. You can be a little bit steppier. So there's the first try. Both beaters beat for um, Rua Phoenix. They yeah. get the goal, but they've got no bludgers again. Yeah. Um, and the. the yeah, I mean, the the Barcelona keeper or whoever's on hoops is really buying that attack at the yeah. attack at the keeper zone, and they're stepping up, which creates those really easy shooting opportunities. And we, we talked about it before the game about how oh. how good Germans are typically at their shooting. So you, you, I mean, you are giving them, you know, much higher chances than maybe you would other teams. Mm. So there's no blood again. I wonder we'll see. Uh, yep, number two is realizing the stand high for Barcelona. I think but Tom Rua Phoenix are just going to take their time to sort yeah. of settle down again, regain control of the flow of this game and the momentum. Yes. Because it has been fi um, Barcelona yeah, with the, the upper hand. The pace suits Barcelona. We, yeah. we can see exactly what they're trying to do. They want their beaters to be super aggressive. Yeah. They want they want to drive big with their big players. Mm. It's a faster pace game. Yeah. Rua Phoenix able to wrestle control from Barcelona yeah. and ready to go again. Th this is the pace they want. Yeah, and that is worth using a first reset to do as well. Yeah, um, absolutely. So they can't now cross back over the back line, but they shouldn't need to because they've got control. We might see Barcelona sit a bit deeper. They're still still doing this sort of man pseudo... Oh, great shot from Tom absolutely. there. Absolutely. Might encourage him to... Too easy. Pull a bit further out in the future. Yeah, keep switched off there and just took full advantage. I, I think. I mean, he's yet to sub. Yep. It clearly, exhausting. clearly the star chaser for for uh, um, scoring four or five mm. goals. I mean, w like it has been evident that the momentum and the flow of the game has been in Barcelona's favour, but Rafinha has just been able to have the upper hand on the score sheet, score, yes. score table, yeah. which is what matters. Yep. Yep. They. They've looked unsettled, but I'd say Tom Tom is sinking shot after shot after shot, which which does help a lot. You know, if you have that that go-to player that you mm -hmm. can you can rely upon. Great pass from Kemmer. Pick there. set, pass through. We we'll call it we we'll call it a pass to shoot, which yeah. is where you sort of you aim for a hoop where you know there's a player behind, um, and it works a treat there. Um, Yeah, so let's let's see. They'll get a nice set offense here. Um, we with Luis back on, uh, get really aggressive at that point. Good tackle there to bring him yeah. down. So that's only one bludger for Ruhr on the uh, on the attack now. Then see the game tackle. That's trade happening, back, but it's been no harm, no foul, I guess. Yeah. And it now deciding that's enough and that's a new contact. Sending back to the head. So yeah, um, we see Rua get back into their defense, maybe for the first time in a while. Like They're a lot really higher set. now with yeah. control. So this is going to be, now we're going to see the difference. They're going to match marking with control. 
And this will be an interesting shift for Barcelona, see how their attack changes, especially now Chema is off. Yeah. Fort Not lovely run. Yeah. Lovely reception. Great pass. I think uh, maybe a lack of beat or communication or something, but um, number 24 went for the press when they only had the one bludger. It made easy pass over the top. Yeah. Uh, and if you're not marking tight enough, and there should always be a player free anyway, but yeah, it's just a really easy pass for an open chase of five minutes. So you see, I think Barcelona taking the lead for the first time in this game. That sort of momentum finally undoing some early misses. Yeah. So we got uh, Rua back on. Our, our friend Tom has uh, subbed off, so it's a new look There's chase line for them. No bludgers for either team at the moment. Now control lies with Barcelona. Oh. We're looking for a tra quick transition. Great strip tackle there from 19. Just disrupting the, the throwing movement. Gets the ball free. So no bludger again. See the charge. Barcelona 11 goes through two players. Yep. We see uh, still the, standing. Got to be there. Broken his nose. Though. I think yeah. Something. I mean, we don't There's we don't see it too much in yeah. the UK, but uh, in in the IQA rulebook, you're allowed to charge if you have the ball. <laughs> and we okay. We, we we saw a good good example of that there about four times okay. in a row. Uh, 11 using. It looks like while the charging may have been fine, the uh, the leading point may yes. not have been fine. Yeah, yeah, I think certainly that yeah. last one was definitely an upwards movement with the elbow. Um, you can use the ball, you can use your shoulder, I think, but um, as soon as you get the elbow involved, it's just, just ridiculously dangerous. Down. Yeah. Easy one for the rest there. So uh, as it was, uh, 11 was so caught up in trying to body everybody, they lost the ball by getting beat anyway. One bludger each. Barcelona have the advantage to be collecting control, but Ru has the quaffle. We're just going to take it easy here. Yeah, Probably smart. pressure that. That yep. throwback, not quite as a... Oh, the oh no, Ooh. been called. But that's opened up this defence. Can they take advantage? No. No. <laughs> I like the idea. I think... Uh, no. I, th I, th I think you would have backed yourself there anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it, Worth the some, risk. Some players would. Um, maybe maybe it's 24 got there quicker. Um, Louise got back in with the bludger quicker than they were expecting. But um, oh, great play great, for Louise there. Great catch. Wins and back control. It's a single bludger. Napalm coming. And another catch. Missed goal. Great offload from 19. Seven. Oh, flings a ball. Bit hopeful. Uh, yeah. You got. A, fortunately, when when I you think when you're that just that isolated though, like yeah. something. Yeah. Better uh, than nothing. Yeah, I think uh, when you're that isolated as well, um, he was still trying to drive into a space yeah. where sometimes you just got to get enough space so you can turn your body to make a e much easier throw. Just make that deep throw back. Um, whereas you know they were going to the contact and just trying to fling it out. Um, which is a shame because 19 gave a lovely offload there to, to open up an opportunity. Um, um, number four doing a great job oh, of clearing out, but just misses the beat on the quaffle carry. Another great shot from the Ruhr team here. Mm. This game is shaping up very differently mm. to how, how we were expecting, actually. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about deep defenses, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, stodgy game. And I, I think, I actually think at this point Barcelona can maybe do with it I they it's clear they want to press which would, yeah. would, would, would which it would hamper having all of their you know couple players deep but um, if they're conceding shot after shot after shot after shot you, at some point you I think you uh, maybe need to change it up I think we're a Phoenix mode of Conda starting very deep lulling us into a ah this yeah. is what we expected ah, but we, we are seeing it more now they've um, they've gone to although 17 I mean, without steps control up. they're back into uh, yeah Love the cut there from 29 as 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 um as the player marking the little hoop steps up. Nice make that with cut. a fantastic nice. quick tap back in. And we've I've lost the quaffle. Uh, it's behind the Ruhr sub box. Let's turn over there. Good stint from that uh, Ruhr Ruhr beaten pair. Um, yeah. Obviously, it change up again. I did enjoy the Barcelona pairing with controls. Like as one was under pressure, the other one was like, "I'm just going to get yeah. your quaffle now." Yeah, yeah. Thank you, you very you much. Leave that That's alone. It's unfortunate to miss the beat. The box, the box out, the Barcelona. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah. 
waffle play there. Uh, excellent, actually, excellent just team play. You saw... Um, that discipline and structure just come back in. Yeah. Ru get, the, get the momentum again. Ru and that saw puts them at six all again. Yeah, Back level. Seven, seven, 16 six. minutes in. Seven, seven six. six. It's a nice, in. nice close game. We're about to get the snitch on in in a minute or so. Um, yeah, I mean that was just textbook, textbook a goal. Uh, the Ruhr beaters saw the Barcelona beater isolated, shepherded them to one side of the pitch. Ruhr shift the quaffle over to the other side where the beater isn't, and it's a really easy drive of that hoop. Really easy drive. So we're going to assume Barcelona are calling this timeout. Yes. Yeah, it would. It should be. It should be yeah. there. Down by one. But only one. So yeah. adjust. So yeah, prepping for um, swim game. Yeah, they have control. That's the advantage you want. Yep, they have. I don't think I try to score for the next couple of minutes. I don't think I'm fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, are take the one goal down, but it, keep control. Yeah, it's a funny old game, isn't it? Now we've got the new new snitch on pitch um, rules, but mm. or not snitch on pitch, uh, end game rules. Mm. But um, yeah, I mean, and they 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 are the much more physical well, they've tried to be the more physical team mm. not necessarily being hugely um successful but when it turns into a game without beaters just being bigger helps <laughs> i think Griffin's done very well to like come out to, to step out to the bigger players is like yeah. meet them early yeah. so they have to reach over and make that shot yeah. earlier they go with two players sometimes yeah. and it's really just on barcelona then to to know where that out ball is they can take two players out of the quaffle game make the out ball to, to the player that's not then free because that second player has come to tackle you, they'll score a lot, a lot of hoops. So I suppose we're expecting some much slower offences. Yes. We're expecting much more conservative play with the beaters, maybe napalm from here on out. Yeah. Or 1.5s if you're watching from a way, from a way away. Good tackle there from 92 though. Let's try yeah. and control that. Just pressure that out. Wild shot. We've seen a couple of those. Oh, that's that's gone out of bounds there. Yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. But they're keeping control. We've seen we've seen them try and hit that that middle hoop. Mm. Ru have done it successfully. Uh, but Barcelona have not. Mm. Worthwhile remembering that um, the, there is a difference between a reset line and a boundary line. You touch the boundary line, turnover. You um. But the reset line's very different. Yeah, yeah. And the whole person and the ball needs to cross. So we're staying to a much more open defence. Yeah, we really haven't seen it that 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 close at all. Um, Advantage being called against Barcelona for a throwback after beat, I believe. And a great finish there. Under, right under a lot of pressure there really wasn't options especially when you're gummed up in the middle like that um a lot of people are like, why, why haven't you passed the the player that's free well you've got four players around <laughs> you you're being like dragged down it's really difficult yeah. sometimes to even spot it let alone then yeah. make the pass so Absolutely. yeah to, to actually see the finish and get it done is yeah. is nice from 77. so yes indeed blue card for number 47 throwing back after beat this may be a bludger turnover but I believe they have control. So fine, and uh, it was it was before the goal, so yeah, uh, the player gets to stay on the pitch at least. So, and uh, not ideal after the timeout, having now conceded and lost control. Yes. I don't think that that would have been the trade-off they're after, but they're still within catch to win. Yeah, and I'd say arguably, <laughs> arguably Barcelona's best beater in this game is now going on to seek. So yeah. you lose that advantage as well. It's, it's not been a, a great minute for, for Barcelona here. Yeah. But let's see what they can do. They've it's got a little... Play for. They've got not much time. They've got a little bit of time. Uh, we'll see some teams just go straight. Looking for that transition. Yeah. 17-40. It looks like Ru want to set up next to the Seekers Ruhr, rather than absolutely. next to the Snitch. Uh, either's fine. Yeah. Um, and Barcelona happy to meet them higher. Yeah. Give Bill a comfortable oh no. amount of room. Uh, should mention they just scored, so it brings it back into a one-goal game. Um, Who have you got on the um, chaser-wise for a much more open game without beaters? Well, there's the goal. We'll finish yeah. like that. I was going to have to say Rua. I mean, they've been the more clinical by a long yeah. way. 
Um, you've got you've got a team that's ca comfortable shooting from range. You've got a team that's comfortable crashing in. Yeah, I, both I work. I think yeah, and I, like I look at I look at a Barcelona. I think oh they've got the bigger team. Um, you know you just you just drive oh, down, but with passes like that. Yeah, you don't really want to be doing something like that in such a. But um, they have a. But I mean. The Ruhr team isn't small, and they've got like the they've got yeah. really aggressive. They, they, they want to step into players. They want to try great pass there. Great pass under pressure. The work them. rate of all of their players, but yeah. notably their their uh, female non-binary players, yeah. is incredible. Yeah, well, uh, and that's something we don't see often uh, on these snitch on pitch sort of plays. You just see sort of male chasers mm. who are naturally yeah. fast, just tearing up the pitch without any support. But nineteen. Is it 19? Yeah, 19 got way ahead of the quaffle mm. there, which made the out ball really easy and then just seeing it. And I would on honestly, let's just sort of make the assumption of um, that, that we do in the UK of like how much exposure there is growing up to sports. Like oh, hello. Oh, Barcelona with a potential catch at 100 to 80 at present to Rua Phoenix. It'll this would put them the game. 10 points up. Yeah, they'll just be a minute the game. 15 yeah. in. Malika is it static to see this. It looked good to me. It looked really good to me. Mm. Um, you know, Bill Bill's a good snitch as well. So, mm. so, 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 so it's a very handy, quick mm. quick catch. And especially if they started without control, they finished with control. Yeah. Um, that sort of more open game that they were comfortable with in the in in the earlier uh, in the yeah. earlier ten minutes. Yeah. Really showing that yeah. we're going to have a more open game. Yeah, I snitch mean, on pitch, it will suit us. When 23's been on the pitch for Barcelona, they've been winning, um, which is which <laughs> is all you, what can, you want. All you can do as an individual is just leave just them Just make on. sure your team is doing the best they can when you're on the yeah. pitch, and and I think that's been notable. Catch is, oh, catch no, no good. good for oh. a beta foul potentially. Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure what the foul was. And losing a bludger, and you can't really like volunteer to concede the goal. To get them back on quicker. No, because you're already you're, two down. You're two down. That you is. You can avoid overtime, you will. <laughs> that is a, the worst outcome from that, really. Yeah. Really. Well, yeah. we know what the best outcome is. You catch, you win. But yeah, that. that I would imagine a choice. larger turnover potentially coming as well. Does that happen on a play? Uh, you, you're no better than me. I mean, with a bludger foul, a, a beta foul. Um, yeah. I mean, I'd back, I'd back them to get control anyway. Uh, you, you would, especially with um, the Rua Phoenix player starting off pitch, so has a yeah. bit more time to sort of, like, can't be beat. Yeah, 31 is off broom though, um, and I mean, Rua might just go up and score within four seconds, and they, they're back. You'd be expecting 18 to wait for the throwback, then beat, and well, get control. If I'm Rua, I don't score Yeah, there we go, and then get control, another throwback, now get after the seeker, because he's caught once. Good hustle from 89 there Fantastic to disrupt work the from proper. 18 as well, though. Oh, not 89. So I, I meant uh, not 89. I've got that wrong. Um, the the Barcelona keeper there, real good hustle play to, to just jump that have up. I ruck on the far side of the pitch for Quaffle, yeah. which uh, one of the new potential rule amendments coming in, yes, which yeah. QUK have been using yeah, for a while. Yeah, QUK use a five-second rule, um, and it goes to the t defensive team. Just Ball, trying to keep the game flowing a bit more. Yeah. Also helps commentators. They have more to <laughs> talk about. Yeah, we can focus on the snitch <laughs> game now. And uh, the, uh, what I was going to say is um, this really, I think, actually suits Rua. Like, scoring here means... Or not scoring here means that they get the two the two beat advantage for a bit longer. Fantastic beat from 18. But again, potentially not legal next next year as it yes. bounced off his head. Yeah. Well, not legal this year. Oh, this is a real bad bad spot to ah, be in. The only bludger is off the back of the hoops. They've yep. got complete control I'm not over sure, the bubble. I'm not sure what the ARs are doing. Um, bear in mind there are two there that didn't, didn't follow it. I think they're all watching just, that, just this bit of the front exact here. exact yeah. bubble. Um, they are back up, though, to, to, to beat us. Here comes Catherine, who's had some amazing blocks, but right now needs a beat. Big hit. There's, needs a beat there's one hit. block. There's another. And the beat for control. Blocks it. Three yeah. consecutive beats to keep themselves in the game and hit the seeker. That's some amazing yep. bubble work. Yep. That's that's the, <laughs> the most you that, can do. That, that could have won them the game, to be fair, or stopped yep. them losing yeah, at the very least. I think if uh, Luis Roja had noticed a little bit early, he could have maybe sprinted a little bit harder to get that 1-1 one, one attempt. Yeah. 
That I mean, ruck is still on the f still set up on the yeah. far side of the pit. <laughs> I love it. It's easy for us. Um, it's a trade there, uh, but a good spot there from the uh, Ruhr beater to to recycle. Um, I think it's interesting, right? Because there's a fear factor now. Now that Barcelona know they can catch, yeah, uh, and Ruhr know they can catch, it's like it makes that one opportunity you give them really scary. Quaffle loosened up. Chema with the one arm to take and the goal to put them within one. one. Yep, a little bit of a more favourable situation. But Ruth Phoenix denied the fast break, not to the uh, not Bar onto the keeper. Barcelona have control, but they're they're seeding an opportunity at the snitch here. Risky beat there. Oh, he's dodged it. No receiver oh, for the ball. Bill having to prep for an attack from both sides here. Ooh, Ooh. Nice tickled it. Tickled it. <laughs> oh, oh another tickle. These, um, this new seeker is getting just as close. Yeah, yeah, and they've got a really nice option here. Yeah. If the Barcelona beaters look, they can hold this bubble a little longer. Oh, another block, a fantastic play. block. Awesome. Really delaying that beater this, reply. This he's got to go hard now. He's got to yeah. go hard as a seeker. I think this next catch will be exclusively from the work of Catherine. Oh, good double B there. Um, we've seen two, both teams now uh, not score on their no bludgers. Um, I think they're just trying maybe a few too many passes or, or getting gone. It's hard to hone in on habits of yeah. players during a during the uh, during a snitch game, yeah. but. Catherine has had so many blocks. Yes. Oh, like, mate. Yeah. Throw a fake and see what happens. Then yeah. get the tap beat. I th it's got to be the way forward. Great tackle there behind hoops. But it gets the shot off. And now we're at a tight game. Barcelona's size. <laughs> just doing them well for the past couple of offences. And there's another right. potential catch. Beat denied. Before. Beat before. Beat before. Yeah, really and there's the beat. the beat on the feet. And now they've got the all of the bludgers. 100 all. Ruhr Phoenix finally sort of clocking in that Catherine has an excellent block. Yeah, let's see if Tom can uh, capitalise on this time with uh, with Bill here. He's got some alone time. He's not looked close. Bill's had the measure of him. I think, you know, going strength for strength. He's just such a strong guy, isn't yeah. he? Uh, and that's maybe the, the failure here, whereas the, the Barcelona guys look a little bit more slippery. Yeah, and sort of going around him rather than through him. Yeah. I think we're going to see control change again. So now we've got all three no bludgers out. No bludgers for Barcelona. This is going to be a hoop as a well. A fast transition for Rua Phoenix. Just sort of a series of plays that just nothing going the way of Barcelona there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, we, I mean, we've seen in this But we've this seen it ebb and, f just, ebb and flow. Yeah, literally like one play and, and it all, it all yeah. changes. So And as I say, now yeah. both seekers for Barcelona have caught Bill. Which will give them a lot of hope that they can just give yeah. that one or two opportunities. Like yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Here's the all first the catchy. Oh, close. Both attacking at the same time. Dangerous. This is dangerous. Yep. Oh, there there's the catch though. Now, beaters, were you behaving yourself? <laughs> were was you behaving yourself? The other question. One, one. I don't think he was, but Bill was on his way down. So they might say he was uh, down now. I don't think he was, but... Um, it's just something to look out this for. Is like one, one potential problem we do have with Sam Snitch is like just a bit toppleable. Yes. Um, I but mean, we know Bill will stand strong. Exactly. Like, and, and, and if you're going to get caught, take the catch. Bill was under two, 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 two seeker pressure there. Yeah. Like both of them were going out. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, we said it was dangerous and, and just quickly explain it. Like if, if you go for a snitch catch the, the, and, and it forces the seeker into an, a position they yeah. don't want to be in. It really gives an easy opportunity for the opposition to do so. So yeah. you will see sometimes a team defend yeah. until their beaters are back in. The snitch can only defend from so many ways. Yeah. And if he's if they're having to commit to you, you open up an easy catch from the other direction. Exactly. And that's why it's not surprising that, that Bill yeah. got caught under that pressure. I think that's where, like, sort of just communication from your beast is like, just stand off for a moment, stand off for a moment, and we're good to go. The Especially as the Ruhr beater is not that far away as well. Like if he if he had defended for you know mm. five seconds, yeah. catch is good. good. Wow, what a game! Barcelona for the win, 130 star, 110, 25 minutes on the clock. Yeah, and I mean that a fair length. That goes a huge way to Barcelona improving their their absolutely score on last year.
I think Rua Phoenix are going to be both disappointed given how close the game was, but thrilled that they were competing so vigorously. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, I imagine they, they had the uh, outlook to win this group, and it might be that the group's really tight yeah. all around and they still have a chance, but it is definitely a, a, a tough one to take first game of the day. Who did um, we say was also in their group? Ghent, Ghent and, and Toulouse. Ghent and Toulouse. Yeah. So, I mean, with performances like that, how do we think? So, I mean, again, we don't know anything about Toulouse necessarily. Yeah, I don't really know a huge amount about Ghent either. Um, it's, it's, it sounds like a fairly uh, even group, parity-wise, yeah. from 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 a, from an outsider's perspective. But uh, whether that translates, we'll see. But I think we saw two really good teams there, actually. Two really um, good teams. One really good, close game. Yeah. Yeah. Lots to take away from that. Yeah, really enjoyable game, actually. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, from what the uh, the adjustments where Phoenix were making with and without control, yep. and whether the the drive was available for Chema. Yeah, and they to, uh, like a, a really sticky match defense and hard transitions yeah. from Barcelona. Yeah. We can. So we're, we're being Absolutely. shifted over. So um, thank you for joining us on this this game. Uh, it's been a pleasure to yeah. talk to you about it. It's been a bit of a long one, but uh, we, we got there in the end. Yeah. All right. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Bye. See that there was, there was points where they could have gotten out, out of control, or that, that they could have taken control of that momentum. But especially at the yeah. start, I felt the yeah. start in like the first ten minutes, they really it felt like Rua had control of the game. They were controlling yeah. the pace, the tempo, the, like just how retaining that quaffle really well as well, just to keep them in the game. Whereas Barcelona, every time <laughs> they had the ball, they were more running at Rua, mm -hmm. taking the offense to Rua, making saying you have to defend us, or we're just going to try and run through you. And I think ultimately, like it's uh, how are we doing? Oh, oh so you mi they've missed all of Ed? Um, oh dear, <laughs> oh dear. But I, I, I think credit to, um, oh, uh, I, I think credit to Barcelona though, because as we said, like um, Phoenix allowed Barcelona to come into the game. I think also Barcelona just pressured themselves into the game. I do think there are things with the team. Uh, agreed, agreed there, agreed there. The more disciplined team, the more structured team. Test, test, test. Tony, can you hear me? Come down. Yeah, I think, I think you're both right. Um, they were Hello, the test, team test, team test. The game, right? And they were allowed to because um, we were committed so high up with everything they had. Yeah. Um, but 
what that did do for Ruhr is it meant they created and scored some really lovely set offences. You know, we talked about, you've just talked about the one where they pop it behind, fire everybody behind, pop it back over, easy finish. Uh, they also did a couple where they isolated the uh, the single Barcelona beater onto one side of the pitch and just attacked down the other side. Um, and so, yeah, they just had some, some beautiful hoops, but at the end of the day, there are more than one ways to score. Yeah. And Barcelona were very happy for them to do it as long as they kept control. They got free drives after the fact and it, it kept them in the game. And it was the finishing. It was also the finishing from Ru. I felt like the Ru, whenever they got into contact, they were able to find like niche ways of scoring the ball instead of it being like the, sim like the simple flick of the wrist of, to get it up in. Like in the UK, we don't really see that as much. It's more try and get it in I think we mentioned that earlier on in terms of like the difference between like um like being raised in the UK is like the accessibility of like sport yeah we, we play play, like we play a lot of player on that German side could just pass and catch very well yeah and they were comfortable moving with the ball and it, it just showed that every player could be a threat at any point and had like a working understanding we try to focus right, down a set a beta to get control and Barcelona was very well drilled to say, that's fine, I will drop to hoops, and we're going to press you elsewhere. Yeah. And Rufin just couldn't get that adjustment in time, and just had huge, had, the, the chasers then had to deal with a huge amount of pressure on uh, like on, 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 on the quaffle. Um, I mean, again, like their, their number 24 um, did phenomenally all game. Um, some really clutch catches to make sure the, um, goals went through. Um, I think, is it Catherine? Uh, 47 some like really important blocks and s some of the deflections as well yeah. to just sort of give give their offense more time give their bubble more time exactly and ultimately for for chasers and seekers all you're looking for is just a bit more time yeah. yep exactly exactly the, the more time you buy the more goals you get yeah. yep but I also felt um, when you were watching the game it was very um, like they were looking for it like Barcelona mm. were looking for the moments those little tiny two second windows where they could make that critical play or especially in the beta game you could see it quite heavily and then especially at snitch on pitch it was very much they didn't have control from the majority of snitch on pitch what I, from what I saw and uh, I felt that they took advantage of those key like windows I mean, yeah I, I think part of what they were doing just wasn't very um, it wasn't very flashy. They weren't trying to overwork anything. It was very simple. It was very draw the beaters in, throw back. Draw the beaters in, trade. Get the beaters out of position. Whereas for a Phoenix, it was a bit more nuanced. They were trying to do something. They were trying to do things with an extra step. Yeah. Which, when you come against beaters who are as good as you, that extra step takes time. It takes effort, and you need the rub of the green. And because of what Barcelona were doing was just a bit more simple. Yeah. A bit more basic you're going to get the rub of the green a bit more because you're, you're, you're expecting it to be looser. Yep, yeah, uh, so one final point, I think, because I think they want to get, get set up for the next one. Um, who is your player of the game? Who do you think's really stood out on both squads? Uh, I'll go from a chase point of view. I think uh, for Ruhr, when... Um, was, uh, was it 24? 45? 45 was my player of the so, game, Ed. The, the, the so. Chase for Ruhr, yeah. Yeah, for Ruhr, yeah. yeah. Scored. Majority of the game, yeah, 45. So when they were on the pitch, that was when they were at their best. So, yeah. Uh, they're clearly the player they wanted to play through. Yeah. And they stepped up to that. Very role. much an integral piece yeah. in that offense. Yeah, I'll let, I'll let Doug talk about the beaters. Um, so, I, I think the, um, the Barcelona beater pair of um, uh, 24 and 47 were really good. Um, but I think as much as. Um, at the forefront, um, uh, the 24 was. I think Catherine's blocks and positional play just really went under the radar. Uh, it could really go under the radar easily, and that it, it's not, like their, their contribution needs to be acknowledged. The yeah. amount of time that they got their snitch, uh, got, got, um, the amount of time they had gave their deeper on snitch was crucial, and in the end, yeah, it did win them the game. So mine yeah. would be uh, Catherine. I also thought uh, Cheba played really well. Right, Cheba was the keeper for Barcelona. Yeah, played really well. I thought they, they, they led that offence as well in that whole, as we stated before, that whole counter-attack, trying to get the ball going, forcing themselves into the game. But, oh, they also had the re that really lovely cross ball for the dunk. That was a beautiful goal as well. Absolutely. Great. I think, though, um, that's 
all we've got. I think that's that's time from us, and uh, we'll pass you over to the next game, which is oh, I don't have it to hand. LQC. Oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be a good one. Yeah, LQC kit looks lovely. All right, thank you so much. We'll catch you guys soon.
Hello and welcome back to uh, EQT 2022. We're at Limerick. Um, we're about to go into the game of London uh, uh, London Quidditch Club, not unspeakables, I'm afraid, sorry, <coughs> versus OSIQ uh, Quidditch, the Vikings. I'm Sam Davis and commentating with me is... Lisa Titza. Thank you. How are you looking forward to this game? Have you seen these teams recently playing? Well, recently, yes, the uh, Aussie Vikings are, of course, a Norwegian team, and I play for a different uh, Norwegian team, Antonia I. Um, so, and we just recently had the um, Norwegian Championship, basically. So, oh, it, looks like, it looks like they've just got brooms down. Sorry yes. Oh, false start oh. from false start. Uh, the keeper, Stein Elgertun. He has to, of course, change the keeper headband to somebody else because they need a keeper on field. So, that's the Vikings are playing in white and London playing in black, I believe. Now they have to do another broom up because of the false start. So already an interesting game with it. First card off. Yes, especially since Stein is one of their uh, really fast uh, and strong uh, core players of the team, so they will miss him on pitch. I'm gonna see that that might really. Ooh, Quaffle goes to London. Very very good Number start. That's Ben Malpass, a player that we're going to have to watch throughout the entire of the game. London also has blutter control, so they're very well ahead already. <laughs> They've started on the up front there. London recently coming out of BQC with a second place uh, medal. Uh, ball has been passed over to number nine, who is... Um, is it Seth Waters? Yeah, that's Seth Waters. The one person that I definitely know. <laughs> <laughs> so he's trying to make way towards the goal. Oh, now there's no blutters from Osai Quidditch. And oh, very, very nice pass to the receiver behind the hoops who scores immediately. Who was he's that? Number pass. two? Well, that was a pass from Seb Walters to number 20, who's Ben Malpass, passing it over to number two, who's Matt Croft. Beautiful there. Oh, nice tackle on they Jacob over the there. Side. Oof. Now there's a brooms down. We're waiting for what the call is over here. Probably just a, probably just a turnover of the quaffle because they pushed Jacob out of the boundary with that um, tackle. So tackle there by London. Did you see who it was? Um, by London, I'm not entirely sure. I think it might have been Malpass who put the tackle in. Malpass now having the quaffle possession, coming up into the halfway point. He just crossed the halfway. Has to get off to again to Matt Croft, who's going to be jogging up the pitch. I think London now knowing that they've got a lot of time to play about, having a bit of a pass about. Yeah, and also they're trying to get blutter control because in that medal over there when the tackle happened, uh, Vikings actually managed to get blutter control from London. So I assume that they're also playing on time to get a chance at regaining blutter control. Now there was a beat on uh, Vikings beater, but they remain, they keep blutter control. There was a high press. I think now, we just, what we might see here is not the uh, London being one of the oof. UK teams. Struggling to get, struggling to get be, uh, blood control back uh, yeah. around the hoops because, uh, of course, in the UK we play that you have to touch in at the middle centre. Oh, uh, middle right, hoop. right, right, right. In Europe, we're now adjusting to uh, playing at touching in at all three of the hoops. See, there's so. a no blutter situation now for Vikings actually, and we can see a pass over to Njol, number 69 behind the hoops, who is a very, very young player. I think he's 16 or 19, uh, 16 or 17. Tackled to the ground now by. Number two. That looks like it's being called there by Steve Cochran, the ref, the um, oh. a helpless receiver. He didn't have the ball in the hand, yeah. it looked like, when, um, when a pass was made to him. Well, or I think it was, wasn't it on the ground and he was like reaching for it and then got tackled? Well, anyways, However probably it was, helpless if it's not in his hands, then he's helpless. Yes. 16-year-old, <laughs> number nine, uh, 69. <laughs> No, maybe he's a little older, but he's very young. Uh, he's well actually also, in fact, the brother of uh, number 13 <laughs> on pitch on Vikings, uh, who's the beater. So they are brothers, number 13, one of Ooh. the beaters on pitch. We're seeing a nice hug there from the beaters <laughs> at Vikings. And we're waiting for the call from the referee. Call from the referee. It's a yellow card. Referee's currently having a little bit of a chat about it. Yellow card from Matt Croft, number two on London. Was that Matt Croft? Number two oh, is number two. Oh yeah, no, you are right. Yeah. Sorry, I, I saw my that cheat sheet just so. <laughs> so I saw the speaking captain walking back, and I thought I got confused with the numbers. Bludges are going to be returned to, I believe that's uh, number ninety-nine from Vikings because that was a throw after beat. Oh, sorry, number ninety-nine from um, sorry, uh, mm. that's ja uh, Jacopo from uh, London QC because that was a th throw made after uh, yeah. after the whistle. Okay. So <laughs> Jacob on. Vikings has the quaffle at the moment, but I feel like it should go back to number 69, Njol. Yes. True. And Jacopo Seb right Waters is there. very ready to take him down, and there is a beater also at the ready. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, he's being reset to 
I was going to say terrible. Oh, inbounding. Yeah, okay. Terrible position to be but yes. with Jakob behind you. Yes. Walters in front yes. and uh, also I think Matt Croft as well in front. Yeah, but isn't there even this new rule that at least if there's a um, delayed penalty called, um, then you can request to re get the ball outside of the keeper zone, I think, um, so that you don't end up in these bad positions that you're suddenly caught between two heavy tacklers and a beater, loaded beater. I so, so it's a bit of a nicer, nicer reset when someone's fouled on you. I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But now we still have, um, I believe, London in the lead at the moment. Yes, absolutely. I think the score is, uh, is it 20 nil? We've just lost the score on the... Uh, the score is 20 now, I've just been told. Oh, oh, oh that was a very close uh, from uh, number 28 on Vikings, Marie. She got a nice pass there from Jacob on the other side of the hoops, but yeah. fumbled it a little bit and then wasn't able to finish that goal. Well, London gained their, gained their faces in the way of that one. Yes, absolutely. So close there. Uh, we've absolutely. got the refs, one of the um, assistant refs actually calling it good there. Oh, yeah, okay, I didn't see that. <laughs> well, unfortunately, every other ref called it bad. Yeah. Good okay. attempt, that beat. Number 13, Whoa. making it back to the hoop. Okay, now, now there's bludgers. three bludgers on the side with the Vikings. There's <laughs> Vikings getting the quaffle here in that scramble and looking to run up and score. We have number 37, which is Stein Egerton. There was a pass out to no pass one. Out to no one. Ball Seb goes Walters. out. London's ball. Seb Walters claiming that. I think what we're seeing a lot here is London playing a very passing game, sort of like coming down the pitch, you know, they want to play at their own speed here. They make long passes. Absolutely. They're very, they've got very good uh, throws, very good catches across there. The problem is if Vikings get the hands there, get into a scrap, mm, they're mm. far scrappier. Mm. They are getting these break-offs, but unfortunately just not able to break London when they get back to the hoops. Yeah, absolutely. London seems to have a very good and strong um, uh, defense setup. So Vikings have struggled so far to break through that. Ooh, oh, wow. Was this that, a, it, it was called, it called, called no, no good. good. Dislodged hoop, no good. I think what we're seeing a lot of, though, is we're getting a lot of set plays from London coming yes. in. They're playing it how they want. On the off with Vikings, it is very much uh, they're reactive taking it. It's more. reactive. Yes. It's, uh, mm -hmm. They're taking their opportunities and going for it. They're getting very close. You know, uh, by no means is this going to be an easy game by every, any uh, stretch of the imagination here. I think we're currently, I'm not entirely sure of the exact time, but I'd imagine we're around the six-minute mark. And we've only seen two goals, but we've seen many attempts. Yes. So but that was actually a very strong shot. But did you actually see who, <laughs> who scored there on the... Uh, or uh, well, who well, it was attempted. Seb Walters made in making the attempt. It yeah. would have gone straight through if only it didn't clip the hoop and knock Yeah, it, yeah, knock that is, off. of course, a reoccurring problem in our sports that the hoops tend to fall apart. We now have Bex Lowe guarding on a bagel. Ooh, oh, another... So the same type of attempt on uh, onto London's hoops now. Exactly the same thing happens. Uh, the hoop gets clipped, uh, falls off, so... Uh, nice attempt there. That's the problem. You We're seeing so many times, you know, yeah. I think it's going to happen, especially when you're taking long shots. You're just yes. going to skim the rim. Oh, absolutely. Would be nice if we just, like, duct tape those <laughs> duct tape hoops get to bit, the... <laughs> get a bit of cement. It'll be fine. <laughs> Seb Walters receiving the pass there from number two, uh, Matt Croft. Now they're over the halfway line, so yes. once you pass the halfway line, of course, you cannot. Uh, you can go back once for one reset. If you go back again, that's going to be a turnover. Mm -hmm. uh, number 17, they're fighting out with the Bludgers, trying to trying to make some type of play. But we've got uh, the Vikings having a very strong. So the London beat they're going really deep. Ooh, nice. Oh, why, 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 why. Nice, nice play. Oh, yes. Ooh. Oof, da, number da. 17, they're receiving a kick from number nine from the Vikings. That was number yes. nine. Yes, Hella. From so Hella. Yeah, so uh, she actually is a football player. So her oh, kicks are uh, pretty, pretty good. And there's a stoppage now, probably very just nice. to retrieve the ball. I'm not sure if it was a broom sound. It sounded like a broom sound. Like but, but nobody, nobody uh, only we heard it. Only we heard yeah. it. <laughs> Maybe we're what's more. The, what's the score it? now? If we don't the have score the score. The score is currently 20 nil, I believe, at the moment. I can tell that just because I've got very good eyes on that. Oh uh, yeah. That side of I, the, I really side. should have brought my glasses. <laughs> There we go. And okay, we've got so Vikings going we got the play. Vikings again, and they really struggle to go through that London almost wall that they're building up here. London is playing but a sort of two to. Ooh, ooh, wow! That was a good goal there, though. I would that say was, that was that the was number thirty-seven. Time. Was that number, number thirty-seven? Yeah, yeah Stein Elgatun. He is very known for his very precise, very good long shots. So it's very good. But I think that was the first time we've actually seen the Vikings as of yet actually set up yes. a set up an attack yes, that they absolutely. wanted to play. Mm, um, mm, you know, mm. they didn't use any of the players around them, but no. they set the attack up. Yes. Which I think spooked London a bit. They yeah. spread out. They open up that yeah. middle. 
perfect shot in. We see we a oh have... heavy tackle from that's, from uh, the London that's beater. Ba that's Bateman. He's uh, just stepped down from uh, the presidency of Widget UK. Oh, okay. And coming in straight in to put in a big hit on uh, number 17 from um, yes, uh, Hel Helena. Hella. Hella. Yeah. Mm. I'll get that right eventually. Yeah, well, you were very close. <laughs> Seb Waters so going he's going a for a pass. Oh, passing out to no reset. one there. And Njol is running up here on the off chance that he could get that pass, but he gets tapped out by number... Is oh, that 17? That's uh, Wiener, uh, Werner. From London. So good recovery there. Also kept very safely there by Chaser, who is that 16? I do apologize. That's Werner. Mm. Not Werner. Was that Dak Ramsey? Oh, yeah. Declan Ramsey. Yeah. So he kept the ball safe there. Very good control. Now looking for an opportunity here, London making a pass to Deck, who is driving in, making a pass out again. London doing a very good hook there oh, on the beaters. Oh, and to London, get yes, back. London, oh, trying to get control back. But now there's no bludgers at the Vikings hoops, but they they're go. returning. Oh, oh, that was. There goes Isla. Oof, they did. Oof, 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 she oof. did throw that <laughs> back there. It did look like that was a. <laughs> yeah, that was I a mean, bit risque. But yeah, um, but I mean, in this case, it clearly was a ha no harm, no foul. There was no one from her team who could receive that ball, and Vikings just got the ball, so that would be very typical no harm no foul better not do it though because yeah. if it goes out too far then uh, of course you could there. you could delay their counter attack and so uh Statement nice there. if people don't do it the, uh, <laughs> pushing off there i think they just avoided a beat from number 30. bateman now taking the beat from number 30. Ooh, yeah, goal that there. was a goal it looks like i was think that's an equalizer now bringing the yeah. score up to 20 all dislodged hoop i believe now there's oh, mm, a, oh I think there's I some some uh, some mischief happening on the bludgers, I think. Yes, so what I think happened is that Merlin number thirteen, so they had already bludger control, there was a bludger on the ground and he was trying to make a beat attempt on one of the London players. It's being interpreted as sort of giving not making a valid beat guarding. attempt though, and then it would be guarding of the third bludger. So it comes really down to what the call uh, is here. We got London waving from the subs box there. Not quite, quite sure who they're pointing at, but they're pointing at someone. <laughs> Having a good day, I think. You know, yeah, so it's just nice, as I say, you know, teams from London, t you know, the UK teams and all that. We're just quite nice that we've come here and it's sunny. We don't get a lot of, uh, lot of sun. I mean, I have to say, this is very good weather for me as well. <laughs> sure. uh, now, while we've got a little bit of brooms down, um, I've got a little bit of a um, little bit of a fun fact here. So, oh, it's a goal is good. They have said that the bludger interference did not, did not. Um, Negate yeah. the goal, and it looks like they are turning the bludgers over. Oh, okay. But they're saying that it wasn't interfering with the goal itself. No, I think it was after the goal. But um, yeah, that was a really um, sad play there from uh, beater number thirteen, Merlin, to give up that bludger control that they clearly had in that moment with the third bludger on the ground, and then to. Uh, Try to make a beat especially. attempt, but uh, well, you never didn't wanted. Especially in this setup now, we've yep. got. Ba oh no, Bateman's falling back. Normally, as I've seen before, you'd have Bateman who would uh, just roll the ball back and charge in at their yeah, last one. Yeah. You've got Seb Walters. Their legs on Seb. They're just going to go straight through that. If there's no blood in front of them, they're not going to worry. They're you know no. they're going to pump straight through. They've got oh two Carling number 44 on the um, far left of Seb. Good passing option there. Passing over, beaters have been taken out, and then they go. Ooh, there was so Seb Waters just taking the tackle there, staying upright and just making that goal very, very strong. Um, there, you really, you really need to have a beater on him to to prevent those situations. If you can't, just take him down immediately. Exactly, he's like a weasel. If you get your hands <laughs> to him, like you can, he's still articulate. <laughs> I love the place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a, that was a great uh, attempt at trying to dodge uh, an more incoming dangerous. beat there, Sometimes but it just looked a little bit silly. <laughs> Sometimes there. I think it's just it's it's more prudent. Take the beat, get back to your hoops, get back on your feet. Oh! Amazing shot there by Stein Egerton again. Again, as I said, he's really known They've for that it. within within uh, within uh, Norway for these types of shots. But there may you be a why are they calling it him? One of the assistant refs can't get no good. They're bringing in the call ref to have a chat as well, see if they've. Spotted anything? Oh, it looked very good from up from up, from, from up here. <laughs> it was a mighty fine throw. It's flat as anything. You could get a ruler on that, I think. Measure out. Uh, well, I don't know. Do we do um, yards or kilometers? Uh, yards or meters? Uh, difficult to remember. I'm not sure. Well, he was somewhere between midline and keeper zone, I would say. So. Oh. Um, but yeah. Well, well, we've got a bit of a bit of a lull there. Yeah. What I would say is. Um, 
So one of the one of the questions teams are asked before this, you know, get people in. Oh, it's the score is currently thirty all. Time is uh, coming up to half past nine or nine. <laughs> like that. I you? think we're a bit late for half past nine. Yeah. But no. But one of the questions that were asked for the teams was, um, how old is the how old is the the, uh, the team? Now London, like most teams, have answered how old their team is. It's mm. four years old. Vikings have answered that it's between eighteen and thirty-two years old. Ah, because of the players. Well, then Young clearly has to be 18. I thought he was a little bit younger. But so he's 18, I think not he has 16. Yeah, but he started playing. Which reminds me of a fun fact. So number um, so number 37, Stein Egerton on, on Vikings, who has the really hard shots. Uh, he, in fact, started playing when he was 15. He's 24 now, so he has been playing oh, for nine years. Nine years. Started when he was 15. Oh so yeah. really uh, people to watch out for. <laughs> got to watch out for a lot of them. Um, I'm just going to make a quick amendment. The score so is 20-30 yeah. in favor of London. Uh, that goal was gold no good. Um, we're not quite sure why that one was no good. Assistant ref probably saw it, had a better angle at it. and um I think it might have been claimed a dislodged hoop again. Yeah, okay. Which I think the, the dislodged hoop might become the uh, keeper of the tournament, I think. <laughs> Both uh, Bateman and number 17, um, Werner, are getting in close there. Oh, beautiful pass off <laughs> yes. to number 10, who is um, Matteo. I'm going to, no, so is that number 10? Yes, yeah, number 10, yeah, yeah. Mateo. Number I'm going to say Mateo, rhyming with potato, <laughs> um, just because that's how I'll remember it now. Yeah, so that was uh, Jacob overcommitting on the tackle uh, on the ball driver. Good pass, the beater couldn't come quickly enough. Oh, so there was a, a beat attempt here. There, but number eight has reclaimed it for yes. the Vikings. Vikings running it straight in now. Number 69, the 18-year-old pumping it through. Oh, oh, that was not good. It was not so good. close, so close. He lost it. Now he plays over to Stein, who's going to run in. Oh, one of his Beautiful. really strong shots. I'm starting to And think again, yeah. question if it went through or not. I'm starting to think that the uh, the assistant ref who's closest to the uh, the London box is Maybe trying to be a bit of a contrarian. Every time a goal is called good, they'll call it bad. Every time a goal <laughs> is called bad, they'll call it good. <laughs> we'll Maybe it it's just opposite day. Maybe. See that we we do use the same. Signals. Okay, goal is called good, so the score should be 30, 40. 30, 40. But uh, yeah, okay. And we are currently, I believe, at just coming up to 11 minutes of game time, and the snitch means that uh, the snitch will be on pitch in five minutes. No, six minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes. Snitch will be on pitch. Seven minutes. The se uh, Seekers will be on pitch. We are still, well, we're still a very close game. Both yes. teams can win yes, it. Yes, yes, it's yes, going to yes, come down to the Snitch game. I can tell you from experience, I would not like to be seeking against uh, London. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've not seen the Vikings seek before. I mean, I think it always depends a little bit on the Snitch as well, right? You have the runners. Ooh, oh, big long pass big, there. Yeah, reset used from London over there. Uh, passing over to number 20, who is... That's the wrong page. <laughs> ben Mal pass. Yeah. Oh. So Vikings had bludger control until a second ago, but London making a good play. Oh, that great was a interception. Cut in, but number 37 from Vikings. That good was a good interception, but London will, of course, get the ball because uh, Vic Vikings got it to go out of bounds. Mal pass I again. think the Vikings are a little confused that they're still in defense. Uh, oh, Jacob! Oh, oh, wow! That was finish. amazing. So, who was that? That was Tua Carling. She was yeah. um, when she used to uh, captain uh, Manchester. Uh, Ma uh, Manchester. She Manchester really stores. kept her cool there. She really kept Keeping her cool there. That was amazing. Brilliant player. She was once my captain. Yeah. Uh, okay. Brilliant, yeah. Brilliant player. Thing like that. She's one of these people, very quiet. She, uh, you know, she'll be on the pitch. She'll get right where she needs to be. Yes, she did. Just like that. Seb Absolutely. Walters, trusting completely that a player was where they needed to be. I don't even think Seb looked where they were passing. They yes. just knew, put it there. It's going to go. Ooh, nice block there by the by the Viking speeder, which will hopefully lead to uh, Vikings getting control over there. But it's a little bit unclear. Oof. Is that Jakob? Oh, okay. So all behind the London hoops, there's a lot of beater game going on. No bludgers, therefore, for London in offense. Now Sepp is just trying to run it through, and the Vikings have don't want to have any of it. But Sepp just one v four them Again, all by himself. When you got four players all having hands on a single chaser trying to put it in there, and they're still going for it, and they still manage to get a goal like that, you know, he's still on his feet. He's not scrambling for it. You know you need to get your beaters on that. Yes, player. yes, absolutely. You're but gonna have to cut now. We're now. But so the beaters were busy behind the opponents' hoops, so. London <laughs> trapping them there, which you know, good oh yeah. play on them. Yes, fair, fair yes, play on absolutely, them. Absolutely, absolutely. I think at this point, if I was uh, if I was Vikings, I'd very much um, 
what you want to be keeping my beat is midfield, sort of like having the fights happening above the, uh, yeah. the hoop line, really. Yeah. Uh, the I assume they're trying to get Lusher control, though. So now there was a beat. Both Viking speeders are beat. There was a pass behind the hoops that would have been nice if it wasn't a fumble. Now she's almost getting pushed over the... Ooh! Ooh good attempt there. Ooh, oh, it looks like that was... No. We're... Ooh. They're having a little bit of a chat. Some are saying good, some are saying bad. There, I must admit. So every, I feel like every goal that lo that Vikings is having to have scoring, they have to, they have to discuss if it was good or not. They yeah. really should be fixing it's that middle uh, hoop. <laughs> it's breaking the flow for Vikings, I think. Unfortunately, you know, yeah, it, uh, yeah. you know, you can go from a situation where you're all pumped up, you know, like, oh, we got a goal, let's get back yes, into it. Absolutely. And all of a sudden, like you know, even if it's called good, you still, you've still like lost that momentum. Yes, now. which is a little bit almost how I feel <laughs> now. I, I really like the new snitch procedure, but it is a little bit if the team that's down catches the snitch, and then you just play to a set score. It's a little bit anticlimactic because you're scoring a goal. And then you don't want to celebrate too soon, you know, if it's the last goal that brings you the win. But you never know, maybe there was like a call or whatever, so you're waiting just for the ref. Are they calling it good or not? And and then it's kind of just over. Um, I, so I, I, I fully agree with uh, what you said. I think it's um, it's good from a gameplay point of view. Yeah, absolutely. But from like a mental and sort of like excitement point. It looks yes. like the goal has been called no good for some reason. <laughs> um, I think there might have been a call that there was a beat before a pass. There. I'm not entirely sure. Well, I must admit there. London really sort of like played back into um, a style that we see in the UK where, you know, where we assume that the hoops aren't a safe zone. They pushed, they pushed the uh, Vikings out very much there. Mm. Vikings being a team where they seem to like to be a bit scrappier than London do. London, you know, they'll keep on their feet, they'll push for it if they can. They like to use their feet and sort of like be fast. Vikings showing that they can be quite a scrappy team there. When London pushed them out there and going into the passing game, though they've got good shooters, mm. that would have been a good point for them to really crush on the hoops there. Yeah, yeah. There absolutely. was not a lot of defense no, right on the hoops. No, they were marking no, them out. True. In a bit of a diamond. So Isla's going for a um, big sort of like run behind the hoops there. I don't think Vikings have noticed her there. Oh no, we've got eyes on her from number eight, beater from Vikings, looking at Isla. Which is um, Wilde. Wilder. With the ball right now, the beater, yes. And uh, Malpass with the quaffle. London, they are cleaning up the chaser line. The Vikings beater cannot do anything against uh, the I beater. Think that's uh, Jacopo going in, number 99. <laughs> yes. So we have looking for a score. Oh, there was a good beater here oh, on that the. Was a good pass Good back save, back. good beat here. And London still keeps the ball. Amazing play. Right. Seb, Number can Seb drive it in as he has done multiple times before? Oh, not quite there. Isla getting, the hands, uh, getting her hands to them. Ooh, can she do it? Wow, there was... Oh, that was really impressive. She Honor really had... Ganga up there. Who, who was that? That was Isla Adams. She really showed that she had the mind, her mindset to I am going to score this goal and you cannot stop me. That was really, really good. Oh, that that was, was such a missed opportunity. Oh, he was actually beat. There was so beat. he was actually beat. That was a very good positioning there by beater number 99 from that was London. That is Jacopo. Jacopo. Yes. That so was he beautiful teamwork, I must say, from Vikings there. Yes. That, was, that was very good teamwork, a very fast play. It's just a case of Jacopo, one of the best beat, in my opinion, one of the best beaters in Europe, to be honest. You know, you're not going to outpace him a lot of the time. I've got to point out on that last run, though, because I think we did miss it. Bexlow, who currently <laughs> has the quaffle there, kept that quaffle in play for the team, despite being under immense pressure. Yes, just yes, a little she did back very, back. very well. Yes, absolutely. Declan just not getting the uh, hands to the ball. That I think that might be out of I'm bounds. I'm very confused by the boundaries, to be honest. So the the lighter line is the is the, the soft. Yeah. yeah, is the first boundary. Yes. So okay. the lighter mm -hmm. lining on this pitch yes. is um, is what's been drawn out for Quidditch today. Yes. Um, yes. There are dar a bits of like uh, brighter whites, which um, they are uh, permanent football pitches. Yes. Think. Yes. Um, an easy way to remember the boundaries is if it goes past the goal ref, then it's probably out of bounds. <laughs> oh! That was a perfectly on point shot. But it looks like, again, it's going to be a dislodged hoop, unfortunately. Oh, but Steve, I think they might be deciding that the hoops coming off if the goal, ball goes through them yeah. isn't so much of a problem. It should be. It should be. If the ball goes through, it should still be a goal. But, of course, if the if the goal, uh, if the hoop dislodges uh, sort of in the moment that it is hit and the ball doesn't go through, which can happen, of course, it then... Is. then uh, it does happen. It does happen. Yes. It's annoying, but it does happen. But I think at this point we're seeing it come off so often that we got we got to think: is it faulty hoops now? Yeah, we I have. I believe the score is left at 70-40 in favour of London. So now Ashara, is it number four? Oh no, uh, so no. number 64. Is Ashara Declan has to Ramsey. go and run for the ball. There, the Vikings really had a good uh, opportunity there to put pressure on the chasers because the 
They had no uh, bludgers there. Good reset by Merlin actually Matt winning Maitland the ball. Just but causing a no bludgers, but, but it looks like the chasers have backed London, away. Yeah, London was not with her full chaser lineup there and didn't dare to run in, it seems. They it wanted like to they, wait. They wanted, they wanted to, get to wait. Pass, I yes, believe, they there. wanted to wait for their full. Oh, and now we got a. Pass over Ooh, Isla, Isla coming off. And wow. then jumping over. The, I don't know. Is there something to trip over there? But coming off hoops there, not getting the ball. It's a reset there to keeper number 37, I think, for um, for Vikings. Who's that then? Stein. That's Stein. Stein. Yeah. Oh, I like Stein. <laughs> thing. They're good to drink from. <laughs> right. Coming up the pitch. So he is moving. He's moving slowly, but, you know, ambling up the pitch. Yeah, a bit I of time mean. To rest. We currently, it's 17, 17, 12. It's around the 17 minute mark. So, oh, Snitch is There he pitch. comes for it. What? What? The, he took the shot Ooh. on the hoop when the hoop just like dislodged by its own or was dislodged by a London player standing too close or what happened there? The hoop this just fell off for no reason whatsoever. Well, we've got two hoops dislodged yes. now as well. This is going to be okay. this is going to be a decision. Is it going to be a reset back I'm, to the player who threw I'm, a reset on I'm the I'm very or? curious what Steve will <coughs> decide here. Of course, I think Steve having more power than most refs are, I think, being yes. the, uh, the ref coordinator here. So Steve can, I think, in theory, sort of like, uh, you know, decide on policy. Can't we, can't we get some duct tape on pitch and pitch, like, duct tape down tape these... The car, I, like <laughs> <laughs> tape down these hoops to... I, I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> so uh, the snitch is on pitch now. So we've got about a minute before the Seekers are going to be released on. Uh, the snitch, I'm not entirely sure who that is. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, do you think they're more of a runner or more of of uh, physically keeping the secrets away. They could be could be a bit of both, I don't to be honest. An assumption on body type, but no, yeah. <laughs> they, look like, they look like a big, they look like a fairly sort of like, um, hefty, you know, big sort of like, muscly person. They could be, uh, you know, they could be a runner. They could be, as you say, like, I reckon they're probably going to be a lot of palm offs. Yeah. Um, as I say, I wouldn't want to be going against um, what's going on, London on the secret game, because again, they're incredibly good seekers. I'm trying to remember who it is they've currently got coming on as a seeker. I just have to check in with you because I don't hear you on my headsets anymore, so I'm not sure if you're like dropped out somehow. Have I dropped out of it? I don't know. I don't hear you on my headset anymore, oh, at least. So you hear? Okay. Well, uh, hopefully it's good. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you dropped out of mine, at least. Uh, right. uh, be careful that I've just got an electric shock off the uh, oh. barrier. Oh. Okay. Very right, good. So in uh, case the mic sort of like hit a uh, thing. So there was a call. We missed that. Sorry, I'm, I'm very sorry about that. We missed what was happening. Oh, it's probably just a timeout. It looks like one of the teams called a timeout over here. Um, probably wanting to talk about the tactics that they want to go, go for in the snitch on pitch game because we're about we're eight seconds from the seekers being released, and the score is 40 to 70 for London. And uh, both teams will want to will want to talk about what they want to do with a snitch. Are they, is the team that's under, I mean, they clearly want to go for the catch and then probably draw even. Um, uh, or do or do the Vikings decide we want to really get that was one last goal and, and defend the seeker first and then, then go for it. So that's the type of decisions you want to make. And London, of course, uh, wants to also <coughs> make sure that they really get the upper hand on the seeker. If I see correctly on pitch, it looks like London also has bludger control, which is of course extremely important when when you are uh, entering a swim game, any snitch game, but especially when swim is swim uh, a snitch when it matters. So basically a snitch that, that will end the game in your favor. If you snatch, uh, catch the snitch, you will win. And then it's especially important to have bludger control because you want to control the area around uh, the snitch. So, uh, and London has the control here. Woof! <laughs> Sorry, something. Um, we're getting electrical shots, <laughs> shocks here from from the equipment. They're trying to take out the commentators. <laughs> I don't hear you on my headset. I don't know why. But it's. Uh, I don't know if anyone can tell us if if you dropped out of only my headset or if you dropped out. Do, but do you have me on your? Well, anyways, we should be focusing on the, on the game. <laughs> so, oh, he caught the snitch already! Oh wow! So he, I was just gonna say he's very tall. He has to reach. It looks like he will probably um, quick, uh, 
do a quite quick uh, catch and <laughs> we're 20 seconds <laughs> in to see Chris on pitch. I feel a little bit sorry for, for the snitch, not, not for not lasting long. That, that's just how it goes when you fight against uh, good seekers. Well, so but if you have tall... It's not about the time that you're doing it, it's about the enjoyment that you uh, <laughs> have. You know, uh, time, yeah. time not <laughs> no, but uh, I think it's, it must be very, very difficult to defend against people who are very tall and have very, very long arms because they can kind of just like grab over you and get it, which is kind of what he had. He, he, he just like grabbed around the, the defensive stance of the seeker uh, snitch and, and just got it that was really really impressive uh, and in addition we can still also see from the setup london was of course really controlling the area around the snitch and the snitch catch was called good so the final score will be 100 to 44 london qc i'm glad you did the maths on that <laughs> too quick for me I'm oh and london oh, that rowing boat, eh? doing a rowing boat <laughs> hopefully the vikings don't take that as a long ship so we'll see how that goes. So that was uh, just uh, in case of like that wasn't heard earlier. That was uh, Jonathan Purvis who caught the snitch number seven for uh, London. Fantastic player. Again, it's uh, as I say, it's one of those players that they're going to they're be quick. They're going to get. Quick. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You have to you have to be very careful. You have to put your beaters on the seeker there. Um, but of course, that's very difficult when they're controlling the area like they did. So. Good, good on London. Well played. Uh, looks maybe like they used that uh, time out there to, <laughs> to, to really. This is what we do, and then they did it. Oh, they, yeah, they're very surgical in their approach. I think it's, it's very much, you know, they play very, very clean, sort of like very, uh, the, you know, A and B Quidditch. It's no, you know, no running around the pitch and seeing how long you're going to be. It's either the game, the players on or the players not on for them. I'm still very glad that we had a quite uh, close matchup here. I mean, it, it was uh, in range basically for for also the team that was under. So it's always, I think, more enjoyable to watch a game that's that's a little bit close uh, totally than if yep. it's just a blowout. No, I mean both. You know, at the end of that, what was that? That was 70-40 before the snitch. Yeah. Like at any point, any team could have brought that back. A snitch catch could have ended that with a uh, much more positive result. For, Absolutely. Uh, for Vikings, or it could, you know, it's a case of sort of like even when the snitches tied up with you know the bludgers are tied up with the snitch the game can change so quickly oh yeah seeing, you know the shots from the uh from the vikings if only the uh, if only the hoops weren't uh, so flexible, yeah right, yeah i that mean it would have been a very different game for them. yes absolutely absolutely so i really hope they <laughs> do something about those hoops so yeah. oh i'm actually seeing They've got on, the tape on the hoops. on the <laughs> on the left set of hoops a volunteer is actually <laughs> MVP duct, MVP duct taping the left set of the hoops. We, we go, can see right here. See if we can get sort of like. No, a, we can't. We got, we got, <laughs> uh, uh, Anamik is clubs. running. We go. No, that is definitely not no, the no, right. There yeah, go. there we go. We're oh, getting duct tape. Woo. Woo! Shout out to the volunteer who is coming with the duct tape for our rescue. MVP. I hope that they do it on both sets of the hoops. Well, that uh, all, uh, all five sets of hoops, I hope. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. especially, though, I mean, it didn't really, I mean, I had a match just before, and I don't think we had to really deal with uh, this lodged hoops True. so I think much. One of the issues is this is the only pitch that is, um, it's facing, so it's um, uh, sort of like east to west mm. uh, at the moment. And I think the wind at the moment is coming east to west. Yeah. So uh, all the other pitches facing sort of like north and south. Uh, you get the sun in your face if you're running the wrong way, unfortunately. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you're not going to get the wind like we've seen here. Or, you know, maybe they're just a little bit loose today. But yeah, we get the volunteer who is fixing up also now the right side of the hoops. I'm super, super glad that that is happening. <coughs> True. We might see uh, we might see more goals going in today. Or more, uh, more goals that are counted going in today now. <laughs> see who goes. I'm a little bit concerned because I am also now seeing, you might see them in the distance on the camera, I'm not quite sure. My team has started, uh, started warming up. Oh I yeah. don't think I've got a game, but I'm, I've now got to sort of like think about it if I do. I think <laughs> I might just go for a run, you know, it's one of those things to see. You know, yeah. So going forward from this then, how, how <coughs> are you feeling sort of like these two teams? Sort of like, have you seen uh, games from the first um, section today? Do you think these teams that we've just seen are going to be the benchmark going forward? Or is this, uh, is this an outlier, two teams who are very <coughs> close, very good, high playing teams? I think it would just be so difficult to, to say. I, I know that I struggled with it and our team struggled with any types of predictions. And I actually talked to the um, or team, uh, the organizers of EQC yesterday, and they were like, it was impossible. Like, it was so difficult to know <laughs> where teams rank because we all just didn't play. Exactly. Two years <laughs> old, not seeing anything. Yes, yes. So, so it's, it's just so, I mean, especially for us in Norway, we don't, we don't get to play against so many other teams. It's really only three teams who are like approximately equally strong. So we 
don't have like a good internal reference of course if, if now if you're playing in if you're london for example and you get to play you know at bqc and you get to play i don't know 20 plus teams you i feel like you have a much better reference for okay within 20 teams we placed here and there versus if we have only three strong teams which are approximately equally good then it's very difficult to know how, how you're doing so uh, and I think this is not only a problem for us but for for a lot of teams um, I was watching the the German uh, championship that just amazingly enough uh, happened last weekend I'm I'm amazed by how they can play like a full-on tournament and I then like, go to <laughs> it, uh, yeah they're not they're not uh, soft players no no and and I mean even there I was watching the matches and I you know I was watching the final and I was like I don't know. I think we could play on that level. Who knows? Like it's so I mean, difficult, <laughs> you know. I mean, you're from a very old team, so sort of like uh, anti and UI. Yes. I can never <laughs> say a uh, rumple dunk, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I can never sort of like say it properly. But you're from a very old team. I think it's one of those things where, you know, having two years off and whatnot, you're coming back and you're seeing everyone and sort of like it's realizing you you hear a lot of things like overseas. You know, like uh, we hear yes. a lot of things about pirates, ti uh, pirates, titans, and, mm, like mm, and all that. Mm. You know about how great they are and they're very, very amazing teams and whatnot. But then when you're actually putting yourself up against them and you think actually these stories are people hearing you know about teams from your own country are they hearing it's 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 the same the same um feeling that you know they're gonna have sort of like coming against you yep. like oh actually we're a bit worried about this team that we've yes. known for a long time yes, and, yes. you know so i think going into it there's a lot of nerves but i think yes. we're gonna see a lot of very good plays coming yes, on. Yes. but i think my assessment or our assessment for how our team has maybe been doing uh, uh has been now in the first match been somewhat confirmed we how did your first match go? yeah we, we did really really well we uh ended oh so Darmstadt caught the snitch, but they were way below. So I think the final score was something maybe like mm, 70 to 200 for us. So, so a good game for you. Yeah, it was a very, very good game. We, we scored like five, six goals immediately on counters. So our beaters did really, really great. They are controlling the game really a lot. And um, but so we were we were, of course, a little bit worried. Like you, you need to take every match seriously. If you don't take the match seriously, you're going to play badly. You're not in the right mind space. And and so we were hoping that we were better, but you know you you shouldn't assume. You have to take the match seriously. But then we played like we were hoping that that we would do, and sort of like a somewhat objective assessment. But you just you just can't know because because of this break that we had because we. We, we have also, like any other team, like so many teams did amazing actually recruiting in the last two years. I'm amazed by how many players at, are at EQC who have never been at EQC. There's, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting hearts here from my teammates <laughs> because <laughs> commentating, very cute. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so. Well, I, I fully agree, you know, two <laughs> years, you know, two years where you've not seen people, where you've got a lot of people who Potentially before the two years, you know, like you you come to sort of like a EQC and you'd see reasonably the same team with one or two different people sort of like yeah. on it and you know what yeah, how yeah, people yeah. play and all that. But with that break, you know, we're coming back and we're seeing players that you know we haven't seen for a long time and we're like, are you still what you used to be? Are you better yeah. now? Is that? Yeah. But then as you say, fresh faces coming in. I mean, I've uh, well, I've been to the last three EQCs and like this is the first time I've ever played at one. Yeah. Like that. And it's it's in, you know it, it's it's. Um, it's intimidating a lot of the time. I mean, as you say, like very old players, very teams and whatnot, you see it and so like, I mean, you just have to measure yourself up and go for it. Uh, are there any yeah. uh, games that you're really looking forward to seeing? Like, coming out? I mean, any any games ever that Titans play, that Antwerp play, I'm very excited also about Mito Unicorns because, for example, they have this thing that I think they have only four or five players that have ever been to EQC and the rest of the roster is completely new. And I'm, I'm very excited for Unicorns. Yeah, I'm... Yeah, they they have a really good rep, but they couldn't bring anyone there. <laughs> uh, everyone there always have these problems with that they maybe can't get a visa and that everything is very very expensive for them. So, but I don't know. I feel like they always have these problems, and then they're still playing of the most amazing games, and they are also such amazing, just nice people. And like on pitch, they will literally come to the referee if the referee I was refereeing on pitch one time. Uh, and there was a score, uh, a goal scored, and we said it was no good. And they came up to us and were like, "No, actually, it was like it was scored on them." And they came to the ref team and were like, "I know you call it no good, but it was actually good, and you should give it to the opponent team." And I think they were playing Antwerp in like the semi-finals or something. So the sportsman's sportsmanship from them is absolutely amazing. They they are really really somebody to like look up to, and uh, I aspire to be. <laughs>
like them. They're they're amazing people. So any 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 of that, um, totally. But I think I think in general we just have to watch out. There will be a lot of teams that <laughs> were being asked. <laughs> <laughs> we can stop. <laughs> cool. We've we finally been given the green light to stop. <laughs> so eventually, you're going to be seeing so like the next game's coming up. Um, thank you for watching. I've been um, Sam Davis, and with me has been Lisa Tietze. <laughs> we can now get go get food. <laughs> thank you so much. Richard Russell with a little wood If I could teach this shit, man, really wish I could So listen up closely, I'll give you a push I raise hell every time my lyrics pop up I take shots at the haters with a sawed off Yo, you better keep me up or I'll nod off One shot, all I got, I will not stop I'm one yeah. of a kind, there ain't no one like me So I'll define, it's a real damn thing Don't be wasting any time, I got somewhere to be Always on the grind, yeah, you know me Hold the crown, will be mine, you can call me king a matter of time for you all love me Find me at my prime right where I wanna be I'm one of a kind, there ain't no one like me yeah. It's not enough, man, I want more I keep on doing business, open every single door I wanna be the richest, so you see me up on Forbes I can do this through my music, that's how I even the score I can take it slow, man, I want it bad Every single day, I'll be carving out a path Like a girl with a tat on her back, all black I'ma take her right back to my pad where it's at I don't ever slack off, so you better Back off, I'm about to blast off, that's to the NASA. Everybody stand up, put your fucking hands up, that's the demand, yeah. Welcome to the brand, bro. No, I'm not cautious. I take risks, and no, you can't stop this. I'm too slick. She knows that she wants it, so come quick, baby. Know that I'm on it. I don't quit. I'm on a kind, there ain't no one like me. So I define it's a real damn thing. Don't be wasting any time, I got somewhere to be. Always on the grind, yeah, you know me. Hold the crown, will be mine, you can call me king. A matter of time, for you all love me? Find me at my prime, right where I wanna be. I'm one of a kind, there ain't no one like me. I'm one of a kind, there ain't no one like me. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong, I won't stop to the top, so you better back off and get lost I'ma stay loud, stay proud, never running out, never heading south I'll be spreading out, call it word of mouth, can't put me down, I'll be getting out You can never douse, not what I'm about, have your fucking cloud It be raining now, I keep making sound, go another round, bitch I'm legend bound Can't stop me now Fuck with me, a slow burn like a disease. Just tell me that I can and show you things that you couldn't believe. Just tell me that I can. 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 Cause I just wanna hear it out your mouth, yeah Give me tool, it's a tool that I use To go ahead and run my fucking mouth, yeah I take shots
shots, I take loss, I make shots, I miss lots. That's how you get big boss, you get yachts, you swing locks and pop off a big shot. I ain't done chasing, got big dreams, bigger things, impatient. Who's at the top think they need replacement? Who's at the top think I'm gonna erase that face it? I don't give up quick, I don't give up shit, I won't give up this. Cause I know that I want it, know that I'm on it, I'll make it, I promise. You don't wanna fuck with me. A slow burn like a disease. Just tell me that I can and show you things that you couldn't believe. Just tell me that. Be on a tour bus, sitting in the back with a cold one. We all got dreams, know you got some. Yeah, we all got dreams, know you got some. I remember sitting in the back seat, tapping my feet to the beat that was blasting. Had this dream and it seemed like a passion. I'ma make it happen, I'ma take action. Yeah, ain't nobody gonna tell me different. Nah, since day one I've been winning. Yeah, focused on myself from the beginning. Didn't need nobody else's opinions. Yeah, I strapped up young, did my research. Man, I worked so hard till my feet hurt. Man, I worked so hard writing each word. Cause I wanna go far, I'm a dreamer. Yeah, yeah. One life, only one life. Yeah. So do it just right, do it just right, yeah Keep your head high, keep your head high, yeah Yeah, you gotta keep your head high Don't let it go by, let it go by, yeah Don't you let it go by, yeah When everybody's thinking that you won't make it Forget them, yeah When everybody's thinking that you're just faking Forget them, yeah When everybody's thinking that you're just chasing Forget them, yeah When everybody out here is just hating Get him. I want my own tour bus So I could be on tour, bro With everyone who loves us Been with us on the come up I won't ever give up I will not forgive us So we gon' make it big, bro And we gon' make it quick, yeah I just wanna live it up I just wanna get it, bro I could never get enough No, I could never get enough I'm ready for the come up I'm ready for the love, yeah. I will never give up. No, I will never give up. Yeah, and all I know, and all I know, yeah, it's where to go, it's where to go, yeah. That's to the top, that's to the top, yeah. And I won't stop, and I won't stop, yeah. If you know me, you won't see me slowing. I'll be growing and owning the whole thing. I'll be closing and toasting, you know me. Never give up the motto, I'm coaching, yeah. You gotta stay focused, you know this, and show them exactly what you made of. Keep going, you're chosen to be someone better in motion, not coasting. And you know it, don't blow it, yeah. Live with no regrets and no debts to the life Cause you only get the one time Better live it right, better live your life Better live it right, better live your life yeah. One life, only one life, yeah So do it just right, do it just right, yeah Keep your head high, keep your head high, yeah Don't let it go by, let it go by, yeah Yeah When everybody thinking that you won't make it Forget them, yeah when everybody's thinking that you're just faking, forget them, yeah. When everybody's thinking that you're just chasing, forget them, yeah. When everybody out here is just hating, forget them, forget them. I want my own tour bus, so I could be on tour, bro. With everyone who loves us, been with us on the come up. I won't ever give up, I will not forgive us. So we gon' make it big, bro. And we gon' make it quick, yeah I just wanna live it up I just wanna get it, bro I could never get enough No, I could never get enough I'm 
ready for the come up. I'm ready for the love, yeah. I will never give up. No, I will never give up. I'm just fucking lit, man. I'm just fucking lit. Drink a bottle of this shit, man. Bottle of this shit. I'm about to write a hit, man. About to write a hit. No, I'm never gonna quit, man. Never gonna quit. I just took another hit, man. Took another hit. I'm about to lose my shit, man. About to lose my shit. Does she have a fucking wrist, man? Yeah, she needs that shit. Better get her out real quick, man. Get her out real quick. Present or the future? Are you a drinker or a boozer? Are you a giver or a user? Are you a winner or a loser? Yeah. And I said that I would never back down. And I said that I would never back down. And I said that I would never back down. I swore that I would never fucking back down. And welcome back to the live stream. Here we have the Olympians Quidditch Club on the left hand side, on the right hand side? Right hand side. And on our left hand side we have the? Paris Frog Quidditch. I am Gio Farino, joined by the lovely? Célija Chevrolier. Oh, I'm definitely going to butcher that one today. <laughs> I'm very sorry. So, Zeline, is there any interesting facts you have about the frogs? Uh, the, well, first off, you say the frog and not the frogs because it's phonetic. It's not. It's not a bunch of individuals. It's just a team, so the frog. And um, the frog are used to. Uh, in the of French frogs. Yeah, just behind the Titans all the time. And uh, they're a very good team. Um, they've always qualified for HSC, and uh, we really have to watch out for that team. That's yeah. So, but so if they're the frog, the frogs. But if aren't the players then the frogs because it's multiple players? Is that not how that works? No, no, it's just the frog. Okay, just Sorry. the frog. Okay, it makes no sense. It's it does. Frog. <laughs> and then we have Josh Armitage getting the quaffle. Who's any interesting players to look out for on the frog? On the frog. Uh, so there's Lenny, the the chaser that was running for the quaffle. Lenny Vincent. Um, That's number twenty-five for you at no, home. Yep, number twenty-five. 
There's also uh, Cedric Chilon, who's the national team coach. He's not playing right now, he's a beta, just on the side. And Cedric is number 97. So you said Cedric is going to be beating. I have seen Cedric play the green headband, the black headband, the white headband, but not yeah. seeking yet. Do you think Cedric might seek at some point? He has. Oh. He has in the past, and he's a good seeker. He's very physical, uh, very powerful. And, and I believe that's Cedric on the far side with the yeah. bludger. He's playing right now with Amel, number 88, I think. Oh. Yeah, Amel the tool. Beautiful beat from Cedric on James Grattan there. So far, the uh, game's feeling each other out. Steve Busson with the quaffle there. Being pressured by number 92, Gabby of the Olympians. Well, still with bloody control. They appear to... Have they still got it? Oh, no, they've, oh, they, yep, they've still got it. Cedric is con getting the bludger behind the hoops. Still nil-nil. yet. Do you think this could be one of those famous swim games? Oh, I hope so. Obviously, we have the with the Olympians, and in France there is also a Olympians. Olympia, who are playing right now on pitch two against uh, Wellbos of London. First, yep. It's going to be a very interesting game as well. Oh, uh, that is what oh, a beautiful catch! What an incredible catch there by Lenny! Our full stretch top of the quaffle, highest point, and maintained control of the broom. That isn't an easy skill. It's not an easy skill, especially for him. He's used to <laughs> sleeping a lot on the pitch. To be fair, I have played against Lenny once, I think, and most of the time he was on the floor. <laughs> Very known for that. So let's see what the Olympians can do to counter that goal. Into control, Josh is running along the back line, managed to deflect a bludger without really understanding. And but Cedric there cleans up. Mm. Oli Barker, big hit, going for that loose quaffle on Steve Busson. Where's that legal? Eamon is just maybe saying, calm down a little bit. Okay. Tension. You slammed it. Into, uh, that's it. That's it, Oli. Oh. Yellow card. Olympians number 34. Illegal charge. So that was an illegal charge there yeah. from Oli Barker yeah. and Steve Busson. That I think that could be a big loss for the Olympians. If Oli gets a double yellow and an ejection, that one minute from his time won't be their biggest concern. Oli Barker is probably one of the best tacklers in UK Quidditch. Okay. And definitely an incredible driver and a big key piece for this Olympians team this weekend. So obviously we don't want to get that double yellow for them. And that's a goal from number 69, 66, sorry, mm. Valentin Travis. That was, yeah. Really nice goal from the keeper. Ball was in the hands and just took the opportunity to drive again against a team who were missing one of their predominant tacklers. So what kind of defense is the French team running here? Um, it seems like they're defending. It's a hook defense. And um, yeah, with Lenny kind of loose around the, the hoops, it's probably going for a tackle if Valentin is not able to tackle someone to the ground. Do you have a special name for this kind of hoop defense in France? Um, we don't really. We mostly use the term hoop defense. And um, the frog tend to use it a bit more than they used to. And uh, most of the French team are well, using that type of defense a bit more than the last. I have seen its popularity rise in European Quidditch yeah. recently, uh, no most notably at D2 back in Italy recently. There was a most teams decided this hoop defense was the optimal strategy. Okay. It looks like the Olympians are having a semi-tough time trying to break it down though. Yeah. Typically again, the Olympians are a fairly drive heavy team with Josh Armitage number 29 and Oli Barker number 34 using their big body frames to drive over. But this hoop defense obviously decides to stop that. Okay, there's a goal but there seems to have been a um, foul on Amel. Probably a dive, a beater, a dive to um, get the bludger from the floor. And the goal, whether it was called good or not, from Matthew Fenton there, it was a nice work round. Oli Barker and Josh Armitage running a switch behind the hoops, taking up that pre taking up the tackle. Oli Barker unfloating it to Matthew Fenton, who shot it right through the middle hoop. But let's see if it's called good. 
think Eamon is just explaining the outcome. Again, still a slow start. Well, the other player came to the line for Diving into contact because he's forced them to change their line to avoid running into the And that's the call there. It's a card for Zach McDonald. Card, Olympians number 55, diving into contact. Uh, so you've Are the Olympians known for uh, receiving a lot of cars? Uh, not to my knowledge, <laughs> I, <laughs> but I do believe the English teams this uh, this week uh, will face the challenge of the European refs. Okay. To put it very nice and diplomatically <laughs> there. Um, so although Eamon is obviously a UK ref, it's um, predominantly, it appears to be a mostly European AR team. To my knowledge, I can see Lauren Cockrum on the far side there. Very good AR, head ref as well. How is the, the, the refing difference in the UK than in Europe? From my experience, I'm going to be nicer, um, there seems to be a lot more stop and start in European Quidditch. Okay. Most notably at EQC D2. There was uh, some fun finagling of the schedule to try and make games happen. Whether they were the same slot or not wasn't important. Um, but yeah, the stop and start nature of um, European qu European ref style can kind of maybe potentially take the UK teams a little bit by storm if they haven't played in Europe before. The majority of this Olympians team haven't played in Europe. Yes, so it's, it's quite a young team. It's a fairly young team. They were formed, I believe, the year before COVID. So the 2019-2020 season. Nope, sorry, apologies. I'll take that back. It was the 2018-2019 season. They played the um, EQT of the 1920 season, which is our European qualifying tournament to get us into EQC. And they came sixth, getting the spot for D2. Obviously, regrettably, COVID happened. No Quidditch could happen. And the uh, UK governing body decided that we would do the placements based off of our most recent community fixture in October. We had eight spaces for the Olymp community teams and two allotted for the university teams. And Olympians finished in the top five. Therefore, they get one of the five spaces for D1. So, for, for a lot of the players, it's their first experience in QC. Yep. A lot of the players here also probably haven't played even European Quidditch. Though a notable name who definitely has is Mariana Paroquin, mm -hmm. beta of the Olympians and Team Spain. Very good beta seeker there. But that was a nice goal, I believe. Do you know who scored? Because I was I was waffling on <laughs> about European U UK Quidditch. I wasn't paying so much attention. I'm sorry. I I appreciate that was that because I was so captivating. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, hopefully you at home saw it, and can tweet in your photos because the best fan photos win a prize. Please use the hashtag EQC. 2022, those are numbers, so EQC 2022D1. That's a nice ball from Valentin Travis. I was going to ask who scored that one. There we go. <laughs> Pay attention. Keeper of the Fiery Frog. Very good player as well. Very good player. Do, Very do, do they play for the national team? Um, no, I don't think so. Maybe they were um, among the team, among the. the the few players who were selected but did not get to play and he's actually played in the UK in England I can't remember which team mm. very nice I think mm. considering that the head cap the captain of the French team Cedric is there they might might go hey Cedric do you see that goals I yeah. scored <laughs> I played really well maybe we should uh, include me in the squad yeah but it's a bit too late for that the selection has been made there's always World Cup you're right oh what a lovely dodge and then an incredible tackle there by Oli Barker to stop. The thing is though, if they didn't dodge, they might have got beat. But maybe that's well, maybe you just want to go for the shot there, especially if you're that close to hoop. Right. Have a bit of confidence, especially a player of um, their quality. Lenny should have, I, I would have probably had a shot there. I'd have missed, but I'd have the confidence to take the shots. He might have missed as well. <laughs> Well, he, he but, he, a lot. but he was standing up, so he wasn't on the ground. Yeah. 
There we have a boundary call. The boundary lines, I don't want to say look a bit confusing, but I have, yeah, we have a few issues seeing what is the actual midline. It's actually the ones with the um, horizontal lines. That took me way too long to remember horizontal and vertical <laughs> differences. <laughs> it's also the lines that are um, a bit slightly faded compared to the other lines that are on the pitch. Yep, you can see they're the ones on the, oh, I was going to say the right hand side of the pitch, but we've moved the camera. So we were discussing the weather here, as British people love to talk about the weather. And you, you said it was cold. It's cold when it's a bit windy. Third bludger interaction, double bludger turnover, and a quaffle turnover. <laughs> but it's very nice weather. Yeah, that's very true. It's a very nice morning. Probably going to rain in the afternoon, though. That double bludger turnover meant the Olympians get the quaffle at the keep line. Instead of going for the drive into one bludger and no supporting chasers, they decided to come back and play a bit more slow. Quite good, smart, heads up Quidditch there. So as a as a French player, how would you break down this French hoop defence? You should ask the Titans for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess you would have to um, bring in slightly more physical players who are able to um, run straight through the hoops and uh, well, put their hands in the hoop <laughs> with the quaffle. Or try try a, try a, a long shot. It's very difficult because they're very experienced players and they they know what they're doing. Defense here, they've been doing this for a long time. Is this a, is this a staple of French Quidditch? This kind of hoop defense. I know you said that they haven't normally run it. It's becoming a staple of uh, Paris Frog, mm -hmm. and uh, it's I think becoming a staple of French Quidditch as well. It's quite. It seems to be quite an easy defense to train in regards to that. All they have to do is say you're going to mark this hoop you're going to mark this hoop and someone else marks this other hoop and then uh then i guess we win right that seems to be the case so far as the frog are winning 4-1 yeah. <laughs> yeah there's also um a few different ways to do it so the frog i think they like to uh, stick to the hoops mm -hmm. stay close to them and you also have a few teams who like to uh, move around it a bit more and just cover the, the zone of the hoop and not the hoop itself it seems to be working for the frog team. They have some really nice passing offences though. Just moving that ball around the hoops. Just causing the Olympians to just turn their heads and turn their heads and turn their heads. And then hopefully all it takes is one little drive. And loses the quaffle. Lenny slipping? No, <laughs> never. Never, never happened. Good thing Lenny can't hear us. But <laughs> He wouldn't understand. He wouldn't understand. He doesn't speak English. Oh, so that's fine. Right. <laughs> we can <laughs> say what we want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the Olympians bring back on Josh Armitage, trying that very physical driving line. We haven't really been able to talk much about the Olympians' defense because of they've just been mostly quick counters. Uh, but what has been like all that? I don't want to make ref calls, but I believe there may be a ref call being made by a head ref team here. Yeah, probably contact from behind. Maybe. One one could potentially foresee this. Let's have a look. See what our head ref, Eamon, decides. I was going to say, but what was quite nice there, that the... Paris number 66, illegal rap on the mark. Man on your back on broom on the mark. What was quite nice there that the Frogs did was beating out the receivers, not allowing, um, what with control, they beat out the receivers and forced um, the... Yellow card, Paris Frog number 66, illegal rap. There we are, confirmation, illegal rap. So as I was saying, the Paris Frog were using their control to have one beater up top while the other beater was going out and beating the defensive there. Oh, and they double teams there. Beautiful beater play. Mm. They have a lot of uh, very experienced beaters in Paris Frog. They've been playing for years, so they obviously know what they're doing. And we've got Theo, Theo, number 10 from Frog here, who's just made Team France. Oh, congratulations, so Theo. Yeah, we're going to see him at European Games. Back here? Yes, In about seven it. weeks. 
Obviously, we haven't got the live stream schedule yet, but hopefully we get to see Teo doing incredible work on the live stream yet again, this time in a uh, blue kit. Yes, blue kits. I don't know what the kit's going to look like, but mostly blue, obviously. Are they changing the kit? I don't think so. Okay. I do like the French kit. It's quite a nice kit. Uh, there we go. No bludgers on offensive support. Josh Armitage managed to block, but goal is good. Goal is good with the block. Very nice work there from Josh Armitage and brings the game back down to 4-2. Quite an important goal, really, there. The game seems to be getting away from the Olympian there and Frog were kind of starting to run away with it. So hopefully that should stay the ship, calm things down. We are at roughly around 15 minutes. What would you do now for the Seeker game with the, with the new rules? I say new rules, they've been around for a while, we haven't had Quidditch for a while. Yeah. We haven't had the the oh, here we, oh, sorry opportunity to play with the new rules a lot. Um, I don't. I think they're going to have Lenny uh, as a seeker. Okay. For the frog, um, very quick player, very fast seeker, and up he catches the quaffle. That was unlucky there from. Uh, oh. That was unlucky there from the Olympians. They had the quick counter break on and decided to go for the pass, as opposed to driving it through, which is. Mm fairly uncharacteristic of the Olympians in my opinion. They typically like a lot of big driving Quidditch. They have a lot of tall physical players, especially love that middle hoop dunk. You love to see it. But now we can talk about the Olympians defense. They've got this 2-2 defense we call it in the Euro in, in the Europe in England where we have two defenders up high, two chasers with two beaters with them and two on the hoops. And they transition that into a lovely offense, taking the loose quaffle from Lenny, scooping it, driving it, and taking the goal. And with a bit of hesitation uh, in front of the hoops, which is was a bit weird because Ali was on the floor. I think Ali was on the floor because of a lovely pick that was set yep. by the Olympians so player. What they try to do is have, instead of having two where you can pass it off, maybe they've not been... Maybe they've not been too confident in their passing and catching mm -hmm. game so far, so they thought, let me just go back to Route 1 Quidditch, drive it through, put it through the hoop. But obviously the Frog are incredible tacklers, as we've seen today, so they didn't really fancy driving into a big physical tackler. I see. Wait, yeah, because usually you have, uh, when you're on a fast break like that, you have one player who goes straight for the hoops and another one who's uh, open for a pass. So do you not normally see that style of quote-unquote quick break in French Quidditch? We see that a lot with the Titans and uh, the Frogs as well, especially Is against... Frogs? Sorry, I had oh, sorry, oh, the Frog! Oh, okay. <laughs> with the Frog, um, especially against uh, teams that are not as strong as they are, because it's um, obviously easier for them to then uh, make a fast break. Um, so we see that quite a lot. With, uh, I've experienced it <laughs> against the Titans. It's and not fun, is it? It's not. No, it's not very no. pleasant. It's, it's semi scary. I know it's not the game that we have right here, but it's semi a little bit scary when you have Albert running at you, oh, Mikel, yeah. and then Mikel on the shoulder, yeah. and oh, many yeah. other incredible names who I can't remember because I do not have their score sheet in front of me. So you also have um, Audrey, who's a very good player for the Titans. I thought we can just list anyone on the roster. So if you guys oh at yeah, home, pull right. up your roster on another tab and just go through the list and they're going to be a good player. To be the, was it the seven-time French champion, eight-time French champion? No. Have they stopped counting in France? We have. We have stopped counting. <laughs> <laughs> and sadly, we're not going to see the Titans on the stream today, I think. I think they're not scheduled here. I think they've been on the stream enough over the years. So. Yeah, you're right. Ooh. So we have a delay penalty call, but that was a really nice catch from a deflection um, that I think Cedric has come on in a white headband. There we go. We, oh did, yep. we did say this earlier. We just went for the yellow headband now. Um, Cedric took a shot. It was a nice deflection. Josh Armitage collected it on the edge of their keeper zone. Though they are not the keeper, they collected it, drove and tried to drive um, with a very good tackle attempt. They held them off and they went with that reverse shoot from the behind hoop style goal. But let's see what the call is. Do you think it's going to be called good or I think disgusting? Was it delayed penalty against the Olympians though? Yeah, so it's probably not going to be called good. I hope for them it's going to be, it's going to be good, but 
Oh, no, that's blue card. Uh, 11 number, Olympians number 55, one second. Uh, Olympians number 55, uh, illegal interaction. Blue card, Olympians number 55, illegal interaction. It's very nice that we have this camera here and uh, the referee directly speaking to us. Yeah. And live stream. Oh, and oh, we're, on, oh, we're on the camera as well. Thanks, Tony. So we've got a little GoPro set up that we can see. <laughs> it says Tony's behind us laughing. I do like the fact that we can hear Eamon as well through our headset so that when Eamon's talking, we can obviously stop. Let's see if that score, the score on the scoreboard appears to say 5 3 with a beta in the sin bin for Olympians. This could be big. Control should be with Frog here, which is what you want coming into the Central Pitch game. Especially when, if Olympians catch, which they can do, they win. Yes, they can, and it's very, um, yeah, it's going to be a very tricky situation for them with a beta in the penalty box, because, as you said, the snitch is on pitch and the seekers go are going to go after him in a minute. Mm and uh, the score is still 50-30 for the frog so both teams can win if they catch the snitch the frog so here are in no rush to score ideally no. you want to score maybe 59 seconds of that one minute card because if you score it will negate the card and the player the beta will be allowed back on pitch yeah definitely don't want that beta to come back into play now you can see here paris sorry uh, paris Paris Frog, is it? Paris Frog. Paris Frog. Paris Frog. <laughs> We're going to keep saying that every time. Oh. That was a really nice fake there Went from through. from um, Cedric and then little pop through. And it's Lenny, who's the seeker for Paris Frog. Oh, Lenny tried to stutter step that block there <laughs> from Diane, but uh, oh, very nice catch. Is that something that's trained very heavily in France? The attempting to trade and catch their bludger while you're obviously trying to hit them? Yep, it's part of the French team um, training in Paris. Because obviously um, Cedric is the coach of um, the Paris Frog as well uh, with Harry. And mm -hmm. he's also the French team coach. So the beaters there and every player here in Paris Frog is uh, being trained at a national team level. Nice. That was really nice there for Cedric. Cedric pushed off um, number 35 of the Olympians. Uh, Manon Benavis, who then obviously forced the inbound for uh, for Frog, who then will push it off themselves. And it was a nice little exchange in the Koffel game. I don't think the Koffel game much is going to change. Neither team is wanting the other to really score, especially um, Olympians here. If Olympians miss a chance, Frogs could go 6-3, which is obviously very dangerous here. Control is with the frog still by Olympian score which Olympians is important just scored and I think frog are going to take their time in offense especially since they've got bludger control to um, give time for their seeker to try and catch oh and it's a catch to be fair Lenny was on the floor but right back up <laughs> it doesn't matter if your seeker is on the floor as long as the snitch is not let's see if that catch was good I completely missed it I just saw Lenny rolling back up with the snitch sock in his hand. Yeah, I saw it and it looked uh, good. It looked clean. I was going to commentate on the chaser play. There was a nice little bit of passing. You were saying they were trying to go slow. I think they were going a bit fast. And then um, one of the frog players was going to lose the broom and just had a little slap pass back, which was very good awareness. Again, this high level training coming from Cedric. Yeah. Which one was it? Um, it was the one. I'm not, I can't see their number here on the far side, on the right hand side, in the keeper. Yamina. Zone. Yamina. Yeah. Very good heads up play there. <laughs> I think it's important if you're watching at home, if you're not sure what kind of player you are, is to have a look at how everyone else plays. Pick someone who plays like you or their same kind of similar shape and then just try and emulate what they do. See what they do well, see what they do bad. Obviously what they do bad, don't copy. What they do well, do copy. And the catch is good and it's a victory for Parry Frog. I think that is a... So it's 90 to 40. 90 to 40, that is a... Very close game, I think, for both teams. Yeah, both teams close. can be happy for this. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Olympians not as much with the loss, but they had some good Quidditch. I think there's a lot that they can take away from that game. Maybe they need to work on breaking down Baylor. 
or we call it Baylor, this hoop yeah, defense from Baylor University out in the States. It's not one that we typically see at high level Quidditch in the UK. Okay. Uh, it's, we haven't seen it for many years. It's quite a quick and easy strategy to teach new players. So it's very common at the lower level of the games. But at high level, obviously, they've played a bit longer. They can have these higher concept strategies of this two aggressive point chase. The 2-2. Two -two. The 2-2, two -two. <laughs> yep. There we are. Um, yeah, Olympians seem in good spirits at least, and they should be. Again, this is their first one out here. They should be taking away positives. Making it here is a good positive full stop. It's not easy in the, in the English game. There's quite a lot of um, competitive teams, and to make D1 is an achievement in itself. But I'm sure they'll use this loss to spur themselves into victory later in the day. They should be proud of their game, and um, yeah, it's a, it's a good start of the day. Well, obviously it's a loss, but it was also a good game, and we not going to see them again on the live stream, I think. Not today, at least. Not today. Not today. Potentially maybe tomorrow. tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Hopefully, maybe one of these in the final. Ooh. Do you think they, one of them could make it to the final? Do you think the frog could make the final? Maybe. We never know. Maybe, maybe we'll have a final that is Olympians versus Olympia. Oh. That would be very interesting. That would be an interesting final. It'd be a nightmare to comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> an Olympian with the quaffle. No, the Olympian have the quaffle. <laughs> oh no, it's the Olympian with the quaffle. <laughs> Very confusing for everyone involved. Do you think the frog have what it takes to beat Titans? Um, we saw the final in the French, uh, the French Cup. They were not able to beat the Titans, and um, it was not too close a game. It was very tense, um, very physical, a lot of contacts, a lot of big tackles, big hits. Um, but I don't think they would be able to beat the Titans. But you never know, it's a QC, anything can happen. Do you think maybe they were lulling them, lulling them into a false sense of security? Ah, going, maybe. You can, you can have France, but we have Europe. <laughs> maybe that they're sneaking like that. I don't think so. Okay, that would be some big brain play. <laughs> but coming up on the live stream, we have many games. I'm not entirely sure the schedule. I don't have it in front of me. I, could, I can make up teams. We could say that I think a, a UK team might be playing on the live stream. I think I, I know Probably. that I'm, I'm playing on the live stream at some point, so... Probably a German team, because um, there are eight German teams competing here. You so know, that's, probably a must be one. that's a very fair and accurate guess. I think I think we are actually playing a German team on the live stream. Oh! Yeah, I think we have uh, Munchen... I can't pronounce this, the second name. Volvertinger. Exactly. <laughs> that's why I have you here, right? <laughs> oh yeah, you're playing... It's not the next game. No, it's the game after. Yep. Yeah, we have a lovely break this game and then uh, on the game after. There is a bit of wind. Is now we, now we put a second jacket on because it's getting a bit cold, right? Yes, I need I need a few jackets. Yep, and we we are being told, as you can see on the live stream there, that was uh, Anamike coming and going. Guys, you should wrap it up, or maybe talk a bit more about Quidditch. Who knows? Cool. I think we're going to sign off. Hi and welcome back to the live stream. Uh, I'm Arjun Sharma here to host the post-match analysis with Gio Farino and Celia Josevolier. Brilliant. So, guys, um, you both saw the game, commentated it. How do you feel it went for both teams? Um, I think it went well for both teams. I think they played um, the way they inted intended to, the train for, and um, I think that's yeah, that's good Quidditch crystal right there and um, a, a level of Quidditch they were expected to bring at a QC. I think the Olympians might be a little bit disappointed in their performance in the sense of not being able to break down that hoop defense. As we said on the live stream, it's not commonly seen at the high level game in the UK. So maybe they might just be out of practice, not having watched much European Quidditch recently, I guess, obviously. With no major tournaments in the last few years, it has been hard to keep track of all the, uh, the up, and up, to up and coming latest tactics out of Europe for us at least. Agreed, agreed. Like obviously in the UK, we see a lot of two-two 
uh, defense, and here it was more. It felt like Baylor. I don't know if, if you guys ever looked at it and went, ah, I could say this. This looks very much like Baylor, um, but they did figure it out in the end. I, I, towards the end of the game, I felt Olympian really noted that they could use this pick and roll method or mm. screening off the point chaser to actually give them the strategy they want, where they want to drive, play that heavy big boy offense that they love to play uh, at Olympians. Uh, but they adapted. They went from a pass-first offense to their their game, uh, essentially. Um, did you see much change in the um, frog uh, offense uh, from either of you? I think the frog offense was a lot of quick counters, being very deep on defense and trying to go with the quick counters. A lot of speed. Lenny decided to stay on his feet today, which was <laughs> nice. Uh, apart from obviously catching the snitch, but then he got back to his feet immediately. So. Um, very quick counters, nice passing game when they had to play it slow, really good secure hands, um, and a very good general understanding of each other. I think that's important, especially for a team they've played together a long time, and it definitely shows on pitch. Yes, and also a uh, strong beta game, mm. I guess, from the Frog. Um, I guess they had uh, larger control most of the time, for most of the game. I think that might have been the main shortcoming of the Olympian, is not, uh, not knowing, let alone to break down that deep hoop defense but more so had to deal with control dealing against control when the frog had two bludgers especially when Cedric was on pitch phenomenal beater does show the experience there playing at a high level for seven eight years he says optimistically seven years yeah, yeah. I think no, no, no you, you guys are right I, I, I do agree with the the beating like the frog played quite aggressive though there were times where you mm. watched them they were tactical with how they sort of came out with their beaters um, when they got control back, it was, let's just get everyone out, get as many people out of the game as possible, but do it in a way where we're not out of position. We keep our structure and our shape, and they seem to have really, like, it seems a simple defense to teach, but a really, like, easy one once you get the concepts of it, to, like, hold your shape. And as long as you can hold that shape, I think you could, they could go for a quite a deep run in this tournament. I think it's that well-drilled offense. Cedric, obviously, being the captain of Team France for the past five years, really... Dr drilling their pl drilling the players, make sure everyone knows their roles on defense, everyone knows their roles on offense, and that synergy really did carry through into the game. And obviously, they won, which is great. Yeah. Do you have any final thoughts? Um, no, I'm um, I got one very final happy question to see them for you again. both, though. Uh, who would you give your player of the game to? Who do you think really stood out this game? Oh. It's a thinker. I've got a funny one. Oh, go on, Gio. You can you can start. You can start. Well, I, have to, I have to give it to Lenny for staying on his feet for most of the <laughs> game. I, I think Lenny fell over maybe twice, which I think is a new record for low for Lenny. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, but I, as I think, I think there were a lot of stand-up players for the frogs for the frogs. Sorry, it's singular, right? There singular. we are. Um, yeah. Uh, to me, in the beta game, there's Amel. Well, obviously Cedric, but Amel is always uh, very consistent and um, always very precise and. Uh, very fast-paced cribbage. So we've shouted out a lot of par Paris par uh, frog here. I'm, I'm going to go controversial. I actually thought uh, Oli Barker had a really good game. Mm. I thought Josh as well played really well for um, Olympians in their chaser game. Uh, I think Fenton was on as well, as well briefly at one yeah, point. Yeah, Matthew Fenton, Fenton had a really good game. Th those three seem to like, I don't know, they, they feel like the core of that offense and they really seem to gel well. We talked about how synergistic frog were, but I thought those three really showed some synergy for Olympians as well. Especially as a relatively newer team, especially yeah. compared to the Frog, yeah. who have been playing together a long time. Exactly. When you have when you have great training, especially because they train across two cities in L in England, they train in Manchester and Leeds. Leeds yeah. Getting everyone out to those trainings isn't always easy, especially in the harsh winter months of England <laughs> when it's wet and muddy and windy, and no one really wants to be out in a cold field. They have obviously still put that work in, put that effort in, and shown that they deserve to be here and to be talked about the li uh, amongst the likes of some of the great French players. Yeah, exactly. And hold their own fairly well. Yeah. It was a close game. It was, it was very tight. Yeah. Um, any final remarks? I have nothing. Um, who's <laughs> next? That's, that's, that, what's the next game being shown on the live stream? It's, it's not us, is it? We're, it's not, we're not, not next, no. Uh, what's the next this game? Is NTNUI versus DNA, which is so Norway Norwegian. versus Italy. Italy. Yes, I knew, I knew that one, Anime KC. Brilliant. Uh, cool. We'll hand back over to the wonderful team here and uh, yeah, see you guys soon. Take care. See Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.
Ridiculous, I'm spitting this meticulous and limitless While other selfish spitting shit got hits up on the charts and sit I see why other artists quit Cause people don't reward your shit They love to hate but hate to live Society is swing and miss And honestly I get it Promise me you won't regret it Wasting energy, forget it Don't look back, go on and get it Bite the bullet just a bit Bite your tongue and don't say shit Make your actions hard to miss Be a legend, not a myth It's obnoxious that I'm conscious Rapping on it says promise Try to harness As an artist, stay modest It's a long quest I will not quit till 10,000 people going off when I drop this. I gotta make it now. Swear to God, I'm breaking out. Swear to God, I'll take a bow. Send a stage with the crowd. Cause I got it figured out. I'm just honest and I'm loud. Saying modest, but I'm proud. No, I never had a I'm doubt. Just like yeah. a soldier. I keep on moving forward. Always getting closer. Marching till it's over. And just like a soldier. I keep on moving forward Always getting closer I'm marching to the sober I'm just like a soldier I'm rolling with the devil, big shit on my level. Take a hit, take that shit, we pedal to the metal. But the body's something special, bitch, I need a vessel. Let me get inside that shit so you can feel the devil. Let's go! I hit him all with the facts in the first line. Rolling with the devil, no, it's not my first time. I've been working with you straight up, nine to five. When I'm done with you, you'll be lucky if you're still alive. I live the beat down just like your girl, bruh. Hot body, and she know what she worth, bruh. In the box, man, rip the short skirts on. Knee high socks, nice girl. Yeah, I'm rolling with the devil. Bitch, get on my level. Take a hit, then pass that shit. We pedal to the metal. Local body, something special. Bitch, I need a vessel. Let me get inside that shit so you can feel the devil. Devil, 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 devil.
Take a hip and pass that shit, we pedal to the metal Need something special, bitch I need a vessel Let me get inside that shit so you can feel the devil Devil, devil, devil Back to all the better days When I used to be young and free I remember her like it was yesterday She was so beautiful to me In my mind sometimes I'll run away To be stop back in history She reminds me of the summertime Way back in 2003 Hey, she was a cutie in a sundress Told her I just had to confess I got a crush on you, darling The long tan legs got me falling And I know, and I know we just met Yeah, yeah But I heard that love at first sight ain't a man Oh no, yeah I wanna take you out on a dance floor, girl I wanna hear you screaming out for some more, girl I wanna do something that they call crazy So beautiful to me In my mind sometimes I'll run away To be stopped back in history She reminds me of the summertime Way back in 2003 I've been chilling on the coast with my homegirl The palm trees and the time moving slow, girl Back to my place, hey, you can call it home, girl your colitis on tap, we alone, girl I want a piece of you, you want a piece of me Ray bands don't gotta block out the heat I love your smile too, I've never felt so free Bring it on, girl, work that body here to me And I know that summer only lasts three months Yeah, yeah, we got the whole world travel with me history she reminds me of the summertime way back in 2003 Got an itch I can't scratch, I'm missing a piece that completes a whole part of me, an open wound scar to see. Everybody come here, gather round, welcome to the freak show, the best in town. What the hell's wrong with me? I don't get along with anybody, honestly. I've been living in my own head constantly, thoughts jumbled round, think I need a new lobotomy. Wait, all these thoughts are too negative. I don't want to get lost in the sedative. Gotta show them what I got, I'm competitive. You know I'm about to go off, I won't let them win, I'll take a stab. I want to chase a bag, I want a way I can change all the things I lack. I gotta face the facts, I gotta taste in that. Got me obsessed with the rest, I got an itch to scratch Welcome everyone watching the EQC Division 1 livestream. We're about to watch NTNY from Norway against DNA from Italy. 
I'm Louis Lermit and next to me is Jordan. Yes, hello. This is going to be a good game. So, for me, the clear favorite right now is NTNY. They've been in the European scene for a long time. They're very experienced players, such as uh, Amun from the Norway, Norway, the national team from Norway. Um, we can't underestimate the DNA club from Italy, in my opinion. Uh, they have some experienced players as well, some players who played for Team Italy, so it should be a good game. Yep. Let's get to it. Refs are just sorting out their final bits and bobs. Both teams starting sixes ready. Have you ever played NTNY, Jordan? Yes. I think I played them once when I played for Southampton, once when I played for Wolves. Were you part of the, the, the bronze medal game back in 2017? Yes, yeah, that was. A very controversial bronze medal game where um, I think five goals were not counted. Yeah, they got a lot of goals that were not counted. There we a got lot a lot of, of goals counted. that did not go in that counted. Yeah. Um, and Antinoy is still very angry about that, uh, rightfully so. But their bronze medal went to London at the time. Yep. And I'll remind you who won the gold medal that year. I don't know. Who did? <laughs> <laughs> I'm clueless as well. <laughs> Should be. Second slot. Did you see the game? Oh, we had to leave to start ours. What was the score? Uh, I'm not sure about the score, but it was in range. Uh, surprisingly so, because Titans already won EQC four times. Munich, a top 16 team in Europe, I would say. But they look like they could be in the top eight, top four this year. Oh, they're coming for it. Player to watch for Munich is Christian Forne. He left Quidditch for a while, but he's back, and he's back better than ever. He used to play for NTNY as well. Now plays for Munich, played a great game against the Paris Titans. But let's focus on this game for now. NTNY, coached by Victor Marx, former Dodo, played for Antwerp QFC, studies now in Norway and is coaching the team. I'm not sure who the coach for DNA is, um, but they are a great coach, let's put it that way. <laughs> Refs look like they're nearly ready. No? Oh! Seems like we got some delay right here. So what are the goals for Werewolves this tournament? Win. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any another goal when you come to a European tournament? I'm sure there are some teams who just look coming here to have some fun and, and get some top 8 or top 4 maybe. But your goal is win. So I've been told. Yeah. What's your goal? Uh, having fun. That's the, the main goal for Antwerp this year. We've uh, we've retired for a while, haven't seen each other, so we're trying just trying to pick it up, and we'll see where it ends. Um, I would be very happy with a, a semi-final, but it'll be a tough tough road to it. I'm I'm, I'm sure. Because I'm not sure if you've noticed, but there's one very hard bracket side. Uh, I think one bracket side could potentially have Titans, Unicorns, Raptors, or Antwerp all at one side. So that, and I think London is a there as well. Yeah. Um, it's going to be very, very, very testy side of the racket. On the other hand, we also know that Munich uh, has played really good Quidditch. So them having them uh, as a first game tomorrow is not an easy task. Siege likes is going to take a while before the game starts. Yeah. Getting the handshakes out the way. Very important. Fair play, very important. Yeah. Uh, uh, Refers sorting out what looks like a battery pack or some kind. What's the last tournament you've played in, Trevor? Uh, British Cup a few weeks ago. And you've won that, right? Yeah, we won that. How would you say the English teams compare to each other at this point? Um, I'd say with four squads, LQC Raptors and London are very close on par. But I think Snitch on pitch is where London comes out on top every time because of our Seekers. London Werewolves? Yeah. Right. For LQC, we've said tactical, tactically, it's great. Right. Seb, what is captain of Team UK, if I'm not? Captain and coach? Um, no, coach is Alice Walker. This coach year. is Alice Walker, yeah. Right. I'm not sure who the captain is. I should probably know that. And how would you rate uh, the London Speakables? 
because they're playing in the tough group as well. I think they're in this group. No, they're in the group of Munich and, uh, and Paris Titans. How would you rate them in the European scene? They can do well. But I think discipline could be a problem for them in terms of getting lots of cards. Right. Because they do have some Team UK players, right? Yeah. Uh, Carly's still playing there. Really big, strong player. On their day, on their day, they could take the top teams very far. Give them a very hard game. But we shall see what fares this weekend. Yes, I'm very excited to see how the European Quidditch scene has evolved. I'm so very excited also, also to see Stine Evjeberg Ev Hansen from NTNY. She's a Norway national player. Played handball. Has a very wide range in passing. Oh. She's very confident with the coffin in her hands. And in my opinion, one of the better female chasers in the, in the, on the continent. She's going to be dominating this game. Yes, she played very well in her first game. And uh, I think she's a bit underrated because NTNY missed upper bracket last EQC 2019. Um, but we should be seeing more of her this tournament, as, uh, I, I feel. For DNA, I'm very excited to see Gabriele Cocchino. I played against him when I was in Italy, playing for Bologna. And he's an absolute great player, one of the best in Italy. Look like there's still some delay. I'm not sure why, but we'll try to keep you guys entertained. Louis knows a lot about Quidditch, so I'm sure he can go on for a while. Yeah, but I, sh I feel like sometimes it should be stopped. I'm just <laughs> talking and talking. That's what you're here for. True. Oh, so they're fixing the tent. they got to fix the tent. It's blowing away. Can we mention what a great accommodation Limerick is for a European Quidditch tournament? I think this is by far the best. Yeah. I was surprised when I got here. I was like, when I saw, I heard Uni Campus, I was like, okay. I was like, Uni Hall's interesting. And I went there, I was like, I was like, this is great. This is amazing. That's completely what I did not expect. And the pitches as well. There are lines, permanent lines on uh, on the on the pitch. No cones. Yeah, no cones, which is uh, unusual for a European Quidditch tournament. Um, all players are accommodated in separate houses in yep. one big village, and the accommodation looks lovely out here. I think it's by far the best. I'm really excited to come back again for European games. Should be good. No, lovely, love an athlete's village. Everyone in one place. Should be good for the Sunday night social, right? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect location. Don't have to travel far to get to it. Would you consider yourself the best dancer of the European British team, Trevor? Because I reckon you are. If I could be bothered, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I spend a lot of time chilling at the side, and then I'll come and do something for a few minutes, then disappear. Like a surprise act. Yeah. <laughs> I just like watching. I like watching all the different dance moves of British players. Yeah. Every country has different moves that they bring out. I like the dance moves of the Norwegians. Always very enthusiastic. And we're about to see them playing Quidditch. As beater for NTNY, we also see Lisa Titze. She's been in the game for so long. Uh, plays for NTNY for as long as I can remember. Plays for the Norwegian national team. Always very solid. Longevity. Very solid. Exactly. Long longevity. In she the knows game. the game like no other. Got to love the experience. Looks like they're giving up with the tent. I wonder if that's what was holding the game up so long. Pulled it, they took it down. The refs are ready. One eye catcher for DNA Quidditch from Italy is also Walid Benfadel. Uh, the Black Mamba, as they call him. <laughs> he first came to the scene, or first made some noise in the scene in 2015 in the European Games. Surprised Team UK there by playing very well in the group game with Italy and uh, has been a very solid player for Torino back in the day and now plays for DNA Quidditch. Torino used to be the first seed for Italy but now it's uh, DNA. Came in, took over. Here we go. Brews up. Oh, oh. And it's going to be into an eyeball. Victor Marx can start the game. Straight off, straight off the pitch from Brooms up. Not something you see every day. No, exactly. Right, first for everything. Nothing it's illegal. All good. See a two hoop defense. No, one hoop defense by DNA and blood control for DNA as well. It's like slow offense building from NTNUI. First ball for Stina. Player to look for. Oh. And 
keeper's ball. Sloppy pass for Stina. Oh, and there's a fast break. Going for it. Fast break. Oh, drop the one, shoulder. One move. Step. Shot. And it's 1 0. Great goal by Dina Quidditch by the keeper who goes by the name of, uh, let me see, Daniele De Masi. It's 1 0 for Dina Quidditch. Oh, that was a good step on that fast drive. Great, great one on one move. Got Victor Max leaning and uh, he capitulated. Great job. I'm telling you, I don't want to be careful. They don't do Great that too often. By DNA. Oh, and there's a pressure situation. Takes a full reset. DNA is still putting pressure, and he's beat, of course. Can they finish it off? Oh, oh. No. Second instance. Yes, two Just nil two. by DNA. Surprising start, if you ask me. But they're not still in the two nil uh, advantage. Dutch control with NTNY right now. And can you? I need to just get the waffle, just pass it around, keep it moving. One person on the ball too long is causing problems. I mean, the hello. Here's Victor with the waffle. Gives it to Jurgen, also Norwegian national player. Back to Victor. And that's a good beat. Short, no bludger, no, great pass by Stine. That's it, great. That was a great pass. And that's the first pass. goal for Antony Great pass by Stine, great vision. Great cut by Jorgen, and it's 2-1. Oh. A miss B by, Li by Lisa. Ball goes to, the bludger goes to no one. I'd assume it go to Antony Yeah, DNA player had the ball, had the bludger in his hand when the, when the, when the bludger went off. Shame they had to run so far to get it though. And there's Wally Benfadel. I catch her for DNA. Great drive, great, great drive, great shot. Let's see what kind of game he will have today. You see DNA first offense against a set defense. Let's see what they do. Francisco Caruso with the ball, defended by Jurgen. And there's a three hoop defense by Antinoy. Missed beat. Can he do the one on one? He oh, fakes oh. and he puts it in. Great goal. Will it be counted? There oh. will be rooms down. I saw no issue on my part. No, I thought it was fine. But after he scored, he did look like he complained about something. Goal by Gabriele Cocchino. Since he started playing in 2016, he has never lost an official match against an Italian team. That's quite impressive. I want that stat. And do we have a goal or not? I, mean, I said goal is good, but he was questioning something that happened in the process of the score in the hoop. It may have been contacted to the head, just right. just questioning if it was. I think the goal will stand. It's three one to DNA. And it's now a thing of not panicking if you're anti NY. The game is still long. Uh, a lot can happen in a short span of time. Yep. Just take your time. Stick to your game plan. Move the ball around. Anti NY have no bludgers. DNA are choosing not to press out there. I don't think they realised. Oh, yep. I've realized. Good job by Victor. Making keep it, keep it, keep it. Keep it inside the pitch. Great job. And in a way, still no bludgers. You got them. <laughs> and that's a shot. A very tough shot by Victor. Maybe a bit desperate because he had to wait too long for the beaters. And now it's in DNA Quidditch with budget control pressing again. And Tenyuai got their bludger back for defense. Very important, could be. Very long pass. Does it stay in? It stays in. That is a good save. A bit of confusion. Oh, they're saying it was ball. out. And Jurgen, yeah, of course. He's, oh, I told Jurgen, very smart I as mean, he is. If you, don't, if you don't touch the floor when, when the ball's in the... If you don't touch the floor, surely it's still in, right? I haven't read the rule book in ages, so I'm not sure. Uh, I but great move by uh, Wally Belfadel. It was a great, it was a great move. I thought it was legal. I have not read the rule book. If you ask me. Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> I think they're trying to question the leap. Some discussion for who has the ball. I think they want a bit of VAR. Would it recommend? The quaffle turnover. Yep. And then your keeper has it out here on the wing. Antinoi will have the ball. DNA. 3 1. DNA. Roger control. DNI. 
Let's see if they can get back to their oh. off cross set. And can you? I lost the bludger. Missed B. Pressing now again. again. The Ooh, that's different. Oh. Oh. Maybe Dangerous Chris. No cult. Ball goes to DNA, and that's a goal. Sent back to for Dangerous Kick. Once again, Coquino. Will it be in? Is it counted? Y yeah, I believe it was. This press from DNA is killing NTNY at the moment. Yeah, be the game of NTNY needs to step up. Give their talented chasers some, some opportunities to score. Victor with the drive. Gets beat there. There we go. Fast drive again. Once again, a press. A counter from DNA. Good move. There we go. And oh. he puts it in. Put it in. That's 4 1. I think Antonio can use a timeout right now. Let's regroup. Yeah, regroup. Talk to your players. Calm everyone down. Little tactical discussion. I think Victor Max is calling for a timeout. And something very surprising right now is there's Amund uh, from Norway who hasn't played yet. He's one of their most talented players and was one of the best beaters in Europe. But this tournament he's keeping. He's oh. playing as a Kaffel player. But they might be able to use him as uh, DNA is dominating the Bludger game. Use him to get some control back in the game. Even things out a bit. Because DNA has made use of their blood control, pressed very well. Antinoy under pressure, was not able to keep the ball uh, and also in counter attacks very deadly from uh, DNA. Like what would you say right now if you're in the Antinoy handle, huddle? Um, just need to work together more because it feels like their beaters, when they're going to get control back, are throwing their blood up from a distance when their other beaters not set behind. So if they miss that beat, what they're having to do is they keep chasing the bludger miles off pitch because they miss a beat and there's no one there to retrieve it. Work together, let your beater get in. Or even if, you get, if you're going to make the beat, maybe take a few steps closer and it make sure your chasers are... Your, well, they're communicating because the chasers know when the bludger because they drop back to, to try and stop the press. And if you're a Quaffle player for Anton and I right now, you know your beaters are struggling. Let's take your time for the offense. Yeah. Let's not rush it. Let's look for a long pass behind the hoops. Let's play um, around the coffle yeah. when under pressure. Turn the defense around, right? Just give your beaters some time because they're going to have bad moments regardless yeah. of uh, the game situation. Just don't if you have the quaffle just sitting in front of the, the, the beaters, the beaters are sitting there thinking, well, we've, we've got full control here. Play it out wide, send it behind, turn the beaters around, gives your beaters a better chance of gain, regaining control, helping you out. Score is 4-1 to DNA Quidditch. Somewhat surprising if you ask me. DNA Quidditch, not many people heard of them. They're a new team, first time EQC, um, but they're leading against one of the stronger, most established teams in Europe. Their beaters do have a good change from defense onto a press. The second they, the second the beat is missing, they realize that blood is gone. Their change to press and 10 UI chases is so fast. And their chases are quick to realize it as well. Great one-on-one -on -one moves as well. If you look at the one-on-one, -on -one they get some side steps left, right. They got someone leaning, and then they finish it off. Yep. Great one-on-one -on -one moves. It's what will we s what will we see different from NTNUI if anything? And the hoops going straight back down. And in which position will we see Amund? I think he will come in as a chaser. Uh, this time, not helping the beater game, committed to the chaser game, and maybe not panic as well, right? Yeah. Stick to the game plan. If you're here as a chaser, let's keep playing chaser. That's also maybe not a, a bad idea. So making his first minute, Amund, close with Stolz. The ball is with Jürgen. Passes to Stine. Very patient in the Quaffle game. We need some beater action from the beaters. Y. There we go. Beaters, beaters. Yeah. Uh, shot missed. And 10 UI beaters again. They've gone with, they went without each other. One went for one beater, one went for the other. They lost Bludger. Ah, pressure there. Oh, is he going to play the pass? Again. Play the pass? No. Nope. And that's oh, a goal. That's a goal. Five one. That's and a good goal. There is Anthony UI. Maybe be a bit more patient, right? The beaters are struggling. Let's give them more time to, to make some space. Uh, they g went for the shot, they missed, and they now get a goal back. It's 5-1, out of range now for DNA Quidditch. Slowly racking up the point. But N10 UI needs something to get back into this game. That's it, Bludgers on There's the floor. Trade of Bludgers. Bludgers. 
Bludger controls sticks with DNA Kulich. Bludger for Antino is pretty far. It's a long reset. Oh. And it's going to oh. be a couple turnover. <laughs> Needs to get back. A bit too enthusiastic. And no bludger for Antinoi in sight. Once again, there will be a one-on-one. Oh, one -on -one. One -on -one. No bludger. Oh, nice Good over the pass. Oh, Ooh, dropped it. A bit lucky by Antinoi, but that happens. Beaters, one, one in front, one behind. Throw the bludger. Good job by Lisa Tietze. That's got to be, that's gotta be a, that's gotta be a bludger turn. Yeah. Exactly. Bludger control for Antinoi. Let's see what can, they can do now. They have the talent to to set up a great offense. What they've been waiting for this whole time to see what this they, they need great to use it. Astina, and then oh, the shot. Oh, recover it. Too low the shot from Amund, and there's going to be a pile up. And ball will be again with DNA Kudich. Good scramble defense there. Not let anyone come out with a puffle. They're not on your team. Even though you're down as NTNY, you just really need to switch momentum. So I would really take your time in the puffle game. I know the game will be long and you want to be up, but let's take your time to call for game. Make sure you have a 100% shot instead of a shot like this one. DNA just got just got control back. Good job by Stina. Great hoop defense. Good pressure. One bludger in defense. That's it. Great pass. And second assist oh. for Stina in the goal by Jürgen. That second goal for Jürgen as well. That pass across from her is really good. She gives that horizontal pass, which is quite unusual. Yeah. Nowadays we always play vertical. She plays horizontal, remains the overview, second assist. Defense don't know what to do about it. Great job. Right, just 100% opportunity, slowly build up. Ball with Walid Bedfadel. Control for DNA. They have been pretty consistent with control. Shout out to their beaters. They've been dominating this game. Georgia Rodella and Daniela De Masi. Is that their only beaters? I think it is, yeah. And this Jorgen. He can put it in. Great That's goal. It. Trademark jump for Jorgen. Always jumps when he's <laughs> alone. Great job. They've it's got themselves back into it. They're back in the game. That's what they needed. They needed to slow it down. 100% opportunities. Georgia Rodella, beater for DNA. Uh, used to play for Torino as well. Great beater. And they keep, they don't have control. Control is for NTNUI for this moment. And NTNUI hold last defense. NTNUI lost control. And they keep it this time and use it to help their offense. Ball is with Francisco Caruso. DNA beat is working together. The tree hoop defense for NTNUI. Let's see what their game plan is from DNA. To be aggressive, both beat. There's bludgers on the floor. The bludger battle is lost, but they're still going forward. Great drive, good that pass. And that will be a goal. Took a bit of risk there, um, but they managed to I think to we score. have an injury down there. We have an injury. Let's hope the player is okay. That was an interesting choice in the end. Can you beat it there? He ran for the bludger that was rolling all the way to DNA hoops to try and stop them from getting one. Mm -hmm. He didn't make it, unfortunately. So. Just had to come for the extra one. Hope injury is not too bad. Just sitting up, so it doesn't look like it's too serious, but we don't take precautions. And that's one thing when you're going into a tournament, regardless of the scores, you just hope you can go, go into day two healthy. Yeah, day one is very intense, everyone is still just uh, in very fighting excited. for positions. You're just trying to get in healthy in day two. Let's hope. Same goes for NTNY. On comes the medic. NTNY had some troubles going to Dublin. Um, they had a flight which was cancelled just some hours before. Yep. I heard Stina had to call all her teammates during the night, wake them up and tell them to go to the airport right now. Because there was an earlier flight they had to catch. They oh managed wow. to get all the team here, but their original flight was cancelled. They had to leave quickly during the night and now they're here. Res probably with less sleep than they had hoped. Yeah, respect, you got to respect it. And that's often the case with with tournaments like this. Every team has their story of how yeah. they went into a tournament, skipping work, skipping school, yeah. whatever. Cancellations, no flats, getting boats across, trains, all the different. Every journey you can imagine, someone in the Quidditch has taken it. On the feet, getting help off the pitch. It that? makes me think a bit about when we were young with Enter Quidditch. Uh, we once refused to. 
um, going to a hostel or hotel, so we slept in a park in Barcelona. We figured it was warm enough, and instead of going for a hotel or hostel, we just slept in the park, uh, slept very badly, and also didn't win the tournament. <laughs> A good lesson for us. You choices, need to sleep. Choices were made. Exactly. You live and you learn, right? Being helped off by the medics. Score is 6 3 for DNA Quidditch. And there's still an injury stoppage. Swim range. Snitch over there just anxiously roll, strolling around. I reckon Internet has found their flow right now. Yeah. I think they will stay in range and it will be a snitch game. And there will be interesting how the beaters compare then. Because this the seeker game is entirely different for the beater game. There's less tactics, more throwing, more running. Um I wouldn't say Intinui would lose the beater game. You know, no. the on pitch. And DNA beaters have not had a sub. They do not have a sub. Small roster as well, yeah, DNA footage. Yeah, small roster. They be if they if they pull this off, massive props to their beaters because they have been dominant in for the majority of this game. Let's call them again by their name. Yeah, Georgia, God. Rodella and Daniela De Masi have done an amazing job keeping control for DNA Quidditch, creating opportunities for them to fast break. And it has led to six goals for DNA compared to three goals for NTNUI. I feel like I should keep, keep letting you pronounce the names because <laughs> my pronunciation will, will, will just won't sound right. There we go. Injury sub, injury stoppage. Quaffles with NTNUI keeper. The goal will stand, 6-3 for DNA. And we're off. NTNUI still with control. Use it to get themselves another hoop. It's Ludwig Kuhn as keeper for NTNUI, if I'm not mistaken. Has the ball right there. Looks a bit like Jürgen from afar. Better control is with NTNUI. Peter Max loves to shoot. Let's see what he'll do. Ah, pass is a bit sloppy. Try to look for the keeper of NTNY. Not his best game for Victor Max. It happens, you can't be your best all the time, right? Especially on day one, it's a bit you're a bit nervous. Yeah. You just want want to get back to it. Make wrong decisions. But the game is still long. Rally from the side, fakes the pass, carrying it round, and there's a one beater battle by NTNY, they have control, oh, no, nope. very interesting by DNA Quidditch, the beater battle is won by NTNY, but they still try to pressure and try to for a goal, this time the shot misses, and the ball will go back to NTNY, not the best choice if you ask me, NTNY plays a three hoop defense, he could have kept the ball and took his time, but he tried to score. DNA seem to like the high pressure game. If they think they could, then it's not really 100% for them. If they feel like they can score, they're just going to go for pressure. it. Oh, oh. Pass once again sloppy. The keeper, there we go. Intercepted. How's your one-on-one -on -one move? There's a beater in the middle. One beat. Pass across. Great pass. Oh. Get caught. Great catch. One more pass. Back across. Keeper for DNA can reset the offense. Push, push the tempo well. Now the ball is behind hoops with uh, Ben Fidel for DNA. From fast drive to slow offense, and 10 UI's defense is set up, three hoop defense. And Lisa, there's the goal. Very smart, very good from DNA, from DNA chasers. The beaters lost the battle. Yeah, the beaters lost the battle. Blood was on the floor. Yeah, they, they, they tried to go for budget control, which they have right now, but in the exchange, they gave up a goal, which is not the best exchange, if you ask me. No. 7 3 for DNA Quidditch. Maybe it's defendable because they haven't been able to have control for a long time. So having control is maybe important to them now, but they're now down four, which is out of seat range. Need at least one more hoop. They don't seem to want to use their bludgers on offense, which interests me. And tonight plays a 3-1 formation in offense, which is interesting. Great pass by Victor. See the great read. Pass to the keeper and the goal. There we go, there it is. That's the third assist for Stina. What an overview she has. Just puts her players in the best position to score. And uh, the game is back in snitch range. It's 7 4. Bulger control that will go to DNA Quidditch. That was really good from the DNA beater there. The blind, the blind beat. 
through off the end again. You might has got control back from it. DNA very slowly in their offense. Village control is with them. They're not in a hurry to score. They just want a 100% opportunity to score. Let's get the game back out of range. Oh. Uh, didn't catch it too well. The battle for the Koffel. Ball for the DNA. Ball. Ball is for NTNY. I mean. Good defense by uh, NTNY. Took advantage of uh, someone who miscaught the ball. And now NTNY has a chance to go back in range again. We're back in range 7-4 right now. It can be 7-5 for the first time since since long. They go for it. They gotta make sure it's a 100% opportunity because DNA, as we've seen, will just pick up the quaffle and fast break straight through the middle. Miss B by Lisa. On the beater back to hoops. Oh, Lisa has to throw the ball forward. And it's DNA. Good block there. Here they go. Who is back running again? One on one. Fast break. Great nice pass. pass. Coquino. Step. With Move. a goal. 8-4. It's, it's how the game started. I feel they like lost the blood shot. DNA capitalized. Fast drive. There's been way too many goals who had the same scenario as this one. Antinoi fails to adapt to this specific scenario and they're down 8-4. to four. That's what keeps happening. The beaters are standing next to each other. That's a not really by Victor. With the foot. That's it, you got the chance. Uh, oh, good, oh, tackle. good tackle. Great tackle. Great. Looked like a 100% sure goal. But there's Coquino with the great tackle. There we go. Hitting the fast break once again. We'll give the pass to the side. No, good that's beat. Glitch. The pass to the side in the fast break has been very successful for DNA. Decides now to dodge a bludger and fails to. DNA beaters have been really, they're not going up on offense because they're, they're conserving their energy. They I think, they're, I think they're conserving their energy for snitch on pitch because they, right. they know it's potentially going to come down to it because it keeps going one out of range, one in range. And do they have substitutions? I don't believe they do. They've played this whole game so far. I don't think they have a substitution. Great beat. And that will be a pass after beat. Ball back to DNA Kudic. Going for it. The fake, the fake. Pass to Coquino. Oh, oh. Slips from oh. into my defender. There we and go. that leads to a goal. Slip. Nothing to do about it. Just a slip. Yep. Always in a great position to defend. But it happens. Yeah. One of those things. DNA capitalizes great on the on the mistakes from NTNY and it's nine to four. I was confident that they would be back in range by this time, but it doesn't seem like it right now, right? No, I thought they would have. They, they haven't changed their strategy at all. They keep doing the same. But look at NTNUI beaters now. They're not really. They don't really have a plan of what they're doing. They're just kind of standing there and Very letting their chases. Yeah. Nice beat. Let's put some pressure. That same pass across again. Oh, Justin Gary. If he caught it, that was a hoop for sure. There was a missed beat. If you then pressure the player who is going to get to retrieve the ball, you have an opportunity to get your bludger back. Yep. Now he stood there, did nothing, and there's a Koffel turnover. Another fast break. Gives the pass and grey hoop. 10 to 4. And 10 UI beater got caught up in it with the beater battle there. Beater battle. Koffel just snuck in behind. Unlucky game from Daniel Cornelison. It's been a tough game for the N10 UI beaters, this one. And that's Gridditch, right? You need your beaters to perform well. Yeah. Great oh. cut. Ah, that's a great cut. That was very unlucky. Never seen that cut before for Edmonton UI. Great read as well, but the pass wasn't. It's good to try something great. new because it would have worked if it, it would have worked if it got the right release. Exactly. And once again, DNA straight the down the other end. DNA Quidditch. And but they're just capitalizing on mistakes. DNA Quidditch, aren't yep. they? Doing a great job. Surprising many. People in the Euro, I suppose. Yeah. Well, Snitch is ready to Snitch is on. Seekers have been called. I can see the DNA Seeker. Cannot see the NTNUI one. Perhaps they've just subbed off and are getting their head back. There's Tina by herself. Tries to shoot. Misses. And there are no bludgers for NTNUI. Luckily, the Koffel is far gone. So is the bludger. So they might be able to get a bludger back in defense. Gotta be quick getting him back. Because they will just go for far, another fast drive. So what do you want to do as uh, Antinua? You want to catch? Um. In the meantime, we see Wally once again driving and no one able to stop him. Scores the goal, knocks down the hoop. You got, well, I say you got to stop them from catching. 
kept before focus on focus on them not catching. Catch if you can and then <laughs> go for overtime. It's going to be Vito Vito go for trying to catch the snitch. It's a tricky one for N10 anyway. Very unique style by DNA Beater, throwing his bludger with two hands. Has been successful for now. Once Ent again, Coquino Ent is about to rally Binfadel. Going for the catch. It's a hard time to stop that duel. Who's N10 UI Seeker? Victor Marix, former Enter Quidditch player. Oh, Great Seeker. Very close with the catch. He's very, very long, there. very strong. Should be able to catch quickly if he's in the right form. Bludger in defense for DNA. N10 UI beat of one beat of focus on non Quaffle, one beat of focus on Seeker. Very but high bludger for DNA, very high beater. And the keeper of Inter UI didn't notice that's to be in another fast break. They should be able to score once again. Good hoop. And one thing as well is when there's a no bludger situation, there seems like no one of Inter UI was able to stop the DNA Quaffle players. Yeah. Their DNA quaffle players, their one on one is really good. They get, they manage to get the step, so you can't manage to get a hold to get any form of rep on it. That's a no blunder for Antinoi. They good. score. Can they get back? Let's see. It's now Jurgen Stenlock trying to get the snitch. The two snitch on pitch tactics are interesting here. The beaters from DNA are just letting, but focus on quaffle because they know they can drive it up in a quaffle game. Antinoi are going for the catch. Antinoi so need to split their attention. Yeah. Easier said than done. DNA's first time on the seeker. Oh. It's a bit of pick your poison, right? Yep. If you focus on the snitch game, there's going to be coffer goals against you. If you don't focus on the snitch game, DNA will catch and the game is over. And to NUI need to use it to their advantage when they can. It's not a smart shot from NUI. Oh. Should have kept coffer possession. Nearly got a catch there. Once again, Wally Benfadel, we've seen it before. And we've seen the result before. Another dunk. What an athlete he is. What an athlete. No one able to stop him. And that's been the story for today. <laughs> and that's a catch that from <laughs> DNA Beater. <laughs> celebrate, it like, celebrate it like you've won the match, right? <laughs> Beat your seeker. Caught his own blood jaw. Celebrate the small things. Yep. Every little helps. Especially in snitch on pitch. Long pass oh. doesn't reach its target. They've stopped going for 100% opportunities. N10 UI. It's well done. One, one on one. Again, one on one. Left him on the No one able to stop him. I'm very curious to see if DNA, DNA goes further into tournaments, if they have an other option other than those two heavy drivers when you play a higher level you have people who can tackle better yeah and this won't work um you drive into a heavy tackle you're just gonna leave you on the floor every time but if a one-on-one -on -one works just keep doing it keep breaking up the points <laughs> and there's a drive for engine y scores no goal no is good. not allowed i think after beat this is a call DNA Seek has got some time on got some time on the snitch. In the meantime, it's a completely dominant game from Daniele De Masi. He's seemed very confident, throwing two hands, looking to catch after his throw. It's now beat. On the other side, we see Wally doing what he does best. Driving. A very drive heavy offense for DNA, but it works. Score is now I think 17 to 5. And the DNA Quidditch trying to catch the snitch, ending this game, which is also important, trying to end the game early. You yeah. don't want to tire yourself out in one game. Out, especially with the small roster. In the meanwhile, Victor Mikes from seeking to chasing gives the pass to Jurgen, miss beat, and that's a goal, no nope. goal by Jurgen. Goal ref said no good. B was on Jurgen apparently, and it's Coquino on the other side, who's going to finish it off 18 to 5. And it's now for Lungi from DNA to catch, try to end the game. Let's get some rest for the next game for tomorrow. You've done what you're supposed to do. I don't think Lungi has a sub. I think 
they could throw one person on it, give them something different. And just, like just, this. just, just for the, just for the energy. Yeah, games like this might hurt him tomorrow. Yeah, because how tired you're going to be as a seeker, especially if you keep getting beat out, is more tired than you'd be if you're just playing chaser, because you just shut off back and forth. And Daniel Demasi keeps catching villagers. Doesn't seem to be tired. Dominating <laughs> the beater, to the beater game, and there's no answer from the beaters of NTNY. I tell you what, there's a catch. Lungi with, the, Lungi with the catch. Lungi. So the two, those, <laughs> those two-handed throws. The, accu Kele the accuracy. Lungi. He's a seeker only, according to our sheet. He seems very tired, and they will be tired. It's such a small roster. These games take energy. Well committed. Commitment to the cause. Score is 180 to 50. This stitch catch would bring it to 210 to 50. This is well-deserved victory. Not what we expected coming into this. They've definitely but they on this. But I feel Inter and I will watch through this game and think we can do better. Yeah. We can make adjustments and come back, come, uh, come back better tomorrow if they watch the game tonight. Yeah. But they've not played according to their skill set, in my opinion. They just need to learn from it, talk about it, make slight adjustments. It's not massive adjustments they need to make. No. But from this game, it's just little things. Need some patience in offense with the quaffle. Beaters need to be slightly more aggressive. And maybe why not bring Almond back in the beater game? Yeah. If he doesn't want to, that's of course his choice. But it would help the team greatly. Add some stability, some control. Make them more relaxed. It's a very long deliberation here. I thought the catch was good. Very long deliberation. The goal is catch. good. And the catch, catch is, is good, good as well. Game over. Game over. DNA quit surprises a lot of people by winning this game comfortably against NTNY. I'm sure they're going to go and re rest now because they, they weren't here. And I see Amund limping. His knee doesn't look well. His tournament might be over. That's a big bandage, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. Great game. I love commentating yeah, this one. That was a good game. We're going to wrap this up. Are we? Are we? <laughs> 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 it's the time to give some shout outs. I'm I want to give one shout out now I have the mic. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, my salsa instructor. I've been dancing salsa oh. the last couple of months. And then my salsa instructor is actually my teammate, Emil Arts. Oh, That's awesome. very quick feet. Um, been enjoying the lessons, so shout out to you for giving the great salsa lessons. So I'm expecting to see some fancy dances. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I will not show because I'm still a rookie, but I can maybe <laughs> ask Emil to dance later on. Do you have a shout out to make before we end this up? No. No? No. No shout out to the <laughs> Can I use two then? <laughs> well, uh, wrap this up. Thank you very much for listening and watching. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Congratulations to DNA Quidditch. Did a great job. And Internet has a lot of work to do, but I'm sure they can. They'll be, they'll, they'll work it out. See you guys next time. Bye bye. See ya.
I'm a poke a hole through you, choking's overdue. Oh. Come at me and you won't get any older, do Crack your hold or two. Oh. Heating up inside of me, blood so violently. Thanks for trying me. Right. Now it's finally time to see how this rivalry becomes a dynasty. You're rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad After her there ain't no coming back Wanna take a run at that I think she's feeling me Turn it up a few degrees My imagination of her body gets the best of me Oh gosh, she's such a tease Bitten lips, bruised knees I'm addicted to her, need her touching me Cause she got a bad little waist And we tearing down this place Off the liquor that we chase Got some meat goes to the face baby i don't need no space coming closer for a taste and i'll show you how i make everything just fade away cause she's like sex drugs cocaine body so insane jealous of the clothing as she wears up on a tight frame all game no shame baby can't get a plan i think like a nightmare she's a bad bitch and she got a bad name but she got a bad name Got a fine little body and her mind's kinda naughty They say that once you taste it, you cannot replace it She could get you high, all the dopamine inside Triggers fast once she's naked, her body's a creation They say the devil made her for his entertainment But even he couldn't learn how to contain it Her high heels make a damn good statement There is no replacement, a body by Cause she got a bad little waist and we tearing down this place Off the liquor that we chase, got some egos to the face Baby, I don't need no space, coming closer for a taste And I'll show you how I make everything just fade away Cause she's like sex, drugs, cocaine, body so insane Jealous of the clothing that she wears up on a tight frame All game, no shame, baby, can't get a play I feel like an addict cause she's sex, drugs, cocaine Yeah. She's got some nice long hair and you know that she's a bad chick All the boys stare, can't help it, it's a habit Clothes that she wears, short skirt and a jacket I just wanna get her all alone on a mattress I just wanna have it, I just gotta have it Boomers 
all around Say your body is fantastic All natural, not a piece of fur is plastic Head to her toes, yeah, they say that she's a last Yeah, the whispers all around Say she has a reputation Don't believe it till I see it So I want a demonstration And I've always learned it better With a hands-on education So I need a private session If you get what I am saying And they say that she's not easy No, she's really complicated But that only makes it better And it's got me so fixated And I'm not the type to wait around I've never hesitated But she's got me captivated So the game, I'm gonna play it, yeah She's got a body like a coke thing She likes to keep the party going These rumors got me feeling lonely I want that body, baby, show me She's got a body like a coke thing She likes to keep the party going These rumors got me feeling lonely I want that body, baby, show me Just don't be ignored 
Cause they ain't looking inside for their needs in life They wanna be like I, everybody in sight But trust me, being free ain't spotlights No, it's long nights and it's long fights With yourself all the time to get your mind right But if you put in the work, you can find the light, alright? I'll do anything that I feel like I wanna do I'm living life like I got nothing left to prove No end in sight, just always staying on the move I'll go all night if that's just what I got in Life's too short to care about what you can't afford Memories are in what you explore So just don't be ignored, go ask for more, go ask for I've been living life right like I could just die any minute Going for a ride down the side, PCH, country limit I don't need a guide, follow lights, take me where I want to visit Are you alive? I'll just breathe it Cause I've been living life right like I could just die any minute Going for a ride down the side, PCH, country limit I don't need a guide, follow lights, take me where I want to visit Are you alive? Every day that I wake up, I wake up in a nightmare. 
every day that I wake up I can never see quite clear When I look at my surroundings And everybody still doubts me I wanna live to hear a crowd sing Hold my lyrics so loudly I miss a time when we would all get together I guess it's fine but I really wish that we were better Real talk, sipping drinks without all the pressure Now everybody needs to think about posting whatever When people ask how I'm doing, I've never been better That's really not a conversation I'm willing to enter How come we all continue forcing out all of this pressure? I'm just sick of these opinions and all of these lectures I need my space now so I can feel nothing I live this nightmare so I can be something yeah. I do what I want I'm scared of being rich, but I'm scared of being poor. I'm scared of being lonely, but I'm scared of being bored. Sometimes I get really angry, and I don't know why. Sometimes I really do hate me. Can't even pick my own side, yeah. What is even going on? Why the hell do I even write songs? What the hell am I doing here, man? I guess I don't understand a thing, damn. Yeah, but maybe ignorance is bliss. Yo, I'd rather lay in the abyss. And be aware of what I missed, especially if I quit. Yeah, they say the hell is your last day. When you see what you could have became, that day would drive me insane. So I intend on staying in my lane. Yeah, I picked a path and I picked the pain. Yeah, I want it bad, that won't ever change. Yeah, sometimes I'm mad, sometimes I'm okay. Yeah, I know I'll have what I want someday. I need my space now so I can feel nothing. I live this nightmare so I can be something. Yeah. It's hard to be okay when everything has changed. Yeah, it's hard to be okay when I can see everything. The best part of everyone's day is on my iPhone on display. No matter what I do, can't get away. This isn't healthy, I don't feel the same. Yo, and destiny is a weird thing. Yeah, cause it's easier to believe. Yeah, that everything is out of your hands. It's part of a plan, so there ain't no need to worry. Uh, don't let your vision be blurry. Yeah, lock into your journey. Yo, and you can start real early. You could be 13 or you could be 30. Uh, but it's your life to live, yeah. Yo, so what you got to give, huh? Yo, you better get after it. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare, kid. You got dreams? Then you're like me. So try like me. So fight like me. Take a hold of your life and thrive like me. So you can put the nightmares to sleep like me. You will not change my mind I'm here to stay Here to play, I got one life and I know what a year can change My fear of fame, near the same Got that voice in the back of my ear to say Don't give up, don't hold back, you're not enough Stay on track, it's been tough Close the gap, it can suck, that's a fact But no, I won't slow down Hold my own right now in the zone I found been to blow this sound As I grow this crowd, you all know me now Be you known, call it cloud Better watch the fuck out, yeah You will not change my mind I'm here to stay I'll grind I'll be the best all the time I will not play I'll climb Coast to coast, spin the roast Any motherfucker who been thinking he could beat me though Keep him low, sneaking though I'ma be the one creeping up until I'm eating foes Believe me, ho, you don't know All the shit I've been through, never gonna take it slow A wake go, now I know The go flowing through my mind just like a wave it goes on To be the best, must be different than the rest Must commit to every test Turning no's into a yes Fuck the hate, a second guess Want to know what you do best Take the risk and take the deck Count the cards and rake the deck, yeah You will not change my mind, I'm here to stay, I'll grind, I'll 
Yeah. I don't believe in destiny. I just do what's best for me. Don't listen to my enemies. They're just full of jealousy. Yeah. This legacy. You gon' see what's left of me. You gon' see success in me. You ain't seen the rest. I just wanna be the best at what I know. Better than the rest, just watch me grow. Put me to the test and watch me go. This is my quest, I'ma make it known. They call me obsessive, oh I know. Call me selective with my notes. Call me aggressive with my flow. Call me a I think we're on. <laughs> okay, uh, welcome to European Quidditch Cup Division 1 2022. I'm here, Lisa Tietze from Enten UI with... Annemieke from RPTV. Yes, so I'm very excited to stand here with Annemieke actually, because uh, so how far has the tournament been going for you from uh, Rufenix TV? Really good, really good. I think we had very little trouble so far. So <laughs> fingers crossed that <laughs> the weather wood. stays nice because it's now very nice in the sun. Yeah, thank you for knocking on some wood. It's very nice in the sun, but when we get rain, I think this will be a little bit more sad. Yeah, then definitely you want to stand under n under these nice tents. Well, we're uh, looking now at the uh, game Munich, well, Patinga from Germany versus London Unspeakables from the UK. They're, I don't know, red getting ready for the game. The players seem very ready. The referees are still huddled up and talking. So what do you expect from the game? I think I will expect the Wolpertinger to win. Apparently, they're seen as outsiders from people who are not from Germany or are not in Germany a lot. But as somebody who follows German Quidditch a bit more closely, I feel like they're not outsiders. I feel like they're favorites. Yeah, in fact, they played a very close match against Titans, like close enough, meaning they led by 20 points in between, I heard. And even when the snitch was on pitch, uh, it was a complete swim match and what Titans only won by catching the snitch. So uh, I heard I that too, on the toilets, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the rumors, oh, well, the facts spread very, very quickly. So that mm -hmm. must have been an amazing match to watch. I'm a bit sad that I missed that and that it wasn't live streamed. Yeah, so I'm very sad too, but I guess nobody really expected that to be that close. Yeah, and funnily enough, I talked to some Munich players afterwards and I was like, oh my God, you must be so happy. And they were all a little bit like, yeah, but we kind of really? just like, it would have been nice to win it. And I was like, yeah, okay. I mean, I get it. I like get it. <laughs> yeah. I met some really happy Munich players. So I think maybe yeah. there was a bit of a, you know. Yeah, yeah. I guess Chris, who used to play for Antignai in the year where we actually beat Titans. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I think oh, he's like, good you know, he, he yeah. like, he tasted the blood mm -hmm. and he was like, no, we should have won that match. Yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was 2017, right? That you guys won in Belgium somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember 17, the yeah. entire tournament running out to come <laughs> see you, and everybody in my team was supporting the Titans. I was like, mm -mm. Oh. no, no, it's anyone anyway, you guys. Wow, 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 <laughs> which team was that? <laughs> <laughs> don't tell them. Yeah, I don't think it's uh, safe to say right now. No. Well, they don't exist anymore, so. Okay, so the referees are making sure that the balls are in the Stay. correct position, but the. Windy, windy island. Efforts, yeah. Well, I have to say, it's not too bad, I think, no, with the wind. Like, it's, it's okay could be worse but yeah um, yeah no we just get rainy and actually i'm very happy with the um, weather overall today like it's super nice to play in, i think yeah. compared to me, uh well say in italy where your shoes yes. melt off yeah exactly so oh that right hoop set again there's oh, a hoop falling yeah. down of course <laughs> this hoop set <laughs> is just uh an the adventure. Yeah. And the ball rolling off, well, maybe there's a little <laughs> more wind than I expected. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but I really have been enjoying the weather, especially when the clouds are covering the sun. Mm -hmm. I think it's really, really nice for people to play in. It's not too cold, not too warm. Yeah. Uh, depending who you ask. I mean, yeah. I live in yeah, Norway. Exactly. I think this is yeah, perfect this is to uh, play in shorts and shirts. Amazing <laughs> summer weather. I was going to say, some people are wearing a little bit more than <laughs> you, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Oof. The waffle also rolled yeah. away. So what are you expecting? from this game to happen? I, I, I agree with you. I mean, it's, I, would, I would expect 
Munich to win and possibly making the call here maybe quite comfortably. I, okay. I would hope for them. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna say it now. I'm feeling I it. I mean, especially yeah. if we go to the f to um, the, the, the cheat sheets, the which cheat I have sheets with there. our fun facts and goals, then I think uh, Munich stated clearly they want to make it to upper bracket, while London's unspeakable said they come for fun and the beers or something like that. Uh, get <laughs> drunk, have fun. Yeah. Or maybe the other way around. Okay, we're getting ready here. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. That was a false start from beater number seven, I think, but it wasn't oh, really? called. Okay, yeah. London has the ball. Ooh, blocked by Munich straight away, but London gets the ball back. That was, who yeah. has the ball now from? Resetting. Oh. Reset used. Who is this with the ball now? Number six, could that be? Pass behind, no, that was number 24. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> so 24. Well, they're passing around the hoops a bit yes, sloppily. 24. Yeah, yeah, but 24 has full control of the ball there, which is Rudy. Rudy. Oh, and there we got a score from London, pass over to um, one of their beaters, uh, Chasers, of course, who was standing at the small hoop, just waiting in perfect position. She jumped up and made that perfect score. So the classic, uh, <laughs> classic waiting at the hoops and just getting it in the perfect moment. Somebody forgets you're there. Yes, exactly. Or they are distracted by this, uh, yep. by Rudy, for example, who is, has been drawing a lot of attention. Munich is trying to get back the bludgers. A lot of beater activity Ooh. and a brooms down for yes. something. Munich there tried to get the bludgers, but London was able to uh, keep it from what it looked like. But Munich was trying to use the confusion here to make a score. I thought it went underneath, but I'm not completely sure. Yeah, I didn't see it go through, but the double troll could have worked nicely. Oh, the goal stands. The goal so stands? Okay. Then well, that's now 10, 10. Uh, on the scoreboard, and that is head after only one minute. Yeah, so <laughs> this, this, guy, this so maybe far. this may be going to be a high-scoring game. I, I'm yeah. all, I'm all, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm all in for a high-scoring game. Okay, I have to say now I'm getting cold. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if even the Norwegian gets it, <laughs> well, I'm standing. You know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> So then, of course, the keeper gets the ball back after the yeah. after the uh, goal. The bludgers of London are behind their are behind. So we will see if the if they will make a fast break for it and will run into one bludger, which I wouldn't be Wh surprised where if is they the did. Bludger? Uh, does okay. it have number four? Yeah, she's like loaded at the at the yeah. midline. That's yeah. uh, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, who apparently is currently writing a naughty Quidditch rule book. I have questions, Judith. I yes, will come find yes. you can on social. Can we interview her? Or <laughs> <laughs> like, Judith, what, what is a naughty Quidditch rule book? I really want to... And why do you need it? I mean, don't be... Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. Yes, we got the score confirmed I think the again from, good. From, the, yeah. uh, from the head ref. And he's about to start the game again. Yeah, that is our Austrian head ref currently living in Switzerland, Thomas. Oh, yeah. how nice. Okay, we get a run here. Oh, actually, a, a the fast break. So London actually didn't go for the two bludgers, but just napalm straight away. Oh, Munich wow. Munich has been dealing with it actually rather good. well. So uh, big chaos. Yeah, and they n did this really nice thing that you should be utilizing a lot when you're getting napalm is to like pass to your beater partner. So they utilized that and could uh, resolve the situation. But also because, of course, the Munich uh, defense is just very strong and they are able to just keep other chases at bay. Exactly. Now we have. Uh, the pass hopefully to the open hoop but the pass really didn't go that well so unfortunately for Munich uh, London got the ball back and now they're trying they're again another fast. Woof, <laughs> another fast break and there unfortunately number three Florian uh, was not able to stop uh, number 34 from London which is Alex McCartney and I think that's Munich oh I thought they were doing Baylor but they're not doing Baylor but they're playing a rather compact defense with a troll behind the hoops Ooh, who goes through. Wow. Okay. That was amazing by her. So very or, fast. Uh, let me check. <laughs> by uh, Raki. Ra Raki. It says here for yeah. the pronunciation. Raki. Um, yeah. So she just she got the ball, handled it very very well. They are just shoot right through two defenders and made that score so good well on her. positioned very very well positioned and also to just like keep cool and be able to score there so london pressing high now here with their bludger chris is out and also one of the beaters we're having a reset here oh 
Actually, Munich got uh, blood sugar control out of that whole um, they did? situation. Yes. Oh, they, wow. They got blood sugar control. Okay, that's good. Good for them. <laughs> yeah, I completely missed that. <laughs> yeah. And now Chris, uh, foreigner who used to play for Antonio I, ah. who's... Uh, Hence the name dropping. <laughs> <laughs> Some name dropping. I think it even says in his fun fact, uh, won against the Titans with Antonio I before. Oh. <laughs> so that was his year, yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, that so we had a... That would have been so nice. So Chris just has the height and also the jumping capacity to catch those balls there, but he unfortunately get, didn't get the ball right away to just make the score. So London got the ball, and now they're in offense looking to score there. Oof, there was an aggressive beater play from the Munich uh, beater. Ooh. I love how London just tried to run in with a fast break into two bludgers and thought, ah, maybe never mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Um, Sometimes you also don't see it. I mean, yeah. I feel like uh, it can have. Oh, oh, what happened just here? Just missed. Okay, okay, he, okay. He but the Munich a throw and a miss. still, still in still play. The ball. We're having trying to pick a pick here. Yeah, we had push a it through. That was Marino Stadler, a former football golf German champion. I'm not sure what football golf is, but I have no apparently idea. Apparently, it makes you good at Quidditch. <laughs> Okay, now we're seeing a standoff here where the keeper <laughs> supposed to uh, restart the quaffle. Oof! Uh, and right away, the wait, the German beater came on and just beat the quaffle out of the hand of the quaffle carrier. That's a good call. If you can, why not? Yeah, I mean, I guess he was hoping to beat the player instead of <laughs> <laughs> throwing the ball away, which of course l landed on London's side. Now we have some ruffle here over the over the bludgers and a miss on the uh, German beater by the London beater. There are... Lon oh, but Munich has a set up defense, so it looks all right. I don't think that was, that a, was score. a long shot, not yeah. at all in. No, I'm not sure if it even was supposed to go through the hoop or no. was supposed oh, to be a... Oh, a good pick there? Yeah, I mean, sometimes. I Especially it wasn't, wasn't he the football golfer or whatever? He yeah. was, yeah. So maybe, maybe he knows how to use his Good feet. I don't, I don't know how football yeah. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how, football go how football golf works, but uh, that maybe was why he had a good kick there. Yeah, oh, that was a very long pass Ooh, from Very long pass. And that did not arrive. Fished out by the Munich defense. Good on them, but yeah. also a good try. I mean, good try. If, they, if they don't pay attention and you can get a long pass like that to somebody at the hoops, perfect. I would that's not I mean, able to throw that far, so that's already <laughs> good on him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's something the Titans do as well a lot, that mm -hmm. they have these. Somebody just... The defense don't see them, and then they get a long pass there. And the Munich beaters are extremely uh, aggressive here and really trying their all to get the bludgers. Oof, Chris yeah, here in a getting tackled in over a problem. and over, but yes. still standing. Yes, and, and being on. able being able to do a good reset to his teammates into the safety of their two bludgers. So Munich yeah. is really uh, controlling the game here right now. They're really taking the space of pitch. Though, to be fair, the score the score is 2020. It so doesn't reflect it. No, I would say from just watching, it really feels like Munich is having the upper hand. But um, what counts is <laughs> the score. <laughs> score. How can you can you actually compete? Well, and here we that's have what a they do. Here we have a completion on Ma Marinus. Or not. But there's a brooms down, so yeah. we will see what um, what is going on. What is going on? I have no idea what the call is. It could I have been something either. in the meter game. But um, I'm sure Thomas will tell us eventually. There's some discussion. I did not see it at all. No, but I, I'm so I, I'm kind of wondering if something in the beta can happen. So yeah. he confirms that the goal is good. Our TV here went off. Oh, well, that's sad. <laughs> well, I guess so we will not know uh, what you guys are seeing, but that's okay. Well. <laughs> I also like to w watch the score so we can play the score <laughs> every once in a while. <laughs> do you have good uh, good enough eyes to watch the scoreboard? I don't. I <laughs> do not, indeed. <laughs> I am also uh, legally a little bit blind, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, yeah, okay, I see, because you're actually yeah. wearing glasses and I don't. Yeah, yeah. I really wonder what this discussion is about. Okay, but um, maybe they're discussing the weather. But considering they just walked off pitch almost to discuss it to be further away from the players, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Not the weather. 
Yeah, do you know how many players Munich or London has? This is something that would have been interesting to ask, I think, as sort of uh, facts about the team. Mm -hmm. How many have actually been to EQC before and, and oh, yeah. how many are sort of new players? Yeah. Do we have more information about I them? think we generally, we ask that on the cheat sheet, we generally ask, are there any rookies or old timers yeah. that we should watch? And some yes. of the teams fill that in quite nicely. I think these teams <laughs> average Limon. Well, maybe now I'm calling them out, even though they didn't quite <laughs> well. But the the go cheat sheets are outside of my reach, so I can't actually get them to go <laughs> check. <laughs> Can we get them? <laughs> no, they're no, in my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you <laughs> so much. Quick instruction to our so lovely much. assistants. Yes. <laughs> Let's see if we have... Ah, number 13 is a rookie. And on 23 from the Unspeakables are rookies. Yeah, okay. So that do I interpret that as that the I guess rest is... Kind of yeah, established. new. Yeah. And then for the Volpatinga, we have Susanna, number 66, who started play playing recently, is already part of the Czech national team. And apparently, a bunch of people who either should have made it or have made it to the national team from the Volpatinga. Oh. Yeah. Is this controversial? Yeah, yeah I think <laughs> it's controversial. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what they say about rivals because. Because they're talking here about actually rivals, the Paris Titans. Yeah. Oh yes, because they used to be actually three ahead at the EQC 2018. Wolpertingers were leading by three goals in the beginning of the game, but then ultimately lost it. So, oh, we almost had a rematch of that then today, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> and London is in Quaffle, uh, has a Quaffle possession and trying to Big finish. Chaos but I feel the like, wasn't there a beat on him? I think I, I definitely saw I saw a bludger flying here from number four something. Thomas might um, be agreeing with you. Well, putting it, could this be a chance? Four? Four? No, you no, did? him blue beater close ah, yeah. to mm -hmm. us. Uh, Forty-five. I just couldn't. Dominic. Dominic. Yeah. So I saw Dominic from behind the hoops. Oh, he says goal stands. Well, okay. maybe, well. maybe you know, I didn't see an impact. Yeah. Uh, no, so it says here Chen Dominic can catch balls, but well, can, maybe he he can, them? can he throw them? Can he throw them? Wow, throwing shade, throwing yeah. shade. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so he definitely take, uh, took a good decision there with a shot, but pro possibly just it didn't connect. I couldn't see yeah. that at all. So and the referees are of course in a much better angle to to see those types of things and make the right calls and decisions. The rest is always right. Yeah. Anyway. And if they're not, <laughs> oh, there was a tackle there from. Oh, oh the that was a hard I, tackle. I think, oh, but while he was on the ground, he managed to get off a hit on the beater partner Dominic so Oda is now oof, uh, very high defense. getting, getting <laughs> <laughs> there is so much happening in the beater battle I don't even know where to look at but let's go to the quaffle because there was a takedown from London on one of the chasers and London is really showing their aggressiveness here we have but it's not working <laughs> hard we have oh, nice, very nice. committed tackles here Serena all over the time standing next to the hoops yep classic yep. Oh, I'm a female chaser. Nobody will see me. And then, whoop, it goes in. That was just perfect. Also, that uh, I think Chris gave that, gave that pass to her that he saw her open there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she was calling for it or if yeah. he just saw it, but yeah. that was perfect. Yeah. If if the strong people that have to be tackled can just like draw these tackles on them, yeah, yeah. It's that's what you, I that mean. I don't say that that's what you want to do, but if if that's how the game tactic. goes, it's a tactic. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I like it that you can just see the Volpatinger kind of standing still and passing to one another, and the the unspeakables just running yeah. at them, trying to grab yeah, someone, yeah, absolutely, and just not absolutely. really getting there. I mean, if this is what they understand of uh, we want to get drunk and have fun, then I mean, good on them. Yeah, good on them. <laughs> but the goal oh. doesn't stand, or does it? Is I'm very confused. There's some, some waving. Okay, and there were some cards given. Eagle Eagle, contact from behind, no good. What? I. Th did, can we get a quick hazard to the viewers here what the head ref said? Okay, because there was definitely something with contact from behind. So we couldn't, unfortunately, could not hear what the referee was saying. But I think that maybe a goal that Unspeakable scored was called no good. But then the one from um, 
Munich was? From Munich was called good or something, and then, or it was for the penalty time. Well, oh, here, good we'll tackle. We'll keep going and look at good all the speed here from Oda, But she was able to resolve the situation. Now she is going to join there, the hustle. Oh, and she missed that one, but was it not out of bounds? I would These have made boundaries? the boundary call, but No, okay. but I think because it's the, it's not the ah. stark white line, but it's the, the ah, yeah. more subtle white line, so it's yeah. very confusing. Yeah. Also, also, as a player, I think it's very confusing. And as confusing. a ref, probably also. Yeah, probably yeah. as well. <laughs> well, the ball is still after a grand reset all the way back to the sub box with the unspeakables. Oh, I really love those pants from number 14. They're like very pink. I love it. Yeah, those are some good pants. L fits very well with the kit, honestly. Ooh, that was a good pass attempt, but he just was not able to reach that and Munich gets the ball. What is happening in the beater game? We have Munich with bludger control and also Munich walking up the pitch with uh, their waffle. One of the hoops is down on London side. The classic middle hoop fall down. Yes. If it was Munich, I would probably have asked to put it up again, but uh, yeah. yeah, well, what can I you guess do? they're confident that they'll score either way. Well, yeah, one could say that, but uh, what is the score indeed? Because we can't see our screen here is gone. So the score is 30. Uh, it's 40 to 30 for Munich. I and Munich it popping it in quite nicely again. By number two, Yannick Shallow, who, for pronunciation of his name, said, think the Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper song. Sh shallow. Shallow. Oh. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but now we have 50 to 30 for Munich. I still, and, and we're at almost 10 minutes, I still would say that from how situations look on pitch, I really would not think about this as a close match between the two. But Definitely um, not. But if they're not putting in the points, they're not putting in the points. No, that is correct. And now we're having some beater face off where London is trying to get the bludgers back. Oh, we have a great interception here from Chris. Who's who gonna running up the ball fast and oh, break? Wait, d didn't he get hit? Was he still in his keeper zone? I'm very confused. I think he was still in his keeper zone. Ah. Yeah. yeah. And he made that pass. Oh, that was so sad because he was uh, all that would have been beautiful. I'm, I'm not even sure why he made that pass because no. I felt like he could have just run it all in, but maybe yeah. he was like, I want to give it to my teammate yeah. or I don't know, you, you never know. Yeah. Being um, too nice <coughs> is possible. <laughs> <laughs> so they did not get a score on that fast break, though it looked like they should have been getting a score in that. Now we have London with the Quaffle bringing it up the pitch and they have one Ledger, which is uh, behind the Quaffle game. She's making her run up now to support her chasers. I'm very... They're so London, yeah, I'm just, I'm just wondering. So London has here in offense, they basically have interesting on the right hand side. She's out of screen, unfortunately, but basically away from the uh, hoop. Now there is a chaser waiting. Basically, she was waiting almost on hoop line to, to make a run in number 23 so now she's supporting she has a quaffle now passing it over to her teammate and that could have been tries a goal. To throw it no it's through, not but i guess goal. missed real hard and we have some beater tackle here but it was resolved yeah. by uh, beating the beater and there was a good catch but then she gets the london beater did actually get hit in the back I thought, but maybe There's not. some kerfuffling and going on here. Now the quaffle is and down with two players. Did you watch the chaser game? I was looking at the chaser game. I saw two people bumping into each other and falling on the ground. I think it might be an injury. Yes, it looks like we're asking for injuries up right here. Yeah. Let's hope that this was just uh, a small... You know, like sometimes you're just shocked in the yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah. And then you go off pitch and you're like, Have I'm, a drink I'm of water. Fine. Like, I'm fine. Yeah. Like, why did I even, yeah. like, why did I cry? <laughs> Stop crying. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> sometimes you just I gotta have cry. I have that all the time. Like, well, especially when you get like a bludger in your face. Oh, even yeah. if it's not mm -hmm. super painful, just the shock. You have so yeah. many nerves in your face and mm -hmm. just the like shock of the impact and everything. I just like yeah. start crying, yeah. even though I'm not hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people always think it's really bad. <laughs> Well, better than the other way around, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. There's some people who just keep going and you're like, mm, 
Yeah, we had a player once who uh, turns out after the tournament he actually had a broken nose. Like he broke his nose, I think, in the second oh. game and played the whole tournament with it. I don't know how you can See, play a whole that... tournament with a broken nose. I could never. I could never. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely not my thing, unfortunately. I wish I was a little tougher sometimes. Okay, now London has the quaffle making a attempt on the hoop or making a pass towards uh, trying number to find an opening. Yeah, number Ooh, fifteen boy, yo, on the yo, floor. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, somebody on that the was floor a very hard beat on the chaser over there, number thirteen. Okay, and we have another stoppage, probably because of another injury contact. No, I think this will be a card for illegal contact. I think that number two thinks so too. Yes, he so is already. Is he is already on his way off, uh, Looking off the pitch. Defeated. Sorry, I think it's. Hedren. I mean, it is also nice when players just, even if they disagree, yeah. if they're just like, yeah, I'm getting a card. Like, yeah. like, yeah, like yeah. I'm just gonna take it. I'm just gonna walk yeah. it off, instead of always complaining, always exactly. arguing. That's not. That's not the vibe we want to go for. The feedback <laughs> the head ref can come after the game, over a beer, <laughs> over a drink. Yes, indeed. Not shouting in the middle of the pitch. New card, Munich, number two, illegal contact, low contact. One minute in a penalty box or until the opposing team scores. I think we just heard the head ref for the yeah. first time. Yellow card from Munich, number two, illegal contact, low contact. They get one minute in the penalty box or until the opposing team scores. Thomas was very thorough there, even repeating it for the live stream. Beautiful. Very, very nice. So now, of course, London will have the quaffle since they got a yellow, since Munich got a yellow card. Oh yeah. But where is, where is the quaffle? I am very confused. Where is the quaffle? There is one black. Everyone is looking over there. Oh yeah, it's uh, in the middle of the uh, boundary in the back there, number... Well, oh, oh yeah, number I'm 24, I Is think. it number 24? Yeah. yeah, I think it's number 24. One of the bludgers from the Unspeakables is all the way behind their hoops. They also have one, I think that's Monique yeah. Davis standing there. I think they're fighting, player. yeah, yeah. I think the idea was they're probably napalming, so we can see yeah. uh, both the beaters, well, we can see it, the live stream can't see it, but the beaters are all the way in the right corner where they were fighting over a blutter that Munich yeah. has at the moment, but it looks like the London beater is absolutely ready to try to take the blutter or and take him down at least. I guess at least take him out of the boundary. Yes, which would be of course very, very good, uh, then he would get that blutter. Yeah. So M London is in a very good setup right now, they're also Score, having, I mean a, they're having a free... Ooh, oh, wow! Um, or no a score, good so block. Chris, Chris blocked that shot on the hoop and now he's facing off and uh, Rudy just can't seem to get past, but now he did. And but that was the, very scored. impressive. Yes, so that was a good block by Chris, but it didn't help in the end, they scored after all. Unspeakables deciding that uh, they might want to hold both of their bludgers in defense. Good choice, I think. <laughs> well. Munich is certainly getting ready to get that bludger control, but uh, I'm also confused. It wasn't she beat? I'm very confused. Uh, I thought she the Munich might have been beat. I think she thinks she might have been beat too, the number four. Yes, um, and then I definitely think that that London Unspeakables beater should have gotten a bludger, which she did now, I think, indicated by the referee. And Munich is still in play, trying to save the quaffle there. Uh, from going out of the boundary and not really number 24 it. to number 24 is oh now she's being pushed almost over the boundary and number 44 the keeper there, is yes. Tachana her main goal is to tackle very tall people well she did well, get tackled by a very tall person she did get tackled maybe <laughs> almost there <laughs> almost there but the Munich team does have the bludger control back that is indeed correct. So how are they setting up? What type of... Yeah, okay, so Munich is playing basically like a two, two defense. Double point? Yeah, double point. And London is spreading out there, very much playing almost like a square. Oh, she was in a, such a beautiful position there, but I thought she, she got beat. She might have beat. But uh, it was hard to tell. Yeah. I'm sure the referees come together now to check if the beat actually connected. Yeah. But it's a good response of the Unspeakables to play so wide against yes. the double point. Yes, exactly. So they were they are really spreading out into the far corners of the pitch to have all the 
possibilities. I think we can unfortunately, at least on our screen, not currently see the score. Yes, the score is gone from the live stream. <laughs> okay, well, um, I guess it will reappear eventually. <laughs> but I think the unspeakables it's are... Oh. Yes. Yeah, she's still good in range, and I think they're kind of picking up speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel I feel like they're they're getting the hang of it. They're getting maybe a read on how how Munich is playing in offense mm -hmm. and defense, and they're able to deal a little bit better with it. Yeah, anticipate a bit better. Yes, yes. So uh, I guess I have to go back on my word that Munich is gonna crush <laughs> <laughs> London. There is no call. Goal is does not send. It was beat before. The score still stands: 40 unspeakables, 50 Munich. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah. So. It was a beat, indeed. You I have think good I eyes. I think I have to get my jacket. All right, I will fill the air while Lisa go gets her jacket or points at someone to get her a jacket. That's very smart, Lisa. <laughs> Outsource that <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we keep looking at Thomas, who is still speaking to his refs. Not really sure what he's talking about. Maybe he's just giving, you know, like a, sometimes the referees have like, can you please yeah. watch out for yeah. this specific thing or that specific True. thing? It keeps happening a lot. Yeah. And, and then you just want to, as a head referee, give some specific feedback for that specific match, mm -hmm. maybe in the middle of the match. So that's that's just part of it. Um, all the teams are different and some yeah. sometimes things come up that usually don't come up that often. And but we I see here the blood Oh, rush. I think there's a timeout ah. call from one of the yeah. teams. I'm not sure which one, but if I were Munich, I would be calling a timeout right now. Yeah, I have a feeling that they might yeah. have been the ones uh, yeah. that called the timeout here. Probably, so we are at almost uh, 14 minutes now. Mm -hmm. So the snitch will be on pitch in three minutes and then the seekers released in four minutes. So yeah, I mean... I would not be comfortable right now if I were Munich going into this. I would be thinking we're winning this. They just almost beat the Titans. I mean, that's a comfortable sport to start in, but now... Yeah, I would love to be in that team huddle right now and hear what <laughs> they're saying, you know. I, I, I guess uh, it's, it's like we we got to get our shit together here yeah. and, and pull this pull this through. Uh, I mean, they clearly want to go to upper bracket. And if yeah. they're losing this specific match, of course, then they basically can't go. I mean, it c depends a little bit on pe how people play and mm -hmm. so on. But then it would be expected that London potentially makes upper bracket and, yeah. and uh, Munich would go into lower bracket because basically if you lose two matches it usually means yeah. of course it depends on how if there are some ties and so on but often losing yeah. one is okay losing, losing two, two means no you're no. you're usually you're usually out yeah. so Munich both teams if they want to make upper bracket uh, but we only know from Munich specifically they that they to. said that as their goal <laughs> yeah um, then then they really have to pull through here and uh, and for example, catch that snitch. Yeah, so what we're starting out with here now after the timeout is one bludger with Munich and two loose bludgers on the ground close enough to unspeakables that I think these are two London bludgers. Yes, I would say so. Both of the beaters are in a very close and good position to get those bludgers. Uh, we have number one, I think, uh, Ma Matthew Drummond and yeah. then number uh, 12. That is Monique Davis who is very often found on the live stream, but unfortunately, since she is the captain of the Unspeakables this time, didn't really find the time. Oh, well, yeah. okay. But yeah. it's, I mean, it's great that she has been doing this before and, and stepping up and helping out. Exactly. <laughs> Next time, we hope she volunteers less for her team and more for <laughs> ours. <laughs> yeah, that is always a problem, I feel, in Quidditch. Oh, oh and there was, was already there was a good run Florian on... Florian Messima, who played in the UK before, but wanted to win EQC this time, and therefore... I guess went to Munich. I wonder which team he played before. He should have said that in his fun fact. Yeah, like, there's so cool. many teams yeah. in the UK <laughs> that, oh, there that was, was a, a beater beat. from, oh, yeah. But also, I don't think the London <laughs> Unspeakable Chaser was aware of that there was a beater coming no, from behind. No, at all. Uh, so he was standing very still here. And I feel yeah. like Munich had an almost lost opportunity or missed opportunity here to make a fast break for mm -hmm. it because Unspeakables clearly were not, were not ready. But yeah, it seems like Munich was also not ready. No. Reset used here from Munich and if the number 13 could have really tried to make a push over here over the line because they f used their first reset and if he just yep. pushed the Munich player who had the quaffle over the line they could have gotten uh, the, the quaffle so yeah. that would have been a really smart play to try that since there wasn't even a beater around who yep. could just easily yep. tap him. 
But Munich has bludger control and the quaffle, and I wonder if they're, when they're trying to... Yeah, it almost looks like they're like trying to save time almost. Are they trying to run out the clock in offense? I to think oh! be a, and a good pushing through. That's what we yes. always tell our chasers. <laughs> elbow push deep. Through. <laughs> Jake, uh, Jakob Lenz from OCI Vikings always says elbow deep. Elbow deep. <laughs> well, I think that's a very good <laughs> advice. And I was definitely taken here by Yannick. Absolutely. Elbow deep. <laughs> It's like delivering a calf from a cow. Go in elbow deep yes. and then you'll get there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we can see that the Munich beater is going for a, a aggressive play here. Both beaters were beat, but uh, the London beater actually didn't go for the loose ball on the ground. Ooh, that was nice a nice beat. And also right then the uh, Quaffe played into the keeper. Number one, that Azini is... Maxim. Oh, wow. Who yeah, plays Quidditch, okay. has a strange sense of humor, and is French. Oh, yeah, okay. Ah, but the ball's already back with the unspeakables. Oh, that was a beautiful beat here on the potential receiver. But a reset um, instead? Yes. I mean, it's it's always good to force resets. It's yeah. never it's never bad to force a reset. No. Maybe you wanted to go for more, but it's always good because then you can play potentially aggressive and try to make them go for that second reset and now Munich is just trying to they don't even have to get the ball because of course last uh, London was in possession so they don't need to make a hassle for that ball because they knew that London is not gonna get it in time so they would get the turnover oh and there I don't even know what happened London was distracted I don't know if they're getting tired they were just still chilling yeah, this would not be the moment for me to chill, considering <laughs> that their Munich is now oh, out that of timeout, range. That timeout maybe just brought it back for them. So Munich actually now out of range. Yeah. And just when the snitch is entering the pitch. Exactly. I so Munich players told me that they have a core roster that was playing this game, an extra and then an extra backup. So maybe they brought the first backups in <laughs> and they got a bit of extra energy back. Who knows? Oh, is that Tongi as Snitch? Who is our Snitch? I think it so, looks, yeah. Looks like it. Yeah. So we, we know Tongi is more of like the runner type usually. So it will be interesting to see how if if teams adapt their Seekers tradition. Uh, Reset Seekers, Seekers strategy for that or um, if they're just going with their standard array. I don't know anything about their Seekers, so... We shall see who they send on, and we shall see how oh, Tongi showing yeah. off for the camera. Is doing that <laughs> and is that London a has the quaffle behind the hoop. Oda is pressing out. Oh, there was a good interception from Munich, but actually London getting the ball back. And now the Seekers are relieved. Oh my God, look at that look hair at that from hair. the... From Bill <laughs> is bringing wow. the hair. There He's is no bringing it in on. Again, clearly, clearly London wants to go for the catch here to catch up those points because if they were catching now then they would only be 10 points down and would only need to score four more goals while uh, Munich would need to score three more goals so it's yeah. actually very very good if they catch the snitch in this, this uh, is a good now. overtime starter to be fair though Munich has bludger control and probably uh, wants to uh, wants to keep it safe oh oder goes there for the for the tackle on the beater um, but I think she is being sent back to hoops. And now Munich scores another goal. So they're a little bit ahead and Munich Seeker has some alone time on the snitch, but which it's now... Which just ended. Which <laughs> just ended. And London here really struggling to get the upper hand in the beater game. So uh, um, Munich is doing a really good job with the... Uh, with keeping bludger control, keeping control, but now it may be London's chance to oh. get bludger control, a and there is a brooms down. down. Geo, they're holding the ball just after the midline. Might there have been a Maybe reset? Maybe he is he. No, Thomas is running to the score table. Interesting. I wondered if he was going to correct the score or something. It looks like he is doing something else. Is he getting a new whistle? We Maybe don't he's getting know. getting a new whistle. Exciting. Well, I wanted to look at what the fun fact about Phil Morris, who plays here in <laughs> Double Zero for London Unspeakables as a seeker, but unfortunately, um, we only have Matthew Drummond who actually submitted the fun fact of this team. So 
unfortunately. Uh, I think the hair might already be fun enough. Yeah, to be honest. yeah. Honestly, that hair is pretty cool. I wonder how long it takes to. I he don't already know, to had it at 6:30 a.m. this morning. So you think he sleeps like that? That's a good question. I think we're gonna have to ask <laughs> it later. <laughs> That's a good interview. Because it was the same yesterday. Yeah, I definitely saw him, saw 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 this person uh, around. Um, yeah. And yeah, Phil I was mean also doing the logistics for the tournament while oh, playing. Oh, good on you, so Phil! Wow, um, listen to that. That's yeah. really amazing. Phil also, I wonder is Phil a dedicated seeker? Because I feel like we uh, haven't seen. I feel like he hasn't been on him. pitch before no, now. Could be. So I. And yeah, that would be, be, a, be a good fun fact. Local Limerick player, dedicated seeker, and amazing Oh, he's a Limerick lover. player. Well, at least he's from around here. Oh, okay. Did he help them sort of write the... He did write know? a bid for all of this. Oh. That could also be a fun fact. You're true. He wrote oh a bid for all of this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So yeah. he's actually yeah. famous. He is actually <laughs> famous. <laughs> or he should be, for sure. Yeah. Wow, okay, so <laughs> any any more interesting facts so you know about him? So he helped uh, getting not only EQC here, but also but EG. European games. Yeah. That, the, the man, the legend. Oh, now the he man, lost the his legend. Now he lost his mouth guard. <laughs> Got it we right back We all have though. some mistakes in our lives. Okay, <laughs> so actually now Unspeakables are getting some time on uh, the Seeker. London is dedicating their only bludger there while Munich uh, wants to defend their hoops, which is fair because they are leading. They really don't want to let in any no. scores. Um, Phil just being beat. Yes. And now London also getting ready for another attack from Munich. Munich, of course, has no haste to drive in uh, that ball at all. There is no... They have time. They have... I mean, unless, of course, the referee uh, says... A beautiful <laughs> beat there. ...that there was a delay of game. But um, beside that, they really have time. And I don't think that there is any bludger in the defensive game. No. So no. it's, oof, very, very nice shot from the keeper here. Oh, and, and the snitch the catch, catch. And the snitch catch by the by Munich, Munich seeker. But Tangi is already putting ha it yeah, back Tangi on. Yeah, Tangi is already putting it back on. So it's I wonder if that means... Good news. No, they are already the referee and <laughs> Snitch are like, nope, 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 But nope, Thomas still wants to talk. Which is fair, which yeah. is fair. Maybe he wants to, you know, hear what happened and then yeah. they know actually, you know, according to the rules, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Tangi has been in the game for a while, for so long. He must yeah. have been, what do you think? How long has he been playing Kilo now? 10 years? Could be something like Oof. that. Since before I was there. When did you start? 2016. Yeah. Yeah, so that's at least six plus years, and yes. already then Tangi was a yeah. veteran. And and same for me. I mean, I started playing in 2014, and then also Tangi was there already. So uh, <laughs> think, uh, yeah. so maybe he is either closing in on his tenth year, or already is in his tenth year. Who even knows? We've got maybe a Quidditch elder going on <laughs> here. <laughs> he definitely doesn't look it though. Like I I feel like this man every time. I Some see. people never <laughs> age. No, no, that is true. So I really wonder uh, why it was not good. I was really not paying attention nope. to the snitch game here, unfortunately. I um, was looking at the beaters. That and uh, also, we're not paying attention to the TV, of course. There could have been a yeah. replay yeah, <laughs> that we just completely <laughs> ignored. Uh, anyways, uh, so we're what getting... So going on now? Or Ah. Beat before. I think he said. He said beat before. The score stands! Munich 100, London Unspeakables 50. For the live stream, the catch is not good. It was beat before. That was clear. Yep, very clear. Good that uh, both the snitch and the uh, snitch rev saw the beat. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there's I did not. almost nothing more frustrating than uh, than. <laughs> You oh. know, uh, yeah. catching, or the other team catches, and you know you beat them, mm -hmm. but the, nobody saw the beat. I mean, yeah. oof. When I can't sleep, I see that in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Reliving those moments nightmares, over and nightmares. over. I don't think it has happened so much to me, but there was this controversial at uh, World Cup in 2016 with Australia versus USA in the final. There was this problem. Um, where where the the winning catch was basically a beater beat a beater who beat the seeker and then it was ah. called uh, that the seeker wasn't beat but actually w it was a whole mess it was a whole mess um, and there was a controversy about it and yeah 
But let's focus on this game. So the beaters are just going bonkers all over the field, how we know it from the, the snitch game. And um, the speaker's just running after Tangi, who just keeps running away backwards. Yes, <laughs> we know Tangi, we know and love Tangi for, for this type of snitch line. I mean, he is quite uh, short, which makes it difficult for him to play against taller players with long arms. Mm -hmm. But he's pretty good at woof. Uh, he's pretty good at um, at keeping on his feet, keeping people away and just being fast and this like back paddling. So he's doing a really good job there. The Unspeakables there bringing their bludger very far, almost out of boundary behind the hoops. Yes, to get back that bludger control. Oh Which no, did he, not did, happen. he did such a good job there getting bludger control, but then the Munich player was just ready to get the bludger woo, uh, from that was being reset. And London finding themselves uh, really outmatched here in the beater game, at least. Ooh, oh, but that, that was, was almost a catch. Almost a catch, even so though that was close. very, very much ripped on the oof. <laughs> and now we have a jumpy seeker here while Munich has the quaffle and tries to make it through. One hoop is down and he is one versus three people. Another and music <laughs> player just oh picks nice up the ball pass. and there was an overcommitment to the tackle, made that player trip. Whoops! He, I think he just got pushed there by a teammate to be f to be honest. But Munich still has the ball, question ball? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Ah, that's really good. And again, Munich of course has time. They know that the time is the more time they waste here, the more it's in their favor, and London is getting very hectic around the snitch. They're getting tired, I think, while Munich is looking strong, looking good. I think the beater just missed on, yeah, on the seeker did. there. Ooh, Number and we have a jumping. jump here. Oh. So and London trying to score here, looking for the score, but Munich actually sent also a bludger into defense, or even two. So I really think Munich wants to play a style here where they go only on the snitch when they are on offense, but then that on defense. That was a goal. And then in defense, they really want to keep, keep London from scoring so that they can just continue scoring and, and that the other team doesn't catch. Um, I think there is a an injury, injury in the seeker game. And did you see just now the number one from Munich just walked basically right up and put the ball through the hoop? Well, this is <laughs> sometimes how it goes. Uh, p teams can fall apart in the snitch game. This is literally what just happened <laughs> to my team when Do we played. Oh my god! It, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, what what can I say? I think we did pretty okay until the swim, but then in swim, of course, I mean. Uh, what what do you do if if <laughs> we were our strategy was we go on the snitch always on the snitch we don't care yeah. about the quaffle game yeah. uh, if that's the directory and that's what we beaters did and then they scored a lot on us yeah so this is how it you goes did your and job I mean as a beater <laughs> you do what you're told right but uh, I mean we also <laughs> didn't really get back bludger control which we were also <laughs> told by the coach <laughs> go in there get back bludger control but yeah. Uh, yeah this is just how it goes and I can uh, definitely see myself right there in in London <laughs> unspeakables <laughs> losing the grasp on the yeah. game and the other team so just pulling ahead and and just really being confident and you know once sometimes it's also my i mean it gets into your head as well right mm -hmm. on on the negative as on the positive side i think yeah. munich they play with this confidence now they know they got this this time out really i mean i think they they took the time out I but so that too. that must have really taking wonders for them you know like we got this we can do this we are the better team and like just go on pitch and and show them and that's what they did after the timeout so there's another timeout here but uh, I guess that would be called by London then well who knows who if by I whom. were Munich right now I would not really be calling a timeout mm -mm, mm -mm. I would be chilling you don't want to disturb your flow yeah once you once you're there once you're in the flow and and they haven't not that much reason to really uh, uh, call a timeout here and, really and talk, talk about the tactics. They're doing double. well. I mean, they're, they're doing so, so well. Uh, they really have control over both the quaffle and the, the snitch game. They keep uh, bladder control. They, they are good uh, keeping the snitch free from or well. The London seekers do get some attempts, but of course now they're so far ahead that uh, and, and they control the chaser game so much that I guess they they are they're thinking it's it's fine even if they catch. Of course, it would be preferable to catch yourself if you're leading that much. But yeah, uh, yeah. And if you were now in the huddle of the unspeakables, what would you be telling your teammates? 
Yeah, I guess you would want to talk about what's the strategy. Like, do you do you go for that bladder control no matter what? Mm -hmm. Do you do you resign and focus on the quaffle game? Because, uh, yeah, I think I think uh, you have to make a decision about do we try to score more and then catch, or do we try to catch and, and then, then score, score more? more. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think that's sort of the decision you have to take in that moment, and that's not an easy decision. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally am a fan of trying to go for a catch because, first of all, it gives you a boost. Literally, yep. it gives you three goals, and I know the other team has less goals still. But even if they, you know, if they would catch, they're 90, then it would be 90, 110. Then they only have five more goals to score, while while Munich still has to do three more goals. Um, that's and you can get a difference. You can you can get like that can really boost your mental game. And I mean, clearly the seeker is trying to catch. It's not like they're defending the snitch. No. So, uh, but they may do a difference now. We can see that the beater is shielding or watching the quaffle game, helping with the quaffle game here. Oh, that was really really nice of the beater. He actually prevented. Oh, that's a catch by yeah. Phil. So, and I will have to point out that that number nine from London, actually here prevented so this is only uh, prevented the quaffle going over the midline by stopping the uh, and which would stop the quaffle from resetting so of course if he's there uh, and can yeah we're getting the replay here from the snitch catch or oh, unfortunately there was exactly <laughs> the, <laughs> the station down there a little bit in the way um, but it, but it looked very good. clean. I mean, from what we can ah, see. Okay. Oh, Phil doesn't, Phil, really know. Phil, <laughs> Phil doesn't want to claim the victory yet. No. Uh, very humble, very humble very here. Very humble. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so unfortunately, yeah, the, we we can't really do anything about. But I think yeah, um, you can see the pants were a little bit crooked at the end. So maybe there was a, an accidental pants Oof. grab. What is happening here? Okay, we get the full what play. We get the full play. We get the full play. No, that, that looked. Good. I mean, of course, yeah. the pants are a little bit twisted, but I think but they're always. But I don't think this necessarily comes from him grabbing the pants. But of course, it's Velcro. If yeah. you if you rip the snitch and you only have the snitch in your hand and you rip it to the side, there is force that will drag the pants too. So yeah. Yeah. it's it's a bit difficult to say since since unfortunately we had something in the way there. But it from what good. we I think from what we have on on camera, it looked pretty good here. And. Um, so now the referees are just, uh, looks like the catch, catch is good. good. Okay, right. so now we are back yep. into a different game. I think we're in a pivotal moment now. Yes, so uh, London brought themselves back. Basically, they got three goals, and this can be a game changer also for your mental game. You know, like suddenly you're not 50 under anymore. Uh, or well, you're 50 away from winning in this case, of yeah, course. Yeah. So unspeakables have to score now five goals. Munich would have to score three goals. Whoever gets to the set score of 140 first will win the match. And the flow, I think <coughs> the flow is very important. If yes. I were Munich right now, I'd be a bit like, oh, what just happened? Exactly, exactly. So it can. Th I think uh, the the mental game of of Quidditch is something that we don't really talk about so much and I mean it's the same as for any sport there's nothing special for no, Quidditch no. of course it's it's but but it's I think in other heads. yeah exactly I think in other sports they're really focusing a lot on working on that mental game how to get into your good mental state how to not mm. like let the other team influence um, yours and now London even gets back bludger control they're playing wow their own game. okay 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 so see they have <coughs> the energy back yeah but now um, the Munich chaser here fished out that long pass that would have been nice to a, a London chaser. Um, but Munich has the quaffle now. Let's see what they're going to do with it. London has bludger control for, I mean, that hasn't happened in a, a while. A ton this game, and they lost it. So yeah, well, <coughs> that was a short. Uh, yeah. But okay. And there is the London unspeakable speeder took a shot there and got shot out herself. And now I think Big London turnover. should London should get that ball because Munich had it last. Yeah. Oh, and the Munich beater is oh, running that for it. that ball. That wow. She thought. <laughs> So that London beater thought she was safe, but there is no beaters in the Munich team. And London is scoring. Woo, 
I so, think it might have been a pivotal moment there. Oh, this, this is, is getting scary. this is getting way more interesting <laughs> than than <laughs> I thought, especially in between when Munich was pulling ahead. Yeah. Which I mean, I personally am a fan of close matches. I love so um, yeah. right now this has become much more interesting again than it was maybe five minutes ago. Quickly, the hoop is being put back up. I hope it will stay now. Oh, it seems like it's going again. Okay, we have a Napalm here going from Munich, but the London beater actually did very, very well. And there was a pass that was intercepted by number 34 from London, who has been actually playing really, really well. This is Alex McCartney. Has been playing pretty good all match, and now in the last minutes, he has really, um, has really sort of pulled up uh, his game and now we see a napalm from from London on Munich to the which throw. is uh, I think Oda hit her oh it's called okay, not a good beat very 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 shortly I'm I'm Tom, if what are you gonna do I thought that was a beat I thought it was a beat but if it wasn't then Mu unspeakables did just do the thing so that's uh, wait if they just scored did they win no 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 okay, no no okay, no, 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 they no. Can? but they're pulling even <laughs> if they scored even. then they pulled even and yeah. then they just mm -hmm. scored two in a row they and just got the in. snitch yeah okay okay but no anyways I don't yeah. think I don't think it matters too much for like no. the, the mindset that London is in right now they did a great play the the like I, th I think London is in a good in a good uh, mind space good right now and <laughs> yes, and Munich uh, maybe not so much. So um, we shall see. And the bludgers here are with London. Yes. So there's one behind. The, of course, London was just napalming. Yeah. So um, there is one bludger behind the hoops that uh, possibly that London should also be getting because the uh, Munich beaters are at the hoop lines or behind. Um, so. Uh, Munich with ball and one bludger. The poor goal ref there at the London side trying to keep that middle hoop up. It's a <laughs> difficult job here Doing with the job. Ireland. I think we're getting a... Okay. Are we getting a card? No, no, no. no I think okay. he just explained to the live stream probably ah. beat before. Yeah. I'm not sure if it... Uh, we don't always get his no. voice on our... <laughs> Would be lovely. <laughs> yes. Okay. So... The beaters clearly want to go back to getting bludger control here. Oda is going for a tackle. Uh, I'm not sure what Drummond was doing, Get but it, Oda but is getting... Ball. There is a scramble on the ground, and Drumming oh. is getting the better of it. Yeah. Unexpected. And now there is... Oh! An injury. But how? Okay, I wasn't really watching the Chaser game, but it didn't look like... I think there Maybe was there some was a tackle. form of contact. I'm not sure if we're getting rather a replay here on it or something. No, we're not getting a replay. We don't a want to. I push than, yes. a, than a tackle, and I think that that didn't land very well. No, but the, the I London mean sometimes it's just yes. Sometimes there's just stupid things like you get like a shoulder in your face or something yeah. like not not yeah. even ill intent, but just I mean it's a full contact sports. Sometimes uh, it so happens. sometimes just like stupid accidents happen. I mean, even in sports where there is no full contact whatsoever or sort of no contact sports. Say soccer, where sometimes you get hit yeah, in the head. People, of course, run into each other, jump into each other, and so on, and things just happen. So, um, but there is a card, in fact. Ah, I guess we will hear very soon what is yes. going on. Because Thomas has been very, very good at uh, explaining to the live stream what actually happened. So I it looks I like illegal contact from on. behind. But we'll wait for him to confirm. He's walking. <laughs> and we can't hear him, but I think but we're seeing but him say contact from behind yes, very clearly. Yes, the, the signs he made there is illegal contact from behind for a uh, yellow card to uh, that I think London our uh, video mixer and audio mixers are currently putting up uh, some protection against the rain that seems to be incoming so oh i think God. that is <laughs> a that good call meanwhile the game restarted and larger control is still with london yeah and london of course is a player down now so i wonder if munich is going to sort of like 
uh, press on using that advantage or if they're not. Oh, that was a fantastic beat there by, what was her name? I think that's Monique Davis, number yes. 12 yes. from London. That was a fantastic Phenomenal beat on the, on, the, uh, on the receiver. It's amazing if you can take them out before they basically can do anything. You I always beat them just after. <laughs> <the first laughs> yes. Same, same, same. So now she just got beat and there was a play to a Munich player who, however, didn't get the ball, but in fact made the score. Actually, so now Munich is only two away from winning, while London is still four away from winning. It is anybody's game at this point. I think both are not quite sure who will win, and neither are we. And I wonder if Munich thought this game was going to get be different. I mean, the, as you said, I they just so. came out of they just came out of that game uh, with Titans, and of course, if mm -hmm. you're playing even with Titans. You're expecting you, think you should you have it like in the bag. Yeah, yeah. You're like you're as good as the Titans. You should be I mean, able to run through opponents. A random London team. A random London team. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So you should be able to just run through opponents. But uh, it's apparently, not and I mean they are of course also they just won the German. Oh, and they just won the German uh, championship. Uh, well, Quidditch Pokal. I'm not sure yeah. if it's actually the same. But uh, they just won a German tournament, so they are good, they are strong. The final was very, very nice. Oh, fantastic beat here again and by Monique. And, a oh, but no drive, but break don't drive into two into beaters. Two beaters don't that drive into two beaters. Doesn't happen, but good yes, try. I think there they would want to play it cool, get their full yeah. team on, because they really need those scores. Those are not chances you're taking when you, no. when you, you don't run into two beaters. Um, on a chance, not, when, on when not in this moment. So then, then rather wait for your offense, make a established offense, and and, uh, and take your whole take your whole team in there. Yeah, that oh. was very close there. Ooh, the like London players are really go oh, London and players are really going for it. They're really physical. They want this. At least that's how they're playing right now. I think they're seeing a chance of winning this. If I were London, I would see a chance of winning this. Absolutely, absolutely. And London has the ball and that has also Gio. prevented again from uh, Munich from scoring. So I'm so curious to see who will, who will take this game home. Oh, that was a very long pass. But far pass from Gio, out of the pitch. That was maybe a little bit uh, unexpected. <laughs> I don't think the chaser was necessarily expecting that ball. No. It's Gio. He does unexpected shit sometimes. <laughs> Part of the deal. The Munich beater going very aggressive here on the London beater. Oh, but missed him completely. But and if then the quaffles Munich, in, the quaffles in. But <laughs> Munich scored. And that's at this very moment, it's all that matters. It Their doesn't one go away. Yes, they're one goal away from winning. So right now, I don't think, like, they could not care less about if they ha lose their blood sugar control or what. They just want to go all in and that make and ball. make those make those goals. Yeah. And uh, London, of course, needs to keep it together because they are four away from winning. So yeah, right now it's tightening up for Munich. We see a bludger all the way going to the back there from London. Oda scaring the beater almost out of the pitch. I would be scared too if Oda would walk up to me. Yeah, she. I think she should have gone there for a tackle or push out so just too. just to try that it. Last 20 centimeters. Oh, that was a nice a very reset. Big reset. Very big and I nice reset. I don't think that's allowed if there's no receiver? Question mark. Yeah, I mean there was a person running though, but I suppose that in the moment because it's originally, as far as I know, it's about the moment of arrival and not of the moment of when ah. the player kicks and okay. of course that we had definitely at London, yeah someone. at arrival there was somebody running for the ball but this is definitely also discretion of the referee yeah i suppose the referee uh, either the ball was already out on the other side which could have been yeah. or that it was uh, reset to uh, no one no one it was questionable but very, very good thought if i would try the same thing <laughs> the ball would go anywhere but the plant direction yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would probably go off a good effort. right, right uh, off pitch, right uh, straight away. Okay, London uh, with blooders, and they really now they need to keep it smart. They need to play smart. Uh, maybe they're very aggressive here, and I'm, I'm not, not sure necessarily. And I the Munich do. beater is again missing, and I'm. I mean, there's a reset use. There is a quaff. There is a Munich player. Oh. Is this working? I don't know I what this. 
is high oh, risk, whoa, but whoa, it might whoa, be whoa, high whoa, reward. Whoa, no, that's a okay, kick off the okay. field, but away from the hoops. I'm not sure what's going on here, but it's a lot. I mean, it's uh, London's ball, and you could almost argue that this was an intentional uh, propelling off pitch. I mean, it's not that he tried to play the quaffle to his teammate. He clearly just tried to play it, it away, away, right? So well, they get a goal against it for it. Yes. So, so that's fair. So now Unspeakables needs three goals and um, Munich needs one goal. And I mean, <laughs> I said in the defense, I'm not sure what they're doing there. They're playing very aggressive for that. They really need to prevent that goal from Munich, but it worked it out worked. for them. They scored afterwards. So apparently uh, whatever they were doing there worked out really well. Oda is coming now from behind at the beater. The Munich beater also takes a Making chance. Oda is taking the tackle here. Ball and the Munich beater out. stake. There is no bludger. There is no bludger from, from London. Why is now there is a London bludger? Oof. And the ball is intercepted by Gio, who lands And on London the ground. is actually getting the balls. There's a no bludger run. There's a no bludger oh run for no. London now. So Munich. Is this London's game? I, a lot of men well, over there. Is still no bludgers. Oh my god. So London is <laughs> scoring Inching yet in. another. Is yet preventing another goal that should have been a goal because there was a long no bludger situation for Munich who just couldn't finish and then Unspeakables get the ball and drive it through on their own no bludger situation. I don't know what the beaters are doing there but apparently it's working. <laughs> so yeah, we might want to take a lesson from them. Woo! Oh, but I think that should have been the ball of the Munich player there and he's actually getting the ball. Munich now Another no bludger situation. Is Munich? Why are they not pushing it through? Does this Munich is the moment, and they did not Why? Pitch. What How? happened there? That's How? a very frustrated change I, there. I am so confused. I am so confused at this point in time about what is happening. Munich is clearly Falling stressed. Apart. I mean, honestly, this is stress. Yeah. This clearly is the pressure. They know they only have to score one. And, and it's not happening. And it's not happening, and that makes it even worse. Yeah. I'm. This is very, very exciting. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit bad for Munich. They were leading in between. They were really doing so well and leading well. But, you know, whoever takes it in the end, they take it in the end. They take it. And I think yeah. it was overall um, a pretty fair match, I think. Yeah. It didn't look incredibly dirty or anything. So, you know, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You, you. Sometimes I have a problem saying like, oh yeah, the better team wins because sometimes, you know, some sometimes the team who hides their falls the best wins. Yes, <laughs> but it looked overall pretty okay. I would say. Um, I would agree with you there. Yeah. So, whoever takes that home uh, probably <laughs> deserves. It. And honestly, if Unspeakables managed to pull back from there, uh, they were 50 down, I think. Um, That's. If, if they manage to pull it back in and catch the snitch and then score two more goals than uh, Munich in the time where Munich would have to only score three goals and they would have to score five goals, then they definitely deserve it. I we, mean, need, we might need to take a lesson from them on finding the right headspace because they are finding it. Yeah, and uh, if that headspace is we get drunk and have fun, then <laughs> that, that is the headspace <laughs> that we're going for. Maybe I should change my tactics here. <laughs> oh, yeah. but let's see. Oh. Let's see how this turns out. I Beater control. B the beaters of Munich have control. Munich has the bludgers, yes. Can they use it though, or are they going to stress out? Are now they scared? As well? Monique is getting in position here, and actually the London beater did a really nice play here. Monique could not get the ball though. One hoop down. Which is uh, very, very sad. And now we have a aggressive play. Pushing a pass that oof. doesn't arrive. I think the London chaser was beat before they they could hit the well munich got the ball anyway yeah i would so go here for slow uh, going into a double beater situation london has only one bludger oh, did and you? i think munich oh, they lost one just well now? nobody from the london <laughs> team is actually running for that ball okay munich has one bludger and is getting two bludgers now <laughs> oh, and, and there's dodge. no bludgers. No, no bludgers. Are oh they going God. to make it? Are this has to go. Are through. they going to make it? They're oh, not they're making it. Hoops, oh down. my God. Oh my God. They're not making it. They're, they're making it. it. Oh. <laughs> okay. God damn it. If that oh. would not have gone through. Wow. Okay. Wow. If that 
would not have gone <laughs> through, I would have been like, what on earth is happening with that Munich? That clearly was a game. Wow. I mean, <laughs> we're not... It's not confirmed yet, but I mean, what should go wrong? The only thing they could think about is maybe giving a car to a London player or something that there was some, but not from from the Munich side. I I think I the goal itself was completely clean. Yeah. Uh, there were no bludgers, so there can be no like beat before situations because the bludgers were gone. There was a complete yeah. um, uh, uh, no bludger situation. So I'm very curious what uh, what they are discussing now. But it could always a be quick that gender check. That can be the goal stands. stands. And there is Munich, rightfully very excited. Yes, uh, the match that they really needed to uh, try to get into upper bracket because if they had lost it, then of course, uh, then yeah, that would have been, been, been very bitter. But uh, I don't even know what they are. Do you know who the last one is in the group of Munich? Who, uh, who are they facing next? I'm just curious if the next game yeah, will yeah. also be excited, uh, exciting or if the next match will no, will be I clearly could not tell favor. you who else is in this group, but... Yeah, but I think I have to definitely go back on all my predictions <laughs> about <laughs> like, oh, Munich is gonna like easily win that match, because clearly they were in for a surprise with London yeah. almost taking it. But I think I see here a small German cheer squad. I, I'm not sure if it's small, I wouldn't like... <laughs> well, <laughs> well... There's at least two. Oh, and there's something and going dancing. on. There's some dancing. I don't think we you can't guys see it. Can see it but there's no. German dancing. German dancing. It is as bad as you would expect it in to the be. <laughs> in the Munich uh, sub box, We've just basically. Been told, apparently, it's a Wolpertinger dance. Oh. At there is some dancing going on behind us as well. Apparently, this is a well known dance. <laughs> Ah, it was used in the past by the German national team, we were told right now. I have so seen them also dancing very yeah. badly, so I can see <laughs> where that is coming from. They wow, that was way more exciting than I thought it would be. I'm glad to, for me, for myself and yeah. for the people on the live stream that it was this exciting. Um, Those last couple of minutes... I'm not sure when I will recover, but it will take a moment. Yeah, not only last couple of minutes. The oh, we are actually <laughs> the actually we're ending the game at 34 minutes and five <laughs> seconds. Well, well, that'll be good for the game <laughs> delay that we have going on here. Nice, some good long games. Very, very good. Yes. Okay, I think. I then think we'll wrap yes. it up there. Uh, thank you for watching and have fun with the next streamed games. Take me back to a day when we weren't alone Take me back to an age when the world felt small Way back before we blew it all Too many things going on, I can't keep track of them all From people dropping a bomb, to people putting up walls I feel like life is on call, perception stuck in a ball I know that time can heal all, but how much time to fall? It's up to chilly outside, when there's no shelter to hide When everything is a lie, you'll find that out in some time But when the things on your mind are all considered a crime Communication aside, we'll all just fight till we die Is this an argument, or just the start of it? Either way, I don't wanna be a part of it Can I just get some space? I don't have the heart for this I can't be picking up the pieces, fixing scars from this Is this an argument, or just the start of it? I wanna drive away so I can be so far from it I wanna find a place where no one breaks their promises Or maybe drown myself in something that is bottomless Take me back to a place where I felt at home Take me back to a day when we weren't alone Take me back to an age when the world felt small Way back before we blew it all Take me back to a place where I felt at home Take me back to a day when we weren't alone Take me back to an age when the world felt small Let's go. We blew it all. I know that things seem bad, but they could be much worse There's always someone else who has a greater curse A greater thirst, a hunger, pain, and mercy. Just find whatever you got and try to be thankful first I wanna feel again, I need a couple friends I never really understood just how the story gets But I could feel it stands, don't know the consequence The volatility of like my only confidence Is this an argument? 
or just the start of it Either way, I don't wanna be a part of it Can I just get some space? I don't have the heart for this I can't be picking up the pieces, fixing scars from this Is this an argument, or just the start of it? I wanna drive away so I can be so far from it I wanna find a place where no one breaks their promises Or maybe drown myself in something that is bottomless Take me back to a place where I felt at home Take me back to a day when we weren't alone Take me back to an age when the world felt small Way back before we blew it all Take me back to a place where I felt at home Take me back to a day when we weren't alone Take me back to an age when the world felt small Way back before we blew it all I am here, Anamika, with Gio and Lucas. Lucas, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Due no to problem. a lot of shocks <laughs> from the electrical railing behind us, which we will not be touching anymore, can either of you guys tell me what just happened? We played an amazing game, <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's one of my favorite games I've played. Like, result withstanding, I think. If it went the other way, I would have been a bit more happier. <laughs> well, but, well, <laughs> but at I the end so. of the day, like, it was a good game. Went to the new overtime. There was, I think, we had to score two, you had to score one in the end. Yes, very close. <laughs> we were, I was commentating, and I think also the people at home, we were, <laughs> there was some stress. <laughs> I wasn't sure who I was rooting for. I think it changed every other second. And it was <laughs> an experience. It was a fun game. They were a big physical team with also some lovely technical play, really good communication, a very well-drilled team, so it was nice playing against such a high level team at this high level tournament. I agree, it was an amazing game. I think we can both learn a lot from it, so I'm very happy to have this on stream. I'll probably watch <laughs> this game 10 times again next week. Again, and again. And uh, yeah, I think we can learn a lot. Yeah. Just and what are you expecting to see uh, when you watch it back? Do you think you'll be happy? Uh, I, I'm, I will be happy that we won, and I'll be watching my EQC trophy standing next to me, so I'll be super happy about <laughs> would that. Would be nice, would be nice. I mean, you have to beat us again, because obviously we're going to go and beat Titans, and then you're going to have to beat us in the final. All so. right, we have a brooms up very soon, so unfortunately that's all the time we have. But thank you guys.
and we're back with a um, very unexpected quick start into the next game Augsburg Owls against Paris, Paris Frog and Paris just scored number 25 we are here with Moni and Barbara and we are trying to catch up <laughs> as quickly as possible so that we can give you a good experience with this live stream yeah also a warm welcome from me uh, we just have a group down uh, because the quaffle got off pitch too far. So now it's back with Augsburg keeper. Stef Stefan Maurer, I think. Yes, number two from Augsburg now in offense. The larger control lies within the Paris Frogs. <coughs> yeah. Okay. And, yeah, fierce beta battle. Um, the latter control still lies with Paris and their number 25 is striving and scoring again. Yes, Annie Vincent, number 25 from Paris Frog and another group down. Okay, this gives us time to get caught up on the score. I think the score is 20-0. No, they just switched it, I think, to 30. <coughs> okay, it's not good to have a new sighted person as live stream commentator. commenter. Okay, <laughs> game seems to resume. Game resumes. Augsburg again in offense. They do not have logic control. It's here. There is a almost miss pass from number uh, 42. Yeah. So both feeders were beat, but 42 from Oxford is now yeah. back on the bludger, whilst Oxford is still in offense. Great. Pass. And there is a goal for Augsburg by Olivia Pertinger with the number seven. So the score is now 10 for Augsburg, 30 for the Paris Frogs. And game is resuming slowly. They're going over the right side. Paris Frogs still in blood control. Yeah. There was a beat, but the second Augsburg beater is already there. But there was a goal. Did you catch who? <laughs> no, actually not. I was watching the video game as well. <laughs> it was from behind the hoop, so... Yeah, so the score is now, as you all can read, 40 for Paris Frog <laughs> and 10 for Augsburg. Yeah, it is easy to get lost switched out. Elisa is the number six, is in a uh, um, like backup, backup roster for the German national team. And we have a drive again by the keeper, number 65? I would have said six. six. Yes. Yeah, 66. Okay, now it's Valentin time to... Trabi. Valentin Trabi. Time to learn his name, I would say. <laughs> Definitely. And again, the quaffle rolled off, off pitch. And then groups down. Yeah. Getting back. Yeah, Lena Niklas expertly carrying the quaffle back to the line. Back to the headdress, back to Augsburg's keeper, and do you know his name? Yes, it should be Leonard. Ah, yeah. Uh, Leonard Schuppe with the number 60. Yeah. Also prone to driving, I've been informed previously. Yes. But for now they're keeping it slow, building up, waiting for the Peters to create a good situation. No goal though for Augsburg. The keeper has been beat. Sorry and for any. A long pass to number 25, but <coughs> Leonard is there. Tackles there. him. And got the quaffle. What a nice save. And a good game from uh, Speeder as, uh, as well. And Brooms down again. It looks like there was an initial contact and a quaffle turnover. Yeah, but no card. And so now Paris Frog gets another chance at their next goal. Yeah. 
office. It was almost a goal, but Michi Horesi, number 96, saves the quaffle, and now Augsburg is back on offense. Yeah. Blatter control with Augsburg. They are slowly advancing over the, with the cop over the right side. Peter Game concentrates on the left. Okay. And are the Paris Frogs playing hoop defense? It looks like it. It looks like it, yes. But there is an excellent shot from Lennart yeah. through the middle hoop and another goal for Augsburg, which may, may, should make the score 32 no. 40. But we just are having some monitor problems. No, 2050 20 sounds 50. about right. Yeah. yeah. No, I think they, it's the third one. But um, yeah. So. Paris Frog is advancing over the left side, long pass behind the hoops to number um, 96, which is Yamina. Now there's a turnover to Kathleen Seifert, number 13 of Augsburg Owls, who passes off to Michi, who is now without beaters in front of the hoop. Another pass, <sighs> fumbling, and now number 83 from Paris Frog yeah. retrieves the quaffle from Augsburg. Great try. They couldn't deliver in the end. That this looks like some good credit. Yes. So. I think they've lost control as well. Although I cannot. Yeah, there's the second leader mm -hmm. coming Come. from behind the hoop from Augsburg side. Yeah, keeping their control, slowly advancing. Midline is crossed, and the number eleven. Harry, or Harry, I'm so sorry if I pronounce any French names wrong. Augsburg has a definite advantage here. <laughs> um, but Augsburg manages a uh, competent defense. Quaffle is now with number 60, keeper slowly advancing. Over the left side, passes back and forth. Uh, and... Augsburg has does not have a has now only one bludger. Two? Okay. Now with Leonard again. Augsburg keeper. Yeah. Bludger control with Augsburg. And there he drives through and there is another score for Augsburg by Keeper yeah, score is now 30 for Augsburg, 50 for Paris Frog. Seven minutes into the game, it's looking pretty even, um, which is, I think, a compliment for Augsburg since uh, Paris Frog are vice champion, the current vice champion of the of France. And yeah. Paris Frog is slowly, not so slowly, is making attempts at scoring from a diff distance at the hoops. So far, oh, Ooh. that was Ta a very excellent tackle. Could you, could you say it was a tackle or was it just a block? It, it just looks spectacular. Yeah, um, just pulled him out of the air to the ground. Yeah. So now, Frog Keeper. Running behind the hoops, but there is Elisa. And an excellent catch from number 25, uh, Lenny Bisson. Goal is good, apparently. Yes, but the broom's down. The goal ref is picking up the hoop again. So the score should now be, yeah, and now it just changed. Score is now 60 for Paris Frog, 30 for Augsburg. Augsburg is advancing. Forfeit with the keeper, Lenny. And pass to the right side. It's interesting. Augsburg doesn't ha appear to have any trolls on the far back. They just have two at the side of each hoop. 
if you can call it troll. Okay, now somebody has gone behind. And but they lost the quaffle and there is a drive by number 66. Successfully scoring, making this a 70 frog, 30 owls situation. Again, the quaffle has to be retrieved from the far side of the field. But, ah yeah, and the keeper is now subbing out. Auswirk is Okay, so in a minute there's going to be an announcement at the venue and we are going to um, stop our commenting activity for a moment. Yes. You'll, you'll notice. But now Olivia Pettinger from Augsburg Owls got the long pass but was unfortunately beat and Quaffle Possession is back with Paris Brock. And there's another drive now from number 90. Okay, and now we are m going on mute for a few seconds. And we're back. Yeah, we just got told that um, the complete tournament is delayed by half an hour, which is, I think, fine um, if you consider our circumstances. I our just saw Paris Frog score another goal. So the score is now 80 frogs, 40 owls. And now we have a new keeper. Is that Viglev? Yes, that is Viglev. We yeah. Have yeah. Team with the number 33. Yeah, passing to the right. To cut the oh, nice catch by Lisa. Now it's uh, Anya, number 42, and Augsburg scored. But so yes, it was an excellent catch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still, Augsburg does not currently have bladder control. That lies with Paris Frog. Yeah, they just had. Uh, Peter zapping out. They are slowly advancing the Quaffle. The Quaffle is currently with their keeper, which is number. We wait <laughs> with bated breath. Number 11. Okay, Harry was his name. And he tries a long shot to the middle hoop, which is blocked by the keeper. I think it was, yeah, which is blocked by Wiglev. And now Augsburg is back in Quaffle possession. The Paris Frogs have bludger control. Um. And Matthias Renner has the bludger for Augsburg. Okay, so we're going for a replay from the last game, uh, last score. And now we are waiting for something to happen? Yeah. Was there a cut? We're live again, yes. <laughs> we're live again and there is a brooms down and we are waiting for the refs to finalize the decision, I think, concerning a blood draw. Augsburg speaking, Captain Hannah ah, So, top. game resumes and the number 25 of Paris Frog scores another goal. We are now at 90 Paris Frog, 50 Augsburg. Augsburg is 40 <coughs> points behind. Game time is 12 minutes and 25 seconds. So yeah. Augsburg is advancing the quaffle slowly over the middle. And they just okay, won a beta battle and now Augsburg has Blatcher control if and Elisa sees the Blatcher. And but we have another Broomstone. Yes. Goal ref was uh, putting his arms in, or putting the arms in the air. There's the 
there's a discussion. Well. Okay. Goal does not stand. So the score remains 90 Paris, 50 Augsburg. Turned over, yeah. turned over to Paris. Inbounding, no, yes. Inbounding, number eleven, Harry. And they are slowly advancing. Augsburg is playing a two-two. Is that a two-two defense? It's not very clear in their style. Mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Could also be... Oh, oh, very nice goal by the number 25, Lenny. Very beautiful. Caught yeah. in the air and then put Just it through yeah. the hoop. So, Augsburg is advancing the quaffle over the left side. Yeah, just uh, lost one beta battle, but still potentially pressure control on Augsburg's side. Okay. No it's beaters currently, currently and, and number 96 was that? Nee, Michael? Yes, yeah. Michi Horesi. Michi Horesi makes a goal. So Paris has pressure control. Augsburg is setting up their defense. And Paris is coming from the right side. Again on Paris Frog. Beta was not successful. There was a long shot from number 11 again. Yeah. And a pass over the hoops. Number 11 tries again. Goes up against the keeper. Augsburg can su successfully hold their hoop. And yeah, Paris advances again. Kofler is on the right side. They have Blatter control. Just threw one Blatter back in classic Napalm. Try to score. Don't hit the hoop. Kofler still with number 22. Back to Harry. Number 18. And now slowly advancing over the left side. And now the quarter is off hit, inbound, Augsburg. Yeah, Augsburg takes the time to sub out some players. They have Blatcher control. And the quarter is in the hands of the keeper, the game can resume. We have a brooms down. For no apparent reason. The score is 100 Paris, 60 Augsburg. Uh, time out has been out. called by Augsburg. So one minute of time out. Yeah, um, I would say it's not as uh, dominating from uh, Paris as some assumed before. Augsburg is holding up quite good, I would say. Definitely, uh, still in range to win. Yeah, so far um, Augsburg lost one game, I think, against Olympians and won another game, in which I now need to look up. Yeah, they lost to Olympians, 140 stars, 70 nil. And the other game was they won against Liege Leviathans, 140 to 80 star. So game resumes. While Paris, I think, managed to win both their previous games by a quite a good margin. But let me just recheck. Yeah, they won against Leviathans. And they also 
won against the Olympians 90 star to 40. Which puts them in prime position right now to be first in their group. Yeah. <coughs> and Oxford has yet made up the brackets. Yep. So there's another goal and now Augsburg is back in snitch range and we're up to minute 16 in a couple of seconds. So snitch on will be on pitch in one minute yep. and Sukas will be released in two. Safe just in time. So it's 100 Paris Frog, 70 Augsburg and we'll see how both teams keep up under pressure when the snitch is on pitch. Back in Augsburg subbox we already see Nicky Grisi getting ready to seek. That guy has such long arms. Yeah. <laughs> and long shot score by Paris Frog. So now it's 110-70. Augsburg is out of range. We'll see uh, if they manage to close that. Uh, yeah, to close that again. They don't have bludger control. That lies with Paris Frog. Are trying to gain it. Uh, Peter from Augsburg coming up behind. Elisa is beat though. Ah, and there We've created a no bludger situation. Lenny is trying to tank through. Is being tackled. Ah, and ah. Okay. The number 21 of Augsburg misses the to catch the yeah but uh, was very well positioned a little m more precision and it could have been a goal Definitely. so Augsburg has bludger control Paris is advancing over the right side number 11 Harry again now I would say they definitely play a 2-2 two -two yeah <laughs> it's becoming more and more clear <laughs> pass behind the hoops yeah, and, Back and front. they do it with some success, like Paris can get too close, they beat out key players. Oi. Attempt to tackle down number 11. And that looks like a ball out, yes. Ha. Okay, so coffee turnover to Augsburg. Snitches on pitch and Seekers are released in 10 seconds. Yeah, I think the snitch is Clarissa Hart, who plays, is also from Germany, from Bingen. Speed from Elisa. And Michael Rodisi tries to catch and, and got, it. got the snitch. Look clean, although maybe he was too close to her neck. We have a replay coming up. You see him, Michi advancing on Clarissa, and on his oh. second attempt, he catches the snitch. From our uneducated ex um, experience, it looks good. Yeah, it looks good. It was from this perspective you saw he was really from the side, not from above. Yeah. So we wait for the referees to decide. Steve is coming up. Catch is called good, which makes the score 110 Paris Frog, 100 star Augsburg. That means 140 points is this new set score. Exactly. I'm. I don't assume that Augsburg is going to concede. I think they're still trying to win. Yes. Waffle possession lies with Augsburg currently. Also, bludger control, so they might have a score coming up in the next few seconds. So, still not trying to do any fast breaks. Oi. And Lenny is tanking through, switching to the left and scoring. So now the score is 110 to 110, even. So now it is really interesting. Who gets 140 points first? Yeah, almost as close <laughs> as the game we had before on the live stream Munich against London in Unspeakables. So, Paris is advancing, they don't have bludger control, are doing some light crossing and scoring through the middle hoop. So, we are at 120 210. 
And we have a broomstone. And Waffle will pitch far. But Bludger Control is with Augsburg still. The third Bludger is at the outline of Augsburg's half. So the leaders have quite a long run to get there. Yeah. Creating a very long no bludger situation for Augsburg, which they should really take as an opportunity to score again. Number 83 is tackling number 60, who is passing Koffel to 7. And now they have uh, one bludger again. Augsburg is slowing down a bit. Pass to Olivia, was it? Yes, Olivia. Pass to Olivia, number 7, but was yeah. too far out oh. now. Inbounding yeah. Paris Frog. Yeah. Blatcher control still with Augsburg is, yeah, I think very experienced uh, beta partners Elisa and Matthias. Yes, played together for a long time. Also two strong ah. players. Now the brooms down. Yeah, Elisa just beat number 11 and he passed after beat because I don't think he noticed he was beat. He seems not to get carded, so it might have been just a warning. Yeah. Matthias is making gestures that cannot be deciphered from this angle. <laughs> and the referee said it's this thing again. So if I'm correct, for both teams, this is the third game in the group phase. So if the Frogs win, they are first in the group. And if Augsburg wins, they are the second. Maybe, and maybe they will even, it, maybe it will even need a direct comparison with Paris Frog to see who is first in the group, since both teams then will have exactly one loss. Uh. Yeah, so I don't have the details in my head right now, but that would prove to be very interesting in case Augsburg wins. Yes. Also, <laughs> would Augsburg still make up a bracket if they lose? That, de that, that, that probably depends on how the other game is Yeah, that would played. depend on the other game, so Augsburg but is in control and in quaffle possession. Yeah. The Leviathans are also. Oh, Leviathans. Sorry, Paris Frog. <laughs> I was just with the group names, with, or with the other teams in the group. Okay, so number 11 successfully tackles Augsburg number yes. 2. And Michi scores again, making the score even again 120 to 120. Set score is 140. Augsburg has bludger control Michi and is charging the is charging a man yeah Kof is still with Paris there Pass was a long the shot hoops. yeah missed long shot and yeah Kof is inbounding Augsburg which the Paris Frog player number 18 does not agree with. The thing is, yeah, that's Marine. So, Augsburg in Quaffle possession and Blatcher control. Beating the beater closer to the hoops. And ah. there. Another score by Stefan Maurer, number two of Augsburg. Yes. So now it's 130 to 120 for Augsburg. Augsburg Set scores. Still in, still in control. We have another broomstone. We also have a lot of hoops down. The wind is not being kind to Quilt Europe's equipment. But also a very competent goal ref of the London Unspeakables who does his best to rise them up again. And timeout has been called by Paris Frogs. So yeah. now we have another minute. Yeah, this is very... Trust us. Muni, what do you think? 
Um, this is very interesting. I wouldn't have thought it would be this close, although I consider Augsburg a fairly good team, um, <laughs> having played for them a long time. So um, that's why I might have some more insights, some more names more easily. So it's <laughs> yeah, <We're> completely unbiased. <coughs> completely so unbiased, I though. Team, of course. <laughs> I'm biased though, but uh, more knowledge knowledgeable than uh, about Paris Frog. Um, apologies for that. Nevertheless, um, yeah, strong teams, uh, both of them very experienced. Uh, I cannot tell who will win. It's still open. And the minute is over, everyone returning to their brooms. Yeah, Augsburg in, very, in a very good mood, chanting. Yeah, they have a lot to, f to win, a lot to prove. I think they came in ninth at the German Quidditch Cup just a weekend, uh, last weekend. Yes. And before in the EQC qualifier back in 2019. Do you know? I think also like very high up. Eighth? Seventh? Eighth? Yeah, let's let it be seventh or eighth. And of course, it second is in the Bavarian League. So they've, yeah had a lot of development in recent years. Definitely, yes. Also stayed very strong during COVID. And there's Michi yeah. Horesi and scores! So now it's up 130 for Augsburg, 120 Paris Frog. And set score is 140. So Augsburg would need just one more goal to win this game. Paris Frog 2, it remains, yeah. A uh, highly interesting game. Very close. Yeah. Yeah. And um, hi, the the crew. So really doesn't like the wind. <laughs> We're back. Augsburg still in bludger control. Yeah. Paris is advancing the coffer slowly. They've crossed the midline. Number twenty-five. Tries to outrun Michael and scores through the small hoop. 130 to 130, set score is 140. They really like to play with my nerves. Yes, so next goal decides. Augsburg yeah. is in quaffle possession, but lost bludger control now. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Paris Frog appears to also play a to two defense very conservatively with the keeper at the keeper zone line which makes him unbeatable very interesting tactical choice okay long pass to michi behind the hoops he comes back yeah so if augsburg they is taking it slowly they have to keep their nerves now yeah but augsburg is back in bludger control which you see just yes. now they've taken the defense on from both sides Front and back, still in control. There's a Stefan has the quaffle. And yeah, they're biding their time, trying to create chaos in the defense. No oh, Lenny. situation, and now they just need... Oh. Oh. Number 25 blocks. Michi still has the quaffle. Turns back to almost the midline. So there's a no beat the situation, and Leonard loses Oi. the blood uh, quaffle again, but he can retrieve it. <sighs> Yeah, now hopefully, yeah, pass to Michi. Olivia is Long also pass wide open. To Stefan. Pass. Sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> it, it's just a very intense game right now. Um, the passes are very fast. Um, yeah, Augsburg is advancing slowly again with number two, Stefan, from the left. We have. Where's blood? No, we don't have. We don't have bludger control. Yes, Michi is back. And Augsburg's beaters have both been beat. Oh, and There's now only one blood in the game. And now number 66, Paris Frog has the. Oh no, there's been a foul. Oh, very intense. Yeah. Apparently, number 60 from Augsburg, Lenny, has done something. Yes. A very unfortunate. Yes. He's getting. Blue carded apparently. Ah, this is a very unfortunate turn of events for Augsburg. So close. Yeah. Now Olivia, now 
Michi Horesi is getting the keeper headband. Quaffle goes back to frog keeper. Stefan with number two is there to block. Number 66 is Valentin. Valentin Trabiva. Who knows? <laughs> Sorry, Valentin. <laughs> um, Valentin has the Quaffle. Stefan is blocking his way to the hoops. The hoops have been righted again. And yes. they're advancing. The whistle. He speed. Okay. Yeah. Now we have a 2 2 defense on Augsburg's side with Michi and Olivia. And Paris has better control. There was a beat. And uh, now there Augsburg is. Augsburg has a quaffle. There is one meter. They yeah. have to take it slow. Yeah, Koff is with there's a brooms down again. Brooms down. Yeah, he's assessing the situation. Blatter control is with Augsburg. But the second uh, beater is way behind the hoops, so that might take us a few seconds. Also, there's still one player down. Yeah. Because, and I think they would like to keep it that way. Because right now the score is 130 to 130, and the next goal decides the game. So what's the situation? The referee is talking to two Paris players. And yeah, Paris chaser number 19. Number 18. Yeah, I think illegal contact was the ref call. Marine. <laughs> so now. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, Augsburg is complete again. Or is it? I no. count six players. No, no, no. One, two. Oh no, yeah, and I can't I can count. I can count to six. Okay. Also, we still one short, but. Okay. We went first rock also. So it's a five against five. Bludger control with Augsburg. Yeah. And there's a no beater situation, but a good tackle. And. Oh. Uh, Quaffle is again with uh, Paris Frogs, number 83. Also, passing, oh! Oh, passing to number 25 uh, in a wonderful uh, pass, scoring through the middle hoop, making the last goal. Score is 140 to 30 for Paris Frog, winning them the game potentially. Yes, we because the referees the re are discussing. This is a very. Replay is coming up. So, we see. Using the quaffle and a long the pass, pass to and number 25 into the goal. In Germany, we would say Zucker pass, like a sugar sugar pass. Just perfect. Okay, so One we're playing it again. Ah, again, his his jump and yeah, putting it through the this right hoop. This is why I play Quidditch or why I watch Quidditch. Just <laughs> like these perfect passes. Just like okay, bang, bang, we bang. have a decision coming up. We have a decision. Yes, this goal is, is good. The win for Paris Frog, but a very excellent game also by Augsburg. Yeah, who gave a wonderful performance, which would make Paris Frog now first in the group. Augsburg has lost two of three games. We'll need to see how that tracks with the other teams if they are going to advance to the upper bracket or lower bracket. Teams are cheering for each other, but I think for Augsburg it's going to take a bit until they get over it. Yeah, it was a very, very close so. game. Yes, yeah. and and they fought well. They kept the nerves, especially in this high pressure pressure situation, um, getting into yeah. a game, uh, and then being so close with the snitch cut and everything. Yeah. Uh. Well, congratulations to both teams. Very sorry to Paris Frog for calling you Liege Leviathans once. <laughs> Uh, in my defense, both teams have very, very nice jerseys and both have something to do with the color turqu turqu turquoise, turquoise, <laughs> what's that in English? Turquoise. Turquoise. 
I'm also not sure if that's the right pronunciation. <laughs> oh, and you also see the unicorn. Do we see the unicorn? Yes, the unicorn is yeah. there. Um, One mystery in this tournament for me to solve remains who, which team the unicorn belongs to. But I think yeah, it's a great addition to the tournament. Yeah. No, it was it was a really nice game. Um, both teams fought hard. Um, I also thought it was a quite fair game. Yeah, not a lot of cards. Yeah, no injuries. Very important. Also very important. Um, and yeah. yeah, hopefully both teams have a break now. Get a breather. Us as well. Yes, are we? Thank you for uh, listening to our comments. Yes. We hope you enjoyed them. And I think we are turning over to general live stream business now. But yeah, so thank you very much. And, and see you soon. Enjoy the other games.
I said you better watch what you're doing Cause I ain't gonna stop when I'm moving I'm headed to the top, I'ma do it I'm headed to the top, I'ma prove it And baby girl, I like what you're doing Your body's out of sight when you're moving You look just like my type, so let's do it You know I'll treat you right, let me prove it And I could go all night I'm sick of being nothing, all right I'm gonna be something, all fight With every breath, trust me I'ma be the one at the top, you can't touch me I need to find somebody like me Who wants to be something I bleed With every word coming I would rather die than be someone who's nothing I'm the type of dude who will not remain nameless I'm the type of dude who is headed for greatness I'm the type of dude who could really make changes Cause I'm the type of dude that's becoming contagious I'm the type of dude that will always be ageless I'm the type of dude that will always feel shameless I'm the type of dude that they say is fucking heinous Cause I'm the type of dude that you know is fucking dangerous Take it now, no, you're never gonna break me I'ma stay loud in the face of the hate See, I'ma speak out, take the muzzle off my face Breathe out of my mouth every word that will make me Never had a doubt of the life that I'm making Never had a doubt of the fight I'll be facing Never had a doubt of the nights I'll be aching Life is all about having dreams you don't wanna that you're chasing with me now I'll leave your ass in the street now I'll put your ass underneath Ground. I'll bury you six feet deep now And you better stay down Get the hell out of my way now It doesn't matter what you say now I'm gonna take hold of fate now I'm the type of dude who will not remain nameless I'm the type of dude who is headed for greatness I'm the type of dude who could really make changes Cause I'm the type of dude that's becoming contagious I'm the type of dude that will always be ageless I'm the type of dude that will always feel shameless I'm the type of dude that they say is fucking heinous Cause I'm the type of dude that you know is fucking dangerous nauseous believe me never had a lot of shit come easy had to work hard struggle just to be me had to rise up just so they could see me did what i had to do just to feed me and what was left over i put towards my dreaming but the only thing in life that has meaning are the things you gotta work for believe me take into your hands a plan your own hands can land your own brand and damn I feel like no one takes accountability They want the credibility Convincingly unwilling to put in the fucking hours It takes to get some power Don't be fucking sour Take a cold shower Scream until you're louder Work until you're prouder And fuck all the doubters They're just yeah. fucking downers I swear to God they all let me down I always fought just to wear the crown I'm pissed off at these fucking clowns Who were all taught they deserve an ounce it's only worth it if you work for it It's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown Man, it's so 
hard to be seen When everybody wants to be king Yeah, they all wanna ring Yeah, we all wanna be free So show me what you got, what you bring How you fight in the ring How you take a fucking swing Do you got heart? Are you mean? Got some scars, got some needs Are you willing to go weak? I swear to God they all let me down I always fought just to wear the crown I'm pissed off at these fucking clowns Who were all taught they deserve it now It's only worth it if you work for it It's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown I swear to God they all let me down
And that is Brooms Up already. Here is Annemieke joined by... Celie Jassouroye. And we are watching the Rhinos Bonn against the Metu Unicorns. And I think that was just a score by Bonn, question mark? No, the scoreboard says no. Do you have any expectations for this game? Uh, I would have said that I, I expected Metu to win this game, but considering it's not the full squad and um, a lot of Metu players couldn't get a, a visa to get there, and uh, maybe they're not used to playing together. So maybe Bonn. I think maybe Bonn is going to I win. must say Bonn is one of the better German teams, so they might have a good chance. I'm just uh, quickly grabbing us the yep. cheat sheets. And they just scored. <laughs> they just scored a second goal or a first the goal. First goal. <laughs> the first goal. Can you put us a bit quieter on our own ears? Yeah, I hear myself really loudly. So the balls are where? So we've got one bludger with Metu and another one with Boom. There's a bludger on the floor here and I can't see the third bludger. But Puffle is in possession of Boom. Who is in a good position to score. So we have Bun with the one bludger. Yeah, and with the quaffle. And, and with the quaffle. And just two players to defend. But okay. A strong pass with a good beat. Meto just beating out everybody, but and they're being. The that was a beat in the back, right? By number 25. Yeah, I think that was definitely beat before. Yep. Can you be? Can it be even more quiet? <gasps> oh, strong pass! Wonderful. And, and that was a good goal. fast break. So that is twenty to zero for Bonn. Score by number eighty-nine, Marius Jomer. Made to building up slowly. And with bludger control, let's see what they're going to do with that. I heard that it's not their usual beaters, and maybe these beaters are a bit less experienced. We are going to see how they're going to fare against very good, strong beaters from uh, Rhinos Bonn. I was going to say, Bonn is quite well known for their very good beating. Mm. Made to try to find an opening, but not really finding it. Passing to the troll, who is beat. And the ball back with Bonn and an injury on the ground. That does not look very nice. Maybe meanwhile we can look a little bit at some of the other people who are on the field. So we have... Well, I can't really see any numbers to be honest. We have number seven from Metro Unicorns, Benan Emre, who's an excellent player, excellent chaser, can also play keeper. And uh, it's worth noting that she's one of the of the few female chasers who can actually do everything and is well known for that and respected for that. And it's very good to see that her team trusts her, uh, trusts her with the ball. And it's not the case with many teams in EQC. Oh, okay, so sorry. I was saying it's enough, no problem, it's actually. So we are back on. We have a deep defense from Metu, and all of the bludgers are basically behind the hoops, but no Metu coming in with the bludger. Bon calmly passing around, but that pass doesn't get there. And that's a ball for Metu, right? Yeah. Yeah.
pleasure control is with the unicorns. One of them quickly has to tie their shoelaces. Well, they've got time. They're making their way up the pitch slowly. Not really finding a lot of space, but passing around, running towards the hoops, and a long shot that goes through. Very hard through, all the way to the other end of the pitch. And both the hoops, two of the hoops are down. It's going to give them time to breathe a little. Okay. And we're back with Reynos on the offense. There's a lot of beater play going on there and a very long shot where the... I did not go through. I think there's now a brooms down because it's not quite clear if that was through because I... Th the goal ref seems... To, oh, it's not a brooms down. No, it was just a no good. Well, the goal ref seemed to think it was a good call, but... And that is a goal by Meitu there. The ball again with Bon running up the pitch. A lot of beater play going on here. And the chaser just running through number seven. Number seven and that's a goal. One of the classic Bon players found the Rhinos together with Christian, apparently, according to the cheat sheet. And indeed, he has been around at Bonn ever since 2016, at least. Oh yes, I remember seeing him on a lot of competitions. I have, uh, yeah, fond memories of being scared by this guy. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was another score. The unicorns do like to score from behind the hoops there, and that's a brooms down call. Do you have any idea why there might be a brooms down? No, not sure. Maybe an assistant ref here talking with the goal ref. Maybe to see if the goal is good. Ah. Apparently it doesn't. We're uh, waiting to see what will happen. Exciting, exciting. Do you have any idea so far who might win this game? The score being 10 for the Unicorns and 30 for Bonn? I think Bonn is, bon is going to um, keep on the good work they're putting in. And uh, if they keep on like this, they might win this game. Well, it might still be a tight game. And I hope so. It's going to be more exciting to see. So we're on again. With Bon with bludger control, Meitu slowly making their way up on the pitch. Not really finding a space. Bon is making a, a person to person defense. A nice very pass. pass to number 21 there from Meitu, who immediately gets beat, but it gets picked up by somebody else. A lot of interceptions from Bon, and it gets grabbed by Leander, number seven, who oh. doesn't yet push it through. <laughs> but they're very hard. He was too quick. He couldn't was stop. Too quick already. He <laughs> ran past the hoop before he could get there. Bon setting up a high defense. A very high defense, some aggressive beating there. <laughs> oh, which is being punished by Meitu, who have now gained control and scored. Maybe Bon was a little bit too enthusiastic over there. Meitu is playing a, a, what a nice passing game. In the beginning of the game here. There's Bon moving up the pitch. Oh, and a nice interception. Who can pick up the ball, but <gasps> there is a fast break by number 41 from Meitu. That is Burke, who started with the honeybees, played with the hippogriffs, 
old school Quidditch and is now with the unicorns. But Bon, in the meantime, while I said this fun fact, already made a fast break and got stopped. And there's a bludger coming from me to yeah, the Waiting for the beaters. And this little pile. There's a bunch of players in Metu who started with the Hippogriffs. We've got Irem, number one. We've got... Uh, Bert, That's a you really it? impressive beating there from number nine. Who is not on this roster of the Unicorns, but is definitely on the pitch and doing well. The ball with Bon and Bludger control with Mei too. Let's see if that can be gained back. Well, they just lost the Quaffle. That's a good opportunity for Mei to score another goal. Slowly walking up the pitch, discussing a little bit with the sub box there. Beaters together with the quaffle. <laughs> a penny a pass. pass. A beat on an own teammate. Around wow. the hoops and Very nice play. from behind. That is number 25. 25. Well one of the most experienced players of the unicorns and apparently his year to step up and show himself well, i guess that's what he's doing <laughs> some intense beater play going on here I hear kind of beater, no beaters on the side from me too. But a very strong tackle, the ball still in the hands of Leander. And the bone chases. A bludger coming back. Yeah, struggling to get past the defense. I think I'll at least one card. <laughs> at least one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what happened? Not really. I was looking at the chasers then, and I was looking at the the beaters because they've done such a great job. The Rhinos, uh, Bonn beaters, both Leon Bergers and number nine, Christian Timpelman, managing to regain bludger control. have a very long room down, not quite sure what's happening. So that was a yellow card for contact around the neck. Very clearly yelled by Niklas, audible all the way over here. And that means the ball goes to Bonn. It's the kind of contact that would often happen in this kind of situation and when you're in a higher intensity game and you have to tackle a lot and you have to exactly. defend so much. It's bound to happen. You yeah. have to make uh, yeah. a few faults. Yeah. Down the I guess nobody means for it to happen, but yeah. in the excitement, maybe your arm slips. Mm. One bone, they get a goal out of it, so that's nice. And another brooms down. It was a timeout ah. asked by a Metu unicorn. You pay much better attention yeah. than I do. <laughs> That's why we're two commentators. So why do you think they called a timeout so far? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Maybe the they wanted to um, try a way to get back ahead in the beta game because they just lost budget control. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that just um, had a, a goal scored against them. So maybe they wanted to regroup to um, discuss what they should do on defense. And if you were in the, the huddle of Bonn right now, what would you be telling your players if you were the coach? 
I would tell them to just go for it and go hard and go <laughs> strong <laughs> and the fastest they want. Because uh, it's a very, very heavy, very strong team uh, mm -hmm. against them. And um, I don't know what Bonn has been doing with their other games. Do you know if they won all of them? Is uh, that the last game? It might be the last game. They have the definitely won one game already. But I uh, could not tell you how well they've been doing. As you pull up the schedule. Yeah, it is their last game. It's their the last day. game already. Oh, yeah. So they have to, to give everything <laughs> and have to be completely tired, exhausted at the end of the game. They, need to they don't need to have anything left to give except for oh tomorrow. No. <laughs> And the game has started again. The aggressive beating continues. <laughs> Seems to pay off. It oh, well oh. for Bonn it does. You never come out happy when you go against Leon. I have to be honest with you. But the chaser game on the hand, the other hand, is going quite well. But a good interception there by that chaser, whose number I cannot read. I think twenty something, maybe twenty seven. Ah, yeah, that would then be Annika. Could well be, very well be. A very aggressive beat by Meitu, which creates a no-bludger situation and an easy goal for Bonn there by number 33. Julian. Julian. Apparently their youngest player. Some aggressive beating, a very happy or not happy, at least an emotional number 85 from the Meta Unicorns. Oh, there might be a, a bludger turnover. Ah, yeah. Yep. That's Where did the bludger go? Okay, so mid ah, yeah. both bludgers now. And is it? Oh, no, he was beat before. No good. <laughs> that is some really good beating there by <laughs> number 85. Intense battle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you come up with the upper hand against the Bond beaters, I think you did very, very well. And she definitely did that. The ball now with Meitu. And, and no, no beater. beater in defense. Meitu might want to make a hurry. Oh, but there's a lot of player on defense, and there's a beater now. Yeah, I think Meitu is definitely holding uh, their ground here. Mm. 60-40 for Bourne. It's still everyone's anyone's game. Is this how you expected this game to go before we started? Yeah, exactly how I expected it to go. I was not, um, I did not see Metu to um, lead the game. I think it was going to be Reinos who, who are going to be leading the game. And so yeah, that's what's happening. And the Metu unicorns are pulling the 2-2 defense <laughs> we talked uh, earlier, which is a defense that is mostly used by UK players apparently. Interesting, interesting. Some yelling and a goal by number 41, Burke. I definitely think that both of the teams are really up to one each other. Mm. Sometimes the score doesn't really reflect what's going on here, but I think here uh, it does. A yeah. tight game, a good tackle, oh, and she's tackle. still holding the ball and manages to pass it neatly. Number 55 from Bonn, that was Hanna Grosse. Hanna Grosse. Are we even surprised? Of course Not she manages. Hanna. Fantastic player. And back to the, to the hands of the Metu keeper. Metu again trying to set up slowly. 
Yeah, well, Rhinos has recovered pleasure control. So maybe Metu maybe is going to um, slow the game a little in order for their beaters to try and open the lane for them. But unfortunately, Spawn picks up the quaffle again. Oh, a good almost tackle. Yeah, that was, good on. that was a good hold and a throw of a bludger against a quaffle, but still Bon has it, passes it, doesn't quite catch it. That's a reset. The first one, I suppose. Yes, first reset. A pass to a troll, and that's a goal. Very nice positioning there by the chaser with such long hair that we can't quite read her number. Oh, but 27, Annika. Ah, Annika again. You see a little bit of a ref discussion here on the side while the game keeps going. Some aggressive beating going on here. Control with Bon. Though just being beat, will they keep the control? Do you see where the quaffle is? I'm just looking at the bludger. Yeah. Oh, it's in the hands of Metu. It was number 41 that had the quaffle. Ooh. That was awfully close to the boundary. And Niklas is pointing at things. Okay, so she pushed him out of the boundary. Very nice, so Annika. Bon recovers the quaffle. A very far pass. That is then nicely intercepted by number 21 there, Rojan. Who is running across the pitch, passing, doesn't oh. quite reach. That would have been beautiful. It would have been beautiful. <laughs> that is very the true. reception and then straight into the hoop. Yeah. In our heads, it was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> bon very calmly making their way up the pitch, only bringing one bludger. Yeah, Leon Burgers back on pitch again with Reinos Bon. A lot of passing. Balls being thrown and the bludgers are still with Bon, two of them, one with Metu, but Metu now again on the attack. A very far pass outside of the boundary, so on to Bon. And that was through. Which means Rhinos is ahead uh, 30 points with one more goal and Metu and the be able, able to win. And almost the on the pitch. So this is the critical moment, the pivotal moment in any game. Does the team keep together once the snitch enters the pitch? What do you think? Will Meto be able to keep themselves together and make up their little bit of a point differential? I think it's going to be harder for them considering uh, Bourne has the bludger control now and it's going to be harder for Meto to be able to score considering um, their beaters are probably going to be around the snitch and with the Rhinos beaters and so they're not going to be able to help them a lot on the offense. I think that you might be right, but as soon as Meitu gets the bludger control, the whole game might shift oh because on both sides... It would be a different story then. They are stacked. We're having here good players against good players the whole time. Here now number 89 trying to run through. Oh, That is... Ah, oh. Mario Sturma. Both tackling at the same time. Beautiful. Marius here now again holding the ball. A classic case of a uh, German player moves cities but remains within Quidditch. Used to be in Athena, if I'm not mistaken. But now apparently with Bonn, a lot of beater stuff going on here. And number nine, Christian Zimbelman, seeker for Bonn. Very quick, very aggressive. Oh, you're right, the seekers are already yes. on the pitch. 
I was just looking at whatever the beaters were doing. It went uh, so fast, it went so quick, but you also have number 27, Can Bolat, on the, on the Metu Unicorn side, uh, seeking. Very experienced, very good seeker as well. <laughs> Apparently, according to the fun facts they deliver to us, that every NGB has a face of Quidditch, and Khan is somehow Turkey's face. <laughs> I must agree, when I think Turkey, I think Khan. Yeah, that's one of the faces that come to mind. Yeah, and it's not a bad face, so I don't mind. <laughs> we don't mind at all. I think there's an injury here around the hoops. Oh yes. So far we've had 26 seconds of snitch on pitch. What do you think? How's it going? Uh, well, score is 80-60 for Reynoldsbrunn. So there are both seekers are going to attack and try and catch the snitch. It's going to be very intense and we're going to see very uh, fast paced, very very strong, very intense piece of play. It's going to be beautiful and very hard to follow. <laughs> That's for sure. One thing that I'm seeing looking at the information the teams provided for us is that the unicorns have only two seekers and the rhinos have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh eight, wow. apparently. Wow. <laughs> um, well, they're going to change fast. Probably. They they might be able to sub a bit more quickly, yeah. so I hope that Metu will be able to keep up and sub enough that their seekers don't get tired. We have a player being helped off the pitch by the m some refs followed by the medics. And all the players returning to their brooms. We see the bludgers with Bond. Do you see the quaffle? The qu Waffle is in the hands of the head referee and in the hands of no Marius. 89 Marius. Yes. Bon. The seeking game there being quite intense. Very aggressive seekers. Oh. I would love to look at the quaffle, but I'm so yeah. intrigued about <laughs> what is going on with I'm the bludgers. On the, on the snitch. Okay, you look at the snitch, I will look at the quaffle. It's fine. So number nine, Christian Timpelman and Can Bolat. Seeking, both, both trying to catch. And bludger control is around the snitch, bubbling the snitch in order for the German seeker to be able to catch it easily, fastest as possible. Oh, I was so close. That was close, but so close. Uh, not good enough. Just now, Metu scored. The chaser tried to put it through each and every single one of the hoops, and in the end, finally, after a couple <laughs> of attempts, got there. <laughs> but Bon putting up a, a strong bailer. Neanderthal for the goal. Oh, it was blocked. Oh, it went through. Okay. Goal rest. Nobody's quite through. sure, but <laughs> apparently it went through. And the seeker's still going strong. Bon also being a bit confused and just leaving the ball there. Just continu continuing play. Meitu not really making a hurry to score here. I think everybody's too distracted by the snitch. And there might be a foul somewhere. Did you see anything? I didn't, but what I know is that in this kind of situation, even when you're a chaser, when you're on pitch, you can get a little distracted by what's happening around the snitch, especially with the beaters um, pitting each and every one around the snitch. And um, you kind of feel on your own sometimes, expecting a beater to come and yeah. help you. Yeah. And then the beaters are the just and there's no one, just chasers. The beaters are just not there. As a beater, I, it, but I must say it's um, yeah. You're just a bit like chasers. You we go do care. you. <laughs> yeah. We don't care. We're gonna go look at the <laughs> snitch now. <laughs> yeah. Illegal contact coming from behind. Thank you, Niklas Julius Müller, for that clear explanation. Apparently, contact from behind by I don't know which team actually. I think it was Metu. Oh ah, yeah. Saw the the assistant referee is pointing to the Metu team. Yeah, we see there. Uh, sure which player? We see there uh, a Metu player staying in the standing in the sin bin. Okay. 
or the penalty box, as I think it is officially called. <laughs> but yeah, it is. I got introduced to it as the Sinbin back at EQC, no, at EG Oslo 2016. Yeah, a lifetime ago. <laughs> a lifetime ago, where I is, was introduced to the art of live streaming Quidditch. And on that tournament, it was called the Sinbin, and it has stuck oh. ever since. And that was a catch! I was not quite ready for Just that. Did you see it? Beat. I saw it. It was beautiful. Okay, maybe, maybe we'll have a replay? Yeah, question mark. It's clean. I'm not sure if we will, but that was Jan Niklas Willix. Apparently, EQC is his second Quidditch tournament, and the first tournament was one week ago at the German Quidditch Pokal. So that is. That Not a bad impressive. second tournament. Oh yeah. <laughs> that looks like a pretty solid catch. Yes. He also did a very and good job as a beater. The refs agree. That is it. Gut wrenching for Metu. I think that they were hoping to win this one. Mm. They could have won this one. Yeah. It was very difficult in the end because it was so hard to get through the the bubble of uh beaters around the snitch. Yeah. Especially but with very, very, very good beaters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fine beaters on both sides. On both I, uh, well, let's say I would be scared to play either of these teams. And oh I think yeah. they can both be proud of themselves for how well they held together. I played both teams. Oh, you did? Yeah, during EQC uh, 2018. Ah, yeah. Titans. And um, it was already a bit impressive and kind of scary to play them. <laughs> I can imagine. But I was in good company, so mm -hmm. it went well. Yeah. No, I think I've had the, the luxury of being beat by many teams, but uh, not these two. Oh. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe Any soon. Dutch team will ever make it to Division <laughs> 1. <laughs> I'm there. Yeah. I'll happily be beaten. Well, I think that was us. And we will be back for the next game whenever the schedule allows for it. Definitely not for another 25 minutes. <laughs> See you soon. Yeah. Here, let me break it down. Yeah, I'm gonna make it now. Give me some time and you'll see me up on stage some now. I'm working every day. I'm working hella late. I'm working cause it's worth it. Once you make it, then you play. Y'all never slowing down. I'm gonna own this time. They bout to saying that your time is lost but never found. Let's go another round. Make them give up the crown. Nah, I ain't playing, man. I'll take it, so just give it now. Yeah, I'm gonna work hard, play hard Yeah, I play my first card, ace hard Yeah, they know I play smart, play hard We don't have the same star, we don't have the same cards Yeah, it's not the hand that you dealt Nah, it's how you prove it to yourself Nah, you don't need any wealth you Gotta live your life, work hard, and excel Yeah, don't be looking for their help Look inside of yourself for the wealth Keep your mind and your body in good health And keep working for nobody but yourself Yeah, you can make it one day Don't be listening to what anybody say They got the wrong state of mind, okay Most of the time it won't help anything Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I work harder than the rest, smarter than the best. Every day is a test, but I stay obsessed, maintain progress, keep away from the stress, cause I want nothing less. Yeah, I keep moving on. Every single day is another gun. Every single day, write another song. So one day I'll play with the best is on. Okay, I know my path. Not just an artist, I'm doing math. Not just child, and I have to add. Cause I'm not just an art kid, I'm a brand. So I'm working hard, thinking smart, taking action with passion and using heart. Gain traction, reactions are just a start. No distractions, attract them to your heart. Yeah. Stop now, gotta stop now. Got no time to have doubts. Got no time to have doubts. I'm gonna make it somehow. I'm gonna make it somehow. I'm gonna keep my head down. I'm gonna keep my head down. I ain't gonna stop now. I ain't gonna stop now. Got no time to have doubts. Got no time to have doubts. I'm gonna make it somehow. I'm gonna keep my head down. All these thoughts keep me up at night, yeah What am I doing? Did I do it right, yeah All these thoughts keep me up at night, yeah I can't think straight, need the light I need Yo. to breathe, get me up and out of the sheets On my feet, another cup of coffee in me That's what I need, my eyes puffy, I can't see I'm too tired to function, but too lost to sleep Ay, I think I need to be on something medication I think I need to figure out the segregation I think I needed just a better education To understand the world that's so complicated Intoxicated, every night faded Just so I can sleep, thinking that it's dated I feel hated, I feel hatred I'm lost deep in my mind that I created I have dreams Dreams where my life is devastated Feel so real that I wake up shaking Need thicker skin cause this life is no haven Nod your head if you get what I'm saying yeah. All these thoughts keep me up at night yeah. What am I doing? Did I do it right? Yeah. All these thoughts keep me up at night yeah. I can't think straight, need the light Yo. All these thoughts keep me up at night yeah. What am I doing? Did I do it right? Yeah. All these thoughts keep me up at night yeah. I can't think straight, need the light I don't really think I understand this world, nah Got my head spinning round in a circle Everybody lacks what they need internal So they compensate with everything external Not trying to throw shade, ha, no way I'm just trying to find a meaning of life, hey There's happiness if you try to live the right way Forget about what others have and live your life, hey Be aware of who you are, what you're good at Take a step forward, see where your foot's at Stand tall, stand proud, talk loud Every word out your mouth has purpose now You just gotta get real of the bad thoughts, hating others cause you know that they gotta lie, forget that though, you got plenty, you're alive in this life, you got time, go get it, oh. all these thoughts keep me up at night, yeah, what am I doing, did I do it right, yeah, all these thoughts keep me up at night, yeah, I can't think straight, need the light, oh, all these thoughts keep me up at night, yeah, what am I doing, did I do it right, yeah, all these thoughts keep me up at night, yeah, I can't think straight, need the light, Tell me where to go, tell me where you like it All the fame blows, but you know that you like it I'ma get low, down in my feelings She gon' get low, drop it down from the ceiling I don't really know what the hell I'm feeling All that I know is my heart she's stealing Where we gonna go? Off to the crib now, feeling so low But I like it when I'm pinned down, yeah 
Sometimes I feel so broken That's why I stay in motion Ain't nobody slowing me down, yeah Ain't nobody stopping me now, yeah Distractions help me stay sane But girl, you drive me insane I don't wanna feel pain now, yeah So baby, come on, let's say say, hey, just look the other way I don't care what they say We could do it all, take away my sadness We could do it all, venture into blackness, hey just look the other way I don't care what they say We could do it all, take away my sadness We could do it all, venture into blackness You a bad chick, you a bad chick I'm about it, an addict, I'm an addict Please allow it I just wanna feel free for a day though I just wanna feel the skin on them legs though Chapstick on them chap lips Got me crowding this practice You an actress, hearts pounding I just wanna move that body like some play though Tell me baby girl if you wanna play though Hey, baby come through, do what you do, uh, make that body move, yeah, I just wanna see you drop down with it, pick it up, crop top, pop, from the town with it, oh, yeah, you know you drive me crazy, hold you like a gun, girl, my safety, lick it up, buttercup, man, you tasty, I test my luck, know what's up, thick like gravy, I say, hey, just look the other way, I don't care what they say, we can do it all, take away my sadness, we can do it all, venture into blackness, hey, just look the other way I don't care what they say We could do it all, take away my sadness We could do it all, venture into blackness Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answered a no, man, I still go Go, go I hustle every single day I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave uh, To the system, I don't wanna be a slave I've been doing shit my way uh, Or the highway And in the driveway Is a nice range Cause I grind through the climb I invite pain You'll never hear me, bitch Nah, I don't complain Just gotta flip the switch And you can go and obtain Anything you want, anything you need Your mind's got the key ingredient It's belief uh, Better see what the nigga can be But I just slide right back Low, you can still go Even when you feel slow You can still go Even when there's no hope You can still go I never ran to the no Man, I still go Go, go, go Fake it till you make it, eh? And if you play that game, then you just might make a change. Rearrange all the bad to okay. Take the worst thoughts and turn them to a game. Take the best thoughts and put them on display. On repeat in your brain till you're feeling no more pain. Uh. Never slow yourself down, you can do some more. Push past start the pain and you find a door. Open it up and finally explode. Everything that you thought you could never do before. Uh. And even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can No, man, I still go Go, go Take me, play me All I wanna do is please Wanna spread like a disease Ooh, eat crazy, tasty, baby I just wanna feel you breathe I just wanna feel your needs, yeah Yeah, oh yeah, 
Woke up on my mattress next to a savage. Yeah. Oh yeah, I woke up on my mattress next to a savage. If you wanna stay, eh, baby girl, don't go. Oh, look the other way. Eh, nobody will know. Oh, if it's all the same, eh, call my place your home. Oh, I don't wanna chase, eh, but don't want you to go. Oh, all I want is you. Ooh, all you need is me. Yeah, I know what to do. Ooh, only I can see. Yeah, know I love the view. Ooh, climb under the sheets. Do just what you do. Ooh, put me back to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I woke up on my mattress next to a savage. Yeah. Oh yeah, I woke up on my mattress next to a You savage. take a fucking bad chick, put her on a mattress Baby, she's a savage, but she lets me have it Oh, we getting at it, want a couple glasses You could be my captive, baby, be proactive She looking so attractive, dressed with the backless We can make it happen, you could be the captain I'll take you to the cabin, penthouse mansion And she used to acting, but I ain't Casting, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I woke up on my mattress next to a savage. Yeah. Oh yeah, I woke up on my mattress. Next to She's feeling so lonely. Everybody owns me, treated like a trophy. Everybody's phony. She stays so low key. They don't truly know me. She just wanna show me. Take it real slowly. She working long hours, taking long showers, chasing down downers over the counter. She cashing in vouchers, screaming out louder. No one around her. Surprised I even found her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I woke up on my mattress next to a savage. Yeah. Oh yeah, I woke up on my mattress next to a savage. I've been dreaming all in my head like I've seen it A life worth living is a life with meaning I'll do what I love till my heart stops beating I'm feeding this demon Got a taste and a waste, bitterness in my face Work a job every day till your dreams fade away Like a god, never change, play the game Now we say, I need a break Time to stand strong, need to move on to be what I want. I'll keep dreaming on. Time to stay strong, need to move on to be what I want. I'll keep dreaming on. Pace on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat, gonna see me rise with hate on that I don't play both sides, don't need no cap, I'm a ride or die for my dreams on tap I'm a fly real high, you ain't see me slack, no it's not how you fall, it's how you get right back up This how you get tough, calluses on my hands so rough, yeah, I call your bluff I'm not the one, mess with me, come out with none, cause I'm so done You had your fun, and now you're gonna face down the barrel of the gun Cause I got a full clip, put your name on it, but I'ma let you slide cause you ain't worth it Time to stay strong, need to move on to be what I want, I'll keep dreaming on Time to stay strong, need to Hello and welcome back to the European uh, Quidditch Cup 2022 Division 1. We are about to enter the game between Antwerp Dodos versus the Velociraptors Quidditch Club. I'm Sam Davis and with me today is... Suzanne Fischer. Hello. So we're about to see sort of like two big teams hitting off each other. Dodos having a very, very long history um, at EQTs, I believe now. Um, uh, with Raptors also. I think this is now their... The fourth EQC of like entering it. Probably yes, I think the same. Um, how high have Raptors ended up in the EQC? The past EQCs. Did you oh, know that, Sam? EQC. That uh, I'm not entirely sure how high they have ended. Um, 
I think they played pretty the well in on that one. <laughs> well, I think they played pretty well in 2019. I think they were fourth. Come fourth there. And then we have Antwerp, who actually ended up fifth in the last EPC of 2019. That's fantastic. So in terms of that, then, we're going to see two teams who very much equal out each other, I think, hopefully. So that's going to be a very nice, close game to see. I know um, Raptors currently, they hold the third place in the UK at the moment after the British Cup's been taken. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm bitter, but they <laughs> won the third place after beating me in the, um, in the semi-finals. But, uh, you know, they're, they're good players. They're, they're good laughs. It's a strong team. <laughs> true, true. Have you seen the Dodos this year play? Yes, actually, well, of course, I've also played against them uh, because I'm from Ghent. Uh, Dodos have won the Belgian qualifier and uh, yeah, the Belgian Cup this year, as they actually always do. Uh, they have been undefeated, the best Belgian team since, they, yeah, since definitely more than five years now. Um, undefeated for five years on the... Uh, at least, at least. Um, oh, that's an impressive, <laughs> that's an <laughs> impressive accolade. <laughs> definitely. Um, so, do you think this will be the most interesting game today? Ooh, that's an interesting question. Um, most interesting game today. It's going to be the most interesting game that I'm going to watch today, I think. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's one of those things, you, sometimes when you play, you don't get to see as many games that you want. Um, I know there's been quite a few interesting ones. I'd be quite interested to see, um, well, almost any Titans game, but that's because, you know, True. it's fun to watch good Quiddy. <laughs> They're a very Definitely. good team playing. Uh, but again, sort of like Raptors versus Dodos, again, going to be two very good teams. So, I, you know, from this point, I can't call it. And for me, not knowing who's going to come out of this on top is very exciting. Exactly. Uh, I mean, this could be actually the final. I mean, this could have been the final tomorrow. This, this is the level of game we're watching now. Oh, exactly. It could be. Um, we've just been told that the game is going to start in about eight minutes time. So we have a little bit of uh, speculation time that we can go on <laughs> to. Uh, so, no, I do agree. Um, this, I mean, this is going to be very exciting when we get into it. We're going to see both teams going to try and, uh, try and sort of like play the game their own style. And it's going to be very much a case of, sort of like who's going to push forward first, who's going to break first, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the stakes are also just very high for this game because this will decide to who is first seed in their group. Um, the previous scores of uh, the games from Raptors, so against Danny with Direwolf, they played with 140 against 60 and they caught a finish. Um, when they played against ha Hamrians, um, so I think they were quite comfortable against uh, against these teams. Well, that's fantastic. I must admit, I missed the games. However, I did go, uh, you know, have a bit of a chat with some of the Raptors um, prior to it, you know. And one of the things that they did mention was uh, Warren McFadden really sort of like coming out of their own on some of the games there. Um, they mentioned that sort of like uh, popping in, popping in quite a few goals. I think is what I heard on uh, some of them. So Warren, I think, is going to be one that I'm very interested to watch. Uh, also, I think. Um, Oh, I think he's got to beat me in a game of Blood Bowl at some point <laughs> um, that we're sort of like in a tournament uh, with. So I, I hope he comes out of this in a good mood because a I'm going to try and ruin it. What? Blood Bowl? Blood Bowl. Uh, yeah, it's some kind of American football um, computer game. I don't know. I've not been <laughs> playing it very well. I've got a team of rats. <laughs> but Warren's Warren's pretty good at it. They're, you know, they've all done it. So we've got Andrew, Warren. They're all in this, this league there. Um, and I see the Raptors have quite some regulars, right, who have been playing for a very long time. Oh, exactly. Well, I mean, in three months' time, um, a lot of that team's going to be playing for 10 years now. So, I mean, uh, Andrew Hull, um, Ben Morton, Warren McFadden, um, Dan Trick has been playing, I think, maybe eight years, six years. Uh, you got Ben Orridge, again, who's been playing around eight years, seven years, I think. All right. And Lucy, of course. Lucy Quidditch, of course. So I'm coming in from, I think, 2014. Yeah, uh, so, yeah 2014, I think, for... Um, what you got? Nottingham, where they uh, where she started, um, you know, very very old. It's a very old lineup <laughs> when you compare it to a lot of teams. I think sort of like my average, my guess would be the average age of that uh, average age of that team would be around 27. All right. So you do have newer players coming in, like Sam Burkett again, very good beater coming in, sort of like bringing up a bit of new a uh, bit of new blood for the uh, for the Raptors. Well, I say new blood. You know, he's been in there since the. Uh, since the two years that we're not going to mention, <laughs> but um, you know, in terms of actual sort of like game time because of the uh, break that we took, he's he's quite a new player in that sense. Uh, coming in for their Megs, the second team for the Raptors. Yeah, um, well, I must say for Antwerp, it's of course uh, it's a team that exists of a lot of regulars who have been playing for quite a lot. Antwerp uh, exists eight years now, and Louis Lermite, uh, yeah, he started the team and he's still playing after eight years. That's and of course, yeah, Sapper, you know as well, he's been playing. Uh, 
also for I think the same time as as Louis. Louis and Scepter Whip, a very dangerous character <laughs> to watch on pitch. Are there any that are there any other players other than sort of like other than Steph, I'd say, that you would say are to watch in this game? Well, uh, of course, you know Nathan, uh, Nathan Wilfred, uh, who yeah became a sort of rock this year. Uh, he's got even more muscly, so he will be def difficult to stop uh, when you try to tackle him. And the same when he attacks um, and when he defends, it will be difficult to pass him by. Uh, but they also have like a very large uh, female chaser squad. Um, Hannah Hermans, uh, who has been playing on the national team, is, is a, has a very uh, good quality as a chaser and she's really someone to look out for uh, when you're playing against her, but also when you're just watching the game. She will be always be sneaky uh, <coughs> next to the hoops and she will score that goal if she gets, gets the ball. Fantastic. Um, then uh, we have Rune. Rune is actually the sister of Steppe, who has uh, been playing actually for the second team for uh, of for Dodos, but is now uh, with the first team. Um, I don't know if you can already see it on the screen, but she's yeah in the corner running after a bludger. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Verle, who has been playing for the national team as well, is very is a very very strong chaser. Uh, but we also have now two new female chasers since this year. Uh, it's Finn and Isara, uh, who only started this year, but are actually already on a quite high level. So um, they have a, a very deep. Uh, quality in the female chaser squad as well. That's fantastic. I must admit, this is one thing that I'm very excited about this game. These are the two teams that are also very well known for using a lot of their female chasers. Yeah, We're going to see a lot of players coming out from sort of like a lot of players throughout the game, but it's very much a case of everyone on this pitch deserves to be on this pitch and they are all used. And it's going to be, well, I'm expecting it's going to be a very fun game just all round to watch. Mm -hmm. But for me, that's a very special sort of like point where you see top tier teams. You see how they become top tier teams is very much by using every player on the pitch. We're about to get a, a good schooling in that, I think. Yeah, indeed. Um, have there been any major injuries already on the, the Raptors? Major team? injury? Well, I know that Sam Burke, I think, has fractured two of his fingers. Um, so new, uh, new beta for um, Raptors. Two fingers are uh, sort of like fractured. I think he's now on the 12. We not uh, not this tournament. This was about 12 weeks ago. Okay. Um, but is he playing? He is playing. Oh. So you know he's got his fingers taped up. So you know he's uh, he doesn't need those two apparently. <laughs> uh, so you know he's you know his throw is still amazing. A lot of his power comes from the wrist. So you know it's um, mm. he can still play. He can still go. I think in terms of that, uh, the Raptors. You know generally they've got about one or two knees between them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're, uh, as I say, they're a team that is getting quite on in terms of uh, the average age of the team, um, just, you know, in Quidditch terms. <laughs> not, in, not in general life terms. In general life terms, <laughs> they're all quite terms, young. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, Tom Haynes, like, he could be anywhere between sort of like 27 and uh, <laughs> and 40 sometimes, but, you know, he was he was only a year older than me, you know. Yeah, we always but looked at the Dodos as the young the young people of the, of the, uh, of the Quidditch um, community, but actually now they're also 24, 25, some of them 26, some of them have children. Oh, not exactly. That, not that young anymore. Well, actually. it's a surprising lot. You know, um, uh, 2019, the last um, EQT, EQC even. In the last um, EQT, so like seeing some of these players come onto the uh, pitch, you know, some of them sort of like being the first time that they've ever actually been in the uh, Europeans. And then all of a sudden coming from sort of like a 19, 18 year old sort of like having a fun time here to being yeah. a, uh, in their mid 20s. It's a, it's a bit of a shocker. But it's fun to see. All right. So in the meantime, it has started raining. So we're uh, trying to move our equipment under the tent. And uh, this will make the game even more special, I think, with I the rain. <laughs> I, do, I think, you know, we're getting the, we're getting the, uh, the Irish experience. <laughs> so, it looks, so we've got the starting lineups coming up now. We've got Eamon Holmes, who is the, um, the referee for the head referee for the tournament. Um, on the lineup, we've got Andrew Hull, number 24. Um, as the keeper for the Raptors. We've got Dan Frick, who is the captain of the Raptors, I believe. Uh, number three is a beater. We've, who else have we got? Who's gonna be running for this quaffle? That looks like, that is... Seppa De Witz for Dodos, and then we have... The 79. Steve Withers. Steve Withers, they're gonna, they're gonna hunt me down later for forgetting his <laughs> name. Steve Withers running for the quaffle. I actually know Steve Withers, he's quite fast. Yeah, he's a lovely guy as well. <laughs> Thank you. So we're just going to prepare for the brooms up now.
Apologies for that slight technical delay. We're back now, so you can hear our lovely voices. Right, the score is currently nil all, I believe. Ex exactly. <laughs> nil all. The Raptors, I think they're using a lot of their strength there to push, p uh, push the um, Dodos out a little bit, forcing uh, a lot of long passes. But the Dodos are very confident with their uh, long passes, and like straight over there into the back corner to player number, I think is that a seven? It's uh, Emil, who Emil. has the ball now. Emil with the Emil Quaffle. Emil with Aert, yeah, number 12. Get it back to Nathan Wilpert. Cool. We currently have bludgeon possession with the Dodos. Dan Trick having uh, bludgeon possession for Raptors, being beaten out there by Dodos. Taking a lovely sort of like, lovely little like, pass there. Oh. Dodos player, number 40. Nathan, number Nathan. 40, Nathan Wilpert scored the first goal for Dodos. And the score is now 10-0 for Antwerp. It's a fantastic play there by Antwerp, using all their players really to sort of like set out the space on the pitch, make sure that they've got enough chases away from there, leaving Andrew Hull as the only quaffle player around the hoops, with Lucy Quidditch as an unarmed beater there, and uh, Dan Trick being taken out by their beater support, popping it in, lovely play. A pass out there. Long pass there, oh attempted to get to Andrew Hull, but intercepted by the keeper of Antwerp, running through, no one's there to oppose him. And a nice goal by Emil, uh, making 20-0 for Antwerp Dodos. Absolutely perfect play by Antwerp there. They're reading the pitch amazingly well here. The Raptors, they're always very good at having set, you know, well, sometimes set plays, sometimes just knowing their tactics, knowing where they need to play. But when you're coming up a team like this, with number, d um, who is it, number 12 is? Number 12, Emil Aert. Emil, the way he's reading the pitch there, seeing where these openings are coming from. Raptors are really going to have to think hard and sort of like pull in their uh, pull in the defense when it comes to it. Emil is actually very quick on his feet. You can see that all the time that he's... That helps as well. Yeah. That was a good reset there by the Raptors. Our Dodos have reclaimed from a uh, kickoff pitch. Okay, there's Seppa goes with the ball. Oh, Andrew's not going to like that he didn't oh take Seppa down there. It makes the third goal. <laughs> scored by Seppa De Witt. This is one of the nice things about a game like this. At the beginning, it's very much both teams, they want to see how the other are playing. And, you know, as, as we're looking at this, we didn't know who's going to come into this and uh, leave with the higher score. As it seems, Antwerp getting a lot of breakaways. You know, they are pushing it through. They are using their team, but they're getting a lot of counters when the Raptors are making a little bit of a mistake and uh, losing that quaffle possession. They're using every opportunity they get to actually make that goal. First reset by Andrew Holt. Looks like Raptors are now going to reclaim bludger possession. Oh, nice interception by Nathan Wilpert, number 40. Ooh, a little bit of a slip there, but he's got he's got control of the quaffles. Uh, Raptors have now claimed bludger control, which is a dangerous situation for any team to face. <laughs> Definitely. Especially with uh, no headbeat rule not being uh, in uh, effect in Europe. Lucy is a uh, <laughs> Lucy's a very dangerous person to go up against. Okay, nice. They kept bludger control perfectly fine, thanks to Lucy. This now means that a press is on for the Raptors, and now running straight in. And Steve scored the first goal for Raptors. So this makes the score 30 to 10. 30 to 10. Again, taking very much what Antwerp has uh, gone with throughout the entire game, where they've just seen an opening, they've seen that opportunity, break it through. Both teams got amazing defenses. So it's very much a case of sort of like seeing when someone falters, you just have to take that opportunity and run. You need the confidence to do it. Frazier Posford there trying to go for a tackle, not quite making it. Trying for that reset probably. Okay, ball to Verle. Dan Trick making some great blocks there on the beta game. Lucy Quidditch getting knocked out there. Dan Trick reclaiming possession. Wow. It looks like Andrew Hall making a long run, running like a goose down the push. Okay. Dan Trick getting a bit of a headshot. Yes, ball goes to number six. Faye Davis. Number six, Faye Davis. Popping that in there. Lovely safe hands there, I think they had. They scored a perfect goal there. Ooh, Lucy going for a back shot on that uh, Antwerp beater there, but missing, uh, sending it into the crowd. That could have been a reclaim for Antwerp there on the bludger game, which I think Raptors really need to keep their bludgers uh, safe here. Because mm -hmm. at the moment, when they, uh, when they don't have bludgers, Antwerp are running it in. Definitely. Rune is trying her best there. Fighting against uh, against Lucy, but didn't manage to get yeah. the bludger. I mean, Dan Trick is putting in quite a shift here to try and keep bludgers in possession of Raptors, and also putting up a defence. It looks like that was a, um, a hit to the ground, which means Antwerp still are safe, not beat. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, nice. Ball goes to Emil, number 12. He's trying to set it up again, but he's getting pressured by Fraser. Trying to pull him down, but not quite uh, getting the grip there. Fraser beat on the head there. Little noggin, noggin smack. Okay, <laughs> and they right. retrying to set it up. Andrew Hall stepping up as the keeper. He's in his keeper zone, so currently he can't be beaten out by the beaters. Dan Trick making a good beat there on the beat, on the Antwerp beaters. Again, Raptors have pushing them up. They've left one player back, but Fraser Prosford's got his arms on him. Nice tackle there. Okay, good save. Veerle has the ball. Still for Antwerp. Veel, a very dangerous player if you give them a bit of space. Look at her confidence. She's not scared of those guys. <laughs> sure, I think that's Chambers for some. Andrew Holt getting hands on the ball. The moment he's going to grab that, he's going to sprint if you give him an opening. Okay, nice goal by Andrew. He's got three months before it's his 10-year anniversary of playing. 10-year anniversary. 10-year anniversary. It seems like he's 40 then. But <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. It, does, it seems like it's a long time. He's 28. Okay, 28 is not that old. Not that old. In Quidditch terms, it's ancient. <laughs> well, I'm 29, so I feel insulted. <laughs> <laughs> so we have 30-30. So both teams are going head-to-head. -head. This is uh, Once Raptors regain uh, bludgeon control, they really can control the pitch, which is... A bit of a danger for Antwerp. However, it does look like Antwerp have regained uh, bludgeon control, which means that the Raptors are in that danger zone that they were in earlier. Antwerp, a little bit of a silly hit there, doing a bit too powerful, uh, meaning that the bludgeon rolls off and Bill Orridge is just going to get his hands to him. All right. Ball is with Geneva Chambers. Up. Oh, we've got Ben Morton coming on the pitch, number 21, who's being a bit of a sneaky passing option, getting the hands to it. Now they're going oh. for the book, but a little bit of a beat first. However, Andrew Hall's getting the shot on there. Nice goal. Straight in. He's always had a very straight shot, that one. Yeah, he's dangerous when he has uh, the ball in his hands. Yes, he's dangerous when he doesn't have the ball in the hands. <laughs> if he gets his hand on you, he's, uh, he'll bring you down with him. Okay, and now the game is changed because it's 30-40 and 44 Raptors. Raptors now taking the lead. I believe Raptors now also have bludgeon possession back. Bill Orridge coming on, bringing, uh, bringing a lot of muscle and a lot of speed onto the beta game. And a good deflect there. Antwerp going for it. Bill Orridge pressing it up. We've left Lucy Q there for a long throw, oh. but making a miss there. Nice. Hannah Hammond has the ball. Pass uh, reset yeah. over to no one, I believe, there. Exactly. Which is going to be a turnover as there was no one eligible to pick up the quaffle. I think everyone was beat out. So that's a reset over to uh, Chambers, number 77, I believe. I'm learning how to count numbers. <laughs> it was helping me a lot. <laughs> You're doing and well. You're doing well. Oh, thank you. We've got Andrew Hull with possession of the quaffle. Moving up the pitch slowly. We've got Fraser Posford as a uh, safe reset for them. A right. little bit of a switch. Not necessarily needed, but it's adding a little nice bit of flavor. Is Fraser new to uh, the Raptors? Fraser is um, newish to the Raptors. This is their first EQT with Rapt uh, EQC with Raptors. Um, they've been playing with the Raptors for a couple of years now. Um, after doing a, a long stint in um, Chef, um, not Sheffield, uh, Southampton. All right. Uh, a lot, you know, they've they've been a, a good player. I think they've been on the um, the reserve squad for Team UK for quite some time. Um, now this, they've had a very good season with the Raptors. I think, I think they did a little season with the Raptors seconds, the Megs, for a while just before the uh, the lockdown. Um, but now coming in and be, you know instantly becoming quite a, a bit of a linchpin yeah. uh, player of teams. It seems like he has, uh, they have a quite important role. They're uh, very confident. It's one that, my interesting fact on it, oh, that was a very nice switch, but being blocked out there by Antwerp's uh, keeper who saw it oh. coming. Nice block by Veerle. Oh, Antwerp there, their defense, spotless there. That was beautiful. Wow. Again, the... What was that? Number 33 there for Antwerp. <laughs> making I don't a know. Do you know? A powerful <laughs> beat. I don't know. So 33 for Antwerp is um, Louis Lettite. Yeah, I think it's uh, Lermite. Yeah. Lermite? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to apologize. I'm very English. No, it's uh, Louis Lermite, but I'm kidding. Oh, a beautiful goal there. There was a lot of uh, lot of bouncing it up. They were playing a little bit of uh, a little bit of um, volleyball there. It looks like um, there's a stoppage in there's play. There's a little bit, maybe a little bit of a head contact there on Chambers. I think it might have been incidental. We're going to see how the uh, how the uh, refs react to that. Chambers has been on the team for quite some years now, right? I, I believe so. So I um, I think possibly from the second year of the Raptors playing. Um. So that how long have the Raptors been now? 2016. So it's quite old. Was it 2017? 
I should remember. I was, I was originally on the Raptors with them. Really? Before, le yeah. Well, they're they're far beyond my skill. <laughs> the thing. What did you make change teams? Hmm? What did you What did you? What made me change teams? Yeah. Um, the Raptors are a very good team. However, after we won uh, the Northern Cup in the UK, um, I found another team that was drinking uh, better than uh, the Raptors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I decided good this, reason, this might reason. be more my level of team. <laughs> you have to go for what you like. You do. You know, I absolutely love the players on this team. But, you know, they're, as I say, far fitter than me. I played against Raptors in 2017, EQC. And I How think did this that go for you? Well, not that bad. We lost, but not I think good. we still played a decent game. Mm. It was a bit of a bit of a uh, audacious shot and a try there to get the, ha the ball to the hands of Ben Morton. However, being intercepted there by the keeper of Antwerp, who is... Sepetowitz. Ah, uh, Sepetowitz! Oh, I should know him. <laughs> I'm going to be told off later for not knowing that one. And the score is now, I think, 50 to 40 for Antwerp. The game's very tight, very tight indeed. We're going to see. I think it will come down to a snitch catch later. So I think Ben Morton, who, uh, number 21 for the Raptors, will be coming off to seek, I believe. Uh, for Antwerp, do you know who the seeker is? Uh, this will be Lo uh, Lawrence. Lawrence, he's still now in the, in the sub box. He's not playing as a chaser. Or something. Oh, he's, he's only coming on as a seeker. No, I'm not sure. He's actually quite a good keeper as well. Oh, right. uh, but at the moment, he's still in the sub box. And there you go. Uh, Bill Orridge there taking out the uh, beta defense there, constantly hitting them. Oh, trying, nice to trying to shoot over three defenders is never the wisest decision. It's, um, it's a little bit worrying in that sense for the Raptors, where you know they're very smart players, very capable players. When you're shooting over three, three Dodos players to try and get a goal in, is that a sign that they're starting to panic a little bit? Could be the case. Andrew Hall taking a beat, but Ben Morton is still there with hands on the ball, trying to get through. We have Scepter Whip blocking them out. A pass over to no one. Oh, this, but this is being caught by number six. Number six from the Raptors. Faye Davis. Faye Davis. Again, I'm starting to think with shots like that where they're not looking for players, they're just throwing it back and hoping someone's in that space. It's not the... Uh, not the type of play that the Raptors are known for, especially in the UK. They're known for being very methodical, very, very good players, but also very, um, very on the ball um, tactically. A sign that they're under pressure now. Very good beating by the Raptors. I think all the chasers who tried to catch that ball were beat out. True. Sure. We have um, Fisher on the pitch now, who um, both in so <laughs> actually no. Sometimes you can get confused with Andrew Hull. Ah. Depends, uh, <laughs> depends if they've gone to the hairdressers or not, and uh, <laughs> which hairdressers they go to. They have si uh, quite a similar posture, and might also a similar playing style, I don't know. Similar playing style, I'd say more similar beard. Both of them <laughs> very good keepers in their own right. And it was a nice goal by Nathan Wilpert, and bringing the score to 60-40 to 40 for Antwerp Dodos. It's all still to play for, I think, especially when we look at the snitch, uh, when that comes on pitch, we're going to see both teams really going for it, I think. I'm not entirely sure of the time at the moment. I think we're approaching 10 minutes. I could be wrong on that. But as we're going, we are very much trading. Oh, oh Going for his drive, passing it to Seppe, and Emil takes the ball and scores the goal. As it seems, we are seeing the Raptors, again, they've lost bludgeon control. They're seeing that um, without bludgeon control, Antwerp are very much just running it in. Yeah. They're going to have to change something up soon, otherwise they are going to find themselves out of snitch range very soon, meaning that it's going to be a harder game for them if they do go for the snitch later on. 70 to 40. Walking up the pitch nice and slowly. Nice little bit of an amble. At this point, I think they may the Raptors... Uh, I do apologize that I'm talking more about sort of like the Raptors' tactics. But it does seem like they're slowing it down a little bit to try and stem what Antwerp can uh, build up their points on them. Getting the pass over there. Passing over to Scepter Whip, though. Straight into the hands. They're going to make a big old run. To right. Oh, Warren oh, McFadden getting nice. in the way. But number 12 running it through. Warren still on the case. Beautiful. Ooh. Number 33, Warren. Um, the speed, not only being able to block that first shot, but to get halfway across the pitch to almost stop that as well. It's impressive to see. Does look like Antwerp are now outside of the thirty, the yeah. thirty points. That if the goal is good, they will be plus four. Uh, there is a timeout. Raptors have called their timeout. <laughs> They're probably going to take a, a break and 
maybe discuss if they want to change the tactics. What do you think, e either one of the teams, what do you think they're going to be talking about now? So let's say Antwerp, how do you think they're going to think about changing? Um, I, would, I, th I think they're doing, they probably would say that they're doing quite fine, and that they, but they have to keep the pressure high. Now they're up, they're up plus four, and probably it will be only sure goals, keep the ball as long as possible, only score the goals that you are sure you're going to make. So they can run out of range and keep that gap. That will be the most important thing. Keep that gap between them and the Raptors. I think you're, you're exactly right. As, as you say, like they, they don't need to worry about the time, really. They just need to make sure that the Raptors don't start catching up. They can they can play for time. They wait until the snitch gets on. Just every now and again, put your hand through the hoop. And, of course, you actually don't want Raptors in range. Because once snitch is on pitch, you know, that's... Even with a good seeker, you cannot be sure against Raptors, right? Oh, exactly. I mean, like, 12-second Morton is always a danger, no matter sort of like how they're doing on pitch, mm -hmm. especially with the way that the snitch is working, uh, where if you catch it from behind, you get a chance to chase up on quaffle points, 30 points on the leading team. It looks like we're about to restart the game. Okay, and the sc I think the score is 80 to 40 now. Okay, and we've got very good eyes. <laughs> Trying to see. It's quite far away. <laughs> 50 40. The Quaffo is currently with Fish. I'll use the proper name, Fisher. Coming up the pitch. A little bit of a side hop there. Very nice little dance. Warren being uh, marked out there, so not really a safe passing option. Sam Berkey going in there for a half bludger. Oh, nice interception by Veerle. Beautiful. Well played. I can't okay. admit, the interceptions that Antwerp are making are next level. Definitely. You have to be uh, you have to pay attention all the time. You look at every chance you get to get that interception. And Vela, she has it, she has it done it several times already this game. So. But it's so impressive. It's normally, you know, in a team you might find one player who they've got a, you know, they got a good pitch sight, they've got good pitch sense where they're seeing these passes and they're going to knock them out. But Antwerp, they've got at least four or five players who are all so in tune. That they are making these uh, making these interceptions. They're making these um, steals. Unfortunately, that was a, a shot at the uh, hoops that just went way way off uh, course, almost off the uh, back boundary there. I think they're now they can use their time to build up the game again, nice and slowly. Again, I think this might be what uh, in the uh, tactics talk there they've talked about. If they're shooting at the hoops and taking taking massive shots, especially from the back, they are going to be burning time now. Time that the Raptors really can't wait to give them. But Sep. Going straight in there. Beautiful goal, beautiful goal. So I believe that's 90-40 for Antwerp. Th Did you see the screen of Veerle that she placed on the, the hoop defender there? She was really opening that spot there for Seppo. It's beautiful work. I mean, expect so in the UK, we currently uh, play on the rule that you have to tap in at the middle hoop. So ah, yes. in Europe, uh, of course, you tap in at any three of the hoops, which means that a lot of the time we are very easy to, it's very easy for us to forget that if we're in a certain position, mm -hmm. you're going to have someone screening you out. You can't turn around and get exactly where you need to be. Is one of the problems that uh, the Raptors sometimes oh. face with their beaters. They do go in for these uh, very powerful throws. If you miss, it's going to take you off the pitch. We're currently looking at about 10 seconds for uh, Sam Burkett to return to the pitch if maybe more and we've got Sepp DeWip running right at the goals now with putting pressure there Warren trying to get in there to stop them luckily Dan Trick is there to put up a bit of defense to make them think twice Cat Jack and Hull um, marking up on the hoops and the ball is again in the hands of Victor Victor is on pitch as well you know Victor Mortat who currently has the ball uh, used to be a beater in Ghent and he also uh, has been a beater on the national team as well as a chaser. So actually, he's good in everything. Oh, he's got a very, very lucrative career behind <laughs> him. I'm hoping to see that we're going to see some very accurate shots from him on a chaser lineup. Andrew Holt, oh, oh, stripping the ball. There he goes. Okay. And straight up the pitch, we have one beater. In front. We have Septa Witt there, but he's been beaten off. And that is oh, not a goal. Not quite in. I believe there was a beat on Sep, and Andrew's currently. Uh, Currently complaining to the refs about it, that Sepp was in their way, but um, it looks like it's just incidental, yeah. really, there. Don't think that it was on purpose. <laughs> there we go, a bit of a thigh slap. That's uh, Andrew Staple. We'll see if we can get that on slow-mo for him later. He'll love that. Oh, snitches on pitch. Ben Morton going for it, dodging a, a beat there. Going for it, straight in oh. with a snitch catch. There we go, 12-second Ben Morton. Yeah. Have you got any idea how long that was? <laughs> it's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, if you have Raptors going for the snitch, 
you have to look out for that. You do. You have to bubble that quickly, especially with as the as the game was going. Antwerp really had the uh, had the manpower on the uh, chaser game to just keep the pressure up on her, mm -hmm. to so much and build up those points while also moving their beaters onto the snitch. However, ne neglecting to do that might have just lost them uh, 30 points that they really can't afford to lose it in case like this. But I must say, if we are going to play with a set <laughs> score. That is also Antwerp game. I mean, they know how to handle the quaffle, they know how to set up the, that, that game. If, if we're going to play with a set score, uh, I think it's going to be difficult for the Raptors to catch, to catch Antwerp. Get It'll be that difficult, score. but we also know Raptors having that uh, morale boost that they've just uh, caught the snitch. Yeah. However, I also think Raptors have bludger possession. And as we saw earlier, Not, yeah, that good is remark. Uh, good that's remark. Raptors bread and butter. However, and Antwerp is straight in there with a goal, so I might stand corrected. <laughs> That was the goal by beater and chaser Victor Mortgat. He's currently only playing chaser at the moment, though. <laughs> Definitely. Good, he hasn't got two headbands on. I don't think that, yeah. Imagine that, if you could play both positions at the same time. People have tried it. We currently have... Um, oh, it looks like Tom Haynes is on as a beat. Oh, no. I see number three, Dan Trick. So we have Dan Trick on as a beater. I got my names mixed up there. Dan Trick being uh, blocked out by number 13. Elizabeth Renier, Elizabeth Renier is currently playing with... Oh, a beautiful, oh. beautiful steal there, and then a knock from um, the back of Andrew Hall, downing the quaffle. Seb De Witt getting possession there, Dantrick making a tackle. Oh, but nice catch by Hanne, unfortunately she's tackled. The Andrew ball is pulling them down. Oh, nice work by Lucy. We've seen a lot of tackles just in that last five seconds or so from the Raptors. It does seem a lot of them have a... Have been sort of like well, at least on the beta game, were called by the refs there. So I think there's a bit of a bit of desperation that's uh, scrambling to get the balls back. We have Dan Trick and Lucy Quidditch coming up the pitch, and Dodos have budget control again. Very dangerous position for Raptors here. We they've only got two goals left that they can concede, and as we know, any mistake here, Dodos will just get it in very quickly. <laughs> Especially here, we've got Sep versus Andrew. If Sep gets uh, Sep De Whip gets the hands on that quaffle. I'm not entirely sure Andrew's going to be able to step fast enough to make any defense. We've got Lucy coming in there, but can't do anything against Sepp, who's in the keeper zone. Andrew bursting in, but not quite making any headway. Ball to Steve, 79. Raptors have reclaimed bludger possession. I didn't see when that happened, but it happened apparently. It looks like Dantrick is moving very slowly to uh, get behind the, uh, the Dodo's beaters there. But Raptors oh. have now m lost their possession. And I think Dodos have both Quaffle and Bludger control now. Looks like without any Bludger... Oh, uh, nice tackle by Steve on that all. Without any Bludger defense, it might be difficult here for Raptors to stop what's about to happen. But a big pass over, unfortunately just a little bit too high. People misinterpreting how high their uh, players are, I'm afraid. It looks like Lucy was a bit, uh, bit rattled there in that last uh, run as well, with um, one of the Bludgers being thrown off pitch without an attempt of beating anyone. But um, that's been let go, I believe. And Lucy is being sneaky behind the hoops of Antwerp. It does look like Antwerp, both their beaters have clocked her though, unfortunately. However, out of experience, I can say knowing that Lucy is there and being able to do anything about it are two vastly different things. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like there is a bit of a good setup here. For fr oh, nice fake by Chambers. Antwerp has blood control again and has the quaffle. So the score is still... I think 170. I believe so. And I think the set score is 120. So this means Raptors would need five more goals and Dodo's two. You're far better at maths than <laughs> I am. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> Looks like Lucy and number two from Antwerp bouncing their balls off each other. Oh, a good attempt there, but not quite getting their hands to it. Andrew Hall now taking the control for the Raptors for Quaffle. It looks like there might be a slight, uh, slight issue of players running into each other here. That's uh, that's caused a little bit of a brooms down. Well, it's a contact sport. <laughs> it, is, it is. You do have to expect it, but it's still nice not to not to be hit. Yeah, to at least not be hurt by it. True, true. It looks like he, he's all right. He's stood up. He's he's fine. He's a thing like that. We got the medics. They'll have a look. Make sure that everything's all right. Where uh, are the bludgers at the moment? So bludger possession is currently. Uh, Dan Trick has a downed bludger by them, but in between two. Uh, Antwerp beaters. Oh no, it looks like two Antwerp beaters have bludgers, so there is no down bludger. I think Lucy Quidditch, uh, Lucy Q might have a bludger. Yeah, yeah they yes, ha she has a bludger there. 
Tapping out the replacement, coming in. And Antwerp is currently playing double male. Double, double male, male Peter. Peter. <laughs> Andrew ambling down the pitch. At this point, there is no time uh, pressure on either of the teams, really, with the snitch already being uh, on and off. So Raptors really can take their time here to make sure that they're going to get in there and only make their attack when they're pretty confident they're going to... Uh, and they're pretty confident that they're going to have a good shot at getting the goal. Lucy and Dan are really trying uh, their best there to try and get any type of bloody possession back. Looks like Dan's gone for a bit of a uh, pass back there. Oh, lovely Ooh. drive, but just over the hoop, just a little bit shy. And Hannah and Chambers are going both for the ball, but the ball is given to <laughs> Antwerp. Sure. Uh, Antwerp still retaining bludger control at the moment. Not what Raptors are going to want to see. They've uh, just subbed on Bill Orridge, so this is a heavy hitter. Who's uh, Oh, they've given Bill Orridge the, uh, the quaffle. Very good sniper with... Uh, sorry, Bill Orridge the bludger. Very good sniper with the ball, uh, bludger. It's difficult with all the balls, Quidditch, right? It is. It's too many bees. <laughs> too many bees, too many <laughs> balls. The bit versus Hull. The ball goes back to Emil. Again, Antwerp, in the same situation as the Raptors, they know that they don't have to. Ah, uh, a nice goal by Izara, who is actually a new player on the on Antwerp Dodos. Fantastic positioning, fantastic foresight to see what was happening there. But again, Antwerp, in the same situation where they don't have to worry about the time now. No. They can very much, they can move their players around, they can see when the Raptors are going to break. And of course, just leaving that uh, that uh, middle hoop, or well, the middle height hoop, Open there for uh, number 77. Sorry, uh, what was how do you pronounce her name? Sorry, sorry it's number 77. Oh, sorry, the, the late uh, Izara, yeah, Izara, Izara. Bilic, Bilic, yes. Well, right, just name. leaving that for her to move in there. Beautiful, beautiful play by Antwerp, who now only need one goal to uh, to win the game. But that's actually exactly what they're doing. Only sure goals, not giving off that ball, that quaffle. Exactly. Except it Yellow card, Raptors number 12, ignoring a referee's directive. So that's Bill Orridge now for one minute in the subs box after receiving a yellow card. So Sep De Whip with the quaffle. It this looks like this might be the final play. There's no one there to stop them. They're running in for it. Oh, nice oh. tackle of Steve. A good attempt, but there's... He misses. They have called it no good. Yeah, they're trying to rebuild that attack again. It was a again. good 50-50% there from yeah. the refs. Some um, thought it was in, some thought it wasn't. Good pass oh. over there, but a little bit too high. For a minute I thought this game was over, but it's not. Managed to keep it in. Andrew there, j leaping at... Uh, Izara. I, think we had seven, it, I believe Izara there taking one step off the boundary there means that Andrew Hull now has quaffle possession. Just just being able to stay in the game this is a little bit longer. Raptors still have a chance, but it's going to be a very difficult game. Antwerp here, it's really their game, really their game to uh, continue going on. Again, all they need is one little break. Raptors, it looks like they're playing for time here. Big passing over, trying to get a uh, safe hands to it. Oh, and going in for a bit of a run. Nice tackle by Zara. Goal was not scored. Again, uh, maybe a little bit of panic there, but and this is, is going to end it. Yes. Uh, ending there on, is that Sepp Whip again? Yeah, again. goal by Sepp It's uh, very much something that we've said a lot throughout this uh, <laughs> throughout this game. <laughs> Definitely, I think. Uh, I think finishing high, as high they were going on. A high scoring uh, chaser. Definitely. All of a sudden, I couldn't find the word chaser anymore. <laughs> so a high-scoring <laughs> running person. Running person. <laughs> no, both teams putting in a lot of effort there. Fantastic play by both teams, but it's one of those things. Sometimes you come up against a matching that just is playing in a style that you're not accustomed to or um, playing in a style that just does not gel with how you want to play this game. Well, they went head-to-head, -head and in the end, uh, Antwerp got the upper hand. Exactly. Beautiful to see. I must say, Antwerp beat us there very much, in my opinion. Taking, you know, well, Antwerp beaters and chasers there very much taking the initiative and being able to cut down the game. I think Raptors on that game relying quite heavily on having bludger control to be yeah. able to control the game there. But Antwerp not letting them have it. You there know, what more can you say? <laughs> there was definitely some moments where it seemed like Raptors could have gotten the upper hand. But in the end, I think the Antwerp <laughs> kept the control actually over the, p the whole play. Exactly. I think, you know, it's, it's there's no... Um, I think hopefully neither of the teams going to come from. Well, Antwerp won't, but I think Raptors won't come out of this thinking like, oh, you know, it's a bad game. It's a good game oh, for all of them. They caught a, a snitch, you know. Uh, you know, 12 second Ben Morton going in there. You're going to have to find out how quick that one, uh, how quick that one went. Uh, ben Morton, if he's going for the snitch, yeah, it's always dangerous. Oh, you you have to hit him. Yeah. If he's going <laughs> for the snitch, you can't afford not to get a be get a beater on him. 
That, that's why you don't want to be in range against raptors. No, exactly. So, no. So, going on from this, are there any games that you're now looking forward to see for the rest of the day? Well, I don't know actually what um, what teams have, have ended up in lower brackets. Ooh. So I think this is, if I'm not mistaken, the last upper bracket slot. And then the next games are going to be the ones that uh, are for the lower bracket. So for those teams, it will be the fourth game of the day. So last uh, upper bracket slot. So I believe Raptors have won two games today. Yes. And Antwerp, I assume, have won two ga three. Three games. Yeah. So Antwerp going in there is a high seeding. I think Raptors are also in upper bracket after winning two games yeah, there. Yeah, they will have the second seed. And yeah, it will definitely be a danger to... Um, to teams that uh, got a first seed in the other uh, groups. Almost I definitely. Mean, the Raptors as a, as a second seed team, you would not expect that. No, you'd not want it either. <laughs> you know? I, there was some talk, I must admit, I don't think they're going to be entirely too disappointed with that because it does give them, I think, a slightly... Uh, does that put them on the... It might put them on the side of the bracket that they uh, they prefer to be on, you know, facing some teams that they've played before mm -hmm. uh, that they know that they've got a bit more of a chance against um, where, you know, you know players that got them. Yeah. Um, but with um, the Dodos, again, being very happy, I think, going yes. into this... Uh, going into day two tomorrow and I think a first place. I think Dodos ended up at the bracket side of Titans again, if Ooh. I'm not mistaken. So it could be a repeat of uh, the 2019 situation where they already meet in the quarterfinals. Again, that's it's 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 a tricky situation because very much that can be that. I would not be surprised if that was what we saw in the final, or what you know some people would say deserves to be in the final. Both those teams, fantastic teams, facing off against each other, to come up against each other so early in the competition on day two, mm -hmm. it's a uh, it's a it's a a nasty thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but whenever or whenever they end up, it will always be exciting to watch. So um, it's definitely looking. Uh, we can definitely look forward to that game. And also, it's we're not sure, but it's a possibility that it can happen. <laughs> We'll have to wait and see when uh, when we finally uh, get the get the schedules it's coming out. So that is the game ended for the Velociraptors versus Antwerp, uh, the Antwerp Dodos, with the final score, I believe, being 120 to 70. to 70. Thank you very much. Uh, I've been Sam Davis, and with me has been... Suzanne Fischer, and I've enjoyed it this a lot. Thank you, Sam. Oh, it's been lovely <laughs> commentating with you. It's been brilliant. <laughs> All right. right. So... I believe more games will be coming soon. Stay tuned. Have a nice night. Bye.
get caught up in the millions, yeah. Yeah, I'ma make this shit high. Oh, I'ma light this shit up. Yeah, I'ma make this shit high. Oh, I'ma light this shit up.
better back up. About to have a bad day, call it bad luck. I don't call this shit fake, call it back, bruh. Anybody getting in my way is getting jacked up. Why you think it's too late? Think again, bruh. Everybody know my name when I step up. Everybody know my name like a friend, huh? Have the people going insane by the end, huh? I'm not the type to take it nice and slow. I'm not the type to take the answer, no. I'm not the type to quit and let it go. I'm my own dream catcher. I'm not the type to take it nice and slow. I'm not the type to take the answer, no. I'm not the type to quit and let it go. I'm my own dream catcher. Take it nice and slow. I'm not the type to take the answer, no. I'm not the type to quit and let it go. I'm my own dream catcher. I'm not the type to take it nice and slow. I'm not the type to take the answer, no. I'm not the type to quit and let it go. I'm my own dream catcher. I want, I get what I need. Every single day I'm heading off to my dream, and I get everything that I damn well please. I don't give a damn if you are listening to me, cause I run it. I'm the only one that really want it. I'm the only one that's really on it. I'm just being honest. I'm just doing everything I promise, cause I want it bad enough that I'ma make it as an artist. And I know I'm not the smartest, and I know I'm not the largest, but I promise you that I'ma be the one that worked the hardest, cause I promise you that I'm just getting started. And I promise you that my skills are getting sharper, so I'ma get charted. Can't be guarded. Nah, I'm the one to get retarded. Get the party started. Yeah, get the party started. Yeah, so let me get up on it. Yeah, bitch, you got me fucked up. I don't know what. What's up? Pour that shit in my cup. We about to turn up. Crank this shit up so loud. Sounds like we're sold out. In front of a whole That's crowd. Right. We just yeah. control now. Don't take this shit too personally. Everybody got a different version of me. Everybody gotta be learning from me. Everybody wanna be working with me. And I feel like there's uncertainty and urgency to find out what you wanna be. But honestly, we change our minds constantly. So stop and breathe and find out who you wanna be. Failure ain't an 
option So I'd be cautious I hope that you're watching Don't try to stop this Work until I'm nauseous Cause I will not quit No, because I want this Don't try to stop me Never ain't an option So I'd be cautious I hope that you're watching Don't try to stop this Work until I'm nauseous Cause I will not quit No, because I want this Don't try to stop me Did you learn anything? Really worth anything? 200 grand later and we're not even working Student loans worth more than what we're earning Best lesson I've learned is to keep on searching Find your true passion and get to work And better take action or you end up serving Yeah, that's a fact So you better clean up your act So you better raise off the sack And tell the world they can suck on that Don't come back, pack your bags You take a trip and don't relax You hit the switch and just attack You find your niche and make some racks Don't hold back Everybody wake up It's time to break up With the life you made up it's time to trade up, live the life you want now A life you don't doubt, I could give a fuck how Just make your grit out Wake up, wake up, man, this life is a blur Everyone's got an opinion, so which one you prefer? Cause I'll give you one that's coming from an entrepreneur Don't give up on your dream, it is what you deserve So I'd be cautious, I hope that you're watching Don't try to stop this, work until I'm nauseous Cause I will not quit, no because I want this Don't try to stop me, never ain't an option So I'd be cautious, I hope that you're watching Don't try to stop this, work until I'm nauseous Cause I will not quit, no because I want this Don't try to stop me Appreciate all that is vacant It's just for the taking If you make up your mind, you can take it 
replacement for persistence it's a patience yeah in this life i want to be soaring to feel sun inside when it's pouring and i'll fight till anxiety is foreign i'm so sick of my mind's extortion my whole life i just wanted someone who would notice me my whole life i just wanted to be somebody to be yeah i just want to be great yeah i just want to be great yeah i just want to be great yeah yeah it up, life's tough, we know that, someone's got better stuff and can throw cash, tell them I don't give a fuck, make my own path, I don't need no handouts, I'm my own man, gotta get it, I'll get it, get it in fast, yeah, got a girl that she'll get it, get it, she bet, yeah, man, I only get down with the best, uh, I'ma leave the complaints with the rest, uh, I won't ever stop now, I'ma get it now, have my head face down in the fucking ground, rock bottom I found, but I'm back now, bitch, better back down or you'll fucking drown, I don't wanna hear it now, this is my town, I'ma be the one found at the top now, screaming out so loud to the whole crowd, I'm not alright, no, I need you here And I just might lie wide awake in fear And let time pass by, no, I can't see clear Think I'm lost inside and the end is near It's just not fair It's just not fair It's just not fair not okay ripped it out of the chest from the cocaine i don't want to get left no way man i want to be the best in my domain peace of mind never coming to my head yeah if i'm first then i'm gonna end up dead yeah i'm here to fuck around and make friends yeah i'm here to put all of my team into bed yeah and all i see is that you're running from your past yeah just like a dream can't seem to make yourself go fast yeah you keep on going but you're falling you're falling it's now we're never push it all I'm not alright, no, I need you here And I just might lie wide awake in fear And let time pass by, no, I can't see clear Think I'm lost inside and the end is near It's just not fair It's just not fair It's just not fair the chase and the hunt and i set the pace when i'm running i always take what i want and i always give it 100 don't need a bank no i'm funded play the game like it's nothing i'm always thankful for something don't take for granted stay humble now wake up it's time to look at the enemy look in the mirror if he is no friend to me it's not working now maybe it's the chemistry it's time to break up so i can make a better me better believe in your mind because it's everything you can mold shape find
yeah. Everybody knows that I'm breaking down. Everybody knows I ain't faking now. Everybody knows my heart's faking now. Yeah, she hates me now. I made mistakes, but now I don't ever want to be alone. I don't really ever feel at home. On my own, in the zone. That's the only way I know. Feeling low, about to blow back up. I won't ever let the doubt creep in. Gotta pop a couple more aspirin. I don't think I'll ever let you win. Easier to break it off as friends. I don't really understand myself. I don't really understand. Need help. I don't want to be left on the shelf. Couldn't even hear me if I yelled. It's so cold outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold Break down. Always feel like I could break now, but I never let it take me to that place now. I won't ever let my thoughts get away now. I got better things to do, picking fate now. I just wanna be the best, call me great now. I don't know if I'm okay or insane now. I remember better days on the playground, but I can find my way. Even when I'm feeling down, I fight. Even when I don't know what is right, I'ma pick a side and I'ma take pride. I will decide my fate, and I will never let them tell me who I am. If you try to shake me, I'll be damned. Planning on the ground is where I stand. Never give up, that was always the plan. It's so Cold outside, I'm alone, I'm alright. It's so cold outside, I'm alone, I'm alright. It's so cold. Welcome to the city, where the girls are pretty, where the boys drink whiskey, enjoy getting risky, oh she's feeling frisky, yeah. She said welcome to the city, where the girls are pretty, where the boys drink whiskey, enjoy getting risky, oh she's feeling frisky, yeah. She said welcome to the city. Sipping bottles of Patron with a good line. She 
She's like a model and her clothes fit her just right A couple bottles and she's showing me her good side yeah, I asked her, can you do a little show for me? That's when the clothes, they start to fall off of her sexy body Back to my room, I've never seen a girl so very naughty That's when she looked at me and said, get ready for a party She said, welcome to the city Where the girls are pretty Where the boys drink whiskey, enjoy getting risky Oh, she's feeling frisky, yeah She said, welcome to the city Where the girls are pretty Where the boys drink whiskey, enjoy getting risky Oh, she's feeling frisky, yeah She said, welcome to the city She said, welcome to the city Oh, you think you wanna start shit? I ain't even from this world, just call me Martian. I could kick you down a hole just like a Spartan. Fuck with me and you will never be pardoned. Yeah. Push myself to my limits, I'm in it to win it Forget the beginning, it's now that you're living Don't be forgiven, don't fear what you're missing A mind like a killer, you need to be driven Ten steps ahead, you prepared in the head? Think this shit through or just wing it instead I'm tired of working so hard for this bread I'm hungry as fucking fucked up in the head I'm sick of these lazy bums, they all get nothing done Waiting to have someone take care of everyone I don't need anyone, this shit ain't any fun It takes hard work to make yourself a penny, son And I will not be the one with regrets And I will not hear the doubt or the threats And I'm not one to ever forget So what's the fuck out while I'm coming with you I ain't even from this world, just call me Martian I could kick you down a hole just like a Spartan Fuck with me and you will never be pardoned, yeah Oh, you think you wanna start shit? I ain't even from this world, just call me Martian I could kick you down a hole just like a Spartan Fuck with me and you will never be pardoned, yeah, yeah it's been like driving me crazy, these people complacent Too many are lazy but wanna see changes You can all hate me, you're slaves to these wages You need to be crazy to head out for greatest Don't want excuses, I wanna see movement Just watch like a student and see how they do it Need some improvement, we all need solutions So be the one who could just stack up and do it You ain't never gonna stop me, I'll be found Climb my way to the top like a rebound I'ma be the one to pop with a new sound I'ma be the one to drop him. I'm to go up in the hills with this shit Think that I'm lost but I'm bound to this bitch Think that I'm not what I say that I is Think that I got what they need when I spit Oh I ain't even from this world, just call me Martian I could kick you down a hole just like a Spartan Fuck with me and you will never be pardoned, yeah Oh, you think you wanna start shit? I ain't even from this world, just call me Martian I could kick you down a hole just like a Spartan Fuck with me and you will never be pardoned, yeah, yeah Yeah, yeah, let's go I ain't the first with the curse With the thirst that I wanna be better Not worse, man, it hurts I'm on this earth with my words And I put them all together in cert Cause I wanna have worth Working hella hard till they put me in the dirt Gonna go far, man, listen to my words Gonna be a star, man, life's like a blur When you're working this hard till you get what you deserve Yeah, I ain't taking a backseat I'm passing anybody else who is rapping I'm nasty, ain't nobody able to catch me They gasping, they cannot compare, they can't match me I'm at half speed, I got your girl and she 
laughing and dancing Hanging on my butt, she got skin to crash with me Smash with me, she's savage, she wants cash money And she knows that I live lavishly, uh I wanna live, I'm cold inside Give all I have just to feel alive I fight to live I fight to strive One day I'll have what I want I want the whole world in the palm of my hand I got a plan, I'm the man Now I'm teaching the game A better than, better than Anybody else who tests me I'm ready, looking in my hand And it's steady, I'm trending Ascending and blending Lyrical bending Now I'm spreading and getting My name out now, yeah they're hearing me laugh All the crowds repping the sound I'm hitting the ground Running up and coming, ain't nothing Yeah, rookie of the year, I'ma keep it 100 Cold-blooded, no budget From nothing to something I ain't bluffing I got a full hand and a full plan I ain't gonna stop till I'm at the top, man Every single drop got me feeling awesome I'm about to pop, started from the bottom, yeah I wanna live I'm cold inside Give all I have just to feel alive I fight to live I fight to strive One day I'll have What I want in life I'm feeling like I'm torn apart like I might be nothing You believe in all these scars On everything you touch and You got me like, whoa, oh, oh Whoa, oh, oh Whoa, oh, oh Yeah They tell me keep on running Keep on throwing and punching I know I gotta go But I'm holding on to something In my mind I know That I gotta keep on shoving even when I'm low, yeah, I gotta keep it coming And I'm gone, always been wrong Never could look away, never took it slow He's never learning from their mistakes Got a 40 ass, if you wanna count Gonna get it now, shatter loud Tell me all you're proud, always had your doubts It's too late, it's too late I'm fucking done with you so far away Far away from what you want I've been doing my thing, let them hang Leave me alone, it's a trap Trying to get me on the phone, but I'll never go back, it's been too long, yeah It ends here with the words in this song And I'm gone, and I'm gone, and I'm gone Ever coming back again, yeah I'm never I'm coming back like again I'm apart, like I might be nothing You believe in all these scars On everything you touch and You got me like, whoa, uh oh You cut stuck up, give it up Wasn't enough, the cuffs left blood Then enough, I gotta go Told you I gotta go Running away from your drama Always put on a show And I'm gonna leave now, I believe now Every day that my friends say Giving me doubt in my head No, we're dead now Like a bleed out I ain't never gonna let you back in Believe me, we're done now Sold out, you sold out All your friends run that cold mouth In the end, still I love out Everything to do with clout uh, I know, I know you're always right And I'm wrong, uh. I'm sick of listening to this same old song uh. Thought we were close You just in it for the gain I ain't here to play these games so we try another name on uh, It's all good, I'm alright, I'm so fine I'll cut ties with your lies, a new life Look away, you don't wanna see me, okay? I got through the pain, you're still stuck on being too vain I'm like I'm torn apart Like I might be nothing You believe in all these scars On everything you touch and You got me like, whoa, uh oh, oh.
Everybody knows that I'm breaking down. Everybody knows I ain't faking now. Everybody knows my heart's vacant now. Yeah, she hates me now. I made mistakes, but now I don't ever want to be alone. I don't really ever feel at home. On my own, in the zone. That's the only way I know. Feeling low, about to blow back up. Here I won't ever let the doubt creep in. Gotta pop a couple more aspirin. I don't think I'll ever let you in. Easier to break it off, best friends. I don't really understand myself. I don't really understand, need help. I don't want to be left on the shelf. Couldn't even hear me if I yelled. It's so cold outside. I'm alone, I'm alright. It's so cold outside. I'm alone, I'm alright. It's so cold. Always feel like I could break now, but I never let it take me to that place now. I won't ever let my thoughts get away now. I got better things to do, picking fate now. I just wanna be the best, call me great now. I don't know if I'm okay or insane now. I remember better days on the playground, hoping I can find my way to Even when I'm feeling down, I fight. Even when I don't know what is right, I'ma pick a side and I'ma take pride. I will decide my fate and die. We'll never let them tell me who I am. If you try to shake me, I'll be damned. Planning on the ground is where I stand. Never give up, that was always the plan. It's so cold. Yeah. I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone Yeah, let's go. Yeah. I said, what's up, what's up? Y'all gonna step up, step up. I'm the best as they come. Call me blessed, I'm the one. Spitting raps like the sun. Fire blast out my tongue. Staying forever young. If you play me, you're done. Look out, I'm about to make it. I ain't faking. What was breaking in these bands? I'm bumping, waiting patiently to see me take it. I think that it's time to stake it. Call me Drake, the charts I'm taking in. I make all of these statements because my mind's never complacent. Yeah. Lately I've been on some different shit I'm making beats, filling seats, man it's fucking lit And I proceed with my degree in making fire hits I think I got just what you need, girl, try a sip She drank the Kool-Aid, I can see it on your lips She wanna party with the best, yeah, grab a fit I'm tripping hard on this beat, man my mind's lit Back and forth from what I want and what I'm gonna get I keep my head down, grind up, moving on I keep my mind clear as I write every song Nothing's off limits no opinions, nothing's wrong I free my mind every time, try to keep let's it go, gone A hundred songs in a hundred weeks, what the fuck? Yo, how these dudes keep writing, do they cheat or what? Nah, bitch, we just know how to get what we want And we're good at what we do, cause it's never enough I ain't playing anymore, I'ma shut the door, ignore all the fucking idiots Turn them in the corpse, I'm so sore from ripping on these vocal cords They're like swords cut deep as my words are born, I'm upset Cause ain't nobody heard of us yet A few mil on the first man bet And we ain't never ever gonna forget I feel a time with blood and sweat this shit worth it, y'all give a man purpose Y'all make a man kill it when I'm performing these verses It'd be a disservice if this music never surfaced To the top of this circus, all this time will be worth it I'ma be first, bitch, all I do is work, bitch Party hard, sure, bitch, then back to the verse, bitch They gon' need a nurse, quick, put them in a hurt shit Using every word you get heard by this earth, bitch Love playing this game, I ain't rapping for the fame Nah, I rap to make a name, to be heard and make a change, yeah To be heard and make a change 
Yeah, I just want to make a change. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay, I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago. I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain Things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays, way back a year ago a year ago.
they wanna say they hate, but they know it's cap. I ain't play no games, I just do that's fact, and I don't feel no shame. It's a mood you lack, I go crazy. Nah, bitch, I ain't lazy. Track after track, I work on the shit daily. Pass me the jack, right as fuel got me hazy. About to unpack all these things I've been chasing. I've got visions in my head, like memories after death. To be a legend instead of something you can forget. I'm living up every breath, I'd rather leave than be led. I'll fill the seats as I spread with every word that I've said.
Browse before hoes. Browse before hoes. Yeah, so we roll up to the club at seven. Six dicks, no chicks, so we straight flexing. Bounce some bits and piece of shit, says we need a seven. Told us that we need a chick, and she must be present. Fuck that, man, we learned our lesson. Got no worries, such as getting hella females pregnant. So we cross the street, cause slush, she's at 7 11. Back home to play a couple games of League of Legends. I, 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 I put my bros before hoes, you already know. Got no chick to spend my shit, more money I can blow. I put my bros before hoes, you already know. I got a million brothers, but a bitch ain't want no more. Let's go. And all I fucking know is, I got my bros and wherever we're going. Yeah, I take a cold hard look at the world now. On my hand now, got a plan now. I'ma help be the change cause I can now. Here I stand now, take my hand now. No pain, no gain, no shame. Work hard, play hard, okay. I think I get it now, don't wanna let him down. I'ma take the ground and speak my mind down loud. Here I go, proud of my notes. Teach him what I wrote, teach him all the hope. Keep him on the road, the road to the dream. All I need is a team, build your own self esteem. You can do anything, prove everything. Say what you mean and believe in your dream. Find that thing that you love, that you really wanna be and Don't give up till you've given absolutely everything. Yeah. Give me a chance now to prove that you're something. In your own head, all these thoughts you're confronting. We've all been there when you feel like you're nothing. Shut that shit down, crush those thoughts, and just trust me. Welcome back. We are here with the EQC D1 committee, Lorenz and Pauline, and we're about to do the draw for the lower bracket. To do the draw for lower bracket, we have got the third place teams of group A, B, C, and D playing off the fourth place teams of E, F, G, and H, and then vice versa. Ready to start the draw? Are you excited? Very excited. We have a good, a good we bit of handwork here, you know a bit of shuffling going on. We didn't on introduce there. ourselves. We didn't introduce. Well, Are just we as, as a shuffling, very. I'm, I'm Sam Davis, and with me here, being more talkative, is Gio Farino. And we have a big crowd here. They're waiting with bated breath to see who's going to be playing today. It is the Hamburg Werewolves. <laughs> cheers on the sidelines. A little bit of cheers there. I don't know if they're Hamburg players or fans or just Germans. There's a lot. There's they're a Germans. It's the Germans have come to see how we're doing. Making a, sure that it's all running very effect, uh, efficiently. There today. is a lot of Germans here this weekend. Eight teams, in fact. Very good nation. In the Quidditch. Hamburg Werewolves we playing. We've got our second ones. The Barcelona Eagles. Ooh. 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 That should be a good game. That's going to be a brilliant game to watch. So that one's going to happen today. That is gonna That's going to happen today. Yeah. Very shortly. So I think. That's going to be live streamed, that, even better. That is your live stream game. Let's see what's next. What is it? Not on the live stream. Not on the live stream. But on Quidditch. Is it Quidditch.live? There we are. You can follow all the scores there. 
the Three River Dragons Passau. Another German team. A favourite from the German here coming in. I, I would like to think that they're applauding the incredible hand modelling here from Lawrence. You can't fault it. They're being unfolded very well. And let's see who they're going to be playing against. Ooh. The Vienna Vanguards. Ooh. Ooh. Another very good game to watch, I think. Going to be split between uh, which games we really want to go see. I must admit, being on live stream, the uh, Free River Dragons in Barcelona, which one to go for? I think, yeah, I think that's a fair call. Let's see. I got the wrong names, though. You did, you did. But don't worry, we're going to move on swiftly with Sangana. I've probably mispronounced it. Apologies. There we are. Let's pronounce it How properly. Pronounce it properly. It is actually, I may slightly mispronounce it, but Sagana. Oh. It's better than we did. It's way better than we did, but who will Sagana be there. playing? Who will Sagana be playing? <laughs> Darmstadt <laughs> Athena. Hey! Hey! Big cheer there from our contingency coming to watch it. I'm not sure if you can hear at home, every time we've drawn a German team, <laughs> the Germans have cheered. How bizarre. It's very odd. There's it's, so many of them. It's also very interesting that there's only Germans here. Oh, and some, there's some of the Olympians. That's fine. Yeah. And Amsterdam. Oh, okay. No. There we are. The last team is the Lunatic Quidditch Club. Who will they be playing? Lunatica, apologies. <laughs> oh. The Ausberg Owls! I think being the last team drawn there wasn't the biggest surprise that could have come. Uh, yep. the exactly. There's one side of the bracket there. All the German teams, I, I must admit, they're all very smiley at the moment. You could say this is 25% of the way through this draw. <laughs> Well, 50% of the, all the Germans are on the same side of the bracket floor bracket. Let's see. Who is the next team draw? So I believe Another this lovely is bit of the stirring. third place place from E, F, G and H. Correct. There we go. Well, normally, yes. Normally, yes. Normally, yes. That, that, that fills me with a lot of confidence. <laughs> Let's see who it I'm could be. I'm impressed with your alphabetical knowledge. Oh, Toulouse Quidditch of France. Not Ooh. as many cheers. A little bit of a stunted Ooh. cheer there. We're going to have to find out what that's about later. Uh, yeah, I'll be your paperweight. <laughs> <laughs> Who will Toulouse Quidditch be playing? The Danube Direwolves. Ooh. They may not be oh, German, but you not. can still give a bit of energy. Come on. Woo! There we there go. There we go. There we go. God, I believe an Austrian team there. Yeah. Very. Austrian, yeah. 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 I, I know what the uh, the letters mean there. Let's see. The Crookshanks Leon, another Ooh. one from France. Who will they be playing, Sam? Who will they be playing, Sam? I, I'm going to say they're probably going to be playing the next person drawn. Ooh, this is the OSI Vikings from Norway. Uh, as we can confirm, Sam can read. I, ca I can sometimes. <laughs> We're still early on in the night, it's so I can still read on. the... <laughs> we get an eye test going in a bit. The Le Liege Le Leviathans? Liege. Wow, Liege. I am very dehydrated. Leviathans. <laughs> Fantastic. So playing the Leviathans, we're going to have... Ooh. We have one clapping for the Leviathans. We found one. Well, they are a Belgian team. They're not a German team. So no, they not Belgian. Claps. They don't get the exactly. full one. But coming up, we have... The Olympians Paris. Ooh. But the French one. The French Olympians, not the proper ones oh. that we're uh, I think having that's in there. a contentious there. issue considering that they were first? Um, well, maybe. <laughs> the Brussels Quaffles. Ooh. Ooh. Again, crowd isn't really... Crowd's not getting involved anymore. See, this is the problem. Germans. The Germans have also like, decided they don't care anymore. They give a bit of... Let's get a bit of a drum roll. Who's going to be on the quaffles? Oi! The London Unspeakable! Hey! Hey! Come on, off, guys. Fix, uh, fix I think, man. <laughs> going to be a very, very good uh, good afternoon now, I think, of Quidditch as we see some of these uh, top top teams sort of like playing each other going into the next uh, next stage of the tournament. Yeah. So, we, fun fact, we've actually played the Belgium Quaffles. Uh, sorry, the Brussels. Yeah, the, the Brussels Belgium Quaffles. Brussels, Belgium Quaffles, Brussels Quaffles. They're, they're from, from the same Belgium. place. Yeah. Uh, we've played them twice, in fact. <laughs> Never beaten them. Have you not? No. Then I won't watch your game. 
You won't? Did you say you won't watch oh, no, it? Okay. I, mean, I won't watch okay, it again. Okay, okay. Yeah, we, we played them at a Scottish tournament called Highlander a couple of years ago. Um, and then we played them again at Slovak a Slovakian tournament called Brumtislava. Oh, very fun. Very, very fancy. Yeah. No. We will be getting the pots ready. Uh, we are being told that the EQC committee in front of us will be getting the pots ready and they are going to leave at some point so they can get ready for the next set of drawers. Mm. So, uh, uh, for the upper bracket draw, actually. Yeah, for the next set for of drawers. For the upper, for the upper bracket, bracket drawers, that's going to be tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I believe for the time being, you're going to be left with us for a few moments to I'm talk about what, uh, what just happened. We're very I'm sorry. Very sorry. <laughs> so we're going to taunt some of the German players that have uh, stayed around to watch. So apart from your own game that you're going to be like yep. playing in, I was going to say, what are you most looking forward to watching? But you're going to be on the pitch. Are there any games there that you're going to be very excited about? Ooh, that's a very, very nice piece of uh, silverware. silverware yep. That's very nice. Do, do you think they'll notice if I just leave with it right now? There's no witnesses, is there? No, no, I think we could probably get we away can, with we can sneak getting away. Shirt. Yeah. I reckon that is probably a good two, three pints. That's, yeah, yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah. get three pints in that oh, one, yeah, that'll be alright. That's, that's, you know, half a team. Or, like, for the Germans, one drink. Yeah, yeah. A that's sign. Like that. That's the Germans sign. might call it right. We'll get a cap on it, it'll be alright, isn't it? <laughs> so, no. games I'm looking forward to seeing. Genuinely, I may have forgotten a lot of the lineups. I know that the Danube Direwolves are playing. The Danube Dire Wolves. I don't know who they're playing against, but I remember that one. That's fair. No. Well, in that case, then, if you've forgotten a lot of the lineups. Do you remember any of the lineups? Well, what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say to our lovely studio audience here, what is your favourite, or what is what game are you most looking forward to seeing in the next half an hour or hour that we're going to be putting on? Have you also forgot? Where was that? What was that one? Darmstadt Sagana. Ooh, that should be a good game. That's going to be very. I think it's one of these games where almost anything can happen in it. It's almost as if the game, we don't know the result of the game until it's played. That's, a, that's very wise, very yeah, sage yeah, yeah. and whatnot. Do you have any though? predictions for any of that game though? I've actually, I played against Sagana earlier. They were, they were a very fun team to play. Unfortunately, I believe a lot of their players are quite new and they have a very small roster. So I'd probably go for, I've not seen Darmstadt this weekend, but I'd probably say they might have the edge. Granted, if they can field a team. Well, I think it's going to be very interesting. And I say that, on the basis of, I unfortunately have seen neither of the teams play this weekend. So, my prediction is going to be based on what team do you guys think is going to win? Who's going to win? Who's going to win it? Darmstadt or Sagan? No, no, no. Oh, no, no. Group. Darmstadt or Sagan? Okay, give us a cheer for Darmstadt. Darmstadt. Okay, I think we've got Darmstadt in front of us. Is that what we're looking at? No. No, no? Okay. Um, they're just a, one of the other eight German teams who are here. <laughs> Oh, oh, you're on oh, Phoenix. Phoenix. Oh, we've got your camera equipment. Right. <laughs> I see. So, the Phoenix... Uh, uh, Ro Ro Phoenix. I played Ro against Phoenix. them at the last EQC. It's almost as if when you play a lot of these European tournaments, you end up playing everyone. Who, not bad. who won? They won. We had a very interesting lineup. I believe Rob Pierce, who is a beater, was starting keeper. Ah, the it, was it, was like, it was the 11th, 12th place player, if I remember correctly. No, we lost. Yeah. We lost against you guys. Cool. And... Yeah. Well, yeah. I, to be honest, I'm, 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 well, I'm, I'll take the win. I'll yeah. take the win. But it looks like we have our next day draws coming up now from the um, committee coming in. This is for the upper brackets. All these games we'll be playing tomorrow morning. And some on the live stream. Yeah. The return of the competent people on the stream. Hello. I thought we was here all along. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right there? I thought I'd made Pauline laugh too much. Oh, I thought... I'd do you want to say them? So, this is going to be, I'm going to go, I'm going to go over my memory here. Is it the first place of A, B, C, and D versus the second place of E, F, G, and H? And vice versa. Congratulations, that's correct. I, I have some semblance of a working memory. Great. You just drank enough water. I've, ha I've had, yeah, I've, ha I've had some water now. Okay. Well, so he's sobering up, they're sobering up, they're sobering up now. So I think the I first... I have not had anything to drink at all. I am pretty sure it's more dehydration than anything else. Oh, yeah, well, dehydration. Let's get started. It's, I was gonna gonna say, be, it's promising to be a stacked bracket. Ooh, I've heard the way the bracket is shaping up. There'll be some very interesting games early in the day, and you do not want to miss them. So yeah. check out the live stream. Let's see how they yeah. play out. Let's see who's playing. Who has Come the on. first The team. very first draw now coming in. 
live the live streamed game. game. This is going to be interesting. I'll be watching this from bed tomorrow morning. We now know where they're going to be uh, positioning. Oh. The tension is palpable. Oh. You cut it with a knife. Oh. The against Gargoyles Ooh, Quidditch! Ooh! Very a powerful! Board, because they're not Ooh. German, right? <laughs> now, we'll get a German if you don't worry. We're gonna get another all? Oh, we've. Ooh. We've got our next one coming we, in we, here we now. Pull a German. I've, I made some match fixing. As match fixing. The Velociraptors! Ooh! Ooh. That should be a good game. That's we can gonna see keep Fraser people up Busford off stream giving a little cheer. Oh, be on the live They're stream ready for. It. I think uh, Ghent and v uh, Raptors have played a couple of games in um, what you got in uh, EQC's uh, past, so that'll be yeah, nice to see. Sure. Uh, nice rematch to see. of uh, 2018, round 16. Round I'm, 16, I'm not 16, sure if you caught that on the mic there, but like brilliant knowledge, 2016-18 there, 18, sort of like 2018. Yeah. Sorry, that <laughs> round of 16 in 2018. I'm just because they. Words, it's hard. <laughs> I'm rounding down. Okay, okay so <laughs> let's see who's next. The Paris Ooh. Frog. I was that was, it was the frog, <laughs> not the frogs. Making sure I got it correct. Oh, are there two? Are there two no, 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 no. Oh, so some oh. people call them the Paris Frogs, but they're actually the frog. So but they're they, not plural. No, they're not. But they, who will they be playing? I think people want to see who they're playing. The Berlin Blue Caps. Hey, we, we have, have a, a German team. team. Yeah, they're happy with that one. I, we did promise a German team at some point, and we have delivered. <laughs> It'd no be difficult to miss them. That's it, we're not joining any more German teams. But let's see what team is next. The DNA Quidditch Club Ooh. of Italy. Ooh. Is that Italy, is it? Italy. Okay. Italy. Brilliant, we've got one big fan there. Some, some at home goes. might be going, Forza Azzurri. Let's go. Who will the DNA Quidditch Club be playing? No idea. It's <laughs> a good answer. We have some Italians cheering. The Malaga Vikings of Spain. Ooh. Espanol Ooh. as they go in for it. That's going to be a very nice game to the watch. The Mediterranean matchup. That's. <laughs> Why is that not on the live stream? That should be the hashtag. Here we go. You make it. You're publicising it as we go on. That's good. The Bon Rhinos of Germany. Oh, another German. Team. How many have we got left of Germany? I, now? You know, I, 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 eight in total. Eight, eight in total. More. It's one of two more. Have you ever sort of like played a game of poker and all of a sudden you've got five queens? And I show sure there can't be more. Who's playing with you? The Bon Rhinos will be facing <laughs> the Munich Wolfers. <laughs> it was the Wolfertingers. It was upside down. Another <laughs> German. So a German matchup of this. Did they play each other last weekend? They did. Oh, some Ooh. said no, some said yes. We've got a bit of controversy here. Yeah. They, they did not. Oh. I trust you more than anyone else, so I'm going to say they didn't. So, so it seems like they can have that, like almost that German Cup rematch, whatever the German Cup. Or a German Cup match up without oh, yeah, that exactly. they didn't play. Good that they have not played together. So we're going to see who's really going to come out on top. Who is the best German? But who is next to be drawn? The other side of the bracket. The other side of the bracket. Ooh. So I, I hear rumours of this is the spicy side. There is there is a lot of good teams who we've not said the names of. Yet. Now that you've said the spicy side, I'm I'm quite terrified because I've just realised my team hasn't come out yet. Yeah. So I'm a little bit worried. Eh? Let's see. Oh. First team drawn on the spicy side. Oh. It's the Titans. Oh. Oh. Very powerful team from a lot of people saying that they might be the favourites for the tournament. They might be the favourites. I think they'd fancy themselves as the favourites at the very least. But then you kind of have to back yourself. Exactly. You can't not back yourself. Here we go. Who's going to be facing off the Titans? Oh! It's Rue Phoenix! Phoenix. <laughs> the bittersweet smiles and happy applause there from the team facing off Titans. Going to be a very fun game to watch. No. <laughs> we may have just lost a couple of teams in the wind. I think that means that they forfeit by a <laughs> bad I, I think I saw the Olympians was one that flew off. Is that you done for the weekend? I mean, that, as long as it says that sort of like we didn't lose, yeah, go for it. Yeah, technically didn't lose. But who is next? Here we go. We have... It's the Antwerp Ooh. Dodos. Dodos, a very strong team as well. I think a lot of people were considering if they were going to have a matchup against the uh, Raptors, as they did just in the game earlier as well. Something yeah, like but I think they're on the different side of the bracket now. Which so maybe a match up for the final. Will work nicely, I think. But who are we matching up against the Dodos right now? Ooh, we've got Rumpledunk! Do you want to say the first bit? N no! NUI. <laughs> I know you enjoy that one. I will never say an abbreviation if it's made out of letters. <laughs> 
Reading is hard, guys. Reading is hard. Very. And we've got some good hand work uh, coming on here. How many teams are left? Two on each side. Two on each side. Two, on each side. Two more games left. If you've been keeping track at home, you might be card counting oh. at this moment and know what's going to come up. Oh. London Quidditch Club of Ooh. Britain. We know them a lot. We play we them do, a we times. do. Just a few times. Current silver winners of BQC? Yep. Yeah. Got very contentious silver. I know that one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's they see who's coming up here. Howling doesn't know. I don't know. Oh, I can out. see what it is. It's the Meta Unicorns. Ooh, Meta Ooh. Unicorns. I believe the team that's traveled the furthest to get here. I believe it is. This is then going to be a very good game. I always love watching the Unicorns play. Very good Quidditch. Mm. Very nice people as well. They are. And our last games are the, the Werewolves, Werewolves of London. London first. The current champions of uh, the UK yep. versus... Oh, who's it gonna be? It's oh, it's Olympians. It's Olympians oh. QC. Oh, it's Olympians. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> you have flown or travelled all the way to Ireland. It's so far, the magical lands of Ireland, to play another British team. How do you uh, feel? Ecstatic. <laughs> ecstatic to be playing the best team from our country. Second best. Second best. Second best. Oh, no, sorry, best. It was best. Well, it was oh yeah, the number one team of the league. Yeah, no, no, we didn't get the easy option, did uh, we? To fair, it, it wouldn't be an EQC if Werewolves didn't play a British team at the start of day two. True, true. As we, but we're going to see, I suppose, day two, who's going to walk away with this very shiny cup. You're going to say it's a cup? I think, I mean, I might walk away with it. I won't win it. I'll just take it. Again, no witnesses, right? <laughs> well, everyone's watching Drew Poffy sort of like uh, play their games there. You know, it's a great distraction. Grab it. How are you guys feeling about the rest of the tournament going on? <laughs> That's a very tough question. It's a very uh, big question because I couldn't think of a better question. one. I think we're uh, we're having a pretty good tournament. I think um, players seem to be happy to be back after three years of EQC. Uh, there's yeah. Quidditch is good. I'd love good. to say I look forward to some of these games, but I doubt I'll get to see any of them because I will be scheduling. But you can see them on the live stream. I will. Ah. The live stream is on in the background. That is very true. <laughs> uh, or you can watch them back on replays. Yeah, but that's not live. That's not live, no. That's not live. But I'll try to... I'll, no, I'll see one game, whoever is playing the finals. Are you still going to be scheduling during then? No. <laughs> scheduling the after party, Schedule, surely. Exactly. Scheduling oh, no, the next one. Absolutely not. The only thing I'll be doing at the after party is partying. I, I must admit. Who, uh, sorry, I must I ask. Must I must admit. I must ask. Yes. Uh, who is the who is scheduled the after party? Because I believe that is the MVP of the tournament. Norm. The only thing I know is that I have not. <laughs> <laughs> a mystery. A lot of mystery. Well, I think the real MVP is the University of Limerick for hosting us having a great facilities and uh, honestly the facilities here have been incredible the campus is stunning if you haven't had a, if you're here and you haven't had a chance to walk around definitely have a little walk around we walked over a little bridge earlier it was quite nice it's pretty, I, I found that you know there's a full roast dinner in there earlier that was oh. wonderful if you know it's fantastic that they're absolutely truly amazing in making sure this tournament is running definitely. yeah yeah anyway I will go back to scheduling <laughs> to make sure that the next game is starting go back to your tents Yes, I will. And we will see... Well, we, we won't see you soon. I've gone to a play. I will see you on pitch. I will see... Yep, yeah, probably. And you, the viewers at home, will see Quidditch soon when the live stream is very back. soon. Do you remember... Uh, so the team that's going to be... Play the teams that are going to be playing on the live stream very shortly are going to be on the live stream when that happens. A Quidditch team versus a Quidditch club. Ooh. It's going to be... It's going to be a good game. I... Very badly, can't remember exactly which teams are going to come I, on to I it. I, I barely remember any of the draws. The only one I remember is that we are playing the Quaffles next. No. Or maybe not next slot, maybe slot. But I can tell I you one, one thing that we definitely know is going to happen. It's going to be a fun game, so stay tuned. And thank you very much for the draw. We're going to be calling out now. And we're going to have a fun day tomorrow and fun last games coming into it. I've been Sam Davis. I've been Gio Farino. And we've been with... You're going to say you're going to try their names? No, no, you go for their names. <laughs> You can do it. I have faith, Sam. Pauline and... L What's his name? Lawrence. Lawrence. And, and Lawrence. <laughs> Thank you very much. See Thank you me. soon. Thank Enjoy you. the games. Thank you.
You, I don't ever feel calm. I can feel the sweat inside my palm. Play with me like cats down the string. You don't understand the pain it brings. You don't ever want to give me wings. You don't ever want to set me free. You know I'm addicted to you. And it's twisted, you can get it with the evil voodoo. Got me coming back for more, even when I've been screwed. Dolls full of pins, pierce my heart straight through. I got issues in my head. Like you in my bed, but you keep me on red. Oh, everything is like a test. I better not text or I'll come up desperate. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed. Think you're something out of my head. Play dead, will you regret everything that you did that you said? I don't think you understand what you're doing, and my heart's black and blue from the bruising. I feel like when I'm with you, I'm losing. I feel like you think that this amusing, sitting there gaslighting and confusing. Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded? I'm the one who's always sorry, the conclusion Even though I offer all of the solutions I wish you loved me like I love you, it's stupid When I'm alone with you, I never feel lucid I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid I wish when I first saw you, I knew this When I'm with you, I feel so useless I feel diluted, my heart's been wounded Silhouettes of you are like a time Never really know just what you want with you, I don't ever feel calm. I can feel the sweat inside my palm. Play with me like cats and a string. You don't understand the pain it brings. You don't ever want to give me wings. You don't ever want to set me free. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed. Think you're something. Looking in the mirror, so foggy, but I've never seen clearer. I don't really think anyone can save me, and honestly, I'm not really sure I want saving. I like to be my own worst enemy. There's no risk if you don't try at anything, so I'ma just get by in everything. See you in the next life, have to be a better me. I don't think that my head's on straight. Gotta flip it and grip it and go and get an x ray. What's wrong with me? I just feel way. Pushing on my chest and it squeeze till I suffocate. Better change my mindset, meditate. It's pretty cool that I'm alive and have better days. I could walk, see, here, I should celebrate. Think I could change my mind, maybe. Living life every day, late at night, not okay. All I want and I pray, all I need are some better days. Yeah, all I need are some better days. Cause all I want and I pray, I believe in the better yeah. day. I'm kinda stuck between a rock and a hard place. Do I work hard or live in my pace? You're only young once, yeah, that's all great. But I also want a future where I'm okay. Living life is doing lots of cocaine. Wait, no, it's living with no shame. Wait, no, it's sleeping in on Sundays. I guess it's different for each of us and that's okay. Well, I just wanna be happy. How to get there? Hmm, glad that you asked me. 
I think it's different for everyone Some of us need work, others need fun Some of us need purpose to overcome But try to do what you love when it's said and done Cause there's so many differences in each of us Trust your gut, it can show you what you want Living life, every day Late at night, not okay All I want, and I pray All I need, for some better days Yeah, all I need, for some better days Cause all I want, and I pray I believe, in the better days Welcome back to the round of 16 for the lower bracket here at the Euroween, uh, European <laughs> Quidditch Cup in Limerick 2022. After our not so short break, we're now back with best of round of 16 for lower bracket. Hamburg Werewolves against Barcelona. Barcelona. Thank you. <laughs> Next to me is my lovely colleague, Monica. Yeah, and I have the pleasure to present also my colleague, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the teams are getting ready. Uh. So we see that um, the number 29, Alex Gonzalez, is going to run for the quapel against uh, 96, Christian Zimmer from Hamburg Werewolves. Yeah. And on the Peter, uh, so they are going to go for the Bludger, number four, who is Bryce Costoya and for Barcelona. And Alex Cunningham for the Hamburg Werewolves. I think head referee is Niklas Julius Müller. Yeah. Yeah, so what do you think? Is this going to be an exciting game? Uh, I actually do not have any expectations yet. Um, just got uh, information that, that Hamburg uh, roster is a bit smaller now than they started off, which was already not a full roster. Um, whilst the list of names for the Barcelona roster is a bit longer, so at a, at the end of a tournament day, sometimes this makes the difference between winning and losing. But yeah, we're still excited for that game, and we'll see. Yeah, so it's how it goes. It is about to start. Yes. Teams. Oh, I was wrong about the head ref. And we're off. Quaffle 
gets to Barcelona. So Jordi Galasso has the quaffle now. Um, he goes for the nickname Shaggy. <laughs> and apparently he's one of the best chasers of Barcelona. Yeah. Um, I assume that, yes, uh, Barcelona is in uh, bludger superiority, which means they have both bludgers and Barcelona is also still in quaffle possession, but loses it. And now Hamburg is in offense. With one bludger midline crossed. Oh no, oh, they bludger got bludger got control. Her. Yes, they did. So now. So they are getting ready to attack. Seems. Goes on. No goal. Yeah. Uh, now the ball goes back to the keeper of Barcelona. Yes. So now Barcelona is again in offense. Do they? I, I cannot see if they have bludger control or not. I do not think so. Uh, um. Yes, Hamburg is still in bludger control. Number 29 of Hamburg is defending Timo. Yeah, so now... Ah, oh. there's the... Oh, but Barcelona beat. got it back? Yeah. And Not that is, is the goal. It was I think Timo just missed the beat. Yeah, and the goal was uh, by Jordi Galasso. Who, by the way, he only has two joints that haven't been injured. <laughs> yeah, sometimes Quidditch is a dangerous sport. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so well, now the score is 10 0 for Barcelona. Um, the live stream is still showing it in the wrong side. Yes. So that was a back pass. Hamburg <laughs> retrieves to the quaffle. Still bludger control. They are preparing their attack. Yeah, there is a wrap from oh, Barcelona the keeper, and they're still struggling. So they may get back the yeah. quaffle. Oh no, he's he's beat the keeper is beat. Yes. So now Hamburg is attacking. And there is the goal by Timo Damkula. Very nice positioning right at the hoops. Just putting it through. So now the score is ten for both. It was quite a nice double beat. But there is a drive by number twenty two. Barcelona. Jordi Galasso. Jordi Galasso. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for those who don't know, I'm trying to do the names in Spanish. <laughs> <and laughs> yes, yeah, so and I, I, I do the names in German. Perfect. So, score is 2010, but for Barcelona, um, not for Hamburg. So, <laughs> Hamburg again in offense. I currently see only one bludger with them, but maybe the third bludger is should be somewhere. Somewhere and that was a goal for Hamburg. So, now it's 2020 both. Well, the keeper is starting the game. And they are approaching to the hoops. We see again uh, Shaggy. Timo is like trying to wrap him. In and yeah, that was a goal. Like I didn't see the number. Yeah, it was a fast pass behind the hoops, and there was a Barcelona chaser receiving the pass. 
So now and the score is 30 to 20 for Barcelona. Yes. Um, and it seems that, yes, Barcelona is in bludgeon control. There was a missed and pass. Nice defense uh, from Barcelona. Yeah, and a fast break. Break by Jordi. Yes, he just drives through, yeah. Nice He drive. runs over number 96, Christian Zimmer. And so the score is now 40 to 20 for Barcelona. So we see now Hamburg is approaching the hoops. There's oh. a wrap. Ah. And There's a brooms down. Quaffle turnover. I think also that um, Christian was beat. But so now we see yes. a fast run by Jose Manuel Hidalgo yeah. and he scores. Yeah. Now the score is 50 to 20 for Barcelona. We have six and a half minutes game time. Hamburg beater is beat. Hamburg currently with no bludger. Okay, now and we have a drive by Barcelona. Okay. By Hamburg has one bludger back. And Timo was able to stop the drive. Number 29. Another brooms down. There's a discussion. Yeah, so Looks like there is a turnover of the bludger. Yes. Yeah. Silver is going out of the pitch. And also turnover of the quaffle. We have another a new player entering. So let's wait for the ref call. Okay. Oh no. Play is resuming. Hamburg suddenly back in bladder control and in quaffle possession in offense. They passed off way behind the hoops. And now <coughs> Barcelona keeper as the quaffle is walking up Hamburg defense it's very slow yeah very thought through no, pass behind pass the behind hoops and uh, was it like out of bounds yeah ah. so now Hamburg is inbounding still Blood to control and Hamburg uh, prepares their attack. So Hamburg has blood to control. Oh, that was a nice. Uh, oh, or they try to tank through, pass off, another pass, but okay. 
Okay, so there is a brooms down. My guess is they are going to see who has the quaffle. No. Yellow card. For 89, um, Jose Manuel Hidalgo. Who does the ref tell us why? Okay, so now, yeah, there's a struggle. Yeah. T nine. I think this was contact. Contact from behind. Yeah, contact from behind. Yellow carded. So for those who are the first time viewers, a yellow card, they have to stay out for one minute unless there is a score by the opposing team. Yes. And also very important to remember when they are back on pitch, they are off broom and have to first tap in on their own hoops to be back in the game. So, so games resuming, Ooh. and so Barcelona oh, that was keeper a nice is able. Yeah, nice play by the Barcelona keeper. Yes. So now we see that um, he's driving. I cannot see the number. It's like ninety-three. Three. So that should be Lily McGarry. She passed off, but the second pass. And yeah, now there is a break by Hamburg. Yeah, a very fast break. There are no beers and just one chaser now. And now, as we explained, the beater who got yellow carded is now back. Has to tap in first and is in the game again score is 50 30 to barcelona yes game time 10 minutes so now we see that powerful was driving and hamburg just recovered the quaffle very nice save of Hamburg player number, um, I can't see her number now, <laughs> currently. Yeah, and now Is Hamburg <laughs> got bludger control and they are uh, doing a fast break. Would it be, oh, oh. no, they lost the ball. That wasn't. Yeah, so you, you have to be careful with fast breaks and you always need to look for the bludgers actually when you play. Yes. So we see the bludger control by Hamburg. <laughs> ah, this was a nice switch from 96 to 90 uh, to 76. Ooh, they missed the pass. Tried a long shot behind the hoops, but now. Barcelona is back in <coughs> quaffle possession. And we see again uh, the keeper, Lily McGarry. She's one of the last additions to the team. She She's from the USA, actually. Passing off. Very nice pass. Okay. And that's a drive. And another score. Yes. 60-30 for Barcelona. Yeah, scored by Ferran Gascon. <laughs> yeah, that was actually a really nice pass. Behind the hoops, he was totally free. Um, and then still drive through the remaining defenders of Hamburg. Now, <coughs> 76 also trying to 
drive. But yeah, now the Quaffle is in keeper's possession. And Barcelona starts their attack now. Yeah. They seem a lot more calmer now than they were in the beginning of the game. Yes, trying to pass around the hoops. While I would say Hamburg trying to play the hoop defense. Ah, now we have Hamburg got the quaffle back, and now they are doing a another a drive. Yeah, fast drive. Okay, there is no beater to keep him away. And they tried a long shot. It didn't go through, and uh, referees were showing uh, advantage. Okay, so it seems to be a folder, maybe a card, I don't know. Yes. So a blue card. For Barcelona, Peter. Yeah, for... Yeah, let's wait for the reference indication to see what was white number 47 <laughs> action uh, an illegal immunity claim okay so for 47 Catherine Morgolo card white number 47 illegal interaction illegal immunity claim yeah for illegal claim of immunity Again, one minute timeout. And we have a timeout. Yeah. Um, I mean, considering the game thus far, I would say Barcelona is slightly bit uh, <coughs> better than the Hamburg team. Nevertheless, Hamburg keeps up quite nicely, is still in range. Yes, 30 I to 60. I also have the impression that Hamburg has been dominating in the platter control. Definitely, yes. Yeah, however, the attacks from Barcelona have been more effective. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so um, just as an additional fan for um, Barcelona, they have a um, mascot called Altair, <laughs> who is a blue eagle. And they got this name because it's the name of one of the brightest s stars in the sky. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so nice fun fact. Which would be the mascot of Hamburg World Wolf? Um, yeah, I've, I've got uh, something. It should be a plush wolf in sheepskin, but they were not sure if they would bring it because the whoever filled out this form tend to be kind of forgetful the person s said about themselves so um yeah another nice fun fact i learned today about the uh, barcelona uh, jerseys is that they are inspired by uh, anthony gaudi who is a very famous barcelonian uh, artist artist yes so as you can see those um it's tiny it's a nice, pieces. It's a nice design. It's a very nice design. Yes. Yeah, actually, <laughs> probably I would like to exchange a jersey <laughs> with them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we discussed this earlier, which is also something we do at Quidditch tournaments. So now the game resumes after the timeout. Let's see what the two teams have made of the short break. Uh, so now Barcelona has a quaffle again and. We see Ferran Gascon approaching. Yeah. But Hamburg has the beta control, the yes. platter control. <laughs> yes. And retrieved the quaffle number nine, Jad Suka, is on her way to the hoops, passes off. 
Ah, but there is the beat for Christian Zimmer with the number 96. Interesting technique. Barcelona is now playing in the beater game. They leave their only bludger at the hoops with their one beater. Unfortunately, we now do not see the game anymore <laughs> because the signal got lost. Um, oh, it's back. It's back. <laughs> I just tried to feed myself. And Barcelona just lost the quaffle. Thanks. Um, that was a beat. But Hamburg, again, is in bludger control. And the third bludger is very lonely behind Barcelona's hoops. <laughs> and now yeah, the keeper try Barcelona beater tries to wrap. Yeah, but now Hamburg's Jordi Galasso Esa. recovered the ball and gave it to keeper. So now the quaffle is safe as long as they are on the keeper zone. <coughs> there are a few changes from the Barcelona team. Okay, that was no goal. Yeah. I think the chaser got beat before. Okay. And Hamburg again in offense. Larger control. Ah, uh, there was a beat, and I think now the Barcelona chaser. Uh, yes. Oh, that was a score of silver. Or not? Let's see what the refs, yeah, the refs are calling. I would have thought he would not have been beat, um, because he ducked, but maybe this was a beat before. Therefore, the goal might not stand. Score is still thirty to sixty. Almost 16 and a half minutes playtime, which means we have 40 more seconds until the snitch is on pitch and one minute and 40 seconds until the seekers are released, which still could yeah. be the turning point for Hamburg. They're still in range. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, by the way, uh, Catalunya is now, sorry, <laughs> Barcelona, they are about to celebrate their 10th anniversary. Um, I think this year. No, next year. Which is actually quite yeah. impressive. No, this year. This year they are getting, an, because they, they had their first training in 2013. Mm -hmm. But actually the team was created in 2012. Wow. Yeah. Hamburg is uh, from, two or was founded in 2016. By um, a couple of Harry Potter fans, which none of them are in the team anymore, but still are supporting Hamburg Werewolves. So, yeah, well, uh, actually, for Barcelona, the story was a bit different because it was created by Alba Rieta, who had played. Um, no, uh, she used to play as a beater, but also she doesn't play anymore. <laughs> but she's supporting the team. So it's actually the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There is another timeout, it seems. Oh, injury. Okay, so that's been 
we just been informed yes yeah so um yeah do they have some interesting chants uh no they actually left the chant um i don't see any information on the chant <laughs> Oh yeah, they left it blank. Whilst um, this is something very interesting, the uh, Hamburg chant means "Hummel Hummel Mond Mond," which is um, a variation of what it used to mean. Um, Mond is the German word for a moon, which symbolizes the werewolf, which they sh thought more um, or thought better fitted for for their team because they are werewolves, obviously. Yeah, of course. Then they are affected by the moon. Yes. <laughs> I, I wonder if they would play at night. <laughs> 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 Maybe I wouldn't. I I wouldn't like to face them during a full moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, that that was actually one of 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 the fears from from the uh, live stream team here that they have to. Um, pack everything up during the, the night because we got a little bit delayed or maybe not just a little bit but quite delayed yeah. apparently <laughs> but um, yes it's still light here it's June we might have a bit more light still well it's uh, actually we're playing in Ireland so at least today we have light until 10 p.m. or 11 ish yeah, something around that. I mean, at least 10 p.m. because yesterday at 10 it was still quite uh, light outside. So um, I'm positive for the live stream team that they do not have to pack up their stuff during ni the night. Okay. Uh, um, humble. From Black. Black have forfeited the game. White win. Okay. We will get a final score confirmation for you. This is a very abrupt um, end of this game. Nevertheless, uh, Hamburg fought very admirably, I would say. Yeah. Um, they had a very good weather game. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and now the teams, they are um, probably saying good game. Yes. Cheering uh, for each other. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's also Quidditch. Sometimes um, things happening after one uh, long long day of tournaments uh, and games, and uh, sometimes it's better to uh, forfeit a game than to um, injure more people or to just keep playing for the sake of it. So yeah, that was the game uh, Hamburg Werewolves against uh, Barcelona Eagles. Um, The final score, do we have a confirmation yet for the final score? 90-60. Okay, oh. so uh, we just hear 90-0 as the forfeit score. So now Barcelona goes to the... Uh, so this was the round 16. Yeah. They go to the quarterfinals. Finals of the lower bracket. Of the lower bracket. Yes. Um, there will be one more game in the live stream today. It will also be a lower bracket um, round of 16 game. Uh, do we already know which game this will be? Okay. <laughs> we just heard th theoretically yes, but no. Um, therefore, thank you for watching. Yeah, thank you for watching. Keep... Uh, Keep watching the live stream for the last game, and um, tomorrow morning we will start off with more uh, games. <laughs> more games, round of 16, upper bracket, I would assume. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening. Bye. Ciao. Getting drunk, second date I fell in love I can never get enough, life can get a little tough When it gets a little rough, you look back at the good stuff Sipping on some whiskey with a girl who's feeling frisky And my world is spinning tipsy, man, this alcohol just hit me, baby Are you coming with me? Take a shot and let's get busy Got the whole damn night, let's do something hella risky I just wanna make a memory, she don't wanna ever leave Wanna leave a legacy, we're sipping on a balcony I'm mixing like it's alchemy, I'm fixed on her anatomy, we're living life lavishly, we live it like a fantasy.
Sometimes I drink too much Sometimes I get too drunk But every time I wake up I think to myself I love being hungover Sometimes I drink too much Sometimes I get too drunk But every time I wake up I think to myself I love being hungover Every day, having good times Don't care what they say, I'ma stay On my own line, I can almost Taste every place, we were drunk Dying, you cannot replace all these Days, those were good times yeah. Oh god, you drive them crazy Every time they see you, baby, looking fine And like a lady, like a dime you got them Chasing by design, their hearts are racing So I told myself the statement If you want it, then go take it, make a move And don't be measuring. Never had a doubt that I wanted to be famous Never had a doubt that I wanted to be Ageless. Never had a doubt that I wanna make changes Never had a doubt that I wanna go places Life is all about taking risks, taking chances Life is all about who you with and romancing Life is all about everything that you make it That's what it's about, drink it up and get wasted Yeah. Sometimes I drink too much Sometimes I get too drunk but every time I wake up, I think to myself I love being hungover Sometimes I drink too much Sometimes I get too drunk But every time I wake up, I think to myself I love being hungover Yeah, DJ Snake knows what I'm 
me and lastly, you know I'm a steal a show Like Kygo's first hit Firestone Ah uh, yeah, so what? Getting lit like we will sparks And we coming up like the modern day Mozart Yeah, we getting lucky with the ladies like we're Daft Punk This is how we party rehab, it's a slam dunk And we hear you G-Eazy, man, this shit ain't fucking random Oops, not a DJ, but that motherfucker's handsome About to be Darude and turn this beat into a sandstorm About to switch it up and make this motherfucker transform Nah, fuck that. Never gonna make it There's no way that you make it And maybe you can fake it But you're never gonna make it Are you just gonna take that? Make them take it all back Don't tell me you believe that Are you just gonna take that? Or will you fucking fight back? Will you fucking fight back? Welcome to our final game of the day here at EQC 2022 Division 1. 
first day, lower bracket round of 16. We've got the game between the Danube Direwolves and the... I think it's... Is it Toulouse? Yeah, it's Toulouse we've got playing here. Um, I personally, I've played against Toulouse today. Well, I've coached against Toulouse. Uh, definitely a team that you should be ready for, shouldn't underestimate. Um, do you have any experience with the Danube side? Um, yes, so we played them this morning in the group. Um, I'm Franz Post, by the way. And Matty as well. Yeah, sure. So, uh, I thought we'd introduce ourselves. Uh, yeah, uh, Danube were uh, a surprise package, I thought, in the group stage. Uh, definitely gave us a hard game at the start of the day. Um, I think they can go quite far in this lower bracket. They've got a got some talent throughout their roster. Yeah, um, I think it's uh, similar for Toulouse. Uh, they've got a few a few key players that if you manage to lock them down, uh, you can go quite far. But it's also always a bit different towards the end of the day um, mm. compared towards the start of it. As we've got our brooms up, we've got the noob with the quaffle on a fast break. Pass through the hoops, and I think, yep, that Oop. seems to be picked up Ooh. by. Ooh. Some questionable contact from the yeah. Danube Chaser there. Yeah, and yep. it's carded immediately. E easy first card for Nicholas Muller, head referee for this game. Never want to start him too early. Once the Avalanche gets rolling, there's going to be a bunch of cards. Yeah, well, d definitely is. Well, as some of you may know, as the head referee for the previous game, uh, it's it's always good to get s some easy decisions early on and then build your confidence from there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um... So it seems to be, uh... Currently, we've got bludger control on the side of, uh... of Toulouse, so they should be able to mm, get a control offense going here. The man with the quaffle right now, um, it's Paul Bonnet, previously played for both the Belgium as well as the French national team and for Antwerp Quidditch Club. One of the key players that if you manage to control him, you can uh, probably take control of the game as he goes for his first drive. Ooh. That was a really good block from the Danube yeah. keeper there. Didn't necessarily block the ball, but he got onto Bonnet's arm there and then forced a rushed attempt at the shot. So good good defense from the, the Danube keeper. Very good defense as they are now in a slow setup to their offense over the left side. Waiting for the beaters to make a move. We've got a bludger trade and a drive. This as the also that finish goes slightly above the hoop. And we're yeah. still at a score of nil-nil. So the opportunity there taking that drive going into the hoops was the right decision. But you could just tell the keeper in that situation was just a little bit too nervous. Needed to run a bit hard, a bit faster. And then they would have scored the goal. But otherwise, good decision. It was also a very, I want to say... Um, yeah, it's a very slim window when you just go off the trade that went even. And another drive, he's trying to get through, but he fumbles the quaffle, and now a quick fast break from the Danube side, trying to get through. A few pump fakes, pass close well, to it. the hoop, but it's already in, so... That's our first goal of the game. Yeah, Danube here with the first goal. Getting the pressure on early. And now it's Toulouse's turn to answer. It's so the goal scorer there, number three, Stefan Svoboda for Danube Diables. Now we've got a attack over the right side again through Paul Bonnet. Shot blocked expertly from the keeper, but the ball is still with uh, the Toulouse side through some impressive dribbling action from number four here. Yeah, that's uh, Yves Ferry Boucher, who's uh, a veteran of the, the French game. Been uh, on the scene for a long time. First with Leon, and now we have Toulouse. That's uh, very interesting. I, for myself, uh, gotta admit, I'm very bad with pronouncing these French names. So <laughs> I'm just gonna stay away from it for. Uh, uh, I, I did study French at university, so uh, I, I should be good at. Should be uh, good at it. <laughs> that's good. Uh, so I've got my person here to get those names out for me. Ooh. 
the other hand, I'm, as a German, probably very good with the Austrian names, so... Yeah, definitely. I think there's a turn over there for uh, pass after beat. So, Quaff will be back with Toulouse any moment now. And it's back with them. And we're currently waiting for our head referee to restart the game. They have a good counter-attacking opportunity here to do Toulouse. Will they take it? They're trying to on the pass break, but running right into a bludger. Oh, oh. that's... That's for Butter in the way there. Yeah. That's vice positioning. If he wasn't there, that pass could have gone straight across. Goals to Toulouse. A vital uh, But honestly, vital also, play. slightly unlucky pass. It wasn't particularly blocked by an arm or something. Just hit the shoulder. Mm. Usually you want to keep those passes low as we've got another counter-attack. Go. And the Mary, <laughs> Mary Boucher pulling up for the shot. And, uh, yeah, it really shows the confidence to hit that mid-ranger. Yeah, especially when it's, you know, in a way a bit unnecessary, you know. Um, basics of uh, Kurdish coaching is if you're on a counter-attack and there's no one left in the defense, just stick it through, don't throw it, don't mess it up. He went for the yeah. shot and he got it, so... Run, run in a straight line, fast you can, put it in the hoop. But uh, that was uh, a bit more... Uh, more complex, should we say. <laughs> a bit more technique needed. Now Quaffle over the left side again. The Danube team really seems to favor that side. Another pass to the right side, and it's picked up by Toulouse, who are again on a fast break. Barely dodges the bludger, and it's another score. Now, this time sticking it. Now through. that was some really smart frame from Toulouse. What they did there, they put uh, the ball went into the, into the hands of a Danube chaser, who they must have analyzed that that player wasn't comfortable, comfortable in possession. And then they marked up all the available passing options so that any passing option they had was going to be a difficult one. They got the turnover. They got the goal from it. Very smart play from Toulouse. Yeah, uh, in Germany we like to call that play a trap when you do it with uh, bludger control as there's no other way for the Quaffle Carrier to either pass to a marked player or to run straight into the bludgers. Nice jump shot here, but sadly under th uh, throws it right beneath the hoop. Yeah, and so. another fast break here. This time going through multiple players and oh. fumbles it again. That's unfortunate for Bonnet. He will not be happy with himself after that. Okay, we've got the Die Wolves again. This time with a different Quaffle Carrier. Seem to maybe have learned from their mistakes from the previous attack. Quickly adapting. It's a short sprint into mid-range finish, but it didn't go in. And another fast break here. Oh, Ooh, great tackle. A nice tackle. And clearly blocking the quaffle. There seems to be... Pobolne doesn't seem to be too content with what happened there uh, with the, the noob Jason diving for the ball. Yeah, I, I believe the call that Nicholas Moore is making there is the player just dropped on the ball. They didn't dive forwards towards anyone. Uh, which is why it hasn't resulted in the card there. Uh, exactly. And another quick sprint to mid-range finish and again below the hoop. I uh, kind of feel like I'm in a bit of my own version of Groundhog Day here. Oh. This is uh, Daniel Ball here. It's, uh, the Toulouse chaser forced off the boundary. There you go. Good read from Bonnet. Saw exactly where that pass was and picked it off with ease. Okay, and now we've got the Direwolves again on the attack. Again over the left side, again short sprint into mid-range shot that again goes beneath the hoops. I'm st uh, starting to wonder myself, um, what will the Direwolves adapt to, when will they adapt? What would you adapt to in their situation right now? It seems to be a very one-dimensional attack so far. Yeah, it's all very like front facing. They're always attacking from directly in front of the hoops. Uh, and there's doesn't seem to be much in the way of support behind them. So we were saying before, like you want to be taking those shots when you know there's a chase behind. If you miss, so you can catch the ball and keep hold of possession. They seem to have just be, been throwing away some possessions at the moment. As the quaffle just ran out of bounds behind the uh, Direwolves hoops. So they're in possession of it now, and they can stop their attack. 
they're again facing the bludger control of the Toulouse Quidditch Club here, so we will see how they adapt it now. And to no big surprise of how they're going over the left side of the pitch. One of the minor things you could do was would be to at least go over the right side for once, but um, <laughs> a lot of right-handed players tend to f uh, favor the left side as they're throwing arms closer to the hoops. You've got a drive here, spins once, lays it off, and there it goes go. straight through. That's how you do it. You pull one, maybe two players onto yourself, and then you've got several people free, and you just pass it. But there's a quick fast break on the other side, the counter-attack from the Toulouse team, and we've basically got it equaled out again. Well, you know what they say, Massey. Early offense is easy offense. And uh, Paul Bonnet breaking the fast break to deny what was, yeah, a great, well-put-together goal by Daniel Dybulls there. I believe that was number 14. Is uh, Dan Daniela Zekovic, Zekovic. Yeah. He scored that goal for the Dybulls. And even if that pass wouldn't have landed, they had two people free at that hoop. I don't really know how that happens in a defense, that you yeah. have two people free on the same hoop. Well, that's As a good beat. Yeah, it looked like a trade, but it actually didn't go onto the chaser. It went onto the quaffle carrier, the, dropped the quaffle line, quick counterattack uh, onto the beater. I, I must say, I must correct myself there. It obviously went onto the chaser. Mm. A very good beat just to blow up the play. And Ife Boucher, easy finish in the end to uh, believe bring uh, to lose into the lead now. I think it's a 40 to 20 lead. Um, sadly, our scores aren't being displayed right now, so we're trying to get a good squint in to see it from the score table ourselves. We'll try to keep, try our best to keep you updated on that. Oh, good block from 28. Oh, Ooh, very nice block. And he's through. Wow. As we've also got a score <laughs> again now, sometimes you just got to mention it and just like magic it appears. That, that's got to be the best goal of the game so far. By the, the, the initial bludger deflect and then the split jump to dodge the second bludger and then drive in past the, the rest of the Toulouse defense. Fantastic oh. from number 28, Philippe Anderic. I think that's the kind of play the term hero play was invented for, you know, when you... Oh, yeah. It looks amazing off. when you pull it off. It looks rather bad if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> you just look like a total jerk. Yeah. Got to use your teammates. As we've got a nice simple goal again from Toulouse, bringing us to a score of 50 to 30. There we go. We we now have scores showing on uh, on our screen, which is fantastic. Uh, makes our life a lot easier in the commentary room. And we've got an attack this time closer towards the middle. I was getting my hopes up that they were going to go over the right side, but they passed right back to the left side. Quick, few quick steps in, throws over the hoops, overthrows the. The other chasers, so there's no completed pass, and the ball just rolls out of the back and is turned over to Toulouse again. And yeah, now that we're about 11 minutes into the game, uh, you said you think uh, you thought the Direwolves could go quite far in this lower bracket so far. They're a bit behind, not completely yeah, out of I, it. I, I've been quite surprised so far, Matty. Honestly, um, they they really pushed us this morning. They had some great technical chasing ability um, hit us on the break a lot um, Ooh, we're just seeing a break now intercept. oh that that's a strong tackle that per, that player's pinned yeah. to the ground I feel like uh, overall it's just a case of the execution from the Divals hasn't been there so far and Toulouse have done very well just to play a very simple game in now what is becoming worse than conditions in the rain as so we've got a delayed penalty signal against the Die Wolf side game is interrupted as they were in the offense and we're waiting to s to hear the call it's it's a yellow card against beater number 36 that's Fabian Kranebitter who will now move over to the yellow card illegal contact coming from behind there we go hearing there from uh, our head referee okay. Nicholas Muller <laughs> as if you just heard what we heard, we apologize to anyone watching the stream wearing <laughs> headphones. Uh, go see a doctor. Don't sue us, please. <laughs> there seems to be a little bit of discussion. Paul Bonnet mentioned something to our head ref, Nicholas Muller there. Mm. It's actually an interesting phenomenon. Yeah. I, I, mean, know not I know it's Muller, but when I commentate in English, I somehow turned it into Muller. <laughs> Muller. 
Niklas Müller. As we've now got to lose again on the ball. That's number four. Yeah, Fabio Boucher. Oh, a long pass. Ooh. I mean, a bit different from Toulouse. Oh, oh it actually goal. went in. I even missed it. It was too quick for the camera. Fabio Boucher is feeling himself today. That was a proper like heat check of a of a play. Yeah, we th we thought the hits the mid ranger. Yeah, from the halfway the, line. Yeah, Brilliant we thought the play. mid ranger was was a long one, but <laughs> he just hit it from the midline. Yeah. Why even have an offense if you can just score from the midline? I think he's trying to be like the, the new Steph Curry or Quidditch at this rate. The yeah, next one's from the keeper's own line, right? Yeah, probably. The oh. uh, I believe there's a brooms down for an injury here to uh, the Daniel Dowell's beater. Oh yeah. It, it, I hate to sound British, but uh, yeah, the weather is becoming very Irish at the moment. Um, very, well, British Isles. Um, and I, it's called the Emerald Isle, Isle for a reason. Because um, yeah. of the quite often supply of rain. Um, so it's been interesting to see how the players adapt to that. It's been quite a sunny day it's so been, far here in Limerick. It's been quite windy, though. So I oh, yes. totally understand. Uh, uh, Ferrari Boucher um, going for those long shots now mm. that it's a little less windy and he can pull he probably feels like he can take them now and yeah. earlier it was just quite literally a long shot mm. all, yeah all, all the balls now are going to be that little bit slippier will the catches go to hand as often will, will the technical side of the game hold up that's uh, what we'll find out in the next few moments As we just hope that um, the injured player will be okay, but let's focus on what we've seen so far, what we enjoyed seeing. So, uh, what was your, what were your highlights of the game so far? Uh, it's got to be the goal from number twenty-eight uh, from Daniel Dybul's. Like, it's one of those like highlight reel plays that you just love to see in Quidditch, and like, you, you, as someone watching, you feel very jealous. Like, I'd love to be able to do something like that in a game this tournament. Yeah. Uh, so that, and I think, yeah, that, that halfway line shot from uh, Ferry Boucher there. Sort of two standout moments for me. Yeah, I definitely agree on the on that uh, drive on there. That's really the kind of play you imagine in your, uh, when you go for one and mm. want to be the, uh, the person to bring it in. The, uh, yeah, the half, like the shot from the midline. It feels like an high, like a highlight, but if you watch it again, it just doesn't look like <laughs> one because it's yeah. so nonchalant. Yeah. Somewhere like it's a small lob and small lob that happens mm. to go like 20 meters and hit a hoop. But yeah. <laughs> but they all they all count the same, don't they? Yeah. Uh, all all yeah. ten points. So. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Blues will be very happy. As we've uh, got that. uh Bello uh, Hobeck, Ubeck in the chat, um, being very jealous of our time and scorekeepers because they've got biscuits. <laughs> Who wouldn't mind eating some biscuits? Lucky right them, now? lucky them. Uh, I've, I've just noticed uh, on our, our fact sheets we got here, these these two teams have been around for quite a while. Uh, Toulouse been a club since 14th of May 2011, 11 years in the sport, uh, seven years for the Danube Dibbles, uh the Austrian side. Um, so yeah, the, I, I imagine there's going to be some elements of uh, experience throughout this roster. On both sides. Also, uh, the Danube Diewolds currently hold the Quidditch world record for being able to eat the most chicken nuggets. So if you want to challenge them, just oh probably, you know, get your team together, send them a video or something, or just that, invite that, them over. That sounds like my kind of challenge, honestly. I'm uh, going to be honest, I'd, I'd feel more challenged if they gave us an actual number. <laughs> you to say you're the world true, record true. holder. You know, sometimes it's one of those world records where it's three or yeah. something and nobody ever else decided to put in the world record for it yeah oh, i think we've got to investigate that yeah. at some point <laughs> uh, on the other side we've got the um little fact about the toulouse uh quidditch club that french names are complicated which yeah I can <laughs> confirm. They, they are complicated uh if you don't speak french but uh, they they roll off the tongue tongue so well. I mean, just looking at some of these, like Paul Bonnet, we've said many times. J. Leo. I can get this one. <laughs> number 93, Guillaume. Mele Marine. Guillaume 2. I can do that. Jordan Justin. 
I believe That's we are right. getting underway again, so uh, we can uh, stop filling up the time. Perfect. Number 12 oh, with a right side attack. The Direwolves apparently decided to use their little wreck to switch things up. Nope, they're going back to the left side. Oh, use the reset there. Uh, yet again, another wasteful play from the Direwolves. Uh, well, there's nothing wrong with taking the reset, but they oh. definitely could have avoided it. Speaking of slippery balls, slipping out of the hands there, Paul Bonnet just also decides yeah. to lob it through. An absolute freebie for Bonnet. He will happily take that all game. It's another one of those where you wonder why does he just stick it through, then on the other hand, he just got the ball because it's too slippery and somebody couldn't hold it, so you know you don't mm. want to keep it in your hands for too long. Oh. Ball not entirely sure what's happening here. Gold seems to be not good or oh. something. Fiji. Gold is good. Oh, it's just been returned to uh, the Diables keeper there. Okay. Good to clear that up. The MTK on uh, the YouTube stream is saying... No matter what, the chicken nugget record will be broken tomorrow. McDonald's Island, brace yourself. Sounds very ominous. Brace yourself <laughs> for... But I, lo I love it, I love it. Brace yourself wow. for income. Another nice goal from number 12, Lorenz Brandl for Diables there. The, little jump, the sort of handball style jump and shot. Yeah, great technique. Hey, want to guess which hoop it was on? The small hoop, wasn't it? I well, think. The left one. Yeah. They, they seem to like that hoop. The As we've got a low attack from the Toulouse side now. Patiently cherry picking away at everybody uh the noob tries to send out towards the uh towards the quaffle. It's just one more goal and they're out of swim range. Yeah, if if they get this goal it's big for Toulouse. As we've got oh. No, oh and a turnover. Turnover, quick fast break from number 12. He's going to be the first to the hoop, and this time he chooses the right one. Uh, easy fast break for Brandel there to bring the score to 70-50 to, to lose. That's a big goal for the Diables. Brings them back into uh, what we call swim range in Quidditch snitch when it matters. So both teams can catch snitch and win the game. I'm going to be honest with you, when I started playing the game, I didn't really understand the acronym. I thought it was something <laughs> about staying afloat and not being out of the game, so... Mm. Turns out it's just a simple acronym and has nothing to do with swimming or any other metaphors. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, one of the many, many things you pick up as you, as you go along with, with this sport. Uh, another brooms down. Let's see what this one is for. Nothing. Oh, we're getting going again. Oh, good spin. Oh, nice spin. Nicely laid oh, off the great. quaffle right before the beat. And then was an easy job for Paul Bonnet. Yeah, great bit of uh, chasing there from the Toulouse chaser. Drawing the beat after that little spin move and then passing perfectly to give Bonnet that time and just thought of space to get that shot away for the goal. Uh, I think now we've got a broomstone because the Quaffle is very far out of bounds after this mid-range shot attempt from the Dire Wolves. Mm. The, the, these, these pitches here at our venue at the University of Limerick are rather wide. Uh, so there's a tendency for balls to go very far away from the pitch if they're thrown with any kind of major force. And to lose now again with a chance to pull ahead by more than 30 points. Another mid-range shot from number four here, but it doesn't go on this time around, so maybe he needs to step back a few more steps so it gets more into his favorite range of midline. Diwolf's now on the attack. That pass was fumbled a little bit, but there weren't any opposing plays nearby, so it's no worries at all. And we've got number 28 on the quaffle right now. That's Philip Anderich. Walking in. Oh, very goal. nice lunch shot. And a different kind of tactical look there from the Direwolves. Just playing their, their keeper 
uh, as a screen in front of number 28 there. Just putting off Paul Bonnet and uh, allowing a bit of space. Who's now showing all of his experience and class, going through pretty much everyone just to miss the hoop. But he's got an, that's a, almost a slingshot throw from the four there behind the hoops. Yeah, that's a good save from the, the Danube Diewolves keeper there, number two. It is uh, Julian Price. Yeah, and the Diewolves now with the chance of making it a very, very close game again. So we got to say it has been a close game the entire time. It never felt like any team was really out of it. Yeah, Toulouse threatened to pull away at one point. But yeah, Diewolves have definitely made some changes and uh, pulled themselves back into this game. And uh, we've got another one of those slippery long shots that just misses the hoop. Honestly, I feel like it's... <laughs> Commentator's curse. I just praise the Diewolves how well they were doing and then uh, they go and make a mistake like that. <laughs> yeah, you know... When it's rainy, every time the quaffle misses, it gets wet again on the ground. You just exactly even if it stops raining. You might see a few players drawing the ball as they're walking up at the start of an offense, just to get that bit of extra grip. It's oh so important. Oh, very nicely dodged the wrap and push there. Oh, right. that's, that's one. The teardrop from Paul Bonnet, a bit of style added to the game. Oh, the flick of the wrist there, that was some serious rigor. I think one of Paul Bonnet's better qualities as a player, he's just very solid. And uh, in terms of his his movement, he, he's very physically strong. Not necessarily known for, for style is Paul Bonnet. He's very very good kind of, kind of a I guess, teammate. Of traits, I guess. Yeah, he's kind of showing that kind of technical side of his game. So, uh, yeah, impressive to see, especially in these conditions. Very impressive. Just from playing against them earlier, oh, very nice, uh, very nice team to play against. A very, very fair game. Um, it's very enjoyable. So, so I, I can, well, I've never had him as a teammate, but seems like a very nice teammate. <laughs> so we get a little look at a snitch. That's uh, Chris Ramsey. Uh, Declan Ramsey. Declan Ramsey. Yes, from uh, London Quidditch Club. Hence the uh, the shirt uh, he's wearing. So we've got 43 seconds until the Seekers are released. And this game is going to be in range. If Diwolves catch, we're looking to go to overtime. If to lose catch, they win. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next few minutes. Yeah, highly unlikely that that general statement changes within the next few minutes. But you never know. Sometimes it turns into an entirely different game while the snitch runner is on pitch oh yeah massively like once the beaters are fully on the snitch certainly the more kind of athletic more physical team can really dominate the game yeah, it just turns into a bit of you know after a mix of handball and dodgeball it just turns into mm. straight up rugby at that point <laughs> like a lot of times <laughs> pretty much like that those quaffle players can afford to sort of be a bit more aggressive with their running and uh not being afraid of being beat so much as they would be normally during a game. The uh, believe a timeout's being called here. Yeah. Which is interesting because not really allowed to call a timeout. No, it's a broomstick. But yeah, yeah. yeah. They changed that a few years ago. But mm. it, it's, it's one of those weird loopholes because you can call an illegal timeout and then during the stoppage call a, a legal one. Yeah. It's a very strange uh, situation. But only if it's stopped, you know. Uh, if a referee doesn't even doesn't, st doesn't stop it, you won't even get caught up. But just nothing happens, so mm. you can basically decide whether you want it so bad that you're willing to take a card for it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. As this timeout seems to be over, I don't really know which team called it, but what do you think? Or were the major key points the coaches gave to the teams during this time? I think, well, because we're now transitioning to the snitch game. It's just getting their snitch on pitch plan in place, knowing what they're going to do at this point. As we mentioned, the game's going to change and it could go drastically well or drastically wrong for one team if they're not properly on it, not thinking about what's going on. So I think it's just to make sure they're clear, clearly thinking about what's going to happen at that 18 minute mark. Yeah, that's always oh, pretty good. It's one of those things where if you don't take the time out and don't communicate the plan properly, it always comes back to bite you. 
I've definitely been there. Uh, so yeah, just always, you know, make sure to get those timeouts in there there for a reason, and they're oftentimes very useful. Oh. So got a nice little beat on the Danu player, or leading to a quaffle for. It's another, it's another risky pass from the Diwals. I mean, at this point, like when it gets stitch on pitch, you want to be really cutting down on those errors, especially because with no beaters back, as we're going to find in a few mi moments, then that's just giving away a goal, more or less. So it's really making sure you nail those passes, you nail those catches, you get those goals in. Oh, now we've got an interesting situation here. Toulouse doesn't seem to be too interested in catching while oh, the Tyrols are around. Nearly had a catch from their seeker as well. Oh, got a little beat here. Logic control still with the Toulouse side, who don't seem to be too worried about the snitch here. They just, they're far ahead right now. Mm. They just want to keep it that way. Yeah, I think it made sense there just to get that extra goal to go out of range. Um, but, uh, yeah. At this point, I'd probably move back. Yeah, Maybe, prob maybe prob secure the difference at four. Make sure you get yeah. a couple now, and then you're good to go. Because it's been fairly even in the Quaffle game overall. So just to leave the snitch entirely would be to back your Quaffle game during overtime. And, uh, which I think at this point for Toulouse would be a bit of a risk. As we've currently got a small stoppage, and the ball is back. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, very unfortunate. I think he just clipped the hoop. Oh, the goal's been given good. Oh. Yeah. That's so a big goal for Toulouse. In. Gives them a 50-point lead now. As Toulouse just caught the snitch. The snitch catch here for Toulouse. That is Jere. For uh, number 19 for Toulouse, who is a former player for the Leicester Festivals in the UK. Uh, moved back to, to France and uh, is now playing for them this weekend. And, and a very quick corner catch. That was very quick. I wasn't yeah. prepared for that. <laughs> yeah. uh, so overall, uh, Toulouse has won with a score of 140 to 60. Um, any major takeaways for you from this game? Yeah, I think mainly it's disappointing for, for Daniel Dybul's. I expected more from them, having seen them earlier in the day. Um, so I think they'll be a bit disappointed with themselves. Just the execution that they had earlier in the day maybe wasn't there. Um, and the Toulouse, I feel like they played a really simple and effective game. Lots of counter-attacks. Um, and uh, yeah, quite an organized defense overall to put the pressure on the die to make those mistakes, if that makes sense. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't have to be too fancy. You just got to, you know, as all good coaches say, stick to your fundamentals. Exactly. Like If you look at our reigning champions, the uh, Paris Titans, what sets them apart from so many teams is their fundamentals, their throwing, their catching. Their, obviously, their fitness is, yeah, it's, it's, it's exceptional. So even when they are tired, when they're struggling, like they, they can always rely on those skills. Uh, so, as we come to close here on this game, so uh, we've got, we finished our last game. Uh, we thank you everyone for watching for uh, for this game, but also in the name of everyone here at the crew at uh, Raw Phoenix TV for tuning in for the entire day, and we hope to see you again tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Day two. Let's go. At, uh, we will see you at 8 a.m. local time. That's uh, 9 a.m. for the rest of Europe. And if you live in the U.S., you're probably w not going to get any sleep. So good <laughs> luck with that. Uh, my name is uh, Matty Gantenberg. It's been a pleasure. Uh, yep, I've been Fraser Bosford. Hosting this game. Been a pleasure. <laughs> uh, we hope you all get a good rest, have a nice evening, and we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Break.